Hello and welcome to a very non-controversial EFAP. Hello everybody. Star Wars is bad. We're uh, <laughs> going to be it doing two... But who better to guess than Theo for what we do <laughs> hyper hot takes? Because we're going to be pissing off two significant portions of audience here. One that likes Revenge of the Sith and the other that really likes Red Letter Media. Even though you're going to struggle to find people who like Red Letter Media more than me and Rags. Yeah, I love Red Letter Media. They're one of my favorite, maybe my favorite channels. Yeah, maybe. I really do enjoy um, watching their stuff. I constantly play it in the background, re-listen to it. Uh, incredible amount of respect for all the work they do and the crew over there. Mm -hmm. Very enjoyable. And good old Plinkett would have been very much an uh, inspiration. And I fucking loved his prequel videos back when they came out. Though we're here today... Back when they came out? What do you mean? We're here today to discover how well they hold up, because I don't want to make any promises. Mm -hmm. And when I say they, I mean the Revenge of the Sith one, because we ain't going through all of them. Um, because this is the end of the prequel arc that we started like a year and a half ago or whatever. <laughs> I don't even um, remember anymore. This, this was an intended video, and has been for ages. We just haven't quite found the right slot, but... Episode 166 seems about right. For no particular reason. Um, that doesn't. I feel like you're not being entirely honest there. No what? particular reason, really. What do you mean? No particular reason. So anyway, like the the idea here is that we're gonna give the audience finally our take on Revenge of the Sith beyond saying I think we've only told them that we thought it was we'd give it a bad and a probable four out of ten. Uh, we yeah, have... we had um, yeah, we we'd watched it last, I think, in preparation for a supposed trio discussion, and then that got sidetracked by a million gajillion things. I and think we this was going to happen. What we're doing right now is going to happen all the way back then. But yeah, we got to like go I over. said, we planned it this way from the beginning, but we wanted to make sure that we uh, watched it again just to be safe, just to make sure we were up to date on this twenty-year-old movie mm -hmm. and. Uh, and so we watched it. We watched it the other day. And uh, Ringy what, what, loved it. Yeah, well, let's let's go left to right quick. What's the conclusion on Revenge of the Sith? Uh, I really you like go it, first. It's bad. I yeah, I really like it, but I think it's bad. Uh, but I do Ooh. think it's the best of the prequels. And I do think that there were it, that is a film that could be salvaged. It would take a lot of work, but yeah. with what's in there, it could be salvaged and turned into something great. Uh, which is not something I would say for like, a sequel trilogy. <laughs> you just gotta dis ditch that and try again. But yeah, I that's yeah, I like Revenge of the Sith. It's a it's a fun movie. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, it's easily the favorite of the prequels. It'll be, I guess, my fourth favorite Star Wars movie. Yeah, maybe, I guess probably. I need to think about that. Um, then yeah, it, what would the contender be? Well, one, I guess. Maybe Rogue One, maybe, um, maybe I like it more than, no, I don't think I like it more than Return of the Jedi. <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, <laughs> could that be argued as, like, I don't think, not so for me. Uh, um, okay. I'm trying to think of, there's nothing else, is there? The, all the rest of them just absolute ass. Because uh -huh. I was actually going to say, the, it's so clear to me, the, the, the quality chasm between the sequels and the prequels, like it would be unfair chasm. to categorize them in any kind of similar way. They are yeah. such different beasts, and um, as far as I'm concerned, the prequels show off a lot of potential. And uh, they even execute some stuff pretty okay to good, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to cover some of that too. But yes, I agree. I like Revenge of the Sith. It bad. Rags, what do you think? Oh my goodness. Well, I guess I'm not going to be breaking with tradition here, but it's kind of the same for me. Re Revenge of the Sith is probably my fourth favorite Star Wars movie, uh, but um, it's not good. Not good. It is. It's not a good movie, but there are good things in it, and I really appreciate it in a in in a way that I appreciate the Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, though to lesser degrees. There are things that I really do like about Revenge of the Sith, but man. A lot of issues, a lot of problems, and the more and more I watch it, the more and more the problems seem to pop up, and the less and less I, like like the list of things that I like about Revenge of the Sith, it is not a constantly expanding list. Um, all the good things I just sort of know that I like, um, 
but the list of things that don't quite work and that are shaky, that list has, especially after this recent viewing a day or so ago, that list has expanded and it has gotten a little bit bigger. Um, and, and it's, uh, it's a shame, but yeah, it's the best of the prequels, but it ain't good, but I do like it. And it's way better than the sequels. Easy. Wait, and what about you, Theo? Uh, more or less along similar lines. It's the closest thing to an actual film in the PT. Uh, it's not good, not at all, but there was an attempt, I guess. <laughs> like, it is easily the best of them, but that does not, that doesn't say much. And it still bears the scars of being attached to them. Yeah, you sort of, when it was completed, you nodded it, like, mm hmm. All right. Yep. <laughs> Um, which is a high that we'll never get in Star Wars ever again. <laughs> Maybe with Book of Boba Fett. All right, that's the one. It'll be great, guys. Yeah. It'll have very, it'll it'll have very It'll cool have two action scenes action. per episode at least. Um, at the first act break and at the end, cameos everywhere. I'm sure yes. Jabba the Hutt's cousin is gonna fuck him we'll up. See things that you've seen before, little gadgets and gizmos and places. Yeah. You will have many, many references. Seismic charge. Oh, I need another one of them in my life. Do you remember that clip we had from uh, when we were covering it? That other channel that when it it blows up, they all go, "Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's the thing it was supposed to do." The guys, it's a sound effect. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. That's where we're at. How now. embarrassing. It is. I, I, I collected a couple of those clips for this eventual Mandalorian review that I still have, and man, people. Oh, I don't want to say man-children, but it enters into my mind. You don't want to say it because there's some women that are involved, too. Um, I'm sure there are. I'm sure they're like, oh, yeah, I want that. I want, I want a sonic bomb to go off and just, yeah, all right. They're out there, I'm sure. My jams, seismic charges, man. It's just Kind of why I watch Star Wars at all. For the seismic charges. Mm -hmm. I figured uh, you guys would save on that. Yeah. Where where would Star Wars be without seismic charges? I feel like we might I mean, not even have gotten space. the sequels, and how sad would that be? It is odd though that they are called seismic charges when they use them in space. Maybe because they is seismic like a kind of because I guess I just uh, I I I associate size like seismograph. You know, like, uh, we don't have to continue this tangent. <laughs> it, was, it was really only running for you. Like, it was, it was up to you, right? You know, just... that's fine. I don't even want it. So anyway, done. that leads us to we're going to we're going to talk for about uh, oh so long. Just a, a bit of a, you know, what, what do we think of Avengers of Sith in more detail? And then we're going to watch Plinkett's coverage of it. So Ooh, join us. Oh, my on goodness. Wonderful adventure. Plinkett. Yeah. He's the he's the red letter media guy. He is. Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, I don't know how, how format-wise, I guess, we, should we just, just go chronologically in the film and try and point out what we think is, is working and what we think isn't working? Well, that, so uh, we're that gonna opening do this. shot's really cool. Oh, you've skipped past the opening crawl. Oh, right, yeah. War! Yes. Yeah, that's right, war. Um, it's No the Dead Speak, but... Yeah, and, and I guess because of the idea that you've moved from... Attack of the Clones, the war started right at the end of that film. Now it's just like confirming. It's like, yeah, there's war. And you're like, okay. Yeah, all right. Well, <laughs> there are heroes on both sides. Uh oh, is, you're not allowed to say that. <laughs> is yeah, is the idea with that line that um I don't know, it's just that there's there's respectful people doing the right thing on both sides or something? My my interpretation of it, or my understanding of it, I guess, has always been that it means that, like, there have been dramatic feats performed by, like, certain individuals on either side, as opposed to any, like, moral endorsement. Oh, I figured it was more moral. Like, it was I, trying to say that, that it, thought, it yeah. isn't clear exactly who the strict villains are at this point. Maybe. Or at least I it was a like nod that. to that concept that isn't really explored well, that's the all? thing. I think it's sad yeah. that we don't explore that more, that we don't have more separatists arguing like, no, the Republic are evil. From my yeah, point of stink. view, the Republic are evil. That's oh my goodness, I'm they should put that in the movie. It that way, <laughs> because it's not really realized in the films at all. Yeah, um, 
but yeah, uh, it's it's weird that line comes right after ruthless attacks from the Sith Lord Count Dooku. It's like, is he considered a, a hero? <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Evil. They also say evil is everywhere, which I guess is true with Palpatine being on both sides. It's like, all right, yeah, I guess. Maybe Palpatine was the yeah. hero on both sides. Maybe he was. In a Maybe. stunning move. The is that fiendish? Sorry, my uh, my VLC. There we go. His fiendish droid leader General Grievous has swept into the Republic capital and kidnapped Chancellor Palpatine, leader of the Galactic Senate, which presumably is all a part of Palpatine's plans. You'd think. People are going to be like, well, if you watch the Clone Wars, we're like, no. Nope. No. <laughs> no, first off, no. We're going, yeah, this story has to stand on its own, or at least stand with the prequels, and uh, we're going to just judge it based on the information it's given us. I think that's a fair inference. The fact that it's just confirmed to be true by the Clone Wars is not actually relevant to this conversation. That's fine. Um, the, yeah, the idea being then that the, the Separatist army sort of just flumped into Coruscant airspace slash space space um they yeah, hyper flumped and then went down real quick grabbed palpatism and went back up and then the republic ships like emergency arrive as well because it says as the droid army attempts to flee um two jedi knights lead a desperate mission to rescue the captive chancellor it's like okay okay so like as title crawls go it's fine I, I, Fine. I, um, I'm alright with that. I, get, I understand the situation. Uh, though, when we see the nature of the battle happening, it does make you wonder what the fuck the Republic ships... Whatever, what is everyone doing? Like, How, Why is everybody here so close to Coruscant? You are so close. Because uh, I'm trying to think, like, logistically, if the Separatists show up, uh, they only want to capture Palpatine... Or do they? Does Palpatine want them to float around to be destroyed slash to have Anakin kill Dooku, you know? Yeah, did that require this insane space battle? Um, is there a worry about what... I mean, I guess, is all this necessary? It feels a little strange. Um, how is it even necessary and how do you... Because I know this is sort of a, a Star Wars thing... But as is often pointed out, the idea that you just have these capital sized space warships that are just right next to each other, just blasting away at each other at point well, blank ranges in this massive confused ball of nonsense. I'm not sure how that gonna have happened because A New Hope, you have literally none of that. Uh, the, the opening thing is they capture a ship and then later on it's a, a series of X-Wings and a couple of Y-Wings attacking the Death Star. So, like, that's not in A New Hope. Empire? Well, mostly escaping at the beginning, and then that's it for Space Battles. And then Return of the Jedi, it's uh, it's all a trap, right? Like, the they try to attack the Death Star, and then they get blocked off behind them by Star Destroyers, and the Death Star's just lasering them, like a big kill box. Mm -hmm. So this whole, like, loads of capital ships right next to each other being a Star Wars thing, I, I maybe that's just a prequel thing? Um, I guess it is, um... Well, yeah, prequel I suppose slash we haven't really had it. Sequel. We haven't had anything like this before. I guess it's true. Yeah. Um, hmm. But like, I, point I, being, it's strange. You should be trying to attack people very from weird. very much bigger distances because it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Or at least explain why this has to happen. How come this sort of thing is the way that it is? Well, and so um, that's the question: Is it impossible for this to have ended to happen this way? No, no. I guess it's not. It's not impossible. Clearly, in the world, it's not impossible. Oh, I guess um, I mean, like, could you conceive but, a reasonable way that all the ships ended up in the positions they are? Sure, you could. You could orchestrate something like that. Um, this could be a rarity. It could be a um, just 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 an oddity that generally doesn't happen. This could be one for the history books, fighting like yeah. this and this scale above this planet, especially this planet in particular. Um, you'd think that this is the last place that the Separatists would send any fleet of theirs would be to like just the heart of the republic over coruscant um i guess unless they were really planning to blitz the planet but uh, they don't they're only here to capture palpatine my the way i've rationalized it in my head has always been that it was a sort of sneak attack type of thing which is like it's hard to understand with how star wars technology and you know hyperdrives and all that is but like 
the way it always worked out in my head was they showed up with the intention of like grabbing Palpatine and then question mark. Not sure. Maybe they try and take Coruscant. Who knows? Uh, but then like, I thought you said croissant for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They try and take the croissant. Peruskin. Um, uh, and then in like, it devolves into a panic, of course, cause you know, Palpatine's been captured. So that's really bad. And then, uh, so uh, fleets or, you know, ships are just called back from wherever they may have been. And you end up with this big chaotic ball of, yeah. of, of a mess of a fight. And again, I think we should just good faith assume what must have happened. So, for example, my brain is like, wait a minute, if you captured Palpatine and you're fleeing, what's, why aren't you just hyperspacing out? Why isn't the, the invisible hand being General Grievous's ship just going boom and out of there? So maybe we have to assume that Palpatine slash the Emperor was like, no, once you capture Palpatine, I want you to try and destroy as many Republic ships as possible before leaving. If you if you reach a level of like critical loss, then you should escape, or something like that. Like Whatever decisions are made in this scene, we have to assume that these are things Palpatine wanted and told the Separatists to do. Yeah, you, you'd have to. They're, they're, especially because this is all part of his plan, and knowing his position you'd have to assume this was all orchestrated to at least some degree. And um, Palpatine's plan is very much a big, like, hmm, with, with the, the three prequels. There's a lot of decisions he makes where you're like, um, maybe. <laughs> like, maybe that makes it. I'm not sure. Like, I, I think Phantom Menace has that issue in spades, right? Like, try to figure yeah, out how, exactly what the fuck his plans are. Yeah, the, and, and even this one to a degree, which is one of the issues that this movie sort of has, is you understand the underlying aspect of Palpatine's involvement and what his plan is, but then when you see things actually playing out, you wonder, how lucky are you going to get? Is this just how it was supposed to happen? Did you plan for any of this? What yeah. if things had gone a different way? Um, a lot of risk-taking, as for certain, a lot of assumptions about how things might play out. Well, uh, we'll get to a couple more of them once they get onto the ship, but... Uh... I suppose the next thing would just be... I don't know if we should talk about this now or we should wait until a certain point is made in a certain video, but the uh, um, the one opening, you know? Um, should, we, should we comment sure. on it now or should we wait until later in terms of... I think it's really neat. Uh, it wasn't too long ago that I was part of a podcast where they said, well, it's not very creative or interesting because it's just CGI. Um, yeah, <laughs> oof. I... Yeah, we'll have a. We we. I figure we should just wait until we hear the argument, and then we'll we'll respond to it. But yeah. for now, I think it's real neat, and and we'll talk about exactly why beyond simply saying, "Ooh, shiny lights and colors." Uh, but I mean, following that shot, we see Anakin and Obi Wan working together to fly through this battlefield to save Palpatine, and you're just sitting there like, "Man, if only we saw more of this relationship." <laughs> In the movie, yeah, because only could. Mm. Yeah. I would even go as far as saying they, f their chemistry feels stronger here than ever. It's um, the first yeah. time there's any kind of implication that they do have a relationship in terms of the way it they is, talk yeah. to one another, yeah. as opposed to yeah. just being told that they do. The yeah, relationship is essentially non-existent in the Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. They spend a huge amount of that movie removed from one another in a bizarre creative decision on Lucas's part. And then this one, it just it. I think from the get go, there's an understanding that we've got to really kind of try and jumpstart this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, the 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 nature of their relationship in Attack of the Clones to me felt much more like Anakin says a thing, and then Obi Wan is like, "I'm disappointed in you because <laughs> you made the wrong decision." Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. In Revenge <laughs> you don't of the get Sith, the idea that they like each other. Yeah, in Revenge of the Sith, you immediately get the sense that they both understand each other's approaches, they both try and work together, and there's a bit of comedy between them, uh, and that it feels as though they may have been doing this for some time, but then you as an audience member are like, I don't remember seeing that, but I guess so, yeah. <laughs> They've, you can hmm. almost be tricked into thinking, oh man, we've come so far with these two. It's like, not really, but nah. sure. And um, again, there'll be people who be like, well, if you watch the Clone Wars, you'll see plenty of missions where they're just like, blah, 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 blah. In the movies. In the movies. Uh, the chemistry in the Clone Wars is just quipping at one another anyway. That's all it is. Wow. At least we won't piss people off the most in this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> um, but yeah, lot the make it trying to make up for a lot of lost time. You could you could feel it. This is the best of the three. Uh, but we often say if, if just get rid of the Phantom Menace, just have it not exist. Um, yeah, probably the Wars start with was something the f- else. And- if the Clone Wars were the first one, and then we have a movie uh-huh. all about the biggest parts of the Clone Wars itself, and then this is the end of the Clone Wars, that seems to make sense, right? That makes yeah, more sense I'm, to me. Yeah, I would. I'd like that more. We'd get a lot more time. We get with these characters together time. for starters. Yeah. yeah. The because again, stuff it, that we they, really need. Yeah, because you have three movies to develop a relationship, and one of those movies just is not even a part of it, and the second one does a terrible job. So now you got one of the three left, and then your entire premise relies on two relationships being built up. One of them is practically non-existent, this Obi-Wan and uh, Anakin relationship, and then you also have the relationship of Anakin and Padme, which is bizarre and just not at all. It's one of the worst Hollywood romances ever. I think a lot of people would point to that. This might be being... Uh, the number one worst Hollywood romance just because of the sheer um, popularity of it. Uh, and there's a lot of time spent on those two in Clone Wars. It's just the, it is. the horrible, is horrible dialogue. <laughs> so much time spent on a relationship that needs to be believable for this story to really work, yeah. and they just don't do it. It's mm-hmm. like an alien wrote to human beings in a relationship, and they just don't and know how to do up- it. In this weird position where, like, despite the fact that she's one of the main characters, Padme has a very nothing character. She doesn't have a lot going on that doesn't have anything to do with, like, Anakin, especially in this movie. Yeah, like, so that's the thing. We say Revenge is the best one, but she's probably the least of a character in this one compared to the other, probably, the other three. Probably, yes. Cut, cut out of a thing Anakin cares about. <laughs> yeah, she, Basically. That, she's more of a plot device than a character. She exists. Is, she, oh my mm. god. She's fridged. Dun, dun, dun. Oh my god, that's <laughs> the worst thing ever. Yeah, it's just because she was like a very stern political leader in, I would argue, both of the uh, the first prequels. She had positions, you know, but in this one she's kind of just there. Yeah. Uh, she gets sad, and she leads Obi-Wan to Anakin. Um, she also says the thunderous applause line, which I like, but hey. <laughs> um, I guess we'll talk more about her as we go along, but yeah, uh, our opening scene, we're just trying to show, like, this is how Anakin and Obi-Wan deal with, with drama in, in environments and stuff. And they're very, like, casual, but uh, still focused. And it's, it's just, it's pretty chill. And we get this, um... I can't remember if it was... Is it, do they get rockets fired at them after the, the line from Anakin about, like, oh no, the clones? I think so. Uh, I think so, yeah. So... Yeah, the idea being that one of the clones is like, oh no, they're all over me. And then uh, Anakin's like, I'm gonna help them out. And Obi-Wan's like, no, no, we got a mission. And this is the thing, I don't want to be too harsh to this line, um, but it's pretty transparent what's happening here, like uh, from the writer's point of view, I mean. Like, Anakin cares about people, you know? That's an important thing to remember, (laughs) despite his fall to come. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I mean... Sure. Um, and I'm mostly fine with it. I, I just, uh, it just feels a little bit clunky. Yeah, I think so. A lot of lines feel clunky. Um, I think Phantom Menace is probably the clunkiest of them all when it comes to dialogue. Probably. Because uh, uh, that one really does feel like a straight up alien wrote it. But this one is, uh, none of them are good. None of them are good. There is a sense of we need to have this thing happen. Just say the thing and let's go. Yeah, well, you wonder how much you could save about the prequels if you could... All you can do is alter the dialogue. Every event stays the exact same, but you can just change how everyone speaks. It's like, hmm, I wonder how much probably better you could make quite them. a bit. I feel like you could. Yeah, you probably could, yeah. Um, but yeah, he's like, let me help them, and then Obi-Wan's like, no, they've got their job, we've got ours, and then they blow up, and it's like, oh, man. But, uh... You know, like, I think if I were trying to be as charitable as possible, I'd be like, this is indicative of their characters. Obi-Wan is much more, like, willing to, you know, allow the sacrifices to happen when it's an important job to do, while Anakin lets his emotions sort of guide his, uh, his goals. It's like, all right, you know, it's, it's not nothing. It's something. You can reflect the, their future actions, but yeah, that happens. Um, 
And then one vulture droid fires four missiles. And it, and holy fuck is this effective. Like, uh... Because they, they, the way they work, by the way, is they don't hit your ship. They get in front of your ship and detonate into the buzz droids that land on your ship. Which is kind of interesting. Um... Buzz droids in general just seem like these, they're just like parasitic machines that tear your ship apart slowly. Yeah, could be interesting mass producing these low, you know, these low cost, fairly simple robots that you just fling out towards the enemy. And if one in 20 of those suckers ever just lands on a ship and just starts cutting it up, that could do some serious damage. It really could, especially to those without the Force, because you're like, especially oh shit. to them. Yeah. But if you have the Force, couldn't you just boop them off your ship? One of the issues, I guess, with Star Wars is the there is sort of it's really bad in the prequels and the sequels, uh, but I think that's part of the because they try and really expand upon it, which makes me wonder what the excuse is. But there's a lot of not Force using. When using the force is clearly the correct It's so uh, OP. Call. Use it's it. very <laughs> strong. You, you, being able to have powerful telekinesis at your hands is uh that's a really strong ability. You want to be busting that one out a lot. And I remember there was one counter argument once upon a time, I don't even know who said it, but it was like, well, maybe the force doesn't really work on droids. It's like, no, we've seen it. We've seen it before. Yeah, it clearly does. Um it clearly does. You can definitely push them away. Um and so it's just Obi-Wan not saving himself when he clearly could because we've got to set up a situation of Anakin saving Obi-Wan. Uh, yeah, we we have a... a, a and, and you have, when you have a Jedi who's been trained in this stuff for this long, it's kind of like the Mandalorian when you have a character who is... He has this equipment constantly. He should be extremely familiar with it. Even more so, the Jedi should be constantly using the Force when it's the correct move. There's no excuse to say, oh, he just wasn't thinking about it, or nah, I don't, I don't buy any of that. Um, you be pulling that shit out all the time. When the buzz droids approach both ships, the first target seems to be whatever um, R unit they have. Which, to be fair, I think it's a little neat that they would go for the the repair droid slash maintenance thing straight away. Like they'd be programmed to do that. Um, they rip off R4's head, which you actually see a replacement head later in the in the film. There are a lot of little details like that in the prequels that make me wonder. I'm like, you paid attention to these things that, you know, if you did, it would have been fine. <laughs> but you did anyway. Like, I'm assuming, do you guys know about the one where, um, when Django's head is chopped off, um, and people were like, his head should have fallen out of the helmet that his kid picks up? And it's like, no, nah, if you watch the scene, they show a shadow of the head and the helmet moving in different oh, God, ways. Yeah. Yeah. And, before he's hit by the uh, the lightsaber, he tries to start hit, start up his jetpack, but it's broken, and you even see his attempt to do it. It's just like stuff like that, really small things. And you wonder, maybe they, they have nothing to do with George Lucas? They're more so the um, <laughs> like effects teams or something? I don't know. Maybe. But uh, yeah, I like I like the little stuff like that, little touches. Um, I do, too. There, there's a lot of little good stuff. There's a lot of good stuff in here. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the good stuff is just details. Um, but it, yeah. you know, it's 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 good to see it. It's good to see it. Yeah. And so they are at the invisible hand, and um, Obi Wan's like the shields are still up. And so I guess we're talking about the shields that stop the the vacuum of space sucking out literally all the fucking people and ships inside of the hangar bay, which yeah. also act as shields of like people can fucking crash into them. Which is why I got so upset when I first saw TLJ where Kylo just fired a whole bunch of missiles through that thing on the ship and it blew up the entire hangar. It's like, there's no fucking way that that's how that works because everybody would be doing that if that's how, that's how it worked. Yeah, the as annoying as it is to kind of see this, it sort of makes some level of sense. You have to destroy the shield and then you can go inside or it's a one-way shield. So it... It's ridiculously easy how they can just get in, but at least there is an obstacle uh, obstacle to overcome. Even though it's it's hardly it hardly qualifies as an obstacle. They just shoot it a couple times. Yeah, because that's the thing. It is better in Revenge of the Sith, but it's still not fucking. To be fair, I, I would yeah. almost call this like it doesn't make any sense. Really, it's like you've got the shields, but if you shoot the thing to the right of them a couple times, the shield are down. It's like damn, people should be doing that then, right? Yeah, you, you don't want to have the the 
the switch for your shields be on the outside that two small fighter ships can just blast some lasers at and boom, now you and are I'm, shieldless. I think this is more, I, I would happily say this is more of a Star Wars problem in terms of like, there's a couple of weaknesses for big ships that you could, like the even the Star Destroyers classically, they have those... Massive little... external bridges that are very obvious on the top <laughs> yeah. of the ship. You that, destroy yeah, them and all the like shields that. are down. It's like, that seems strange. That's um, <laughs> You want to have those on the inside of your ship. Yeah. You don't want to have them, you know? But, um, so yeah, we, we, we get into that hangar, kill a bunch of droids, which... They're useless, they always have been, battle droids. Uh, but at droids least... Are shit. They shoot at the Jedi, and the Jedi deflect with the lightsabers instead of them just missing every shot, you know? At least, yeah, we get some level of some level of competence from these stupid robots. Mm -hmm. Minuscule as it may be. Lip service to the idea that they might actually do something <laughs> at some point. Yeah. A battle some droid PC could matter. Shot. Yeah, in the battles, the clones hit the robots, and the robots hit the clones, and you're like, oh, they're shooting at each other. Wow, look at that. And then uh, R2-D2 is like, bro, I'll, I'll sort out them elevator controls. You go get Palpatism. And they introduce General Grievous. Bum, oh bum, my goodness. Bum, 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 it's General bum, Grievous. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. Who is just this man-machine hybrid that, that that alone isn't even the interesting part, I think. Like, the, the way he looks is so fucking cool. It's the design oh, yeah. in general. Definitely, yeah, definitely an iconic look. For Grievous him. is really cool. And I it don't know neat. why, but we are three for three. Darth Maul, Count Dooku, General Grievous are all... They all have a cool factor that's really up there. Absolutely. Yeah. I hope they're not squandered or underused in any way. <laughs> well, oh, wait. I, don't, I think no. all of them are. But... I think that's funny, though, because, like, comparatively, it's like, what are villains are we looking at for the sequels? Like, well, Kylo, Snoke, and Palpatine. Asma. Oh, fuck, I forgot about her. <laughs> I know, <laughs> you, I, I figured, well, I, because she came to my mind first, but I was thinking, I don't even think Maul is going to say it, because everyone just forgets that Phasma existed, and they made such a big deal out of she Phasma, was too. Up and it was a big deal, and then she just died. And I remember we, when I watched twice, it, by I the was way. just like, no, you're not dead. Like, you're <laughs> Correct, she's not dead. Him. She has to die again. We're like waiting for her to do the thing that makes it worthwhile that she existed. That's what we were all surprised at, I'd imagine. It's like, wait a minute, you haven't yeah. done anything. Um, Darth Maul, you know, as much as well, all three of them, right? You could call them wasted potential, but at least all three of them had a significant impact on the plot line of. of and all three of them prequels. had cool little bits that they got to do. Have good lines, interactions with their yeah. heroes that make it seem like there's some history, and the, and yeah. their ideas as characters are pretty fucking cool. Like um, Darth Maul is just this like obsessively hateful person Evil that fucking despises yeah. the Sith. Yeah, we'll do any uh, sorry the Jedi and we'll do anything to um wipe him out. Count Dooku is an ex Jedi who has fallen out of favor in terms of believing in the Republic, but also finds the power that comes with the Sith to be tempting as fuck. Yeah, he's he's got he's a political idealist. He has, you know, he has he has, seems to have clear motivations that exist outside of the whole Sith Jedi thing. Yeah. Um and then we have Grievous, a a lightsaber user who cannot use the Force. Who was trained by know. Count Dooku. A, like a super that's, that's really nimble cool. agile cyborg who uses yeah. multiple well, He's like a Jedi hunter too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and man, you know, if you had asked me like a few years ago, hey, if of any like Star Wars anthology movie, what would you want? It'd probably be Grievous. But now Grievous I don't. A Star Wars story. <laughs> I don't want that anymore. Well, yeah, I'm I, worried. <laughs> yeah, I don't want them to touch these uh, these characters as Just as much him. as I would yeah, love to really me. see Dooku be explored. Yeah. Um, I just to stay far away from anything because you're going to ruin it. Anything you touch turns rotten. I'd rather have a little of it that's all right than more yeah. of it that's terrible. 
Well, I mean, that's that's a it's a good problem to have that there was too little, you know. Like, yeah, that's, yeah. That's I'm not saying too much. Yeah, we're not going. Oh, if only we had more Kylo Ren. If only we had more Phasma. <laughs> we're like, oh, fucking fuck enough care. of Kylo Ren. God yeah. damn it! I'm so <laughs> done with that character. I'm so tired of people saying like he's the most interesting Star Wars character. It's like, no, you just don't understand him at all. He just changes his mind. <laughs> like, if you had a if you had a Rubik's cube. That the colors were constantly changing on. Yeah, oh, I guess that's all. interesting. But um, <laughs> what am I supposed <laughs> to do with this? Ugh. I still love that you track him through the sequels. It's like Darth Vader helped convince him to become evil. You're like, oh, does that make? You know, what's what's that about? It's like, no, 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 we don't really care about that in TLJ. No, it we doesn't just come don't up at all. Then the third one is like, no, we do care about it, but it was Palpatine the whole time. And you're like, oh, for fuck's sake. <sighs> <laughs> anyway, we um they 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 they're having elevator shenanigans. Um there's pieces here that are a little bit like hmm where they walk backwards into an elevator as they're being shot by destroyers or droidikas. Um why don't the battle droids shoot them? If they're being shot by the others. Because I think one yeah, could are argue we talking about the they talking about the the elevator? Yeah, so one could argue that they're looking to capture the Jedi, therefore not shoot them. But I mean, they've been shot at many times by many droids already. Yeah, you don't get the idea that there's any sort of good thing that they didn't die, you know, for this plan to work. Yeah, and yeah, I think if you want to argue, oh, well, they were going to shoot at them because they knew the Jedi could handle themselves. And it's like, well, then why are they not shooting at them sometimes? It's like, I feel like if we're going to, how far are we going to spread this good faith train? You know, it's just like, whatever they shoot at yeah. them, they knew they'd survive. Whatever they don't, it's because they didn't want to kill them. <laughs> like, okay. Um, but, yeah, sure, like, a lot of the battle droids, like, have clear shots and then don't take them, and then the ones that don't have clear shots... In terms of like definitely killing them, because uh, this is the, they they literally get right to Palpatine, um, and it feels like things could have gone wrong at any point. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, a little little shaky, you know. Um, and yeah, the the shenanigans are like R two, you you sending us the wrong direction, bro. And uh, and when trying to fix it up, for some reason. Ewan McGregor's voice is fucking loud as hell on that little transceiver, and uh, it attracts super battle droids. Oh, why? Dear. Why do you need to give him a physical yeah object for him to hold to communicate? <laughs> You'd think it would be built when he's in. a robot. You just yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, he did it with he did he has that headset in his plane. Like keep that with you. That's your communication with R two and who knows who else. Um, I, I and I guess the only reason that exists is so that R two gets to maybe it's an attempt to be consistent because it's how it worked in uh, the OT as well. Remember when they were talking to C three PO and R two D two? They had the little uh, device to talk to them instead of it being direct. Well, I mean, for but did C three PO need a thing to hold, or did they just receive it? Yeah, he uh, he was holding a little like uh, device. Okay. So it might just I guess be an while, attempt to remain consistent. Maybe. Um, I feel like an R two unit wouldn't have to physically carry that around, no, especially I agree. if it's. Yeah, uh, I, I guess that that could be the case here, though. I don't. Yeah, but I think that's probably the reason. Even though I don't think it makes sense. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You could maybe argue it's like, well, they want him to be caught by the super battle droids, and that's going to be the justification. But I mean that. Consequentially, just leads to "quote unquote" a fun moment, not like a yeah. Big that's plot what I was thing. gonna say. Here was it doesn't really like I. It's a it is a nitpick, I suppose, because it doesn't really amount to anything happening. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's a very a very dumb sequence of R two lighting robots on fire, and you're like, what What is this? <laughs> what are we doing? What, is, what's the purpose of this? Is as this we watch this, it's like, do you know the kind of Fucking level of fire you need to melt metal. Like <laughs> I've watched a lot of battle bots. And you don't see many with flamethrowers, because that shit sucks against robots. Unless you the robot keep... is covered in cuddly foam or whatever, and then it's really funny. Because it just sets them on fire and they're like, Lol. Yeah, and then and then after all the foam's gone, they just carry on like yep. normal. <laughs> they look like so monster visions because all of this bid off. It's just like ah. 
Yeah, like oh, they dipped you in the black goo from mm. oh, from yeah. what's that, Little Nemo? Um, yeah. Then we, then we get into the room with palpitism, and there is a line that people are quite critical of, and um, I wonder if it's. I would try to be fair to Revenge of the Sith dialogue, because there's a lot of bad shit in here, but there's also stuff that I wonder is it getting thrown in just because... So, for example, Palpatine's like, oh, you guys better fucking run. Uh, Count Dooku's a Sith Lord, and then Ewan McGregor goes, Chancellor Palpatine, Sith Lords are our speciality. And people are like, yeah. are they? We've already seen you get beaten by the... Uh, it, with Count Dooku, at least. Specifically by <laughs> Count Dooku. Specifically by him, yeah. But, so so on one hand, it's like, well, what a stupid line. But on another hand, maybe that's the point, that since then, they have become quite good at dismantling. Well, well Anakin also... has doubles his power, doubled his power since last thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, so I think that's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> My powers have doubled. What, how That's does one terrible. quantify whether your powers double? What is? I think he. <laughs> I think it's just what? makes it worse. I think he just is oh. saying that like I'm. I'm oh. twice as strong, or he. I think he's just trying to say I'm a lot stronger since last. I'm week better met. now. And okay. So, yeah, he's like I'm a lot better. I'm twice I'm as good as I that. used well, to be. He should have. He should have said I'm twice the Jedi I was, or something. Well, but see, that's better dialogue. We don't do that here. Okay. Well, Stop yeah, it. but yeah. Um, <laughs> because my powers have doubled, it feels awkward as hell. Um, but you know, like in, in intensity like, or duration, like D &D or it feels regarding... like you're playing a fucking RPG or something. You know? <laughs> yeah, like yeah, you uh, level, level up. I was a level fifteen mage. Now I'm level thirty. My powers have doubled <laughs> since last we met. I upgraded my ability, and now it is double the duration and I intensity. Put, so yeah. I've, I've put more skill points into like power. <laughs> into a, yeah, it's a power. Yes, it's power. It's yeah, power. to um, berserker stats, we're doing it. To counter myself, though, uh, in regards to the whole, maybe they've gotten better, and that's the point of that line in terms of Sith Lords. It's like, what are the Sith Lords even are they? It's Count Dooku. I think that's what I was going to offer. Is that it's a kind of poking remark because it's entirely possible Obi Wan and Anakin are the only ones who have actually really encountered Sith Lords much. And that they would be considered yeah. the ones to do it out of every Jedi, maybe. Yeah, like no other yeah. Jedi, really, because what, like you said, what Except other Yoda. Are there? Well, yeah, that's the thing. Yoda beat Count Dooku, kinda. I think he did, right? Kind you of. could call it that because Count Dooku kind of runs away. Did, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's this. You know, it's a strange line from Obi Wan, but I think if you're trying to be nice to the film, it's just him trying to come across as confident and that they have had experience and that all right, we got this sort of thing. As opposed to, you're literally lying. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Um, and yeah, as, as much as he says, my powers have doubled, which is pretty cringe. <laughs> Twice the pride, double the fall feels fine to me. Uh, uh, this is, this is a response. Yeah, I guess we just got there it's better. A, yeah, yeah I guess that's that, okay. That's a I common like that. thing in this film. I wish we got there better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know? But you did do something. That was kind of something. Um, to throw in a subjectivism, I fucking love seeing Christopher Lee doing anything, so it's always nice to just see him show up. And, and Unless it's a, a CGI version of him flipping off a balcony. That well, I was about to say, yeah, he should have walked down the stairs. He that's have just awkward, that. yeah. They should have just had a staircase that goes from the entrance down, that's it. And then you He could have talked while he was doing that, and you could have had the actor that you paid for acting. Yeah. Instead we've got and bad it, video game boss energy. It's just you he is very calm and collected. He's not trying to show off his acrobatics. Mm -hmm. He's still an old man. So he he calmly walks down the stairs. He's in charge of the situation. He's not panicking or rushing into anything. He has these two where he wants them. Uh he's going to take care of business and that's that. Um their initial sort of back and forth with the 2v1. I think as choreography goes, it's like Okay, there's a couple of moments where you're like, wait, why aren't you attacking him? You have the best chance right now. And then it's, they just don't, and you're like, eh. And you have to sort of brush it off as being like, well, maybe they didn't want to take that strike just in case. They want to be more defensive. I don't know. The problem for me more so comes in when he just like randomly uses the force to just fuck Obi-Wan up twice. And the problem for me is less it's, it reminds me of the it's like a hyperspace kamikaze in small in a small way because it's just like i feel like there's an unwritten rule that we're just not allowed to use the force with jedi having fights or at the very yeah, least it should it should constantly be happening yeah because i don't see, yeah i don't see how this isn't just 
the you're more focused on using the force than your lightsaber. I don't, you know, I feel like that's how it would run. Yeah, that guy's that guy's got this little stick that it will just like kill me if it touches me. I'm not getting anywhere near him. I'm using my telekinetic powers. Exactly to the point where you might just use that to push the lightsaber right into him from a distance. Why not? Uh, and I think that these films could do a better job of explaining why we end up fighting like this instead. Um, but yeah, Obi-Wan is, like, in the way of what this payoff is going to be in this scene, so Count Dooku just has to get rid of him. And to a degree, maybe you could argue that was actually something he was told to do. Like, get get Obi-Wan out of the picture because you and Anakin need to have a proper right. fight. I don't know what Palpatine would have told Dooku. Like, maybe he told him you need to kill Anakin and this is the ultimate test sort of thing to see which one of them is going to be the one that Palpatine focuses on. Um, regardless... I, I assume that... I assume that Dooku just thought he was supposed to kill him, yeah. Uh, well, that's, I'm trying to say, like, why didn't, why is it that Obi-Wan is, like, it's so fucking weird when he drops the platform on Obi-Wan, by the way. Yeah, that, yeah. like, slides and traps his legs it, or something. It looks like Obi-Wan as a PNG is moved to the right uh, as the thing falls on him, and you're supposed to sort of just accept, like, yeah, it's it's pinning him, it's not doing any damage, though. When it's like, just have why, him be knocked out. I was gonna say, why do it at all? He's he just knock him into the wall, and he's knocked out. Easy. That's it. This weird thing where it falls on him and stuff, but uh, yeah. Um, then Anakin and 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 Dooku have their their big old battle. Uh, you have hate, you have anger, but you don't use them. The kind of lines where I'm like, there's something strong there. Maybe we need to tweak it a bit more because like it's just. George Lucas just does not know how to be more subtle with any of these lines. He is not a subtle man. And in in terms of what's actually being said, like, does he or, or doesn't he? Because, you know, I remember that tribe of uh, sand people that he killed. True. Maybe, maybe the comment is just more so you only selectively use it, but that wouldn't have sounded as good to George. <laughs> Yeah. You have hate, you have anger, but you only use them every once in a while. <laughs> you, do not, you do not apply these emotions consistently across a variety of circumstances. Um, and yeah, so, so some of this worth mentioning, uh, Palpatine throughout this scene is like fucking cheerleading it. He's like, yeah, yeah. get him! Ooh, yeah! <laughs> Look at you, and he oh. even looks like when Obi-Wan gets thrown, there's no reason for him to give off an expression that anyone's looking at him, but he really does look concerned when Obi-Wan is knocked out. It's like, oh damn, he's part of my plan, maybe. Maybe. Um, maybe he does just have a vague, like, ooh, sucks that you just had that happen to you. But, yeah, uh, damn, I wouldn't want to have my legs pinned under that thing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and the classic do it comes up. Yeah. Um, the which... first wait, no, not the first meme. There were more memes before that. One oh, of yeah. many memes. And I think the intention with that line was to honestly give the sense to the audience, like, ah, oh, he's see Palpatine's real coming out now, mask off. Is that, but I think everyone's just like, hey, do it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just silly. He said, do it. <laughs> and uh, you can't help but appreciate the uh, the looks Christopher Lee gives because I think at this moment we're supposed to like. There's going to be a lot going through his head. First of all, being, what the fuck? You're telling him to kill me? I'm your friend. <laughs> like, why? Yeah. Do... But um, clearly, Dooku decides that he's not going to reveal that. Um, so, what do you think? Uh, what do you think's going on there, character wise? Uh, uh, um, we haven't. I don't know about Dooku in this, enough about in in this circumstance, sort of. Oh, I I don't know why would he give up on just sort of living? Is there not a, a this army that you're you know this war that you're invested in? You actually want to see the Republic fall? Don't you want to see all this stuff happen? And you're just going to be oh well, I guess I'm dead then. It's like you're saying that in the well, sense of he, if he tells, he's got no hands, but well that that's oh, solvable with with prosthetics in this universe. Oh. Um. But, Rags, you saying that in the sense that he should have said, like, hey, Palpatine's the Emperor, Palpatine's the Emperor, don't kill me, I can tell you more, that, Or are you suggesting um, something else? I mean, I... What if his devotion to, like, the whole Sith stuff is... 
significant enough that he he's he's confused more so than outright ready to he does seem a little bit confused and um yeah. definitely gives off the impression with his face like i don't i don't want to die but at the same time maybe just trying to avoid bleeding saying anything yeah um this is i think you're right we don't know enough about dooku to be able to make any claims here uh and that sucks it really does because yeah cause you've got I everything you need that. to cool. make a great character there Yep. Yeah, like, does he? I, did we, I guess we just get nothing, and we're left in this situation. We're like, I guess we don't know. This awesome, cool actor slash villain that we just—he's gone now. I'm like, oh, okay, well, hmm. Yeah, uh, and it's obviously to make the audience go, "Ooh, he chopped his head off. That's evil." And he's he's holding one blue saber and one red saber. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> The duality of man. <laughs> it's a scary thing. Um, you know, would the Jedi necessarily even be against killing a Sith Lord if we look at the OT? Well, Obi-Wan Obi 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 wasn't. Look at this movie. Yeah, yeah Obi, -Obi, Obi Wan like... celebrates the fact that he killed Dooku. I think it's more so the nature of the kill rather than killing in general. Yeah, it's not like they just fought each other He's and. He's captured. He's incapacitated. Yeah, you got him. Yeah. You've 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 now murdered him. You've executed mm. him. Yeah, as Which... opposed to killing him in the heat of battle, like what happened with uh with with Maul. Yeah, uh, this is a bit more complex in terms of what the right decision is. Um, wasn't it Cosmodor that was like, "This is obviously the correct thing to do." Uh yeah, and that was baffling. <laughs> <laughs> just like, the guy is on his knees. He's handless. Like I, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> because lefty movie internet reviewers don't have a moral compass. I, mean, I, I I would love to know what his logic is like fundamentally, but I know he doesn't have. I don't think he's ever thought about all this stuff fundamentally. <laughs> you say he doesn't have a sense of logic. <laughs> I mean, well, it's cosmos <laughs> or morality or really um, anything. I just uh, I think it's interesting and, and it's obviously just designed to make us go, ah, it's going further to the dark side. Oh, my gorb. Um, so yeah, you know, and, and at this point with how much we've described, it's like, so how are we doing? It's like, it's, it's okay. Like, it's... Mm. It it's, is, it's a little it lower is, than we're okay. Off, <laughs> like, yeah, we're, we're off to a pretty darn shaky start, but there are some really cool visuals. Um, so the ship's just getting I, fucking blown apart to the point where they tr they have to get into the elevator shaft sideways. Um, again, I just don't understand why the Invisible Hand isn't getting the fuck out of here. Uh, but it just it's just getting blasted to pieces. Um, and there's this like sort of funny thing where they, they get turned completely on their side. And it's only after like a minute of doing all of that that they go, the emergency booster engines, go. It's like, why, why wouldn't those have been engaged the second the ship starts to, like, list in any way? But it's all done by droids, too. But you have to tell the droids to do it. It's, it's like, the only way you're going to be able to rescue everybody on board. And I'm not even sure. It's, like, just darting straight down into the planet at a pretty strong speed. And then, like, they start up the engines and it's, like, almost stopped immediately. And I was like, oh, wow. Those engines must be pretty fucking powerful. They, they are built for purpose. I will say that. They... they... They do what they do. Yeah, we are in sci-fi land, so it's just like, all right. But uh, it just feels weird that Grievous has to tell them to do that. That's all. Yeah. Uh, you so. shouldn't have to tell anyone to do this. That should be someone's job. Oh, shit. I get to press the button. Yes. Like, he should be. Oh, man, I'm so glad I get to press the button. That's my job is to press the emergency booster button in case something horrific happens. And I got to do it. And Earning then that paycheck. they start falling down the elevator shaft to the point where, honestly, like, We've seen what happens when Palpatine falls down a shaft, right? I'm not saying he permanently dies, but he gets in some trouble. So there's kind of an aspect here of just like, is he like lucking out here? Is Especially like hold, grabbing onto like a leg at the last moment and like, oh man. Well, yeah, I just meant like that scenario in general, but when we move forward, it gets a little bit fucking crazy. Like Obi-Wan and Atticus <laughs> both in sync throw grappling hooks that match let, let's be honest here incredibly unlikely to, to get them through a door that was just open I don't even remember 
Like, uh, yeah, they do this. They do this weird Van Helsing style rope <laughs> through a random <laughs> opening, it and they can that just, era. It, it's just this weird swashbuckly. I don't believe that you just did that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, because um, definitely not planned. This was definitely not planned. No. It's yeah, and and um. It's kind of if you look at what it happens when they drop, Palpatine is not holding their legs at all. He's like a good meter away, but then when they jump in, he is again. It's just like I get you, uh, right. Part of the plan. Part of the plan. It's all part of the plan. Um, yeah, and they all narrowly survive. It's a ridiculous moment where they all probably should have died. Uh, other than, if only they used the Force more. There's the because there's ways to make that make more sense with the Force. I think. Yeah, uh, Palpatine is about to fall off something, but they pull him towards him or something like that. Um, maybe you have a scene where Palpatine is like in a, in a moment of peril during their escape. He almost uses his own force powers because he feels like he's actually going to die. Yeah. But the other two save him just in time. That would be cool. Um, yeah, maybe Anakin even notices it, but doesn't think anything of it. They end up. Yeah, oh, fuck the ray shields the most bizarre moment for me in, in a lot of well, Star Wars well yeah cause they just get caught for some reason it's it's <laughs> like, one of the uh, most like the writer's off. hand is so fucking clear it reaches out into yeah. the characters to grab them and put them somewhere else it's like I don't know it how to like, get them there yeah very bizarre it's greatest. one of those yeah it's just we just need them to be captured they're captured now alright moving on and the weirdest yeah, part for me is that it's lampshaded we're smarter than this it's like what? Well, cl yeah, <laughs> cool, thanks, but you're still captured. <laughs> like, I don't even, yeah, okay. it's, it's weird as fuck, uh, and it's just an excuse to get them into uh, the bridge with Grievous, and um, when they're there, there's, there's a bit of banters. Um, I, again, I'm starting to think, like, should I just kind of skip past it, go for the main bits, I guess? Uh, well, yeah, so then probably. they have a fight. They have a well, fight with these crazy battle like droids that have the electric. Well, I think it's significant to mention. He captures their lightsabers, <coughs> and then their their hands are tied, right? And it's like, so you guys are fucked. But then they're like, R2. And he goes, blah, 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 blah. That doesn't really do anything, uh, R2 doing it's that. It's just a distraction. If, well, if you he look at the droids, out for a moment. they're kind of just like, huh? Hmm. What's, that? What's wrong with your and robot? Them yeah, grabbing the lightsabers and releasing it? themselves was something they could have just done anyway. I, I, done the whole time. <laughs> yeah, because the droids are so crap. Everyone here is so crap. Like, they just, it's, it's such a fucking <laughs> weird moment. And I was wondering, because I think I asked you, Rags, at one point, because after we watched it, I was like, was the plan here to kill them or not? Was Grievous in on the plan? Yeah. Was he just, was he just like, we got, I gotta wait until they Grievous escape, because okay, I don't know what else yeah. I can do, because Palpatine said I can't kill him. Like, it's such a weird moment, because if they'd just been executed, that's it. Or was, or yeah. was the plan that Palpatine didn't tell people, just believing that the two of them could handle it? it. Yeah. Maybe compartmentalized. You can hope Grievous, Grievous is going to do a important. fucking speech, I guess. <laughs> like, where he's I, just I like, Whoa. Guess, Unless he just decides, nah, I'm going to kill you now. And the fact that they can just pull the lightsabers out of his little thing is just like, <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, well. <laughs> you, uh, you, you know what Jedi, you know Jedi are telekinetic. Put you their know they can do this. Put their behind back, I guess, you know. <laughs> like, it's just so, like, they don't have to turn around to do it. And then there's... There's this funny shit where, like, Grievous is like, fucking get him, get him, get him, get him, uh, and obviously they're just tearing everything apart, the Jedi, because, like, the droids, they like, as, as Yeah, these even... are the blue-colored droids, they're just here to push the buttons on the, they just, they're just, <laughs> they're not prepared to deal with this right now. They do not know how to operate I the crisis scenario. I am just here to press scenario. buttons, god. And yeah, I'm, I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but I just love that comparison then of once all the droids are wiped out, Grievous is like, don't bother with them, focus on the ship. It's like, bro, <laughs> everyone's dead. And even if they're not, <laughs> they are still here. They can hear you. Like, they're right next to you. What are you even talking about? I don't know. The desperation. That would be an interesting thing where the ship is actually crashing and the droids manning the consoles are the only thing keeping the ship from actually crashing so mm -hmm. our heroes can't destroy those droids. They just awkwardly have to sit there in the same room together. Yeah. Um, or, if Grievous, or, or if Grievous is about to jump out the window and he tells the droids, crash the ship. Um, so Grievous smashing that window open. Uh, seems strange. That's horseshit. Uh, you'd think no, they'd be a lot yeah, stronger than that. 
They Unless those be. fucking magna droid like things are just oof, super powerful. And I know someone will be like, well, they can block lightsabers. And it's like, well, I do, yes, but like, what even are they? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It looks like either. sticks with they're electricity. Game yeah. We need to come. It's just like the um. It's it's like a a a, a better version of the shocky stick trooper from The Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. Because at least you could say like, oh yeah, you would have a droid who's programmed to fight a uh, Jedi, even if they're not like great at it. At least it give them, you know, distract them, make mm -hmm. them, you know, force them to be, you know, take up their attention. You know that that will that'll work. You could build a bunch of these, you know, kind of robots. But man, they're the the step up in quality is uh, extreme. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yeah, because super battle droids yeah. are like fine, but then magna droids are like, whoa, you guys are fucking whoa. top notch. Um. So yeah, he uh, Grievous breaks out, gets into escape pod, runs away, and they're like, oh boy, now what? Um, because the ship splits in half. Yeah, boy. That's really randomly. unfortunate. <laughs> that is really unfortunate. It's weird that the ship would just break in half, Titanic style. Um, yeah, I guess we're just supposed to assume that that's the kind of damage it's sustained, but it just sort of happens, you're like, oh, bye, I guess. Oh, yeah, it's just this, it's just in half now, I'm like, okay. Damage to that degree starts to make one wonder if Palpatine really thought this through. <laughs> yeah, and why would, <laughs> surely the mission, like, the that ship wouldn't get attacked like that if, if yeah, the plan like was we're sending two Jedi in, because that's the ship that has the Chancellor, and we have a rescue mission going on. You can't inflict devastating damage mm. to that ship. Yeah, it'd be like so, if, like, if the movie really Air Force point, yeah. One, a fighter jet just blew up Air Force One. It's like, no, I lost course. Well, they, I guess <laughs> they see <laughs> half is... the ship plummeting, and they're like, were there Jedi in there? It's like, <laughs> no. Uh, Why would Jedi be there? It's I not like we set them there. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no. Logistics was not, not doing its job today. I guess I didn't try and show it getting caught in a crossfire or something to that effect. Like, it just gets winged in the chaos. And I mean, yeah, have, have a ship. Have another yeah, ship hit it. Oh, another ship gets destroyed yeah, that would be or better. blown apart, and then another ship, Starship Trooper style, just sort of crashes into the other ship. And there, that's your get out of jail free card for your heroes are captured. Another ship randomly and against the plan hits yours, rumbles the ship, gas sprays out of the wall. Um, it rumbles everything, all the droids topple over, it catches everyone off guard, and Anakin and Obi-Wan, they take that distraction and they make their escape. Yeah, that, yeah. And that, would, but, but you see, like, at least there's something here that can be fixed. Yeah. Yes, we can fix this, we can have this discussion would, We can fix of, it, we can, we, we can repair it, we have the technology, right? We do. We're looking Think of the, uh, very suspiciously at uh, Palpatine, because... You know, you'd have to think that this is going to be a clusterfuck when it's a sneak attack on, you know, the capital city, uh, planet yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah absolutely. True. There, it was absolute clusterfuck. Every ship for themselves. Just shoot at anything that isn't us right now. So you want to be in that, Palpatine? Uh. Nope. It's funny to uh, compare, by the way, because like the final fight in Rise of Skywalker is like, well, we we can fix that, right? It's like, no. <laughs> No, it's not. Just, we get rid of the not. whole thing because that's it's all garbage. Extensive, extensive rewrites from the ground up. There's no, yeah, because that's the thing. If you could change the dialogue of the sequels, would they become better? It's like I don't know. I mean, they. I guess they <laughs> I would. Guess so. I mean, I guess they would, but. <laughs> so they crash land. They make it, um, and you get the another happy landing meme. Excellent. Uh, Incredible line. Just one of the best. That's so Obi-Wan. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, we get into the portion of the film, I guess. That's just going to be. That's our opening action scene to get us into it. And now it's like time to set up how everything's going to fall apart. And, um, yeah. and yeah, they do the thing of like, you've saved, they've saved you 10 times. He's like, nine times. That shit with blah, 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 blah. And again, sort of like, see, they've got a big history. And you're like, they yeah, do have history. They yeah. have done things it's off a good screen try, together. I, guess. I I wondered to me, it's like, well, what else can they do at this point? And it's like, yeah, I guess so. What else can you do? Yeah, I, mean, I don't. Yeah, I don't blame them. Yeah. It's just that it's almost like it's just too late. You've you had two movies, and 
You spent it doing other things. Can't just create a dynamic where there wasn't one and like imply that it was there all along because it wasn't. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's just I guess like I don't want to try not to be too mean, but it's just like so blatant what you're doing, Georgie boy. That's fine though. Like <laughs> we'll just keep going, uh, which happens it would be straight worse after. If you didn't do it. Yeah, 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 I think so. I would prefer overt consistent than subtle inconsistent. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, because um, we get it right again. Like the Palpatine arrives, this entourage of aliens, I guess, and, and the, basically his conversation with Mace Windu is, "We're hoping the war will end soon. It won't while Grievous is alive." Yeah, okay, we'll try and find him. And if you don't, oh, I get him. my powers still. You're like, all right, like like you don't even need the dialogue. It's basically the Jedi and Palpatine ain't in a good place right now. They don't like each other. Uh, and Grievous represents the end of the war if we kill him. It's like, okay. Done and done. Clear objectives. Yeah, it's very, very straightforward. There's nothing for you to really go, like, wait, what does that mean? It's like, no, no. Um, and then Padme, in the middle of, like, the public arena filled with all kinds of people, is like, hey, person I'm not allowed to secretly love, kisses. Yeah. Very strange. Just... <laughs> yeah. Like, all these very important people are very close by. If you sneeze, they'll yeah. all get around. Sneeze. There absolutely is a security camera here. All of the I senators, can... the chancellors here. Fucking Jaja Jar Binks also, forum. Isn't it, like, <laughs> in a couple miles away, isn't there, like, an insane space battle? No, that's over. Right? It's done. Okay. It's done. All right. <laughs> that's good. I, I, hope, that is... I hope our side won. That is a really weird part of this film. It's 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 like they made it out. It's fine. And you're like, well, I guess the intro I hope said. I won. The intro <laughs> said the battle droids were fleeing, so I guess we're just supposed to assume we won. Yeah. That is I a long process. I find that process. very amusing as a sentence. Honestly, I hope we won. It's like, yeah, kind of, because I don't know if we well, did. I think somebody who would find us frustrated is super probably be like, obviously they won. The rest of the film, like, loads of it takes place on Coruscant. You're like, no, I know. It's just like, why no, not show that? Yeah, like they just Did escaped they a battle away? that seemed to be in full fleet? swing. And not, what happened? Not even, you know, like a line where it's like, you know, uh, how a system, blah, 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 on the ship when it crashes and like a clone trooper is just like, you know, most fires being put out, you seem stable, and uh, the droid ships are fleeing, you know, we have won. Some, something like that. But, but no, yeah. it's just yeah. sort of like, all right. Well, that's the question I have is what happened to the fleet? <laughs> like there, both fleets. <laughs> And, and what happened to the debris this, that's obviously falling to cars? It's like, I guess they took yes, care of it. we are clearly within its orbit. We are within its gravitational pull. That's the big thing about storytelling, of course, like trying to figure out what you need to give to the audience and what can be inferred. And it's just, that feels like one of those things where it's like, man, I, I would have liked to have seen something to do with that. It felt like the whole opening was about it. And then it was just like, by the way, it ended fine. You're like, it did. Oh, I wonder okay. if you do want, because, you know, Jar Jar is bit is barely in this uh, film at all. Um, and that was probably because they saw the reaction. I wonder if they dialed back from actually exploring just the, the broader aspects of war politically, logistically, because of the reception that the other films got because of the politics. Because frankly, it, they yeah. should have leaned into it more because there is there is a lot of story there that's worth exploring about how this war is playing out, who are the sides, what are their resources, like... Cause, yeah, I because mean, the first you know, film went a bit un ham with that, right? Like, they got specific about treaties and uh, limits yeah, and, uh, and trade federation and level of, like, policies you know, we, for tax. It's like, man... Well, yeah, because we don't need to go that in-depth. We could just have the broad strokes. Who were the major players? What do they have in terms of uh, ships and, and manpower and, I guess, droid power and, and like... And wh where are these things happening? vaguely that, like i feel like that's all you need but do that and then that gives padme something to do because she is a senator you know have her involved in that aspect of it give her more to do it just i guess it just feels like they pulled back and went more abstract which it still feels like we have a pretty clear idea of like what the objectives are get grievous but even then you know feels like there's uh yeah, we, a lack in detail we were much more detailed on the more boring parts, uh, and then yes, we went abstract on the parts the, that the more interesting battle. Yeah, like which planets are siding with who, and what are the the sort of broad reasons for why, and then well, yeah, where do they sit in the we, map, and what does that mean for territory and stuff? Yeah, exactly. Because when we talk about salvaging the prequels, the main gist of it is the prequels are the Clone Wars. That's that's what it is. It starts when the Clone Wars starts and it ends when they end. 
and then we like really delve into it and use this backdrop of all of these these planets with competing interests, the individuals, you know, in on Coruscant, like their competing interests and the, the role of the Jedi within the Republic and the clashing that's happening there in terms of power. And we use all of that as our backdrop for the personal, interpersonal relationships uh, between the characters. That that feels like an easy way to, not easy because it still has plenty of work, but like a more apparent way to uh, fix these films and, and, and make them uh, stronger. Mm-hmm. But we we kind of we we don't we don't fully we don't we don't tap the potential. That's that's basically the key word for uh, for all of these films. Yeah, and the table's potential set for untapped. it. You know, like yeah, because the prequel era is a really cool era of the Star Wars universe. Yeah, it's really like interesting because the, the sequel is fucking nothing. Yeah, it the, is the nothing. era of the sequel sucks. It's like nobody well, cares. It feels like the era of the sequels is the population of the the galaxy is like ten thousand. You know, maybe twenty thousand people, and uh, the vast majority of them are just chilling out. Yeah, it's like just... they said uh, during the movie. I feel like in the sequel trilogy, if it's not. Like two places, it might as well not exist. Exactly. The only planets that exist are the planets that we go to. Whereas even whereas in the prequels, it feels like a big place. With yeah, a fe- lot it of feels like happening. I I want to live in the Clone Wars world, even with the war, but I just don't want to live in the sequel world. It's just so the sequel empty world feels and empty. Dark. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then, and the events are just fucking a rehash of like things in a much simpler way. Just. Empire's back, yeah. I guess. That well, yeah, place. it's very cut and dry, and that was the, that's the potential of the prequels is to present us something that's a little more complicated. Like the Jedi are good, but the institution of the Jedi is rigid and flawed, and maybe even a little bit power hungry themselves. Yeah, and this is um, to build the Empire from within the Republic. It's like that's a that's an idea. That is absolutely an idea. The way that somebody can amass power and manipulate things behind the scenes to keep wars going on and put more power in himself. Um, and I mean, it, yeah, it feels like you could have... Because Mace Windu is cool, but Mace Windu could have been a better character. Way um, better. And it's like, yeah, especially in terms of the... Because Mace Windu could have a really significant role in terms of the plot of, you know, Republic clashing with the Jedi. And then you have the stories of like Palpatine sowing distrust in the Jedi uh, throughout the course of the the wars, d- diminishing their numbers, making it easier for him to uh, take charge. You could even have it so that Mace Windu and Count Dooku are like reflections in that they both have serious issues with how politics is currently working on both yeah. sides, but they've sided with what they believe is the superior team ultimately. Yeah, like uh, Mace Windu is. Yeah, public r- politics bad Jedi, and uh, you know Sidious is like uh, politics bad Sith. Do you mean Dooku? I'll I'll run it. Uh, oh, Dooku. Yeah, yeah, Dooku. Sorry. Uh, or Dooku's Darth like, Tyrannus. Yeah, pol- <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> no, we got Dooku. That's good. That's fine. Politics bad uh, Sith, but, or, or or maybe not Sith, but like more independence, I guess. Yeah, and you could less of a centralized system. You know, you have them clash. Maybe once or twice before a final fight between them in in one of the films or something. You know, have it be that. Yeah. Isn't there a relationship between them of some sort? I can't remember. Like, I believe. I believe so, but I can't. Is I can't Dooku remember. is Yoda's student. Is yes. Windu's? Is Windu a student or a teacher? Of, I, I can't remember. Um, but we can definitely use that. It could be that Dooku I'm taught. Uh, Maybe we change it. Maybe Dooku did. Yeah, teach Mace Windu. Oh, so much potential. Yeah. We could do and hey, things look, that's, with this. W- yeah, I feel like that should be the key takeaway from the prequel. Is it's bad, but it could have been. It could have been great. It could have been, been great. really, really great. It Whereas, really could have been great. Could have outshone the OT. It, well, yeah, and and conversely with the sequels, it's like what could have been great is fundamentally different from like what is here. We we need to yeah. get rid of it and start over again. Yeah, if you did A in the sequels, you needed to have just flat out done B. Yeah. Um. Because we've talked about it plenty, right? The, I think the story that we would have liked is Leia's in charge and she's a little bit overzealous in pursuing, you know, former Empire loyalists and, and everything like that. Uh, Han is disillusioned with it and Luke is well, trying yeah, the, the best he can to reinstitute the Jedi as a... As you a, could argue a it's a reflection player. of the prequels in terms of now 
it's be like the Republic is becoming an empire, but not because someone's deliberately doing that, but because someone's going no, down the wrong path. Because they're trying to avoid it. They're, yeah. They're, in trying to avoid becoming the empire, they're becoming an empire. And then the whole series is basically just a statement on power. Oh, you uh, could have tied it up real it well. It comes from, yeah, it comes from within. and It comes without. from within, and the Jedi, the good Jedi, the Luke Skywalker super duper Jedi, he's on top of that shit. <laughs> he's got it figured out, because he conquered it himself. And he could show Leia the way, and they could work together to bring about no, peace across the universe. No, drink milk. You can't... <laughs> yep, and th there was never the a way we were gonna... Clip. I mean, nowadays there is never a way we're going to have Leia be anything other than just the best ever. No, yeah, they wouldn't want to. Dude, the, the like, unfortunate our plan has awesome her being... Character. Yeah, like, our plan has her as the most about. flawed out of all of them at that point. <laughs> but she would have been an awesome character in the end. Well, no, I think we have, to have her, we have to have her beating Luke Skywalker with a lightsaber in a flashback just to establish that she's just the best. And that, that's how we're flipping it almost, because she is kind of like the least flawed out of the three in the OT, and so now we make her the most uh, flawed. Ah, yes, she is, she is very reasonable. Very competent, level very intelligent. And very competent. Yeah. Very, very, and very caring. competent leader. Yeah, yes. she is a, she's great. She's a really great person. And so yeah, driving her somewhere, that, and because you'd flip it again, it's like Han Solo is probably the most scoundrel level out of all of them, and he could be like one of the most altruistic of the the sequels. Well, fundamentally, he's a good guy with a with a strong yeah, and he's would have come a long way. Wrong. Uh, Return of the Jedi has got enough in it that puts you on that path anyway, because he like chose to become yeah. a general in the in the army for the rebellion. Exactly. It's like damn. Yep. But enough about broken dreams. <laughs> Bro <laughs> broken <laughs> everything. <laughs> yeah, so just a, uh, Grievous arrives on Utah Power and he's like, Palpatine, what's next? And he's like, evil stuff. And he's like, all right. There's not much I have to say about this. Was over. And then, yeah. uh, and then Grievous is like, oh, okay, cool. Well, he's like, what about Cow Dooku dying? And then Palpatine's like, ah, but get a new apprentice. And it's, it's a little bit of like, Get it? Oh Get it? It's Anakin. You're like, yeah, yeah. It's like, I know. yep, yeah, I, yeah, I got it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and then we get one of the worst scenes for dialogue in this whole movie. Um, Anakin and Padme talking to each other, and George Lucas is like, "What do people do when they're in love and they want to express that? They just say, <laughs> I love you. No, I love you. So love has blinded oh, you. Shit. No, what? you're so beautiful that I only see beauty or some bullshit. Maybe this is why George Lucas's marriages don't work. I, hideous. I just can't listen to it sometimes. It's so bad. It's really bad. They don't sound like people. They just sound like, you know, just they're telling us what to think about these two. Like they're in love. You're like, yeah, I, I okay. Okay, yeah, all right. Something of a you keep awesome. saying that. <laughs> right. Um, you know you go you sorry, I didn't how, feel it No, no worries. Uh you notice how I don't know whose place it is the end. I think it's Padme's. Uh there's that yeah. giant window in the back of the place they always hang around in. I just find it funny to think about like anyone going by in any of those flying cars could just look left and you know, they're, they're exposed. Like, oh my god, is that Anakin and Padme? Oh my god! Oh my gosh, how late. scandalous! There must like be paparazzi in weird. this world, right? <laughs> There's no journalists, like clearly. Paparazzi, and they're all aliens. That's a that's a Rick and Morty joke right there. They have no camera, and you're like, so you can't take pictures. And then his eyes blink, and he's like, you know, it makes a flashing sound. <laughs> that's just the species, like, right? Okay. Yeah. He shoots out paper out of his mouth. It's just like, <laughs> God, it vomits. Yeah. Coming in all this phlegm. It takes. It's like, I'm gonna get paid today. <laughs> then someone's like, "Why do you just have a camera?" He's like, "This is cheaper. <laughs> like, this is cheap. This is this is me. I am the camera." I think you can summarize this scene as Anakin being like, "Pretty sure you're gonna die." It makes me sad. She's like, "It's chill, don't about it." Um, and, and right now. All we can imagine is it's childbirth. So, um, yeah, it's just, uh, we, we, we're setting the groundwork. He's very concerned about saving her. Mm. I wonder if we can use this as a motivation to do other things. Probably not. Probably not. Um, then you have a scene with Yoda. Yoda's like, yo, mm. you're heading to the dark side there, buddy, with your, your fear of losing Padme. I Which, really um, hate this scene. I hate it a lot. I, I think it's... It's the foundation for a lot of criticism of the Jedi's philosophy, and a lot of people have to try and explain more of it to make it sound better. 
because it is very, that's... very, very poorly worded, and it needs to be not poorly worded. No, this is a uh, this is a time for tact. <laughs> this is a time to be of all the times to be overt. When one character is trying to teach a very important lesson to another person, now is not the time for me to be lost in translation or riddles or analogy. Sometimes you really need to be explicit. Then you can elaborate on it afterwards. Yeah, uh, the impression you get is just... like I think the point of this scene is to, is to have George to tell us directly, like, you see, this whole thing with Padme is gonna is gonna make him become Darth Vader, okay? And you're like, all right. Okay, I don't know, sure. but like, it just doesn't feel right, right? It's like you're all human. We know you all right. experience emotions yeah. quite a bit, actually. Like, look at Obi Wan; he gets fucking angry all the time. Um, yeah, he quips, and he's very and he's very human. How sad he is at the thought of the Jedi being ex like exterminated later on in this film. It's just like, imagine someone was sitting in there with Yoda and Obi Wan; they're trying to change the magic, being like, guys. You know, fear of loss leads to the dark side, right? Maybe you should be chill. And it's just like, fuck <laughs> off. Like, the entire point is supposed to be mindfulness, right? Like, awareness I, I think and that's, I, acceptance yeah. of your emotions and whatnot. But instead, yes, what we get is I, Yoda telling Anakin, just don't care, Lamau. Yeah, inside of you, <laughs> there are two banthas. It, and, and we don't get any of this sort of lesson about wisdom or... You know, there's a time and place for this and that, or it's all about balance. God forbid that's a thing about the force, but well, we, you just don't yeah. learn anything. <laughs> well, that, that's kind of, I think I, I would agree. It's like they're meant to be trying to, because the Jedi are pretty obviously based on a lot of Eastern philosophies and yeah, mindfulness. But like the way that he said it is really easy to interpret that in destructive ways. <laughs> Like, Absolutely. Um, that there is a much better way of framing the point because I think the point, it, it, the good faith thing would be the point is like it's okay to the, the real point should be it's okay to experience these feelings, but don't allow these feelings to uh, lead to actions which are harmful to you and yeah, others. Yeah, you're yeah. You can't let your your fear of something drive you to make irrational decisions. Yeah. I, I uh, want to add to that though that like an, an organization like the Jedi with a philosophy like that they would considering that it is comprised in part of humans and you know people in general uh it, they would be an understanding that people are going to struggle with things like this so there would be yeah. advice that could be given as to how to deal with like being deeply concerned actual about the loss advice. Of one. like and there's not a lesson isn't just just attach yourself lol yeah yeah it's it and it's not a lesson that you can give to the audience either. I can't do anything with this. Mm. And it doesn't well, yeah, have because... to be for me, of course, because I don't exist in this world. But if you want to use this as a way to teach some kind of lesson or or expand upon some you know thematic element, I, as a moviegoer, I am not going to get anything useful out of this conversation when I really should be able to. Well, this yeah. is Yoda, after all. I think we I think uh, I learned from Yoda just an immediately better way would be there should just be a scene where like if you change the scene and actually have it pretty clear that like Anakin is having a bit of an emotional response in this moment and then Yoda just does the standard thing like breathe you know just slow down breathe like observe <laughs> the feeling just observe it notice that feeling and and because because that's like the common thing is it's not it's not about not having feelings a lot of the time it is about observing the feeling almost like a third party like, oh, notice how you have this emotion. Notice how it feels within you. Now, like, you notice it, but that doesn't mean you have to act in a certain way because of that feeling. That should be, like, the lesson he's trying to instill upon him. Like, it's okay to feel this way. Just don't, don't do anything crazy, all right? <laughs> like, chill out. Come, Yoda feels like an unhelpful pamphlet that I get at the dentist's <laughs> office. <laughs> where it's well, just... he. Like, these are the bullet points you just <laughs> tell people, but it's not really helping me and listening to me like I'm a person that he's talking to. Well, I don't yeah, you guys know about the... me I'm wrong. <laughs> there's yeah. an argument, I don't know how much you're going to see any value in it, that this is part of what's wrong with the Jedi, is that the, the way that they try and teach these ideas is a bit broken and it actually leads to some people going nuts. Uh, I, um, I am down yeah, with but Yoda, that, but it's Yoda so uncharitably, you know? It, yeah, it feels like Yoda's not the character you want to do that to. Like, is that Theo? 
it, it's very, very uncharitable to the Jedi and how it's put together. Uh, yeah, we don't want them to be incompetent. We want them to be flawed. Yeah, like maybe maybe they have gone a bit too far with, you know, this uh, emotionless or, you know, yeah, emotionally dead kind of thing or whatever. But as it stands, it's it's as if this isn't something that has even be con- been considered, that a person might struggle with these kinds of things and not be able to just not care at the drop of a hat. It's bizarre to me that they have a conversation a little bit later in this film where they're like, yeah, Anakin might not be the chosen one because he's kind of crazy. And it's just like, what? guys, <laughs> you might want to do something about that if you believe it. Like, uh, he's pretty fucking powerful. But he's rising them ranks. Um, and they're just very casually just being like, yeah, he's, 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 he's uh, a bit emotionally driven, a bit, bit of a nutcase. Also, he told me that he has dreams of Padme being murdered. It's like, well, well dying. They, they they sit on their ass a little bit too much, I think. They literally and figuratively. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, so he has that conversation, then he goes and speaks to Obi-Wan. Um, I can't quite remember what this conversation was about, this one specifically. Wait, wasn't that, f- was that first one about, uh, that was, oh, that was that about him becoming a Jedi and he just needs to be patient like a Jedi master? I think that was after the council scene. Hold on. More action. Is that bad? It'll make it easier for us to end this war. Uh, I think, oh, uh, because it ends with him saying, be careful with your new friend, Palpatine, or something like that. Right. And then he goes to talk to your boy Pal- Palpa, Palpy. And Palpy's like, I want you to represent me to- on the council. Yeah, so then he goes to the council and they're like, ah, nah, you're not well, Jedi Master yet, my boy. <laughs> and that's the thing, I, th- I, think, I, I think it's fair to say this is very deliberate by Palpatine. He's like, on one hand, yes. they accept, and there's still animosity because I forced him in there. Or two, they... They say no, and it makes Anakin and distrustful then, of the Jedi Council. Yeah, it's it's a really good gambit. It it pays off no matter what. It's it's not like a huge criticism I have. I'm just curious about this. I I just start to think, can Palpatine do that? <laughs> well, that's kind of what um, I'm getting at. If he can or can't, it works either way for him, right? Sure. Um, like, does he you have authority to appoint people to it's a separation of church and state kind of medieval issue separation of senate well, and jedi it seems yeah. that they have to accept it so maybe that's the ruling maybe that's part of the emergency powers and well yeah, yeah. and maybe it's as simple as you know you can you can try and if if both parties agree it can you know happen and i guess again that's just had they said no Palpatine would have been like, it's clear they don't trust you. And it's like, oof. So in them and then seeds. It's, then it's the scene where uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan are talking about him being a Jedi master and like he needs to be patient. And that, that council scene as well, is that when he's like, he suggested I go kill Grievous and then they're like, lol, no. No, no, that's later. Oh, okay. That's, uh... Because that's after, um, because that, that's after they they have their Darth Plagueis the Wise conversation. <laughs> 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 Memes be coming soon. Oh yeah, because Obi Wan is like, bro, we need you to spy on Thiggy. That's why we that's actually right. let you join. And he's like, wow. And that just sows further animosity. It it's does, like, yeah. Man, you You'd argue be. that backfires for the Jedi. I think Obi Wan. You I can would argue. Say that it does, yeah. Obi-Wan believes that, like, Anakin's more on their side than Palpatine's. Um, and that's misjudgment of his... yeah. Yeah, which would mean a lot more had they had a longer and more fulfilling yes. history. Yeah. Um, yeah, then they have their chat of, like, Anakin's pretty floompy, though. Yoda thinking face, just be like, hmm, floompy floompies, and... I think, doesn't Samuel Jackson say, like, I said it's a plot to destroy the Jedi? No, that's a little bit later, actually. But, uh... Mm-hmm. Man, just not quick enough on the draw. I think they argue as well that their ability to, like, clairvoyantly see into the future is fucked because Palpatine acts as, like, a fog of war or something by being so close to Which him. Which I guess can follow, right? There's great disturbance in the Force persistently because of this war. Sure. Is that, is that what wars do? They have to sit around and, you know, I... do the taxes instead of doing anything else. <laughs> yeah, like, they can't focus very much compared to normal, I guess, Maybe. is the argument. 
And also or maybe, maybe he's casting some spells in his office. And Jedi and strife across the galaxy, maybe that has mark on effects. And the fact that they separated into different planets at this point instead of being like a yeah. unit. I don't know. We just don't really know. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, we could have used more delving into that Why? aspect. Why can't you see, you know? Um, again, trying to just get us a little bit further, faster. Plagocene. Like, uh, they found Grievous, and he wants Anakin to go get him, and then just talks about a Sith Darth who Vegas had cracked. Rise. Yeah, who is so fucking clear. Like everyone who's ever watched this is just like Anakin. Are you? Are you not picking up? Are like, you actually, are you actually <laughs> stupid? I just have to imagine Palpatine's internal monologue. It's like, oh, he's just he's just kind of following along with me. He's letting can me I get away with all of this. Like, I can, cool. I can just. Wow. Can I just keep going and say not from a jet? I can, huh? Gonna, <laughs> hmm. Yeah, and I can even say it in a bit of an evil voice. Well, even the Jedi. Dare I say it's like this guy's good an job, idiot. George? Because this could have been less subtle, I guess. He could have been like, "Hey, uh, you know, if you've got a loved one who's dying." The Sith can help you out, just saying. <laughs> like, like nudging him with an elbow. And it's like, yeah. that is information already is really manipulative, but it's just like, wait, sorry, why are you saying this person who has nothing to do with the Force? He's just like, oh, yeah. there's nothing at all. Just chill. Hey, you know, you get around, uh, you learn stuff. It. Yeah, you read about it. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the yeah, newspaper. Like, 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 found this yeah, article, like you know. Yeah. I'm learning, In man. Majemet, though. Man, yeah, he's great. He, uh, uh, he's just carrying... <laughs> I just wish that there were. You need this to be so much more subtle, or you need it to be that um, their relationship. He's he's established a while ago that he studies the Jedi, mainly, just because he, yeah. he considers them very important in many ways. But uh, also that you know, hey, here and there, there's just bits of information about the dark side, quote unquote. You could even him being like, you know, it's it's all the same thing. Like calling it the dark side doesn't even make sense. Um, it's all the force. You, you could have yeah. him say that to Anakin to sort of introduce talking about those subjects in a more subtle way than just being yeah. like, hey, bro, <laughs> Doc says pretty cool. Are, yeah, I wonder if there are other applications of the force. Is like, is, is do the Jedi know it all? Are there other ways or, yeah, things like that? Well, and, and you could yeah. even talk about Dooku in a way that's like, you know, he used to be a Jedi and uh, I know he's like a, he's totally an evil piece of shit, but like, do you know what? You know, made him think twice about the. Do you Jedi? know what happened? Yeah, and I told you why he left. Oh, that see, that would be great. Just being like, you know, I looked into it, and like, there's a lot of stuff there that let's just say isn't public knowledge, and you know, and I can be like, wait, yeah. what? And then, and he's then, like, what do you mean you don't like, know? They haven't told yeah, you. They don't I, trust yeah, you with that information. Exactly. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, I'd be surprised if they didn't know. But hey, look. I mean, you're not Jedi Knight Master. Hmm. You know. And then you could just be like, don't you think it's weird what? that they don't let you know anything about the dark side? Like, like they can't trust you with knowing its existence beyond its evil. Yeah, yeah. what are you they just, so afraid of? Because I, I appreciate that they have their conversations throughout these films, but like, oh, you could really spend the time just chipping away at uh, him just trying to say that there's no line between good and bad. It's all fucked. And the yeah. these Jedi, they're just these fucking robotic idiots who, if anything, are costing us the war. Like, imagine him trying to argue that. Yeah. Be pretty neat. Um, but yeah, he's just like, being evil is kind of cool, and Anakin's like, hmm. The next scene, <laughs> like, uh, deciding on, I guess, the next set of plans with the, the wars and stuff. And yeah, I think they, they're like, no, you're not going to Grievous, we'll send Obi-Wan. Um... We were talking about this, I think, when we were watching it, but, like, was it the idea that Palpatine knew that they would decline it and he could just use it as a further wedge between the Jedi and Anakin? Because if they had said yes, that would have really messed things up. Yeah, we were saying, like, if he had said yes, would Palpatine have been like, please don't actually go? It's great that they, they agreed, actually, but turns out I've got different plans, because he needs Anakin to remain <laughs> in Coruscant, like, desperately for these plans. So it wouldn't make much sense to send him all the way over to Utapau. But yeah, maybe he was just relying on the fact that he already knew it was an absurd request and that the Jedi would decline it. You know, 40 chess palps. That's, that's what you have to yeah. argue sometimes. Even though sometimes it's like, hmm. 
Um, yeah, and then yeah. the battle on Kashyyyk begins, and it's it's another one of those sorts of like, man. So he's got Wookiees running cool. toward the machines that are all firing at them, and then you, even then you're like, droids, why aren't you just using capital ships to fucking raise this whole thing? I don't know. Like, it's very, it, it comes across very Star it's like Wars-y. It's a silly but... war, yeah, it's like, I, it's very tough to, like, I don't believe you, like, that this is how it would happen. There's just an element that I just can't believe it. But it looks neat. It does look very cool. Sure. I just wish it was more... Tactically. That Tactical? Could, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I wish that there was some... Like, we're, it, a, li a little bit more clever than just both sides are just going to throw everything they have in one clump at the other line of clumps, and they meet in the middle and they just shoot each other at point blank. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. What is this? This is ridiculous. And then we have the last scene of Anakin and Obi-Wan being friends. It's so very sad. He's like, you're a better Jedi than even I am, and you're a good man, and it's been great. I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> it's almost like they're aware uh, of how this is their last scene as friends. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And imagine how great that scene would have been if we had everything supporting it. Yeah. But, alas. Um, and, you know, there are choices made. It was mentioned when we were watching it. Like, there's the fact that Anakin is in the shade while Obi-Wan is in the light while they're talking. And the kind of stuff that makes me say, like, if you look for it, you'll find all of your crazy yes, fun you visuals in the prequels just as much as you'll find them in the sequels. Maybe not just as much, mm -hmm. I don't know. But, like... Is it, it? It's like this is like we we really try to focus on the writing, but when people try to use that as evidence of like how good, you know, like the themes of TLJ is like there's a fuck ton of themes in the prequels. Like if you want to yeah. dig them out, they're just not executed very well. Yeah. Um. And so yeah, Obi Wan goes to use the power and this shit. This, this, there's so much of this in the film where like, uh, where is it? Like he. So he arrives, and the idea is that the droids are all there, they're hiding, or at least Grievous is, um, and they, the, you know, they're, they're like, you better, people that we have captured, quote-unquote, you better tell Obi-Wan slash the Jedi slash whoever's looking that nothing's going on here, okay? And it's like, alright. So Obi-Wan mm -hmm. arrives, and the leader guy is like, yeah, everything's fine here, there's no war going on here. And everyone's like, huh. And then he goes, he's here, we're being held hostage, <laughs> help us. It's like, what? <laughs> How was he able to do this? Yeah, like, what was even, like, good job, droids. Like, the whole fucking idea should just be that you have one dude there with a gun ready, you know, or something. Yeah. Something but, a little more clever. But, um... Or a little more subtle. Something more than a stern talking to and a hope. Like. Yeah, because we're led to believe that the droids are only looking at the conversation happening, and that as long as it looks fine, that's fine. It's just like, really? Okay. Um, so yeah, Obi Wan, I th I guess simulates his ship leaving, but then actually stays on the planet. Uh, kind of makes me wonder if he couldn't call that ship remotely back because he ends up leaving on Grievous's ship. I don't know what happens to his ship uh, ultimately, to be fair. But um, yeah, he's um doing a sneak on Utapau now. Who's got to assassinate GG boy? Uh, but I guess what's interesting to me is like it shows him getting into his ship and then leaving, but also he managed to get out secretly. And I'm just like, I guess he is a Jedi. So I don't know. Maybe there was something he did there that makes maybe, sense. Yeah. I don't know. It just doesn't quite look like anything could have explained that. Like, if you've got, I don't know if you guys have got the movie up, but it's, it is quite bizarre. It shows him in his ship, it's leaving, and then it shows him looking at his ship from having, you know, standing in some secret area. And it's like, all right. Mm. I don't know how you did that, but you did it. And then he's on some weird creature that yells yeah, and shouts. Yeah, this lizard. And it's yeah. super colorful. And it's like, this is a good stealthy way to get around. <laughs> yeah, this, this plumed serpent creature. 
I just it's bizarre because if any any local was just like, wait, what? Who, who is that? It's like he's wearing cloaks. What the fuck is that loud noise and this big lizard? Who's that guy on it? And there's only one type of people that wear robes in this universe. Clearly a Jedi run. Um, yeah. And that, now we start getting into. I mean, it's not like we haven't been critical already, but Obi Wan is like, all right. I found them having a meeting, the Separatists. There are droids everywhere. I'm gonna everywhere. go try and kill him. Now's a good time. They'll never expect me to do this. <laughs> I don't get it at all. I know people are like, yeah, but it's like badass. And he's done some reckless stuff before. It's just like, no, this is just stupid. Can, uh, we, can we all agree? things a Jedi <laughs> would choose to do. Yeah. It's so stupid. Like, It's not reckless, it's dumb. Well, it, like if someone yeah, categorized like reckless that way, I'd be fine with it. But like, I just, I'm just sitting here, like, I don't even know what he thought would happen. He's like, I, yeah, I definitely knew it would all work out the way that it did. Like, okay. Uh, I, I think too many people are distracted by the hello there and and just how awesome it is yeah. that he just jumps right into chaos and it's like, yeah, but it's God really damn, dumb. A fun meme. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fun meme. Hello there is a good one. Yeah, it stopped. Just going. These... What are they doing? These movies are insanely meme-y. Yeah, they that, are. Oh, dude, the meme value is off the charts. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Grievous just says, kill him. So, so at that point, I think it's safe to assume that he's just fine with everyone shooting, but only the Magna Guards come for him, and of which Obi-Wan defeats uh, the last one by chopping off his head, a point that was made very clearly... Not the thing that kills them uh, as a payoff yeah, but, in the opening. But, but you're forgetting something very important. His leg was crushed. Which is that, no, yeah, his foot was smooshed. Ah, that's like all of his health gone. Uh, so yeah, you know, but those get knocked out. The rest of the droids like pull up their guns and Groove's like, no. Like, I'm gonna kill him. It's like, oh. It didn't it seem oh, like he was, okay. Um, again, I just want to highlight. Every one of those droids firing once, yes, there would be crossfire and collateral damage, but Obi-Wan's dead. So. Yeah. Unless he jumps or does some, you know, crazy shit. But yeah, he just hoped, I guess, that Grievous would want to 1v1 him and that he would beat him. Um, it's strange. It's just really strange. But it all does work out pretty well. Uh, the choreography for the Grievous-Obi-Wan fight sucks. It is. There's a lot of uh, a lot of openings that are not taken advantage of. There's a lot of not force powers being used. There's a lot of just. I just don't believe it. A lot of close ups so that you don't have to show all the lightsabers that are being used. Um, Obi Wan should have had a lot more difficult of a time use the with force, this. Though. That too. This is a scenario. Yeah, there's a scenario <laughs> where this guy has four lightsabers and four arms. I have one. I need to play this differently. I can't just fight him one on one. I need to do something clever. I need to pull back. I need to try and use the environment to my advantage. I need to do something to give myself a leg up in this fight. I can't just 1v1 him. His lightsaber. He's, I've got four lightsabers to deal with. I'm fucked. There's nothing I can do. Of course, Grievous just moves them all in the same motion most of the time, if I'm remembering. Yeah, and then right, the, the, right at the beginning, the, there's just clearly time spent with the two lightsabers doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're just not being used. And uh, yeah, they they wanted to make this work. It doesn't work. I'm sorry. You needed to do all the things Rag said, basically. <laughs> like create a yeah. whole bunch of bonus scenarios that Obi Wan yeah. uses because he can't yourself. beat him in a one on one. Um, I know loads of people think this is so fucking badass as a fight, but I honestly think it kind of sucks. Uh, it's really lame. And it makes Grievous know. look kind of shit. It does. Well, Grievous is kind of shit. <laughs> but he shouldn't be. He's a fucking Jedi assassin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, he, sh he should be, like, terrifying, but he's kind of just, like, a clown, especially after that this all happens, because, like, there's a couple more bits mm. as well. But, yeah, um... So the clones randomly appear, literally like teleported in, there is yeah, nothing they're just here now. There's nothing to do with them and then suddenly there's loads of LAATs and loads of troopers just around and it's like, what? How? How? And it's like, yeah, How'd all you the, get here? the ships that's a, that's a arriving out of hyperspace would be enough to, you'd have droids being like, sir, like, red alert, there's, there's no, no way that they sneak in. They no. repel down. They had to set up repels. How did they do that? How could this have possibly gotten to this level without any they alerts happening? 
really strange. But yeah, All Out War begins, basically. And it's this 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 bizarre fucking moment I was highlighting when we were watching it, but... Grievous has lost two arms, and his whole area is under attack from a clearly... Like, he's outnumbered. He then is like, you're doomed, Obi-Wan. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Dude, it's really become much harder for you to say that. Much harder, yeah. He was doomed maybe before, but now, I mean, Obi-Wan's probably okay -ish. Now? Yeah. Um, and yeah, all Obi-Wan does is just use the Force. And, he, and Grievous is fucked. He's lost both of his lightsabers. Man, and, and you kind of just think like... Led with that. Yeah, yeah, that's probably the opening move, actually. Yeah, just saying. Uh, and yeah, so Grievous slams into a thing, falls down, and then Obi-Wan, like, jumps down, and then Grievous just, like, actually takes some time to move into his car, set it up, and launch it, and Obi-Wan's just kind of watching him. Just like, hmm. And it's like, bro, the Force. Use the Force. I need to tell these people. Useful. Um, yeah, and then they, they get into the little chase. I think... Yeah, we go we go to the, the, the moment where Samuel Jackson is like things feel bad, bro. I feel like I feel like Jedi are about to all be killed. It's like, oh. Hmm. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> moving on. Yeah, because I think uh, oh yeah, the, the Infinity Samuel Jackson is like, um if the Emperor doesn't or if, if Palpatine doesn't give up his powers, we will have to take control of the Senate, and then Yoda's like, hmm. And so there's a level of like, you know, the yeah, the Jedi aren't exactly uh, helping out in terms of optics here. Like they, they're definitely the team of like, well, we're the good guys, so we take control of stuff. Okay. Yeah. And I think if they played that up more to show that there's reason for everyone to be like, yeah, the Jedi are kind of floompy. If um, if the public were aware that the Jedi just decide that their opinion is top tier whenever there's a complication. And everyone must and follow their that. orders. They just get yeah. to the side, yeah. You There's can create no a lot of animosity. When it comes to the Jedi. Who watches the Jedi? There you go. We do, in the Star Wars movies. Yeah. And then we go, oh, what are you doing? Man, why? Stupid. What are you doing? Try not to why? think too hard about the prequel trilogy Jedi, because they become kind of horrifying very quickly. Yeah, there's, there's lots of... I just got a new mad. No. You got a what? Go ahead. A Noom ad, again. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I remember uh, I was telling them all about this yesterday. The, yeah? The, the ad said, a real Noomer. That was, like, the name of... Oh, no. Noom, the ad, Noom. <laughs> but anyway, let's continue. Uh, Palpatine just says he's a Sith Lord to Anakin. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you, know, you know he was like, I think it's time. Judging from that other conversation, I think I'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, I think I was going to do this like a year from now, but, you know, this guy's an idiot. I could tell him anything. And so he does. Uh, and Anakin's like, you'll be arrested. You're a bad man. You're behind all of the war. You're bad. And then he's like, Anakin, bro. Anakin, buddy, remember that time we talked about Darth Plagueis the Wise? Man, wasn't that great? And he's like, good and bad, they're just words, man. Like, yeah. It's... By Go the on. way, fun fun life tip, if anyone ever tells you that in real life, <laughs> that's not a good person. It's no villain. good Look person out. ever it's a villain. That. Um, Yeah, and, and, and so Anakin is like, I'm gonna get you arrested, and then Palpatine's like, you do whatever you have to do. Just remember, I can save life. There's life I can save, just saying. You know, that girlfriend of yours, slash wife, slash baby mama, you go, I, I could save her. But you know, if I'm in jail or whatever. Damn. Hmm. Yeah. And we're all like, wow, what will Anakin decide? Who knows? Oh my goodness. Um, Grievous and Obi-Wan continue to battle in like a weird sci-fi car chase where Grievous refuses to use his best weapon until right at the end. And Obi-Wan is like awkwardly not using the force. It's just weird, the whole fight. Um, and then they have their close combat fight, which is probably the best part of their three-phase battle. Um, except I think Obi-Wan's probably got a little bit of plot armor here in terms of when you get punched and kicked in the face by a robot that you, you're uh, staying awake after that's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, uh, do you know why the fight ends? Because Obi-Wan remembers he has the Force. Oh, like, that oh, yeah, sounds useful. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
amazing, because he's already used it on Grievous, but he just doesn't. And then he's like, actually, I will now. And grabs the gun with it. And Grievous gets fucking melted from inside out, kind of. Pretty rough. Even his, his eyes, like, pop open with fire. Yeah, he cooks off like a tank. Poor guy. Hmm. We hardly knew ye. Like, literally. Um, and, th and then Obi-Wan, yeah. there was a part of the fight where Obi-Wan just takes the opportunity to rip open his chest, by the way. That was kind of strange. Grievous just lets it happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You might want to consider more protective armor that is linked in such a way that you can't just rip it open with your bare hands. Uh, like, like, it's seal, especially if it's his heart, you know? Yeah, goddamn. Um, and then we get another bizarre scene for this movie where Anakin is like, uh, yeah, Palpatine's the, uh, the Sith Lord. And Samuel Jackson's like, huh, well, mm. I guess we'll go arrest him. Let's go get him. Um, yeah, uh, I right. guess, uh, oh, okay, well, you wanna, you wanna hit the Starbucks on the way <laughs> you out? You wanna coffee? He's like, uh, <laughs> I'm right. He's like, okay. Yeah, you wanna, yeah. What about you? Yeah, no, I could, I could use a coffee. Alright, well, we're getting coffee. Does, are you sure you don't want one? Anyone? Uh, anybody? Is, um, if what you have you told get... me is true, you will have gained my trust. I, I always found that funny too. It's like, as you, uh, okay. You I don't guess... trust me? Like, <laughs> or, like, but uh, at least uh, you're overt about it now. You know, there's no confusion. Start talking to you. Like, oh, bro, I, I really like you, cause, but, but that's fine. <laughs> you're kind of neat, I guess. You don't really. I mean, hmm. um, and yeah. So Sam Jackson and a bunch of Jedi get on um an LAAT. With the intention of going to arrest Palpatine, um, but I'm guessing they really do stop for Starbucks because the timeline here doesn't quite make sense otherwise. No, um, it was day, and then they're there at night. <laughs> Mace had some more taxes to do before. So. Long way. It's literally our only choice is to assume. Yeah, they had maybe there was there was three Jedi there. They have four when they get there, so maybe they had to go find that extra one. They were like, "We really need you, bro," and he gets killed instantly. <laughs> Couldn't find him. He was out somewhere. And then he was at to... yeah. He was at Starbucks, also ordering <laughs> something because Jedi don't do a lot of stuff. Oftentimes, that's just they're just hanging out. Hey, we're gonna go arrest Palpatine. Turns out he's a Sith Lord. So whenever you're done with that, uh, come and help us. It'll be great. Starbucks probably has a Jedi discount because they're out there. Oh all yeah. The time best customers. Little... All the Jedi's are there and their laptops with their earbuds, ear pods <laughs> on, writing their stories, writing their screenplay. Um. And yet, like, it's a bit hard to imagine a reason that they would have taken so long when they just found out that this entire war has been orchestrated by a Sith Lord that's in the Who Republic. Also, like, yeah. I don't know how you, like, if someone was like, well, I would like to go to the toilet first. He's like, bro, you just fucking pee off the ship. We need to go. We gotta get no, this no, done. No, no, I'm, I'm, no, man, I got, like, I'm fucking crowning right now. I've <laughs> gotta use the loo. I will be back out in just a second. I well, know it's the, important, but... Maybe the LAATs have a little toilet in them. <laughs> Maybe they do. A little Lou in the back. Um, Some other guys. Like, can you guys turn the LA to around? I left the oven on. Oh no! Can you call? It'll burn someone? down the Jedi Temple. Oh. So yeah, we got a couple scenes of sad. Everyone's pretty sad, being sad about stuff. Um, thinking, thinking about things. Um, uh, montage with the music until we get to nighttime, and Anakin's like, no. For the sake of Padmu, I must go to Pulpitism and protect him from the evil potential death that the Jedi will deliver to him. And if you didn't see the next scene, you'd be like, well, it's too late. Obviously, they've already done whatever they were going to do, yeah. right? It's like, no. No. <laughs> they just started. No, they just got here. Yeah. And then um, memes. Well, uh, you know, is, is the fun back and forth a little bit? Just, just yeah. I'm going to fuck you up. He's like, I'm going to fuck you up. It's like, oh. And then Palpatine kills, like, three of these Jedi Knights instantly. Really disappointing Masters. to see. I am more than happy yeah. for Palpatine to outplay them, but not like that, where he just... No, he, kills them he just them. stabs them. Yeah. He just stabs them, and they just die, and I'm like, kill her shit. Mace Windu has to do everything by himself. Because you could even, yeah, you could even have it so that he's like, very well, arrest me. And, like, two Jedi walk up to him. And, and then, then he just immediately, yeah. There's the little does assassin flip. blade lightsaber and slices down two of them. And it's just like, fuck! Like, that could be way yeah. better as a surprise attack instead of just... I have a lightsaber, here it is. And now here I go jumping at you with my... my re <laughs> 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 Um, Their fight is, like... It's a little bit awkward. Cause it's, it's, 
Yeah, that Palpatine's yeah. Full of bloody faces. His face every time. <laughs> they love it. How did face. how did Palpatine like practice? How was he good so good at lightsaber fighting? I mean, spa was Dooku. Yeah, spare time he just you know sure. practices. Despite he being you know, him. an old man, you know. Um, but yeah, okay. you know. Fair dues, you have these moments where, like, they're doing things that they couldn't possibly do, the actors, and then it's from their backs, or because they've got faces CGI'd onto them. Um, yeah. And unless you do some pausing, it can mostly pass the smell and, and hearing test, as well as the eye. It's passed all the tests, but uh, they try, as you, as the same thing was happening for Christopher Lee, they try and have moments where they can have the actors just, you know, actually trying to move the lightsabers, but they're usually very simple moves. Yeah. Um, it's just to try and keep you immersed in these things. Yeah. Um, I appreciate it. Like, even when they, they lock blades and they're both just doing their grunty faces. They're just like, hey. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but yeah, they have they have Windu actually beat him. Um, which is an interesting choice. I guess that power level wise, Windu is just supposed to be, we assume he's like the best sword fighter out of everybody, basically. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it doesn't surprise me that if if it's just about sword fighting, I bet a lot of people could probably beat Darth Sidious. Maybe he's more like force oriented or something. I don't know. He, he knocked out the three Jedi pretty quick, right? Yeah, but nice when they were just beat him. They were. He shit. did. Uh, and I, I think the it's uh, there's just stuff to further explore. That would have been neat in terms of establishing like top tier people for different reasons, and they have maybe focused on different things because I know a lot of people right now in the future chat will be like yeah there's uh there's sets there's like what is it fighting styles for jedi and stuff yeah the focus on different things it's like yeah if only you don't have to do like a lore movie but it could have been neat to have explored some of that and how it all works dynamically and stuff um yeah he gets in with a kick too it's not even like it's, it's just i guess windows a pretty Pretty good fighter, and in, including even even kicks. I'm sure Samuel Jackson had a lot of fun with this. Couldn't say motherfucker though. You know he wanted to. You know he mm. wanted to. And we get a little little reflection of the Count Dooku scene where he's like, "This guy is too dangerous to be kept left alive," which is what Palpatine said about Dooku. Can you believe it? But Palpatine's like, "Oh no, don't kill me! Please don't." Um. <clears throat> And so he attacks Mace Windu with lightning move, and Mace Windu deflects it into his face, and it turns him into a creepy monster. Um, As it does. I don't know that we will ever have confirmation of what we're supposed to take from that exactly. Uh, Palpatine got crippled by it, or he was a spooky alien, or a shapeshifter of some kind, and that's just it not maintaining. Don't know. Don't know that it really matters that much. But, uh... It's just, I just found it funny that he's like, I can't hold it any longer. Uh, he's the one that's essentially attacking himself at that point. Yeah, stop. <laughs> uh, or at what least happened? learn from this experience. Yeah, <laughs> don't do it again with somebody in the sequels. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, probably just not had a good record with uh, cause even even it in the OT. Really is yeah. It's like he specked into it, and it's he just really wants to get his. He doesn't really like it. He clearly messed up, and he can't, you know, you know, take his skill points back. So he's trying desperately to use that work. whenever he can. Yeah. Um. And so yeah, uh, Mace Windu is considering killing him, and then there's this line. And I think you highlighted this. We watched it. Rags it's like Attica's like he must stand trial, and it's like all right, that's a pretty normal thing to say considering the circumstance. And then he's like nah, and goes to swing, and then Attica says, "I need him." And it's like, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. no, you, 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 you need him. Uh, mm. what? What is it that you mean, Anakin? Please yeah. explain. Um, and yeah, sorry, uh, like, it, it had had uh, had Mace Windu just like stabbed instead of swigging. <laughs> that would have might have gotten him, yeah. It. Well, yeah. you think he would have stabbed in that scenario, but I guess so. they do that a lot with lightsabers, where they like try and put a lot of swing into it. When it's like that thing's like a billion uh, degrees, you'll be fine. 
Yeah, you don't need to swing. Force is irrelevant. You can just move it through. Things. Yep. So force is irrelevant. They barely machine. use it. Uh, That's you. Oh, oh. Uh, See, we got oh, oh, everybody. Oh. So uh, I wonder about this moment if Palpatine was actually at the whim of Anakin here in terms of if you look at it frame by frame when um, Windu is bringing the lightsaber down. It looks like Palpatine might be prepping to just launch some more lightning. It's unclear. Could also be that he's just terrified. Uh, but it's just, it would be interesting to me to think that he really did gamble everything on Anakin saving him. Yeah. Like, damn. Um, I like to believe Palpatine's a bit more selfish in the regard of, like, he'll have a backup plan no matter what in case people don't do the things he wants them to do. I don't know. I mean, his plan does seem to me throughout the PT to be comprised a lot of improv and rolling with the punches yeah. when weird things he hadn't accounted for happens. Um, and so then we yeah. begin what is probably the biggest problem of this movie. Anakin is like, right, then I'm evil. <laughs> so, oh, oh, what? All right. Uh, this one, killing Mace Windu, or rather chopping his hand off to save Palpatine, is like, I think there's much, there's, there's room for that. I'm, I'm totally okay with talking about that one, but then he's like, all right, we need to wipe out the Jedi. And he's like, I'll do whatever you ask. I'm like, you will? It's so really? strange. Like, yeah. from what have I done to I'll do whatever you ask? And then doubles yeah. down into let's. <laughs> well, then, what the fuck is going on in his head? To steal man as best I can. I think someone here would be like, well, that's the point, right? He's he's like, what have I done? And he's like, well, I've gone far enough now that I should go the full way. And I'm just like, yeah, but there's a difference well, between what he just yeah, did. But, but remember remember what the event full horizon way not is. killing all the men and the women and the children? In the, the full sand. way. <laughs> you well, know? Uh, and that's the thing, someone will probably be like, well, yeah, Theo, he's done it before, you know? He killed all the women and children and the sand people, so there you go. Which oh, was also bad. weird in Attack of the Clothes, yeah. where he's like, I killed the children too! And Padme's reaction being like, okay. That's okay, all we right. all mess like, up. Was, yeah. was that not the horizon? <laughs> this, was the, this was the moral event horizon, Anakin? Yeah, I look this forward. You can't come back, you know? You can't be focusing on the past. Come back from mm -hmm. Roman. That was so many minutes ago, you can't dwell on that. Yeah, and so, um... I just want to call a spade a spade. I think this this moment right here, where he's just like, "Let's kill all the Jedi." It's assassination for a little old Anakin. Sorry, uh, people know this is how it take. They've known it for a while. I just they're just, they're just reaffirming it. I think it's probably the biggest problem with Revenge of the Sith. Um, it's a vulnerable character writing. Yeah, because you know the whole goal of the prequels was to show how this good man became Darth Vader. It's like you didn't really earn that. You kind of skipped a whole yeah. bunch of steps. Hmm unfortunate but you know we're running out of time yeah. we literally got an hour left it's like of the entire fucking arc it's like all right but hurry um yeah and, and he puts on his fucking hood he looks like satan he's just like it's time to kill everyone <laughs> Anakin's like okay satan. <laughs> ah, fair enough in for a penny in for a pound you know and remember what he tells Anakin of the scene to reassure him that this is the right decision is I'm sure we'll uncover the secret of how to save Padme. It's like, wait, what do you mean? You yeah, what? 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 I thought you said you knew. <laughs> like, what? Now it's a secret. I've been bamboozled. Yeah. Be damn you played me like a dead fiddle. <laughs> um, and so we begin <laughs> uh, the Order sixty six set Order of scenes, 66. which is. A yeah. mixed bag in terms of some great moments and some of the, like, <laughs> wait, what? Yeah. And some luck, too, right? So I guess we'll try and do well, this yeah. in something that resembles an order. Awesome music, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Awesome yeah, music absolutely. throughout this film. It's great. Um, yep. Definitely. Very good music. Fun oh, by the way, though, for, ch for future chat, fun fact, none of the prequels were nominated for Best Original Score. That is um, that is bizarre. All of the sequels were. Yay. Um, that is also none bizarre. Of the prequels, yeah. So Revenge of the Sith did not get nominated despite the fact that it's I think it has the best soundtrack <laughs> in the whole series. Do you get the sense of just the obligatory nature of it's it of it's the Star Wars movies we have to nominate them? So the thing is, is that I'm okay with the, the sequels getting nominated, but, like, I'm not okay with them getting nominated and the prequels not. That just feels weird to me. It's a different time, I mean, man. 
Because I've already talked, Duel of the Fates is like arguably the most, like, well, one of the most iconic uh, songs from Star Wars. Everyone loves it, and yeah. the film that that belongs to, like, that didn't get nominated for the score. It just, yeah, I don't like that. And I'm pretty sure, wasn't it, um, I feel like I'm going to fuck this up, but I want to say it anyway, is the, um, the choir, like, John Williams was like, nah, the choir is too much. And then, and then Lucas said, nah, put him in. Yeah, which was, is, yeah. When people who hate George Lucas's decisions, I don't think they're gonna bring stuff like that up. Well, like, oh, they're not all yeah, bad. Uh, they're not all well, bad. Yeah, because when you think about, uh, because the prequels use the choir a lot, um, and I really like it. Well, I think the choir makes uh, Duel of Fates that much more memorable. Uh, definitely, yeah, definitely. But I mean, in this one too, because like Order sixty six has got the choir as well. I was like, ooh, yeah, yeah. um, you got some impacts. Yeah, so for those who are listening to this without knowing what happens in Revenge of the Sith, which feels literally like it's probably three people, um, Order 66 is just when the Emperor is like, okay, clones, kill all the Jedi. Um, and so we open with that, with, with Obi-Wan. Now, there's some events here that have to go exactly this way in order for Obi-Wan to survive this shit, but basically he's like, yeah. oh, hey, Commander Cody, everything cool? He's like, yeah, everything's cool. He's like, oh, here's your lightsaber, by the way. Oh, cool. Okay, bye. And then they shoot at him because Order 66 happens and he falls into water. He's okay. Like, right. Yeah. So first of all, losing the lightsaber in such a way that people were able to pick it up and give it back to him. That's already, like, fucking lucky, hmm. bro. Um, secondly, getting it seconds before Order 66 is engaged. Yeah. Holy shit. It's literally and seconds. Well, yeah. Literally if, seconds. If, if Cody had gotten that call beforehand... Or Over during. Fucked. You, yeah, it's like, oh, hey, hey, Cody. Oh, you forgot this. Just shoot him in the face. Like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then the fact that they shoot him with what looks to be pretty heavy artillery, and it just screws with the wall Locked that he's on. Yeah, and then he falls down and doesn't die from the fall as well. That's kind of like, oh, man, mm. it's quite a tumble. Um, And they do search for him, but they don't do it fast enough that they can find him, and they think, oh, do they search for him? I'm trying to remember now. They, they do. Oh, I think they said nobody could survive that fall, but they're still looking for him. Which, by the way, nobody could survive that fall. I'm just like, I mean... you want to check? You got all these you, guys here. You've you got all well these check, dudes, you know, hanging out. You might as well. So yeah, like just that one. It's all very flumpy for me, and it's clearly evidence. Obi Wan's can't. He can't die. He literally can't die in this movie. He, he dies die. later, so <laughs> he can't die here. It's like sorry. Um... But then we cut to what I think is a very uh, nuts and bolts representation of exactly how this would go in the middle of fights being conducted across the universe where all these Jedi are working their asses off to win these wars with people that they've probably come to trust as teams and then they just get annihilated by all them. Of a sudden, yeah, yeah, the shot where they focus on the feet and they come to a halt, it's like, yeah. And he's ready, he's going into battle. Come on, yeah, let's go, yeah, guys. We got to go. Yeah. Yeah, and there's um. So it's it, it could have been. Really, it could have really been so tragic. much more powerful if we knew more about this. But there if is something on its own. It's just so sad because, like, yeah, yeah, clearly, like the fact that he's trying to rally them to fight, and then they all shoot at him. It's like, damn. Yeah, and the Sucks, look on his bro. face when he turns around. Just it's like, okay. oh. And because you know, Kiadi Mundi is a Jedi cool. master. He that's, does put up a little right, bit of a. The Clone defense. Wars, you can't these guys a bit. It's just mind control chips. So much potential. We could have done so much. I'm sorry, what? With prequels. Mind control chips? Oh, right. Oh. Uh, in the Clone Wars, uh, they have this arc fairly late on about Order 66, essentially, and the resultant conclusion is that there are chips in all of the clones' heads that, when activated, will just make them kill the Jedi. What? <laughs> I just figured and there that was a there was an just... arc where the chips don't work properly, right? So one of them, uh, yeah, one of them malfunctioned and just shot a Jedi. Yeah, and then they they that that uh, man, you think about everything because I haven't watched all of the Clone Wars, mm. but like you think about all of the stuff that is in canon. Well, that happened oh. in between episodes two and three. Obi Wan had somebody that he loved. He had a whole relationship yeah. in the Clone Wars, one and of... she just never gets mentioned. 
because one of the main characters in the Clone Wars discovers like the entire conspiracy in this Order sixty six arc. Like he finds out that Palpatine's you know the bad man and stuff, and he he is in a conversation with Anakin at one point, and then of course they have to have him mince words and just not say what he knows in order to not in order ruin, to what <laughs> in order to not ruin the films. But how like, does how does he not? Uh, he's <laughs> how does he the mince the nuts. words enough <laughs> like uh, he's insane and he refuses to ever get to the point he alludes to uh... big conspiracy blah 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 and then never names and then he dies right whatever. right yeah, before... and then, he, then he dies yeah <laughs> of course okay and this isn't the only instance of something like this in the <laughs> well and the big one was uh when they went to that crazy planet and like Anakin just flat out had the visions of all of what happens in yeah. episode three, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then his memory, their memories get like erased. So yeah, we just had to erase their memories. So that... Great, here comes you another thread to. about you've missed all the context, guys. You fucking it all up. No, well, no, yeah, it's I mean, in my defense, oh my I, haven't, I haven't watched it for a while, but like I do remember that. Particular. Mm. We're talking about episode three. We're not talking about the Clone Wars, all right? Oh my goodness. So Ayla Sakura is next. She just gets beaten the fuck up. But uh, this one's like probably the cl closer to some of the most edgy stuff in, in the prequels, where it just shows them continuously shooting her after she's died. It's just like, ooh. yeah, it's a bit weird. Calm down. Well, I guess you got to make sure with these fuckers. I guess. <laughs> like, yeah. The Jedi can be a bit much. Mm. Um. Yeah, and then um, his name is Plo Clue. Plo Clu is it Plo Cloon or Coo? <laughs> I think it's Plo Coon. Yeah, uh, or Po Cloon. It's either Plo Coon or Plo. Po po it's either Plo Coon or Po Cloon. I'm pretty sure it's Plo Coon. Well, he gets Plo annihilated Coon. too. Plo and, Coon um, gets fucking. Blown I don't even know. Up. Yeah, which. Um, I'm, it's times like this where, like, plot armor doesn't, it would normally get in the way, but it doesn't, because, like, this is the, I guess, the goal of the scene, but it's also like, ah, oh, thank fuck, it feels a lot more grounded in actually how it would run. If, if you are surprise attacked by your friendlies, you're gonna get killed pretty much every time. The yeah. element of surprise in is insanely powerful. Well, yeah, unless you're in a situation where... You I mean, and it explains why most of them died. It's like, yeah, most of you are going to get killed because of this. There will be some lucky ones shot in the back. separated. Yeah. Never see There'll be coming. lucky ones who yeah. uh, only have a couple of people. Like, I mean, Yoda. Well, Yoda is super duper because he's clearly aware of what's happening. Yeah, because I was going to say, yeah. the difference between Yoda and Obi-Wan scenes is that we know that Yoda has felt everybody dying, which is too suspicious. Yes. It's like, And then two guys come up as like, hey, Yoda, <laughs> let's have a chat. So yeah, Yoda Yoda yeah. does survive here because he can't die in these films, but I think it's much more justified here than Obi Wan's was. I yeah, was here. Though. Yeah. Um. Might have sent more than two guys to go kill Yoda though. <laughs> it's um, fucking yeah. Yoda. Well, I, guess, know, like... I guess the problem is like, what what does it mean for their instructions? They just do it instantly, basically, as soon as they get the order. It's like, all right, let's kill him right now. Well, He's Cody, you remember he, so he got to. the artillery battery to he go look at the thing. He enlisted the help of other Last people to help him with the task. That's that's true. I I, I wouldn't want to undersell it. like the clones are capable. They're tactically of developing aware strategies. Yeah. 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 I suppose it's just assumed by. They are in charge of them. What was that? Sorry. Makes you wonder why the Jedi are in charge of them in the first place. I mean, you kind of wonder about the logistics of all of this, the hierarchies of all of this. Um, and so we get to the worst scene in yes. the prequels. Yeah, uh, yeah the worst scene. I'm not a fan of people who try and defend this. I feel like you're desperate. you got to get over it. Having Anakin annihilate a whole bunch of children, we're talking literally like fucking six to eight year olds. No. It's not happening. No way. Never no, happening. No. It, it doesn't happen. It it doesn't happen. It can't this happen. Not with who he is at this point in time. killing children. Dude, I would even hesitate to say that Vader would do that in that environment. I, I know you're yeah, gonna... People, know would, that, yeah. people would highlight, well, you, he was okay with blowing up Alderaan, right? And it's like, okay, put There's Vader in a room. Much less yeah. yeah, put Vader in a room it's, with a bunch of children who are terrified of him, and I, I genuinely question whether or not Vader would just slice them all apart. I don't know that he would do that. I feel like he'd be Palpatine like, hmm. would do that, but Vader is more like, yeah, I think he'd question the need to do that. Yeah, like, he, he's a villainous bastard, but I would expect the writers to have him do something other than simply kill them all. He'd probably be like, hmm. Well, yeah, the, the, the amendment to this scene is that 
Anakin like doesn't do it. He he's outside of the room or something. He can't do it. He can't go in there. And then some clones just go in there and do it because they're much more like. Well, yeah, we've ruthless. we've tried to yeah. come up with a bunch of alternatives that are so much better than this bullshit. But like the one I think I want to see is that he actually tells them to hide. He closes yeah, the door, maybe even yeah. locks it, and then he moves through the temple, and we come back later to when he returns to the room to try and get them out of there. He opens the door, and they've all been killed. Coming out. Yeah, yeah. he just sees clones coming out of it, yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah, that's the scene yeah. that I think we should have had, and you can just have him realize that it's his fault that this has happened, and that maybe he yeah. has gone to blah blah blah. What I will accept, I'm not a fan of it, but I think it's way better than this, is that he commands the troops to go and do the job for him, because he can't. Um, I still don't like that though, and I, I just I just think that this is it's too much. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We've, we've too jumped far. too far. We've gone yeah. from he was he was definitely a good guy, you know, person on on Yesterday. the team of the heroes. Yes, <laughs> hours in, ago. In what, like three hours, he's gone from that to like a monster, a complete and utter monster. Completely yeah. okay with killing children in cold blood. In Fucking. Dumb, stupid, and ruins him completely in terms of understanding. How could you have any empathy for this fucking character after that? It's really hard to come back from executing many children who are asking for help. It's like, yeah, at that Plus, point, you know. If if you have... You cut out potential scenes where he encounters adults, personally, yep. so that you yeah, could we show this. Scenes. Yeah, Anakin, you like, showed this you know, instead Anakin, of that. Help me out, and then he, you know, chops him in half, and they're like, "Holy shit!" And they all try and fight him, and he's just, he's fighting them, and he's killing them, but he's kind of struggling because he knows these people. Well, yeah, but, you have yeah. like, um, you know, the I Master at Arms is people. at this place because, of course, they are, and they're dealing really well with the clones. And so Anakin is asked to defeat him, and you could just have that moment where he comes into the room with the guy's like, what the fuck are you doing? And he's yeah, just like, like they're yeah. actually, yeah, the, these Jedi are actually able to hold back the clones because they're being yeah. organized and they're really good at their job, God forbid. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one of the clones goes to him and says, hey, you know, we got some Jedi up on the second floor atrium or whatever, we can't break through. And he's like, we need you to help us. Deal with it. And just let him talk to them a bit so that we can see a little bit more clearly what's actually going on in his head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because How they cut over this? to Padme at one point and she's like crying and it's just like, yeah, I, I know like what you <laughs> think the justification is, movie. It's not good enough. No, it's not. Yeah, the idea that you want me to think this character values her life above all else, including several children's lives. Or like, I don't think that works. You're going to have to try harder than that. Uh, if you want to try that, then you have to write a better romance. Way yeah, absolutely. Better. By which I mean one that's not shit. Well, and you have to do all this by degrees. This has to be the the harshest thing that he does. And this, uh, like, genuinely, it feels to me that this film thinks that this is second to the harshest. The harshest being killing all the separatists. The film treats that mm -hmm. like it's the climax of his evil. Just it's like fuck off. The separatists. Not the children. There's, there's, it's way more grey to kill them in that room than it is to kill a bunch of children. Like, what do you mean? It's unbelievable. The younglings had their chance. <laughs> they chose the wrong side. Um, when, the Je when the Jedi fucking abducted them from the backwater planet that they were from, that was their fault. they indoctrinated them? Yeah. yeah. And so we get... A scene that's a little bit strange. Um, so the angle here is that anyone who's trying to arrive at the Jedi Temple is shooed away by the clones so that it's not too... Like, people don't really know what's happening here. And so maybe they can control the narrative. And Bail Organa just pops in. He's like, hey. And the clone's like, no, 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 fuck off. But during that, random, like, Jedi student just jumps into frame and starts killing a bunch of clones. And it's like, wait, what? Where the fuck where you come from? How the hell? Like, if you look behind them in that scene, there is so much like, room that you'd be able to see him coming from a mile away, but he, like, he just teleports in, he's like, blah, 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 I'm here to save the day. Um, but I think we're supposed to interpret it as he's just a Jedi that was trying to get out of there, I guess? Maybe. And the, the point is, like, the clones didn't want, don't want people to know that that's what's happening here, even though it's like, the clones are assaulting the Jedi Temple. Uh, they're saying to mm. strange, when strangers arrive, they say there's been a rebellion. We know what's going on. You're not doing a great job of hiding it. <laughs> I'm just like, all right. Uh, and I think it's, I don't know, just to give us more reason to understand, Bale is like a, a good guy. He's a good and, and yeah. 
Like, oh no, this is the evil empire. Um, and yeah, so now we're doing like just re recovery mode for a little bit. All of our heroes try to team up. Um, do you remember the shot where it's just like Obi Wan? I think they're like, no one could have survived that full, and then it just shows Obi Wan is watching them from. Like, fuck me. I'll, I'll send you the screenshot because I think one of you guys was just like, wait, what? Like, man, you don't look very hidden here, Mr. Obi Wan. No. Just saying. And like, you like, stealth oh, he's, Jedi right Academy. he's so close. So casual. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he, he, he runs off to uh, where Grievous was trying to escape and gets in his ship and leaves. Now, we had several comments for this when we were watching it. First being, they confirmed Grievous was dead, which signified the end of the war back in Coruscant. So, are we going strictly from Obi Wan confirming it, or did nobody actually want to get the body? Because if they did, you'd think they would have had, like, they would, they would maybe, for lack of a better term, it would be, like, cordoned off as, like, an area that's really significant. Um, yeah. But okay, um, the more egregious part to this for me is Obi-Wan escapes Utapau in a fucking CIS ship. Like, that's the worst way to try and leave that place right now when it's Republic-controlled. Um, but for some reason, there's just nothing stopping him. He just sort of leaves. It's like, there's there's nothing. Like, there's a little CIS bomber, I think, is the, the type, if I remember, from the games. Yeah, yeah, that's what they used for the bombers. So, what the hell? <laughs> like, it, what, what should happen is that, at maximum benefit, someone should radio to him and be like, identify yourself. But really, he'd just be shot down. Yeah. I mean, there is basically still a war going on. Yeah. Um, and there's this, this shot where he, uh, he's exiting Utapau. There's no capital ships. It's like, what happened? There was loads of them earlier. I guess, they are, I guess they're done. It's like, all right, guys, we got Utapua, Utapau. We, we got it. And this is the kind of shit like, that okay, really we're gonna go home. bothers me sometimes. It's like, yeah, I know we got to get Obi-Wan out of this place and over back to Carson, but like, this is just cheating. Episode one realized blockades were a thing. Episode one yeah. in that movie, abysmal. And then a, a funny thing that I think this is the first time we we talked about this particular criticism. But you have Bail Organa, the senator, sends Obi Wan a message saying, "Come to this area. There's been a horrible thing happening where Jedi are getting killed. Come, come to me." And and Obi Wan's like, "Okay, all right." I was like, "You got it." What? <laughs> like. <laughs> Why would you trust him? Like, seriously, why would anyone. you trust him? But yeah, why trust anyone at all? Like, if it were Yoda, I'd maybe like, see yeah, him, but even maybe then. Maybe Yoda. Um, yeah, I was like, ah, oh, and even then. We know that they can, like, fabricate this stuff, and uh, we were talking about Phantom Menace, they literally send one of these types of things with a similar message, and, and Qui-Gon is like, it's a fucking lie, don't send a message back, they're trying to trap us. Yeah, like, it was Obi-Wan! Obi-Wan says that. I think you're right. I think it is Obi Wan specifically. It is actually <laughs> Obi Wan. That. He was wiser in his youth. Yep. Um, but of course, they were thinking about that when they wrote that scene. It was we need to get Obi Wan to go back to a particular place. So let's just have Bail Organa send the message. It's like, yeah, but he, why would he believe it? Why would he trust? That's fine. We'll just move on. Um, Anakin's like, Padme, it's great. Everything's real great. I'm gonna do one more thing, and everything's gonna be super great. And that is going to Mustafar, and then. Obi Yoda and Balo Bumbo are like, we gotta change the message in the Coruscant to repel Jedi instead of attract them. And uh, Bail Organa is invited to the Senate for a big ol' speech. And it's just like, oh my god, this third act, here she comes. Um, Anakin even says to R2 to wait by the ship, but I always, uh, when he goes to Mustafa, I always interpreted that as being like, I'm about to do some evil shit, I don't need to see it, okay? I don't need to judge yeah. me. Because I would be like, man, this is weird. This is again, deep, sadly. Yeah. What, what What did you do with the Jedi Temple? And Anakin's like, I fine. It's not anything really. Oh, it was some just, weird stuff happened. Yeah. It was really all confusing. I was attacked Breakneck by many speed. children. Yeah. yeah. Self defense, bro. They're um, deadly in large groups. <laughs> do they have knives? It's like they had lightsabers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lightsaber knives, little tiny ones. Um. But yeah, so the scene with the separatists is the kind of shit that I way prefer in terms of showing us someone declining from good to bad. It, it's like, 
a bunch of bad guys who led the part of the war, and you've got them all in one place, you know, and they've got droids there with guns. It's like, yeah, there's a reason to kill them. Simultaneously, they're all begging for their lives, and they want the war to end. It's like, hmm. And so he's just wiping through them, and it's like, that's the kind of thing I would probably push for him to do uh, late into his transition into being evil. But the thing is, we just did the children thing, so it just feels awkward. I'm just like, yeah, I already yeah, know that... It's you know, all, <laughs> yeah, it's all downhill from here in terms of, like, importance. There's no, there's no more moral event horizons to yeah, Exactly, cross. like... Yeah, like, we murdered all the children. <laughs> that, yeah, I, I can't stress that yeah. enough. Like, trying to portray the scene as shocking to me with the Separatists doesn't work. I'm just like... Not shocking at I all. Like it's Maybe if the separatists were children, like like it was bring your kid to work day. <laughs> oh no! And he had to kill all of them, children and adult. He had to kill all of the children. He starts with the children. That's what he does. He starts with the children, so the parents have to watch it, and then he kills all the parents. You know, you make some jokes there, but like, let's remove the children seed from the Jedi Temple. And imagine he wipes out all those separatists at that point in the film, and there is what one of them has their son slash daughter with yeah. them. Father, is the war over? Are we going home to see mother? No, bitch. Uh, and everyone's just dead in the room. I mean, you could probably make a pretty good seat out of that. I'm not even kidding. You, you, yeah. Like I, my my silly jokes are far better than the shit that's <laughs> in this movie. I think, and honestly, the separatist killing scene is fine in isolation, but in the in reference to what we've seen already, it doesn't it just doesn't work for me. I'm just like, yep, there he goes, killing more people. That's yeah, hmm. yeah. He was gonna do that. Um, and then Obi Wan is like, "Where is he, Padme?" He's like, "Uh, does she just outright refuse to say, or just say she doesn't know?" I can't remember because he ends up just stowing away in his ship. I think he sneaks on. No, he does. He I just does can't remember what she tells him. Does she say she won't tell him where Anakin's gone? She doesn't tell him anything, yeah. Alright, well. Either way. Oh, yeah, there you go. So they, they, there's that moment where they, after he kills the Separatists, Anakin sheds a tear. It's like... It's bad. <laughs> and, you know, it's almost maybe, like so the tear is for all to... the actions rather than yeah, just Yeah, maybe the that's it. I'm sure that's, just, that's the oh. best interpretation. It's just... Man, the fucking logistics here, like, placing this here. This should be after the children's scene, 100%. If you're gonna put it anyway. I just don't think that scene should have been here anyway, but... I don't no, know. You shouldn't be doing this. Again, it just feels out of order to me. I'm like, wait, what? Now you're crying. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. A bit, oh, dude, like Gunray. That. We go way back. And yeah, I am skipping a lot here, but I feel like we'll be able to talk more about each of these things as they come up in the video uh, that we'll cover. So, you know, we'll, we'll get more out of it. It's alright. Um, the bad may arrives, and then we get what is probably the other contender for the worst dialogue ever in the prequels. Um, oh, fuck. It's all so, so first draft. It's all so bad. Yeah, yeah. it's all... You know, I just want to get the point across for the draft. I'll just write this in. We'll we'll finalize it later, of course. We'll go through the entire thing and we'll, you know, redraft this dialogue over and over. Some or of this the, is fine. This one that stuck out to me more bizarrely this time around than almost ever is what he just randomly is like, I'll kill the Emperor. We could rule the galaxy. It's like I was like, yeah. What? <laughs> Where'd that come from? Like, really? It's like, Did well, you really he, do that? Remember he said something like that to Luke in Empire. You're like, well, but, like, boy, Jesus, Is that George. really an interest of yours? Like, he just likes offering people that. That's his thing. Okay? He just wants to play co-op games, all right? Yeah. And, like, he's so, he says it so positively. Like, I can overthrow him. The weak <laughs> rule. So, yeah, and so the, the way that yeah. George wanted this scene to go was that Anakin is, like, talking about all these wonderful things with her, but she's realizing the underlying parts of all of it, that he's a fascism. And so she's sad. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, I mean, there's not much else that could happen here. And she's like, you're breaking my heart, bro, you killed younglings. And then... <laughs> and then, then, of course, Obi-Wan steps out. <laughs> Liar! <laughs> You're with You're him! With him. <laughs> you brought him here to kill me! It's so <laughs> awful. 
You turned her against me! <laughs> <laughs> We've cranked... The only way this dialogue can be justified is something he would say, is if, like, he's completely lost his mind and, like, only <laughs> wants to say exactly how he feels about any consideration for anything. It's just like, oh, yeah. Is it impossible he'd say these things? Like, no, but... It's not impossible, <laughs> but he said something a little less shit. I love the, the delivery of, you're with him! <laughs> you're with him! <laughs> and, yeah, uh, I feel like it's just worth cranking both of these, like, Padme and Obi-Wan, to just, just keep telling... You killed younglings, bro! Like, I don't know what yeah. leg you have to stand on right now. You, you just, you know, you could be all like, oh, you guys are against me, it's like, kill children! You're out. We can rule together. Did he need to kill the children for us to do that? Because hmm. he never denies that, and I just feel like it's something she should be more concerned about, because if he's done that, it's over. You should probably well, confirm it. It wasn't over when he killed, you know, all of the Sand people, you know? Yeah, actually, that's a very good point. It's very, she's a very bizarre character, that Padme. <laughs> she is a very interesting... <laughs> um... Yeah, they do their back and forth, their famous back and forth that includes... It is famous. Um, if you're not with me, then you're my you're enemy. enemy! Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Just... this is only a Sith deals in absolutes, which has been meme to and back as well. Um, yeah, that's, that's the kind of thing you catch in editing. <sighs> like, you know, the argument goes, that's an absolute, so that's pretty dumb, right? And what's wrong with certain absolutes? But then the counter is like, well, that's part of the point. Is the Jedi hypocritical? And you're like, is that? Was that the, the that's idea? Just him, though. I don't think that's the point. I think that's what we pull from it to make it work better. We give, yeah. They, they believe when it was written that that is an accurate statement. Well, I've seen the defense of like, no, he says only a Sith deals in absolutes. Get it? Because because no, Anakin no. is currently dealing in it while Obi Wan is just commenting on the situation or something Zero like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. I don't know. I, think I just know that there's plenty of people who are like, no, it works that actually. It's like, okay. Yeah, there's plenty of people who defend a lot of things about the prequels. Yes. Um, yeah, all I got for that is it's just, yeah, sloppy. So then they have their fight, and uh, I guess I'll just recommend Shad's video going over it. There's a lot of very complicated and very accurate choreography throughout it. Um, it's a cool fight. I like it. The Yoda yeah. Emperor one is a lot more to do with the Force, uh, and therefore yeah. mostly does work. Like, there's not much in it that's to be criticized too much. Um, I don't know I don't know what else we should comment on with these ones. It's just Yoda being like, I'm gonna beat you up, and the Emperor's like, nah. And they fight. I'm gonna beat you up. And then, yeah, they fight, and it's kind of a stalemate, but in favor of Palpatine. Especially with guards coming. Yeah. Mm. Um, Anakin and Obi-Wan's fight is fucking long. Yes, it overstays. Yes, well. it is. Just keeps on going. And, uh, we were saying when we were watching it, like, the, the moment where they get to have a conversation after a while, like, that should all just be cut. It's awful. Yeah. From my point of view, the Jedi are evil. From my point of view, the Jedi are evil is one of the worst lines. It just, ever. Like it's, yep. it, it perfectly summarizes the point of writing dialogue that is character accurate as opposed to telling me what this you what this have written the character feeling. to be. Yeah. Yeah. Really I could bad. picture George being like, you see, from Anakin's point of view, the Jedi are actually evil. He'd be like, yeah. So yeah, what yeah, I'll have yeah, him do no. is he'll say, yeah. So, yeah, so he'll say, from my point of view, the Jedi are evil. Because so, I think that from his point of view, effect. the Jedi are evil. Yes, it's nice tautological bow. Is it, this is the simplest way I can explain this, right? Is if he was like, I was about to say, check, you know, Anakin the Palpatine is evil. It's like, we need to change that line too, for fuck's sake. But um, just opening up the conversation that you're on the bad guy team, and then you have Anakin respond like in relation to some atrocity or bad decision the Jedi have made. And so someone would be like, that wasn't a response to what Obi-Wan said. These people aren't even making sense. It's like, well, no, the implication is that the Jedi are evil too, or more evil. And we don't do that with George Lucas dialogue all the time. There's no, they said a thing, and what does that thing mean about the character's, uh, you know, yeah. point of view? So you don't get to do that because they just tell you their point of view. Sometimes as overt as saying, this is my point of view. Yeah. <laughs> just... <laughs> That's funny. It, from that makes me feel angry. It's like it's it's that. 
Well, the uh, uh, Futurama, sure. right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you, I, you know, characters shouldn't be just saying how they feel. That makes me feel angry. <laughs> yeah. like, it's that, but, like, not a joke. And, the, you know, we at, we at EFAP don't like to make hard and fast rules. You definitely can offer I love it. have moments I love where um, you, your characters can say something that over it, but uh, they are such special circumstances. Yes. Yeah, there's a time and place for it. Um, but yep. this this ain't it. This Usually ain't after it. a lot There's... of dealing with it or talking about it in some sense is when you get someone to be that candid. You know, Sounds like children. Children will say that. You know, what he says like, "From my point of view, Jedi are evil." Um, Obi Wan's response is, "Well, then you are lost." It's like, wouldn't Obi Wan have a little bit of a like, "Wait, why? What? You think the Jedi are evil? Why evil? You were you were one of us yesterday." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What the hell happened? What did he tell you? And the thing How is, how many children did we kill in a room? I don't think that they've justified that position at all. Like, why does Anakin think the Jedi are evil? Because Palpatine There's no said so. To think they are. Yeah, because Palpatine said so, and because he's annoyed. Because yeah, what's <sighs> evil about the Jedi? Uh, they're a creepy cult that kidnapped. It's like they're well, plotting. You, know, you can't even like. And, you know, unlike <laughs> Palpatine, if someone was like, well, you know, over. Anakin might be able to argue like. Samuel Jackson was going to totally wipe out Palpatine without fair trials. Like, he did that to Dooku. So, no. Yeah. And so I killed Mace Windu and, without yeah, a fair exactly. trial. I killed him without a fair exactly. trial. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, meanwhile, we could have had, like, two and a half movies worth of sowing mistrust with Anakin for the Jedi. Not only with, with stuff that's true, that's twisted, but also lies. Yeah. And, um... He enough his personal grievances as well. Yeah, just just and pile it all on, and a lot of it comes out in their final conversation. But instead, it's just like I'm pretty sure they're evil. It's like, well, fuck you then. It's like, oh, that was the conversation. Why was that even in the movie? Was it to was it, it to make started. sure that we understand the positions of these two characters? Just so we're clear, guys. One Halfway of them through thinks, the lightsaber fight. Yeah, one of them thinks Jedi are cool, the other one doesn't. Okay, like, yeah, yeah. Tell me how they feel because I can't figure it out how they would come to have felt this way myself. Um, so yeah, I hate that conversation as well. I don't. Um, I don't hate the one with, with Obi Wan being sad while talking to Anakin as he's fucking well, as not bleeding to death. He's cauterized, but <laughs> yeah. he's, he's trying just really hard him there while robbing him. So yeah, that's a different thing about like. You wonder about Obi Wan's position here. He's like, he needs Anakin to be killed, right? He needs him to be dead. That's like a goal. That's like why he's here, right? Yeah, yeah, that is why he's here. So he doesn't really, doesn't really confirm that. He just hopes that he's dead. Yeah, and in a really painful way. Well, and so I was gonna say, so you've got that. Then you've also got Obi Wan. He is suffering, man. He is burning yeah. to death while having lost all of his limbs. It's like maybe you could, you know, maybe <laughs> kill him, put him out of his misery. Maybe not just love yeah. him and then leave. Plus, Palpatine's gonna be come by, coming by looking for him. Probably there is a chance he'll survive and continue to be chance. evil. And like Obi Wan watches it for a decent about a time. Sort of yeah. just like, well, sucks is to be that... you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you, buddy. Is that nice supposed to, to try and imply that he's trying to like work himself up to it, but he can't bring himself to do it? Maybe. So like, I, I, I was that, gonna bring that in like... as the counter. That's the best I think you can make of that situation. That Obi Wan just didn't have the balls to kill him. Mm. <laughs> it's like, eh, mm. I'm not. I'm not sold. No, I'm no, not sold you either. Need to... You need to just have it be that during the fight something happens where Anakin like falls into the lava or something. I would just go as far as saying that Obi Wan has watched him kill a whole bunch of children. He knows he's responsible for destroying the entire Jedi Order. Yeah, like Obi Wan is probably going to be fucking furious with him to the point of absolutely probably. executing him. But um, you know, we gotta. That's that's but just the way it happened. Live. Um. Yeah, and so then Palpatine gets gets old Anakin into a little hopsital bed. You, you having fun there clipping your toenails every? Yep. Oh, isn't that loud <laughs> again? Are, is that what you're actually doing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, look, all right. D no, I doctors encourage good self care. All right. 
<laughs> so anyway, um, it's just, no, anyway it's just, it, every once in a while you just hear the click. <laughs> like, I don't know it's that loud. Every single time I forget how loud it is. Oh, this is great for the lore. Yeah, people will make things no, of that. No, it's not. No. <laughs> So anyway, you have this like, whoa, Padme's like on a bed crying while giving birth, while Anakin's on a bed she's crying while he's getting his hope. limbs attached. It's like, ah, oh, it's like she's, the same time. She's dying though. You see though, his hatred carries him through that procedure while her sadness kills her. Well, he's yeah. gaining body parts and she's losing body parts. Like, do you call a baby a body part? I mean, if it if like you're pregnant and it's inside of you, I mean, it is connected to you. I guess so. Would you consider a tumor a body part? Oh, uh, in a sense. Babies, a tumor is confirmed. Kind of. No, Parasitic. tumors are quiet. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, Darth Vader's all made up. She dies of sadness. Oh, man. <laughs> she dies of sadness. There you go. Uh, again, this just feels like something we've discussed on EFAP before. Many people disagree with us. I know the arguments is like, it's not, no, it's broken heart plus the stress of the pregnancy plus the crazy theory that the Emperor fucking sucked her life powers and put it into Darth Vader to save him and kill her. What the fuck? That's a thing. It's a theory, yeah. We've talked about it on EFAP before that uh, the Emperor sucked her life force and that's oh, why gosh. Vader survived about that that's awful okay well there's just not enough Say in the film to support it let's be honest yeah um, they made that up they make a lot of things up to make these films yes better. they do uh and then we have the epic no no yeah. terrible 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 it decision is awful what were they thinking they weren't they were not that's they were great. not thinking um, and then we just sort of wrap up. It's like, she died, that's why she's not in the fucking OT, he's Vader now, they're building the Death Star, Tarkin pops in, it's like, that's all the stuff you remember, and, uh, Leia goes to Alderaan, Luke goes to Tatooine, and credits. Just, just she got sure. to be the queen, like basically the royalty on some beautiful, <laughs> wonderful planet, and Luke's like, nah, you could be on Tatooine. He's from fucking Over the shithole. It's like, oh man. But hey, you know, Tatooine's alright. I'm sure they have like fun little games like Ball in a Cup and stuff. Ball in a Cup. Um, yeah, like I said, we'll probably talk more about the, these things as we go through um, Plinker's video, but that that is Revenge of the Sith. Um, and I can't Feel comfortable in saying anything other like it's not very good. <laughs> like it's, it isn't very good. Yeah, it is. It is, good. it is unfortunately uh, not even mediocre. No, I don't. I don't think it it matches up to the level of mediocre. I'm afraid. No, uh, if, if we're gonna be no, consistent, which we are going fair. to be. Um, I wish it were better. It has the potential to be amazing. There's things I like in it, but like I I hate the fact that it's like none of this stuff counters the fact that it's got so much awful in it. There's just so many little pieces that are really neat, and I think that a it can lot distract. Of pieces. Yeah, it's a huge mixed bag of stuff, but unfortunately the bad does outweigh the good, and a lot of that is just due to execution of concepts. Yeah. But in an alternate universe, they could be refined, and they could be really made to be something great. And ain't this version, unfortunately. Uh, what do you guys have to say on, in regard to, do you prefer that the prequels exist or not exist? I prefer they exist. I think um, I prefer that they exist too. Yeah, I think for me it's easy. Uh, I definitely prefer they exist. Um, with all the stuff that it spawned, particularly all the games and mm. and all of the just the spinoffs and the way that it really brought a whole bunch of life and a whole new era to this universe. And I think it added a lot of really excellent stuff to the Star Wars mythos. Um, the movies aren't good. But I think in terms of the health of Star Wars, I think they did a good thing for Star Wars. Um, and imagine if we didn't have them to appreciate, but the sequels had come out. Oh my god, Star Wars would have been considered like it just got tanked completely from a great to just awful instead of great to eh, to just awful. Yeah. Because there's just like nothing to like about the sequels. They're shit. 
Yep. But yeah. at least the prequels, you could say this was good and this was good well, and this was good and this was good. Yeah, it's it's a really good backdrop. Um, even if the characters and the, the plot is is floopy. It's like the Hobbit, sort of. Where I'm like, I'm I'm fine that they happened. I'm glad they happened. There's I plenty think. of good it's bits just, in the Hobbit. Not as good yeah. as yeah, there's just they're not nearly as good as the Lord of the Rings, but I'm glad that they happened. Uh, you know, if they didn't have all the influence, like if we just look at them as movies on their own, would you say that you're happy they exist? Just these on their own? Yeah, I would. I think I would I mean, too. The meme value. I would like. not. <laughs> no, there you go. I do not like these films. Do you consider them a you don't even scar like them? on Star Wars? Uh, yes. Think about Darth Vader. He's a whiny brow who kills children. Mm. That was before. I don't know that I've ever been satisfied by that argument myself. I feel like every every big villain is going to have a a child and teenage life, right? I guess the thing is, I've, I've never found it hard to compartmentalize Darth Vader from Anakin and uh, their prequels. No, I understand that. It's just, I could also understand uh, the reverse. <laughs> like, I can this understand. Is, this is the portrayal yeah, I, of his fall is the thing to me. Like, I agree. His fall is not that's, well executed. Yeah, and that's no, what I, the prequels are all about. Uh, there is, yeah. there is no, like, do you remember the Darth Vader that uh, Obi Wan talks about in A New Hope? Doesn't yeah, we up. didn't get that. Yeah, that person no, doesn't exist. Didn't. And he was a good friend. It's like, no, he wasn't. No, <laughs> he was not a good friend, or at friend. least not from what we saw. We did way more time of those two being good friends. Like, he, oh, what he fucking backstabbed you in an instant. There was nothing to it. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. It. it so this is the interesting thing. I think there's damage to the OT as a result of the prequels. Compare that Definitely. to the damage the sequels did to the OT. Yeah. Completely reverse them, yeah. Because it's I insane. Think it's because the damage of the prequels is more self-contained than yeah, the sequels. The sequels really yeah, hurt the, the OT, whereas the prequels kind of... I like, think there's, there's, some, more of a, there's some stuff that adds to the, the OT in some small ways. Um... I think I think maybe the reason why it might just be because like the OT was the end, so even though you had a beginning that was rough, like the end, yeah, is yeah, still uh, is still there for you. And then sequels like lol no, well, yeah. Now when you watch the OT and you watch the ending and they're all there with the Ewoks and they're smiling, it's like they're all they most of them are dead, <laughs> um, and they failed as well. In and they life. failed. It would have yeah. arguably been better if the Empire just kept ruling the galaxy. Yeah. If you guys just fucking stood in line, a whole bunch of people would have lived. Prosperously, maybe even. Oh gosh, everything. Everything in Star Wars is pretty much fucked now. We know this. It's like the MCU. Yeah. Revenge of the Sith. So I guess that leads us to part two of this. Oh boy. This wonderful adventure. Oh, um, it took us three hours. Well, because that's the thing. I think it's pretty clear that we're not very in a hurry i was gonna say we're not like very positive about revenge of the sith um no no it's not good yeah i'd say we're more negative than our community will be uh, happy to see but i mean what are we gonna do not oh. tell you what we think i don't think so but there are people who are a lot less positive about it and uh mm. we're gonna check one of them out today for the first time ever efab covering oh red gracious. letter media <gasps> This video is oh an oldie. Boy. It is. Uh, it's it's a classic, if you will. It's got a lot of respect as being foundational for starting up the uh, different kind of because like he wasn't the first person to review stuff, but he was. He's he's almost considered to, to be like one of the uh, highest quality of its time, sort of thing, which mm -hmm. is probably true. Um, loads more effort went into it, and loads more writing advice is in here. Uh, as opposed to just, look how dumb this thing is, blah, 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 which is much more popular back then. Um, he's got one for Phantom Menace well, and sure. Attack of the Clones. We're probably not going to be able to watch them, because we're probably not going to be able to watch... I don't even know if we'll be able to pull off this one completely. It is an hour and 40 minutes. But I do know that lots of it are skits, so we'll be fine in that regard, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen this video in so long that I remember 
portions and bits and bobs, but I don't remember a lot of it, so... I don't remember a lot of it either. This is gonna be a strange experience. Uh, Fring, have you seen this video before? I haven't, no. What about you, really? Theo? Uh, I have seen this video before. Alright, well, I have positive memories of Plinkett's prequel videos, so we'll, we'll, I wonder how things may or may not change. But, um, yeah. Without, let's just get started, I suppose. Yep. Star Wars Episode 3 is the most dis disappointing thing since Star Wars Episode 2. What kind of an intro is that, you say? Well, shit, I think it's hard to be disappointed anymore when your expectations are so low they're right next to fucking dinosaur bones. Oh, so, it's low. So, like... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, he basically just said, like, it's pretty hard to be disappointed, and yet the third one is even more disappointing than... Because he, in his second video, he said, like, two is more disappointing than one. So it, it makes it sound like three is actually the worst. Which it isn't. It's, it's, it's I think it's easily the best. It, it's definitely the best. Definitely the best, yeah. yeah. It, is, it is definitely the best, and I would say that one is the worst. I think, yeah, I think that's what we concluded. I can, I can honestly sometimes it's not, not remember. It's not super... Yeah, it's not a super strong statement, but I do think that there's more redeeming about the um, Attack of the Clones than uh, Phantom Menace. Mm -hmm. Phantom Menace has very, very little of value. I think we all went to see this movie just to get it over with. Or it was like an obligation. Like going to your stupid daughter's college graduation. People were really excited for Revenge of the Sith. People were through the Very roof excited. excited. I remember the yeah. era. Is that... They knew. Vader's I was, coming. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure a lot of people remember prequels were pretty well received when they came out. Yeah, uh, it was It was, It was. was actually because it was the Plinkett reviews that kind of started to change the consensus. Yeah. You know it's going to suck. But I wouldn't want to deny the fact that he might have felt this way when he saw them. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. But you gotta go just to get it over with. No, fuck that metaphor. This was like going to an autopsy. You know, it's dead, and nothing's gonna change that. But you gotta do an autopsy to find out what killed it. Or who killed it. So that's what this review is gonna be. An autopsy video about Star Wars. Paging Dr. Plinkett. Dr. Plinkett is in, I'm here. Someone passed the Vicodins. No, wait. We need ambience. Well, we sure need something. And for the record, I'm gonna give this movie an honest review and analysis. I'll point out anything that's good if I find it. But still, a lot of you will claim that I'm one of those people that says George Lucas ruined my childhood. Now that's just crazy talk. George Lucas didn't ruin my childhood. Fucking polio did, number one. What were you expecting, asshole? Before we start, let's recap a little on the whole prequel thing and how it ruined six years of everyone's lives. Sick. <laughs> um, it's yeah, he's, he's getting there. He's just a lot of jokes now. You know, it's just funny to me. I guess it was just like ruined six years of everyone's lives. <laughs> like, damn, everyone's lives. Rough. Even starving African children in Cambodia. Now in short, I'm gonna explain how everyone in the world felt. Ready? Number one, The Phantom Menace. First of all, right off the bat, everyone thought the title was a joke. Everyone. That was a real I bad sign from the don't start. don't recall that. But then when you saw the trailer for The Phantom Menace, it looked pretty good. Oh my god, a new Star Wars movie? Can you fucking believe it? The hype for this movie was insane. I don't know why, why he said... The Phantom Menace is like a joke of a title. It's like, isn't it just? I, the, yeah, I, I don't. I don't recall it being, you know, a joke Attack of a title. Attack of the Clones is much more a joke of a title. Than yeah, the Phantom Menace or Revenge it's much more campy, stuff. right? Yeah, it definitely is. Um, Phantom Menace just makes you think there's a there's a spooky guy who's controlling some stuff, doing some evil. We don't know who it is. Who that? You know, Attack of the Clones is very straightforward. Hey, awesome! A young Obi Wan Kenobi is fighting some weird alien dude with a red lightsaber. Uh, oh, a little kid? Well, I'll I'll give it a shot, I guess. Well, we don't know the role that this might have necessarily. Hey, neat space battles. Oh, what's up with that geisha-looking chick? 
That's kind of weird. It doesn't really look like Star Wars should look, but maybe it could be cool. But wow, this is kind of how exciting. I don't, I don't know what that means. Like, it, that doesn't look like how Star Wars should look. Like, uh... Yeah. I mean, I'm I down could... for new things, so. It's a, well, yeah, it's a big, big galaxy, you know. I think you just need to, like, elaborate on that a bit more because yeah. I can potentially see an angle to it. Like, it's not within Star Wars as seen before visual profile or whatever the fuck, but, like, you need to explain why that's in what way and why that's not good. Yeah, because even then, you'd be like, well, there's going to be plenty of things we haven't seen, right? Yeah. Because there's a big old universe. Oh. Absolutely. It just makes sense to me that we'd see new stuff. I, it would be weird if we didn't. Yeah, but um, yeah, I'm not sure what he meant by that. Maybe he goes over it in uh, his Phantom Menace one. And then you saw the movie. Oh. Number two, Attack of the Clones. So after the shock wore off, we started to hear about the second film that was going to come out. Things looked a little more promising. The stupid kid is gone. There's something that looks like Boba Fett, or maybe it is Boba Fett. We see like early looking stormtroopers or something. We find out the title's called Attack of the Clones. And you're like, well, okay. It couldn't be worse than The Phantom Menace. And it's not too much of a stretch from a title like The Empire Strikes Back. Maybe we just needed to get used to it. So hopefully things have improved some. Oh my god! Then came time he for looks the bad, I guess. I mean, or... like, yeah, this, just, I don't know. This, this summary is kind of pointless. <laughs> like, it's just yeah. Like, yeah. A lot of it is just sort of if you say so kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, by this time, so. we felt like a fucking battered housewife who keeps returning to an abusive husband. Again, the first thing we knew was the title, which, of course, you thought the obvious thing, right? That if you simply rearrange the letters in the word Sith, you could spell out a different word that just might predict what this movie was gonna be. Chishi. Which is Chinese for disappointed in the cooking of the duck meat. But it also harkened back to the original title of Return of the Jedi, which was supposed to be Revenge of the Jedi. But at the last minute, Lucas had decided to change the title from Revenge to Return, because he discovered that having a word with one less letter in it would save him $916 <laughs> annually on the cost of printing the logo on countless t-shirts, like action joke? figure boxes, and posters. Yeah. Hey, ink's not cheap, kids. The man runs the business. However, by 2005, Lucas had saved up well over a thousand dollars in his ink fund so he could afford that extra letter so you bought your ticket or you snuck in the side door while people were leaving you got some popcorn or booze and you're ready to watch the third and final installment of the star wars prequels how bad could it really be oh you never thought you'd be laughing at the end, did you? Laughing so hard you couldn't breathe. Was all this a big practical joke? Well, we'll examine this and so many other things. It's time to put on my rubber gloves. Yeah, to be fair, if we haven't really talked about it, it's like, no many points have been made yet, it's mainly jokes. Nobody yeah, but yet. yeah, there hasn't been a lot of points, some assertions here and there, but nothing. We're getting there, I'm sure. Yeah. Let's have a look, shall we? Trust me, I'm a doctor. Kind of. Number two. Here we go again. Here we go again? That's right, here we go again. When C-3PO said that in Jedi, it was meant to be like endearing. Like he was a little nervous, but we are all excited about the adventure that awaited us. This is where the fun begins. You could say the same thing in regards to Revenge of the Sith. But with this movie, you kind of meant it in like a painful way. It's an actual here we go again. Cause you've been tricked twice already. But for some reason you need to see how it ends. Wait, what? Heroes on both sides? What? Can evil robots be called Wait, heroes? They're Wait, probably not what? referring to the robots. Yeah, it's like cause they're two major teams in the galaxy. There's, you know, already you've got the angle that there's gonna be rulers slash leaders that would be considered heroic related to like freeing you from the iron fist of the republic or whatever yeah that's how certainly how they'd frame it also it's interesting that he said like can 
can robots really be heroes? Like, well, in this universe, for sure. Yes, yeah. They, uh, they can, I mean, R two D two. Like, I would happily he's... describe R two D two as a hero. He's fucking saved plenty of people's lives throughout these films. Yep. He's a good. One. Why am I watching this crap? This guy they call Lucas, he's got us all by the balls. <laughs> His fingers are in our wallets. Get your finger out of my ass wallet. Now before this movie came out, this is what everyone heard. It's the best of the three prequels. It is. It's yep. the darkest of yes. the three. Yes. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a lot it better is, yeah. and darker than the other two films. Who gives a, a crap how dark it is? My stool is dark. And Doctor says that's bad. Yeah, I, I guess I agree yeah, with him. Just because sure, something's yeah. dark, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah. God. I don't know why he thinks he knows so much about interior decorating, though. Oh! Then Roger uh -oh. Ebert gave it three and a half stars. Oh. And then someone even said that it was the best. <laughs> Wait, is that out of four or is that out of five? It is out of four. Fucking three hell. Three and a half out of Jesus Christ, uh, yeah, Roger. I mean, what are you damn. doing? Three and a half out of well, four. I'll stop you guys there. Don't badmouth Roger Ebert. You get in trouble for doing that because he's oh okay. He's a legendary critic. Okay. Dang, I wasn't. I didn't think about it. I guess. This movie ever because it had lava in it. Oh, ain't he cute? His name is Johnny. I adopted him from a grocery store parking lot. Now, setting aside any kind of wild and crazy theories about movie critic payoffs. People sucking up to Lucasfilm by saying they like the Phantom Menace. I mean, I'd rather see episode 3 than blood in my urine, but the movie was just so <laughs> fucking boring. With a few exceptions. Like it's the comedy that. scenes. It was so... beautiful. It's only because I'm so in love. Uh, <laughs> no, it's because I'm so in love with you. Ah! Uh. So love has blinded you. Oh! <laughs> oh that's not oh. exactly what I meant. So let's talk about the good things. Do it. Ironically, the most <laughs> Yay. positives about this film are the things that are not in the film. One, Han Solo was not ruined. Oh, TFA. <laughs> Han Solo yeah. was not ruined. Oh, boy. Just you wait. Just you the, wait. There's an irony Don't here that worry. he's like, that's the first thing he brings up. He clearly cares a lot about that. He also loved TFA. I don't think he does anymore, though. Like, I, I think they turned over how time, many yeah. Do, like, no. Anymore. Well, the thing, the, the sequels have already aged worse than the prequels did. And they have. Absolutely, they have. The, the prequels, it was, you know, they had a few years after, like, Revenge of the Sith, where, you know, people were generally happy with them, but the, we were already done with the sequels <laughs> before the no last one, film yeah. came out. We've fallen out of love. The people who really love them, I wonder how much they just love them I don't anymore. know that, but Do does those people anybody? Exist? I'm sure like, there's some. There, there are some. Rise of Skywalker. Like, it's TOJ, that's the one that people still defend. But that's the other what people ones. claim to love. <laughs> Yeah, but then you they they, how they love it out of obligation. Ruined. Now Chewbacca was ruined for being plantlessly shoehorned into this movie. That doesn't ruin him. Well, how was he ruined though? <laughs> he's he was just there. there. He was ruined. He's not a fucking chauffeur. He's but it's Kashyyyk. He's, he's allowed to be there. Kashyyyk. I'm fine with Chewbacca being here. You know the I'm fact okay. that he's specifically the one that hangs out with Yoda again is like, well, how convenient for the audience, but like it doesn't change anything. No, it, I yeah, my I'm eyes, but that's about it. it. Yeah, yeah. But Chewbacca was no Han Solo. Thankfully, nowhere in this film do we have to watch that scene. You know, the one where we meet a young Han Solo who would, of course, look like this. <laughs> it would have been really easy for George to have a One little five-year-old kid running around that ship at the end and walk up to the two babies and have, like, Obi-Wan or Jimmy it's Smith It's really say, interesting to Young. think about this criticism with the sequels existing when the sequels much more so try to uh, leverage yeah. existing IP. Yeah, like the prequels material, really didn't. That they uh, they could have done a lot more than they did. Um, yeah, they really could have done a lot more than they did. Han Solo, meet baby Luke and Leia, and have them shake their little baby. Because what he's talking about right now is like lame fan service, kind of like Mandalorian yeah. does. Yeah, yeah, and and Book of Boba Fett, Will and Ahsoka, and and everything. Like the prequels didn't even do that, let alone what the sequels did. You know? Yeah, baby hands. It would be like Han lived on that ship or whatever, or shoehorn him in somewhere else. 
you'd think a toy of a young Han Solo would sell like hotcakes. Two, no Millennium Falcon. The Millennium Falcon is so fucking cool. What a piece of junk. It just screams classic Star Wars. It's one of those unique and iconic spaceship designs that have become a staple of pop culture. Thankfully, nowhere in this film do we see the Millennium Falcon flying around doing something stupid with like its original owner, who would most likely be some kind of terrible looking generic CGI piece of crap. No, the hey, Millennium Shrek Falcon is great. Is safe. Shrek is love. Take that back. Shrek is great. Then yeah, there is that small Millennium Falcon cameo, but I guess you could yes. say it doesn't necessarily isn't necessarily the Falcon. It could just be similar model make, whatever. Wait for Maybe, which one? Yeah. Where in is this? Revenge of, in Revenge of the Sith, you see like a little Millennium Falcon flying around in the background when they return to Coruscant. Yeah. Oh, I, I doubt it's the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. Safe and secure. It wasn't raped. Where would you rape the Millennium Falcon anyway? Right there. I've done it. Again, it's pretty shocking oh that God. in a film that exploits the pre-established iconic Star Wars images to such a degree that he didn't sell out with this one too. Speaking of selling out, have you guys taken the Kodak printer challenge? Here's how it works. Switch your current printer to a Kodak one, and then see how much money you save throughout the course of a decade. Or was it a year, not a decade? In either case, I got all my results right here. Let me share them with you. All right, from keeping a record. Um, <laughs> we'll just have to let this be play. This is just get. Heard over here in my creepy notebook. I've been logging all the times that I purchased ink and how much I paid, and now it's time to see how much I saved by using a Kodak printer. What? After fucking ten years, that's all I save? You piece of fucking crap! What? What is that goddamn crap? Well, at least Kodak paid me twenty grand for that plug. Unfortunately, I spent the twenty grand on hair plugs. Ah! Back to the review. Three. Almost no Jar Jar Binks. That happened. After three films, yep. Lucas finally got it. We only see this loathsome cunt for but a brief <laughs> moment or two. <laughs> <laughs> loathsome. <laughs> loathsome cunt. <laughs> Jesus, tell me how you really feel. Yeah. His <laughs> role as a funny thing for babies is no longer useful. He's still walking around the Senate doing something. Why isn't he working as a janitor somewhere? <laughs> you know, the thing he did on Naboo was like 15 years ago. You'd think the novelty would have worn off. Lucas just put him in there as a big fuck you to the audience <laughs> for not accepting him. Jar Jar is a key to all this. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's a funnier character than we've ever had in any of the movies before. Well, it's good to show contempt for your own. Oh, audience. man. Yeah. You wonder. Bay, you wonder. No kids. The first film no kids? had a kid. Oh, no. We've got a couple that were killed. <laughs> Other than that, yeah. A kid that made you want to sterilize the human race. Yippee! It also had other kids to fucking talk to. The second film had even more kids that talked. Finally, the only kid in this film that talks dies, and all of them die. These are positive changes. Wow, <laughs> this is love story. I don't like sand. Thankfully, there's no terrible love story in this one. This film is filled with hate and revenge, choking, murder, betrayal, sadness, more murder, more choking, worrying, more murder, death, and so on. Hey, anyone still want to use the excuse that these movies are made for little children? I offer not- We don't accept that anyway. Just no, yeah, that luckily I mean, for you, clip, yeah. This is the, uh, that's the clip you need to show people. Now is the time for you to bring that up. Lucas goes full-on adult audience here, giving us the very first Star Wars film that's rated PG-13. So why does this have to be so dark? I mean, did we really need this in a Star Wars movie? Okay, so Darth Vader was a bad guy, sure. But did he have to be a violent murderer? Was all that necessary in a- I mean, it, 
I'm fine with it being a violent murderer. Uh, so, what does Plinkett think about, um, like, the Rogue One scene? I don't think, I think does they hate Rogue like One. It? Yeah. Oh, okay, right. Um, I, I don't know why we wouldn't like I mean we have to I, I don't we don't see much of it in the OT, but just given his history, I think it's pretty safe to infer that he's done a lot of this. He um he just tortures Han Solo in the Empire he does, not not for really information, he just tortures it. him. Yeah, and very chill about it too. Yeah, he's you'd argue he's enjoying it. Uh yeah, I, I guess uh I find it weird because usually because you know, the the expansion of I guess Darth Vader in the prequel era, including like the games and stuff, he goes out on missions, you know, doing this kind of stuff. And I guess it's like, is that surprising? I mean he murdered Obi Wan. <laughs> well, there's a reason why people are afraid of him. He has a reputation, and he's not going to gain that reputation just by sitting around on the Death like the, Star all the time. The lightsaber is not like a toy that he has for fun. It's like no. he uses it to fucking kill people. Yeah, yeah. It's specifically, murdering children is is the part that gets me, not the That's murdering in general. Mm -hmm. A space adventure film for all ages. <sighs> <laughs> Fight the image. Yeah. <laughs> well, technically, yeah, because this is a story that shows how Anakin Skywalker became Darth Vader. Yeah, I know! But that's really the whole point of everything here, isn't it? Was this a story that needed to be told? Well, any story can be interesting. It just depends on how it's done. Was this the way it should have been done? <laughs> I agree. And lastly, the only good yeah, thing yeah. about the film that's in the film is number six, the Emperor. While his character was essentially ruined by being in such horrible schlock and actually doing what? some. That's not what? how it works. You don't get ruined by know. being in something it bad. Because he's things. like he's he's the part that nobody denies is like good in in this. In the only people like, really like the Emperor. only criticism is just going to be the nature of his plans throughout, right? Yeah. Sure. Um, but I, mean, I think he's pretty solid in the prequels. Yeah. Yes. I I think he's quite. Yeah, I like him. The high point. Yeah, he, he is like the he's the part where uh, there's not as many caveats for like praising him. Yeah. This Pretty is dumb stuff from... himself. The Emperor is just so wonderful anyways that it doesn't matter. Whether he's just filled with pure hate, or he's doing manipulative things to less smart people, or he's just being plain old silly. The man seems to find <laughs> that was the scene they had where he awkwardly <laughs> falls you gotta back respect on the desk. That. He even seems to get off a little in his pantaloons on how much hate he could feel in Anakin. I guess I really like Palpatine so much because he's the only character with any kind of passion. He's fucking evil and he loves it. And he's got a goal <laughs> he's working towards obtaining. Once more, the Sith will rule the galaxy. Love how he says that to Anakin. Yeah. Anakin's like, I'm on the good guy yeah. team, it's fine. Yeah, we're doing all right. <laughs> this is okay. Like, this we, is the worth the, the end. You get the impression with the second bit of that line, and we shall have peace. He just sort of threw that in on the end, like, just in case Anakin was. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I could yeah. go really far. Out this out this be good. Everybody will be happy. Yep. Um, and have yeah. peace, yeah, sure. Keeping yeah. our eyes on the prize, don't you worry. Everyone else is just like a cardboard cutout. So I think that's it. Unfortunately, Natalie Portman doesn't take off her clothes at any point. In fact, now she dresses like a fucking Quaker or something. Boy, I sure do miss the 80s. <gasps> so, what else did I like? Um... I guess I liked it when Anakin got burned. I liked it when it was over. Number three, what the hell is happening? So let's get into this film. All right. First and foremost, I want to debunk. Sorry, let me pause few, this. Few... I got a call. Oh. Um... All right. Um, coffee interlude. What? Why do you assume the best time to leave is when other people have left? <laughs> like... Because that means nothing. Yeah, that's the fair point. Because it means even less people to talk. Yeah. So. So Theo, how's things? Uh, you know, not bad. This sounds awful, bro. I'm so sorry. Yeah, well, you know. Just working, doing stuff. Not Be great, not terrible. The video yeah. so far has been more funny than, uh... Yeah. Informative. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's not really amusing. Like, 
I, I agree with a lot of the disdain for certain things, but I, I enjoy <laughs> his hatred of the prequels. I do. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Loathsome guns. I was like, <laughs> we just hate him so much. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, I have more love for Jar Jar than any character in the sequels. I would happily yeah. see him back, like, yeah. <laughs> doing some juggling on the street corner, trying to just make a buck or two per day. Yeah. It's, it's hard being me. He used to be a senator, don't you know? <laughs> I used to be a senator. <laughs> Now look at me. He's bearded Jar Jar. He's just like, with like gray hair because he's just getting on. And uh, yeah, he just, just talks about memories yeah. old. Nobody believes him, his stories. We know he lived it. Uh, There's no doubt as to the merits of Jar Jar as a character. No, of course. I think we can all agree I mean, it's pretty tough. work harsh. of art, really. Yeah. Who's your favorite Jar Jar, Theo? My favorite Jar Jar? Yeah, like Phantom Menace Jar Jar, Attack of the Clones Jar Jar, Revenge of the Sith Jar Jar. Uh, which one is the least screen time? It'll be Revenge of the Sith, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with Revenge of the Sith Jar Jar. I will say he looks pretty, say, pretty good. It's a restrained performance, you know, it's, um... <laughs> yeah. It's, it is a restrained performance, but a good he, one nonetheless. He was given a challenging script and he nailed it, I think. Hmm. Really, really, you know, got into the subtleties of the role. It was very impressive. I could believe that he was Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Really made him feel like Jar Jar Binks. Oh, weird that that wasn't included in the list of positives that his performance was top notch, but. Yeah. Fine. I'm surprised Ewan McGregor hasn't been given a special mention. But that's okay too. Um. Well, yeah. It it feels like that's another one of the elements of because I man that feels like perfect casting. Honestly, yeah. Like he uh he I really really like him in the role of Obi Wan. Um, that's why I get nervous about Kenobi because it's like you motherfuckers, you gonna like you gotta yeah. you gotta leverage how much I like this character and this actor in this role. <laughs> To get me to come back. And Lucas gave him three movies. Disney Star Wars is probably gonna fuck him up in one episode. Absolutely. Like like what I'm suggesting is like Lucas could have fucked him up three times over, but he didn't. I feel like Obi Wan's fine. Yeah, yeah. he's okay. He isn't doesn't that, suffer that from anything everyone else doesn't. He said like, you know, Han Solo wasn't ruined, but he hasn't like he said like oh Chewbacca was ruined by being here. It's like he didn't say Obi Wan was ruined. Everyone just suffers from a lot of plot armor and some stupidity here and there, but not really anything character-wise. Yeah, no, he's... Well, uh, yeah, I, I feel like the Obi-Wan that I see here, I can believe that he become, is the same Obi-Wan yes. that we saw in the in the original trilogy, yeah. What do you think, Theo? Yeah, yeah Theo, what do you think? What do you think, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't do think? think. I make it my job to not think. Ooh. I was curious if you thought maybe the Obi-Wan was ruined. Ah, uh, ruined? No, I. I don't know what to make of him really, because he's kind of entertaining at times, and he feels like he's one of the few characters with an actual personality to him. But it's nothing for him to really like. He he gets sent around on errands so much, doing things that prevent him from really expressing anything in terms of a character or to have any interactions with anyone. In Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, he's he's just off running errands somewhere because we need him apart from Anakin for various reasons. I don't know what those reasons are in Attack of the Clones, though. <laughs> he's doing his little investigation, isn't he? Yeah. That's right. He's, we've got to have him off doing that instead of being around Anakin. When... Yep. They should have just done the whole mission together, but then we needed Anakin yeah. to do his romance plot. Oh yeah, we did need that. So uh, they can roll around in the flowers while Anakin advocates for fascism and you know, <laughs> to his liberal girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> advocates against sand, don't forget that. He does do that, which is, you know, understandable. I love it when people are like, Somebody's so critical of that line. Sand is coarse. It does get everywhere, you know? <laughs> like, sand isn't great sometimes. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I it, it, There's a time and place for sand. Yeah. So true. Myths I love walking around the beach. Mm -hmm. 
good, okay? Number one, because it's dark, no. Number two, that opening shot is really impressive. Because it's like... Um, it is impressive. One long, uncut shot or something. No. Yeah. You see, I'm sure this was done intentionally by Lucasfilm. One, so there'd be something memorable. Yeah, they didn't accidentally the do it. Uh, yeah, no. so this is going to be a whole conversation. <laughs> you got to be careful with how he says all this. He frames it at first as the person says it's impressive because it's all done in one shot. And his response to that would oh. be, that's not impressive compared to it not being a one-shot because it's all done in a computer regardless. Meaning, like, if this were to cut to a different shot several times in this scene as opposed to just being one, there's not a real difference because of the whole time people are clicking stuff. But I think you broaden out, like, well, neither of them are unimpressive because it's hard work. Um, it's hard work every time. It's just different yeah. types of hard work. And then a wonder isn't kind of work, yeah. only appreciated for being unbroken. We've talked about how there are wonders that are fucking pointless because they're like, yep. you know, just someone standing around. Um, it's about what the wonder shows us. What what is its purpose as well as what risks are taken, how things were nailed in production. Like there's there's a lot of elements that make um, a wonder meaningful. So we'll, we'll go a little bit further. See what else he says. We'll, we'll see. Too, so that idiots will tell other idiots about it because at this point there's nothing impressive about visual effects. Man, they don't dazzle oh, the uh, audience. Oh. oh, yes, they do. I mean, like, especially yes. now that even then they certainly did, but even now, like, Dune just came out Thanos. and Thanos. Well, he said this in like 2013 ish, that's when he made this, yeah. I think. Like, man. He's yeah. so wrong. <laughs> it's not it even is close. really weird, yeah. Visual effects absolutely blow people away. They still do, still can. You just have to get more yeah. creative and then higher fidelity. We're, we're still, we haven't capped it out anywhere close yet. No, we haven't. We're not capped, no. Anymore like they did in the past. Now it's just a bunch of crap all over the screen made by computer animators that wish they chose other careers. I doubt it. So, a bunch but of crap on the of... screen. It's like, it's all purposeful. You got the plant, the city yeah. planet, and it, there's this huge battle with all these different starships belonging to the two factions above it, with two characters trying to make their way through it. Like, it's not just crap. It's no. some of the stronger visual storytelling in, I guess, the prequels, I'd say, in that it's just, you know, guiding us through this chaotic clusterfuck. Yep. You could even argue that's what their position in the storyline is, as two characters. They are together, they're gonna try and approach all of this insanity, basically. Like, there's, there's plenty you can yeah. pull from it instead of just saying it's random crap. Cause it ain't. Random, I mean, random... random it, good. Like, <laughs> you can't say together. it's random because it was made very... It's very... By, by people. Slowly, like, it, deliberately. It was made on... It would have taken months. That doesn't make appear to shot. be much of an indication of things just getting thrown in there just because, as far as I can tell. Well, the, yeah. the problem is, when it comes to visual effects, you can't just, like, throw things in. That's, yeah. that's all work. It's, it's a very long process. Into. Multiple stages. It's iterative. It's planned out. Yeah. Those are the worst kinds might be that. Maybe you could Maybe, argue that. But, um, and yeah. that's probably then highlighting, wait, so there's good and bad for this as a subject. Exactly. Which is the important part, instead of writing it all off. I would go as far as saying that, like, getting everything accurate in terms of physics and graphics is already hard enough, especially trying to match everything yeah. to be accurate to you whatever see. teams. Yeah, I mean, you see how bad it is done so often. Often, I mean, a lot of Star Wars CGI is just terrible. Some of it's good. A lot of it's really bad some kind of uncut special effect shot involving models and precise timing and actual camera work would have been impressive as opposed to uh, Man. It, this is it's still uh, camera work i don't like this attitude the implications yeah. behind what he just said actual yeah. camera work so again like i can't help but instead of being like well, let me explain some things that make this like no you're just wrong this, i don't even want to uh yeah. try and explain like oh, i fair how you've come to this conclusion it's like no wrong so when it comes to, like, making CGI shots, technically speaking, there is absolutely a form of camera work, especially with the one yep. They have this environment that's created, and now they're going to pick parts of it to show in particular ways. Yeah, um, absolutely. The interesting part being, one of the ones that really, like, starts to make you think is, uh, I, I spoke to Fringy about this, but, you know, Ready Player One, terrible movie, but, um, the Oasis is a world that's, like, created all 
in, in like an environment, and uh, at least part of the way it was shot was that you'd have like a room filled with mocap people and green screen, and so it's like, oh, terrible filmmaking, but then you come on with a camera that has the Oasis world built into it, and so when you look through the camera, you see the whole world, if, if that makes sense, instead of the mocap and the gray and the green and stuff. And so then it's oh, like yeah. you're you have a camera in the CGI world, if that makes sense. Well, that it's it's the reason why you can achieve shots that feel like they were done by a person, um, because it's got all those types of movements baked in, in the same way that motion capture bakes in a lot of the the stuff that's harder to uh to capture if you're trying to animate it. Because you know, even we, we do this with the sequels. It's like there's lots of deliberate and great choices made with the camera. Um, yep. Even if there's loads of CGI or exclusively CGI, uh, and, and it just feels like yeah. we're being way too harsh here, and we've accidentally now made some standards that are absolute bullshit to try and shit on Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, yeah I. There's no way they. I. I don't think they believe this today. I don't know why it. Uh. I mean, I hope not. I certainly hope not. I mean, you. You do. I guess you do get people who say stuff like this who really poo poo on CGI. Um, but. Man, like wh whenever a, a movie comes out that has legitimately bad camera work and really bad editing, no one poo poos on like real stuff. You know, whenever the models look crap, people don't say, oh, well, using models is bad and it's just lazy and blah, 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 blah. But when there's bad CGI, it ruins the whole thing. You're right. Uh, I would even argue that, you know, as much as I like the Rancor, it's very clearly a puppet when you're watching. Return of the Jedi. There's not like a moment where you go, oh, oh for a second there, I thought it was definitely real. It, it moves very awkwardly. The mouth, like, when it's trying to eat stuff, it's just like, yeah, you're kind of making it. Um, meanwhile, I would just compare to the Balrog, where I feel like most, if not everybody, is immersed in that scene. You know it's not real, oh, yeah. but that doesn't really matter, because you're just like, whoa. You're it, there yeah. for the ride. You're, you're totally sold. Yeah, um, and so at that point, it's like, what are we highlighting? It's like, well, I guess that there's just great execution and terrible execution of both. Surely. Yeah. yeah. It is a technique, and it can be used well or poorly. Exactly. For good or evil. Yeah, and so I think if you were to, to talk about this subject again, he'd probably be, make it clearer what he's actually trying to say instead of accidentally stepping all over loads of... Because like, we've talked before... Where we'll say something like someone's like, oh well, it looks great, right? And we're like, yeah, they have money. It's like that's not to say that it doesn't take effort and isn't impressive visually. It just means that we're yeah, not talking about the writing anymore. Yeah, it. There is an element of you can just sort of. It's certainly more than writing. You can just sort of buy good CGI. Yeah, and because some people are like, well, how did that work for Black Panther then? It's like, well, you can't. You like if someone said like build, you know, an entire world in one second. It's like no matter who you're it's paying, that's not happening. Too. Yeah, it's they still need time, time, which they did not have a Black Panther, from what I understand. But this, this shit ain't no Rube Goldberg machine. Doesn't need or to be. ain't no fucking Goodfellas shot, that's for sure. So what? It's a few minutes of a CGI battle sequence. Some guy runs it on his computer. But and and I guess that's the thing. Some guy. Yeah, why is a it said this people, way? A lot of people, a lot of people would have worked on that. Well, yeah, but why lot. is it said in... I could say that the same thing for practical. Yeah, a guy did it on his computer. Some guy. Like, is there something bad about doing something? Uh, is it not impressive that we can make something that looks real that is literally just... When you boil it down, a bunch of triangles and well, PNGs and stuff? Just like... My theory for why you said some guy is to imply that when it comes to practical, we know these names like Stan Winston or... You know, different production right. companies that make this stuff while with CGI, they all blur together. It's like, not true. Ah, uh, like... There are people who are way better at this than others. It's a reputation, yeah. And I think it starts to ILM. reveal the core problem, and I believe this to be true about a lot of people who comment on this in general. You don't know a lot about CGI, let's be honest. It's okay. It's fine. We all have a very basic understanding of it, mostly. But the amount of techniques, time, and teamwork that goes into CGI is something that's basically alien to a lot of people. Well, it's a lot of the techniques that we've developed, you know, like uh, I know, subsurface scattering, which is the thing that makes, like, human skin look real because of the way that the light, uh, like, reflects off of it or is scattered underneath the surface. <laughs> subsurface scattering. It's like, man, that didn't exist, but we, like, that's, made it. That's a great we point. invented that. Because you have um, the equivalent in practical is when, and I remember Jay explaining this on one of the Red Light Media videos, but like, 
to simulate zombies getting shot in the head, uh, Tom Savini would, like, glue, I think, a coin with skin and blood on top of it, gl glued all to the head, so then when they're shot, you pull it from, like, a string, and now it looks like they're getting shot because you've revealed a thing. It's like, what, a, what an awesome technique that does a thing. And it's like, you never do that for CGI, even though CGI has a bazillion different no. techniques that are being developed all the time by really talented people that make things look incredible. Well, yeah, it's, it's a, a constant different thing. iterative process. I just think that they don't know much that's, about it. That's, the, that's it. Yeah. When that I guy mean, invents you know, the thing, <laughs> there's just not enough, I guess, coverage of that or understanding of it. I mean... You know, there's something to be said about perhaps that we have an over-reliance on CGI nowadays, like, where there are, there are instances, I mean, like in Black Widow, right? Why didn't you just go to the forest and shoot there? The forest exists. Well, the, when they're just on that um, table talking to each other. Um, yeah. Yeah, the like, I think that's probably what's poisoned the well, in a sense. Like, fucking CGI. It's like, no, not all. No. <laughs> no. And I mean, as you've seen here, you've got the Incredibles. It's like, yes, this is computer-generated imagery. Are we Are we actually... But we're, nobody, we're not going to shit on this, yeah. are we? Like, How many terrible we puppets have we seen in movies and nobody craps on the thing? Yeah, you'll never catch people saying fucking practical effects, am I right? It's like, what do you mean? We love practical it effects. Looks so fake. It looks so fake models and precise timing and actual camera work yeah but the models breath. exist digitally someone had to make those exactly digitally. and yeah. i just i just hate the actual camera work that makes me cringe actual yeah. not real Real camera legitimate work. Yeah. genuine but this this shit ain't no rube goldberg machine or it ain't no fucking goodfellas shot that's for sure so what? It's a few minutes of a CGI battle sequence. Some guy runs it on his computer. But whole movies are made entirely with computers now, even without any actors whatsoever. Movies like Toy Story and Transformers. And that it here or there it doesn't matter. So if you were impressed by that, then you've been punked. No. 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 You were impressed by Thanos, you've been punked because that was just done on a computer. So because it wasn't like there logic? was work and effort that went into it. Because the impressiveness is, is animated things as well. Exactly. Yeah. This if so it's so bizarre to hear this from him. He should know that there's more in camera work than simply holding the machine and pointing it in terms of like an yeah. IRL as opposed to being on a computer when you do it. That's so weird that you'd say this. So you're able to convey a lot of things with how and where you place the camera. And yeah, the editing stuff. of it. Yeah, exactly. Um, this video was made on a computer. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, is it bad that I might be impressed by this video? I'm not, but is it bad that I, as someone, might be impressed by this video? There's, there's Why weird things live being said, and this is a very. It's, it's strange how much time he's spending on this as well. Um, yeah, this is an odd one. I guess he, he just saw too many people praising it, and he was like, no. And, and while I'm just like, it's pretty chill. There's lots to praise about it. It's pretty cool. It's fine. Um, you'll be okay. Just like Demi Moore. Okay, so I'll be brief. I have no idea who's attacking what, or what ships belong to who. Pretty sure it was in the opening crawl, wasn't it? Yeah. I just so. remind myself. The Republic is crumbling under attacks by the ruthless Sith Lord Count Dooku. The fiend destroyed leader Grievous has swept into the Republic cap capital and kidnapped Chancellor Palpatine. As they try to escape, they are besieged and by uh, led by two Jedi. Yeah, like it's it's literally all explained. It, that's all the crawls about. Doesn't seem too tough. Yeah, it feels feels like a weird complaint. Who and I'm not even gonna try to figure it out. There's ships all you over the to. place, things are exploding, and nothing's at stake for me to care. So we see Anakin and Obi-Wan flying around in this mess. They know what the ship is, is General nice. Grievous? General Grievous' ship is directly ahead. But they don't tell the other ship so that they could all attack it at once and decide. Well, they don't want to attack, so they don't it. attack it. They you don't want to attack it. You don't want to you want to you don't want to hurt the person you're trying to save. There's a rescue this, mission yeah. that you're sending two talented Jedi on. And if that doesn't work, I'm sure there's a plan B. And ultimately they can just blow it up, I guess, if that's the... But that would be the, they gotta, the last fucking idea. They want to rescue Palpatine. Yeah. Disable it or whatever. Bye. He says to disable it or whatever. I just, I don't... 
we see what happens to that ship when things attack it. <laughs> yeah, if you disable uh, a ship, it, it was one of the big plot points of Dead Space, where, oh no, we're going to fall into the planet. We have to get this ship up and running. Yeah. You can't just turn off a ship like that. If it's, if it's not actually in orbit, in, in true orbit around a planet, you can't just disable it. Uh, that's okay, because I don't even know who General Grievous is, because no one told me yet. I'm General. Didn't they... So, let me just look at that opening crawl again. Uh, it is study with the fiendish droid leader, General Grievous. Alright, he sounds important. Hey, we need to make a rule, okay, where we debate people on the prequels. You gotta read the crawls, they are there to be read. <laughs> <laughs> They're not there just to waste time and extend the, the, yeah. the time of the video. Oh, if he's saying, count. like, I don't know him, you know, in a, like, like, more detail, I'd be like, yeah, sure, but I mean... He's just been introduced. He's we we know him as a droid leader. The droids are the bad guys. It's simple. And he's called a general. Yep. Probably pretty important. I'm gonna assume he's important because he's a general. <laughs> <laughs> there wow. you go. Well, there you go. All right. And apparently he's got some kind of grievance with somebody. I don't know. But also aboard the ship is Commander Nefarious, Captain I'm a bad guy. And Admiral Bone to pick. But they don't mention them. But what I can comment here on this scene is something I noticed, which I'll call backtracking. You see, the whole point of all this shit, or so I thought, was that Anakin Skywalker was supposedly a great and kind, noble Jedi Knight who was tragically seduced by the dark side of the Force. And I guess he's saying according to the OT. I mean, that's the general idea, yeah. Came a Darth Vader. Vader was seduced by the dark I side. I just of said the that! Instead, for whatever reason, Anakin is written as a bad apple from the start. Tell us now! I killed them. And even in this film, he's now wearing some kind of dark clothes and his hair is long and unkempt. He just seems like more of an asshole. But whoever's writing this shit suddenly realizes that they need to remind the audience that Anakin is still a good guy. So the dumbest thing ever happened. They're all over me! I'm gonna go help them out. What? He wants to go back and help out the clone trooper? Oh, right. Anakin is noble. Mm-hmm. You know, pretty much from the start, they've established that the clone troopers are disposable people. I don't think that means you shouldn't care about them at all. I'm fine with yeah. that line. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine with the line, too. Right I can clearly tell what it's trying to do as well. Yeah, you yeah. can tell what they're doing, but at the same time, like, it's not out of character for someone to be... To hear someone say they're all over me, to then be like, I'm gonna help them. That's yeah, not at all weird. Work, but like, yeah. Thanks for the ride, idiots! I'm pretty sure when formulating battle plans, Yoda or whoever isn't thinking of casualties in terms of how many widows this battle is going to create. Alright, no, but there's still a logistic... They they have personalities. That you, have. Like, you can't think of them as... You, you literally can't think of them as droids when you've met them, because they're people. Yeah. So yeah, you there, feel bad when they die. A, yeah, I mean, certainly in... Just going by the movies, there is an... It's not well-defined, but they're not... They're definitely not robots. The extent to which they're human-like is a bit amorphous and poorly defined, but they're clearly more than robots. And then there is the aspect of you can't have too many casualties because then you'll lose the war. Yeah, like this is a weird appeal where it's like, come on, you're not going to care about them at this point. It's like, well, he does, and people can. I don't know why we he's should take fighting, much issue with this. He's been fighting with them for a while, so it's very possible that that is an aspect of, you know. Yeah. Like poor Abe Lincoln was. He was thinking if he was going to run out of disposable people before the battle was over. And shit, at this point, Obi-Wan and Anakin have been fighting the Clone Wars for years. An argument that's for why they would see care. them as more human, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why they would care. They've probably grown accustomed to seeing these guys bite it by the thousand. But yet on the brink of reaching General Grievous' ship, whoever that is, to save the Supreme Chancellor, Anakin is suddenly concerned with the welfare of one clone. We don't know it's if a, this happens often. Yeah, and it's a guy in his ear saying, I'm dying. Like, I'm dying, please help. I, I don't know why that's so hard to believe. That's fine with me. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally fine with this part. 
trooper. I'm gonna go help him out. I'm afraid it's a little too late to backtrack the entire last film. He didn't spend that much time around clones in the last film. Barely any. Basically was, none. Yeah, because they weren't even in it <laughs> until yeah, the end. Yeah, arrived at the very last until moment. Right at the end, yeah. And um, he's not only a bad guy in, in Attack of the Clones. I, I don't disagree entirely with, like, you know, the trying... I get the point. Yeah. The, the premise of his thing. I, un I agree with the, like, the concept, but there's a, it needs a lot of... This isn't how I would put up put this up at all mm -hmm. number four setting the stage for confusion continuing on let's discuss opening sequences in general you see most movies open with some kind of something or other that gets things going in screenwriting terminologies it's called an opening scene or things that starts the movie off at the beginning. In most cases, it can be an elaborate action sequence that introduces the characters and setting, or it can be a funny sequence that sets the tone. Or it can also be something as simple as a word that ignites a mystery. Rosebud. In Revenge of the Sith, the opening sequence is so weird, disjointed, and ultimately pointless that it makes Cop Dog look pointless. like- Pointless. Pointless. That's, I mean, I'm, uh, all I can say is I hope he qualifies Dooku all three of gets, those. Yeah, because Dooku gets killed. The plan goes off to get Anakin down that path. I mean, how how that is executed is definitely wonky, but it happens. Wouldn't call it pointless. Mm -hmm. Cop out. Pointless. I don't even know what that means. By the way, did you guys see Cop Out? It was amazing. I said, it was amazing. Check it out. <clears throat> oh, there it is. So the very first thing that we got to sit through is a pointless and unexciting sequence where Anakin and Obi-Wan fight off robot things on their ships, only to eventually make it to where they're... See, so I would, I would defend it. I'd be like, I think the point of that scene is to show the relationship they have, how Anakin is willing to go the extra mile to make sure he saves Obi-Wan. Um, also, this is a battle. Yeah, and just their dynamic as it currently stands. I, I don't know that that's yeah. it's weird to call that pointless. Yeah, it's fine. We get a little bit of flavor, some robots we haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. You know, this just adds a little, yeah, different kinds of uh, enemy uh, combatant types. I'm like, I like it. That's, I'm fine with it. To it's not the problem with that they scene. They also make waste of battle droids with such efficiency that it's both totally pointless and boring. You might as well just have them land their speeders in the hangar bay and get out, and not have the battle droids there at all. Because it's the same goddamn thing if- I think it's just meant to have us feel as though it wasn't easy. You know, like, I say easy, it or wasn't- at least working for it. Yeah, there's something they have to do, and, you know, to it be like- It would be weird if there was no resistance whatsoever as they tried to get in the ship, you know? Yeah, and if someone was like, well, it's stupid battle droids can't do anything to them, it's like, yeah, I mean, that's true, but they are Jedi, like, the battle droids are much better against people who don't have lightsabers in the Force. Um, yeah. Which they fight a lot of. They mow down clones while clones mow down them. Like, I don't know. It's, it's just like, yeah, they're here, they get killed. Because it wasn't the simplest thing ever to just walk in. I guess he's saying, like, yeah, but it makes no difference stakes-wise because they just wipe through them. Well, this is this this is Obi Wan and Anakin Skywalker. We're they're not gonna die at the beginning of the movie. I will. I would if they were killed by a battle droid. I'd be like, fucking hell, what? Like, that would be, be bizarre. Yeah, like, I don't know. They're there or not there. You get it? Then we're introduced to something that I guess is a reptile inside a robot costume wearing a cape. Now, is General Grievous supposed to be funny? Cause they said he was a villain, right? Not a comedian. Like Larry Seinfeld, but more like a creepy weirdo, like Jerry Flint. I'm so confused. Funny. Anyway, I don't know. I thought he, I was waiting for him to play a clip or something. I don't know why he said. Yeah, I don't funny. know what he's. I I legit don't know what he's referring to. What line or action or, I'm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. With these fucking Star Wars prequels, I'm always forced to go back to screenwriting 101, and a big four-letter word that comes to mind. Fuck. Nah, no, I'm just kidding. The word is crap. Nah, no, I'm just kidding. The word is shit. Nah, no, I'm just kidding. The word is piss. Nah, no, I'm just kidding. The word is poop. Nah, no, I'm just kidding. The word is garbage. Nah, no, I'm just kidding. The word is tone. And for those of you who don't understand what I'm saying, tone is how a movie feels. 
Movies are either like comedy. Tone is how or a dramas. movie feels. I'm not sure I agree tone? with that as a call it like what tone is. Um Tone is how a movie feels. That is that is so ambiguous it's practically useless. It feels to me that that statement makes it sound like it's on the the in, the, the individual to interpret it as opposed to what it is. Um, uh, tone is it's better to say atmosphere, maybe. Um vibe. Um it is the state of how things are being treated <laughs> like it's it's uh, a little bit yeah, difficult to define i think so too yeah i go with like yeah like the general vibe or the the general atmosphere that a that a scene or movie attempts to establish through its dialogue stakes music editing um but then again the i wasn't of subject like, matter yeah yeah that's absolutely part of it too undoubtedly mm -hmm. um I just wasn't expecting to have to define tone in this mm. thing. But um Yeah, I wouldn't just say how a movie feels, because that's that's just not helpful. It's too broad, too open or to interpretation. Or thrillers. If they waver on the tone, you don't know what it is and your brain starts to hurt. Typically you should establish what, what your movie is in the first ten minutes or so. Take Ghostbusters. You establish your characters. They're witty and funny, and your audience gets that this movie's gonna be some kind of light-hearted comedy thing with ghosts in it. There isn't a violent rape on a pinball machine in the first ten minutes of Ghostbusters. Nor is there a pie-in-the-face gag in the opening of Citizen Kane. In Revenge of the Sith, what appears to be a general space adventure film is punctuated by a brutal decapitation mixed with bizarre attempts at slapstick those two moments are not very close to each other. No. Yeah, like, I get what he's theory. saying. It's the same sequence, but, yeah. If we if we consider all of this the opening, could one not argue that this represents the film as a whole? There will be very dark things, there will also be light-hearted moments, and it's going to be an adventure, if we're going to go that broad. I think it's a bit harsh uh. to um, put... R2-D2 lighting some things on fire next to the execution of a surrendered foe when they're not right next to each other in the film. Like, like scene to scene, I mean. Humor. Yeah. <laughs> 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 this whole sequence from the beginning to the crash landing goes from an intense, confusing, and complicated space battle to no, awkward slaps. Did you press the stop button? No, did you? No. Sure. Oh, it's you. Then suddenly it becomes dark and violent. <laughs> then back to awkward comedy. I don't know if I'd even call that dark and violent. I... This feels weird. I, I feel like you could make this argument for a lot of stuff at this point. Well, because a lot of movies do the balance of comedy with drama. Because we are jumping... You know, like, um... You know in, in Infinity War when um, uh, Star-Lord is like everyone stop, and they all just ignore him and keep moving. That's right before Star-Lord kills Gamora, quote-unquote, right? Like, chooses to pull the trigger. Like, mm -hmm. are those two things now, like, is that bad? And there's, you know, I mean, you even got the other one of, uh, the dance-off right before the climactic conclusion in Guardians of the Galaxy. It's, like, divided by no time at all. It's one after the other. Yeah, I'd be curious, because this is the thing, I, I found this difficult to argue in TFA Part 2, it's, uh, tone can jump around, it really can. Tone can jump, and I don't have a problem with it as, as a thing, just in, you know, it, it yeah. depends on the execution. Yeah, why is the and tone ultimately. shifting? Was the tone shifting yeah. maybe, like, earned? What does it achieve? What does it achieve, I think, is an important aspect. And like, I, I can't argue anything other than we are drawn into that uh, execution in terms of the fight starts, it's getting, you know, gradually more and more intense. And then Dooku loses, and then we have a moment of figuring out, well, what will you do now? Like, the idea that it's like, we just did jokes. It's like, not really. We haven't done jokes in a bit of time now. Archie. Then I don't know what the hell the tone is supposed to be here, if it's supposed to be funny or... Action adventure. I don't know why... Yeah... Pretty simple. Yeah. It's not the issue I have with this scene is the tone. And how they... Yeah, it's the... That's not the issue with this scene. 
or exciting or scary. I, I, I exciting. can't feel it's anything. supposed to be exciting. Definitely exciting. The answer. Definitely yeah, exciting. Definitely that's, exciting. That's it. If, exciting. If you said, like, is this supposed to be scary? I'd be like, I don't I don't uh, think so. No. I don't think it's meant to be scary. No, I don't Weird think it's meant to be that way at all. If someone said they did find this a bit scary because of the, these new droids, whatever, I'd be like, no, it's fine. Like, I don't know that this is weird. Like, you can get a lot of emotions out of a scene. I don't know that any of this confusion comes from anywhere but you trying to create confusion. This is clearly action adventure. Then to make matters worse, Lucas prematurely tries to create a thematic bridge between Jedi and Sith by having a set that looks like the throne room of the Emperor. In Return of the Jedi, everything built up to that showdown. There's a certain tension in the air. You can't use that imagery here and now at the beginning. It makes no I mean, sense. You, can. you literally can. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I don't know. It, this feels weird, but all right. It depends on if you think that they're going for the exact same feeling, which I don't think they are. Um, and even well, if they were, you, you, you there are arguments the to be made here. You have the Emperor watching Anakin fight Count Dooku and then execute him, which, if you consider the events of Return of the Jedi, where the Emperor wants Luke to kill Vader, you know, there's stuff to think about. There is a parallel, yeah. It's confusing to us. Either have an opening sequence where it's like the last of the light-hearted adventures of Obi-Wan and Anakin. Like they kind of did and then had it go dark? I don't know, it seems like they, it represents the movie to some degree. Before things go really bad. Or have a dark, dramatic opening sequence where Anakin and Palpatine discover things about each other and a dark tone is set. One or the other? Well, let's discuss what happens here. Palpatine has been kidnapped by General Grievance, and the Jedis are there to rescue him. The entire sequence revolves around the moment when Anakin goes a little too far and cuts off Doku's head. So basically, as far as I'm concerned, at this point, Anakin is Darth Vader. And getting burned and put inside the suit is just a formality. You didn't think that when he killed the sad people? <laughs> Children? <laughs> I guess? I don't know if, if that's going to be a requirement, Yeah, I feel like you know? that was, that's worse than Dooku. Yeah. But several questions remain that aren't told to the audience. And I don't care if it was told to us in a fucking book or whatever. One, did Grievous actually attempt to kidnap Palpatine on his own? Two, did Palpatine- I think it would have been orchestrated fully by Palpatine. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Palpatine would easily be able to put himself into a scenario yeah. where he could be captured. Palpatine allow Grievous to kidnap him, or Probably, did the yeah. two conspire yes. together to stage the kidnapping? So that was basically to... the same thing. I was gonna say, he kind of asked the same question three times. Yeah, that's sort of the yeah. Kidnapping was Doku being killed part of the plan. If so, I think he wanted this to happen, Palpatine. He wanted Anakin to kill Do Dooku. <laughs> if oh, Dooku did... was still alive by the end of this movie, there would have been. He would have been. Uh, he couldn't have been a. It would be very strange for Dooku to continue existing as his apprentice. Uh, yeah, kind of in like in in a post-war scenario. He'd have to be like a secret one, or he'd have to be, which I guess wouldn't be an issue because he's clearly leading a secret double existence anyway. I don't know where he makes the time. I think he just gets in the way of this... Anakin being his apprentice, right? Like he, I think so. I think he does want Dooku out of the way. That... Why would that be an issue, though, if Dooku was there as well? I um... guess, like, could you not have both? Would it, uh, don't you want the Sith to rule the galaxy? Is What if... I mean, Dooku sounds like he's really, really, really useful politically, potentially. And powerfully, like... Uh... And powerful, yeah. It seems to me that he just he wants to bait Anakin further along the dark side route by having him execute Dooku. Maybe Dooku is more uncontrollable. Like if like he 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 can't just like Dooku won't necessarily do anything, but maybe he's like, oh Anakin, this guy'll do fucking anything. Maybe, yeah. And then of course I know people be like, it's a rule of two, rule of two. It's like, uh -huh. That's dumb, uh -huh. and I don't believe you. Doku have any say in this plan? For what if Doku just happened to spill the beans about Palpatine being Sidious when he realized he was betrayed? What if Anakin didn't kill Doku after Palpatine said to kill him? Talk about awkward. Well, I just run both scenarios, I guess. If 
I guess Palpatine figured that Dooku wouldn't rat him out, but if he did, he was like, hey, don't you know he's a S Sith Lord? I imagine Palpatine could just play like, what the fuck are you talking about? What? Like, uh, yeah, I think D Dooku would be smart enough to be able to reference something to make explain, it explain. Yeah, explain all kinds of different things. Just the kidnapping and the, a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. And the how do you think this happened? How do you think this happened? How do you think this happened? Look at where he's gotten. Check his metachlorians. All you, that's all you have to do. Check his metachlorians. Yeah, um, I guess the only thing you can say is that Palpatine figured that Dooku wouldn't let the truth out. Um, it seems like a bit of a gamble, doesn't it? Yeah. That's quite a gamble, yeah. Five, did Grievous intend to kill Anakin and Obi-Wan, or was his plan to let them escape? No if so, idea. why wouldn't he just leave their lightsabers behind somewhere? Like in a safe or something? Rather than bringing them with. Your lightsabers will oh. make a fine addition to my collection. Oh, he wanted to put them inside his coat with his other trophies. Oh. Well, being trained in the Jedi arts, doesn't he know that Jedis can move things with their minds? And that displaying that he has a bunch of lightsabers is probably not the best idea. Agreed. A little dumb. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really dumb. Because then they'll just do exactly what they did. Oh. But wait, there's more. Grievance sends his henchmen to attack them, and then for no reason he walks out of the frame and does nothing off camera while the Jedi yeah. defeat the henchmen. Yeah, that's right. Grievous should be attacking them. He's like one of the most powerful. He's yeah. the most powerful thing there. Yeah, and he has a lot of allies to work with here. Mm -hmm. He's got yeah. a good Saturday morning cartoon villain thing. Yeah. I'll wait for the mooks to get. Get them, yeah. Where is he going? Why is he going over there? What the hell is he doing? Unless his plan was to escape, but then why bring them up to the control room? Why not keep them locked in the ration? No one knows why they're there or what the plan was. It just sort of, everything just happens the way that it does. You're like, alright. Because yeah, uh, if his goal was to kill them, they were lucky as hell. If his goal was to just waste time until they escaped, like, okay. Shield and then just leaves. Wait, if Obi Wan can just grab the lightsaber with his mind, did they even need R2's distraction? Oh, wait. What if Anakin was having like a really bad day and he was tired and unfocused and then he accidentally got killed by one of those guys with the things? I guess Palpatine was secretly controlling Grievous and everyone's. I do think, we, to be fair, we have to assume Palpatine took those risks and just. Figured that if Anakin can't think, defeat these things, then maybe he's not worth. Maybe he ain't that worthwhile. At know. least I still have Duke. Oh. <laughs> 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 At least I still have Grievous. At least I still have Grievous. He's cool. Maybe he can use the Force at some point. He can use four lightsabers. It's pretty neat. Give... <laughs> yeah, that's the alternate ending. Grievous is is Darth Vader or whatever. He's like <laughs> he's like killing younglings. Man, I fucking love that. You know how many of those bastards I could chop in half with four lightsabers. Just uh, spinning them up like a helicopter blades. It's just like running through all the children. I can cut all them in half like I'm mowing the lawn. Oh, his actions in the control room, including Obi Wan's, Anakin's, and all the robot guards fighting them. Because Anakin could have gotten killed. He could have gotten crushed by the elevator. But that doesn't explain how stupid General Grievous acted. Why not just keep them in the ray shield forever? But then you get- Oh. Oh! Oh, Grievous doesn't know? So wait, why didn't Grievous just execute Palpatine so that he could win the war? Or kill Palpatine- I don't Many know why- questions. Well, why would killing him win the war? It would certainly be quite a- Let well, me Cal see. Dooku you wouldn't win- said no. You would have- You would have- Let's see. There would definitely be, like, a propaganda victory value, well, propaganda is... value in it. Well, you could argue is... the reverse, right? That killing Palpatine makes everyone be like, okay, this is fucked. You just killed a political leader. Uh, yeah, that's so true. Now it we're depends gonna depends fight his, harder. I guess, I guess it depends on his military role. Like, it, it just makes it... It ties into a larger thing of, I have no idea what's happening in this war. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know what this maneuver represents, like, going to, uh... Coruscant to capture Palpatine. Are they looking to occupy Coruscant because they have like pushed the Republic back to this point because they're winning, or is this a last ditch Hail Mary? It strikes me as a Hail Mary, but like we have no idea what's going on overall in the war or what this represents to either side. True. Yep. That's and true. the Jedi's only captured them. 
Was he trying to get like a ransom? Did Sidious tell him to capture Palpatine so that he could lure the Jedi's on board only to kill Doku? Because oh. But the loss of Count Doku. Wait, I guess not. Wouldn't Sidious have wanted the Jedi's to escape? Uh, I'm so confused. But wait, there's <laughs> more. I, That's I, a really good delivery. Yeah, yeah. I agree with the, as soon as you get into the bridge, I don't understand what everyone's plans it's are, really. So confused. So confused. <laughs> in the first five minutes, we've already gotten into territory where every single line in action makes no sense again. First of all, once they rescue Palpatine, he says, Get help, you know, man, for him. He's a Sith Lord. Obi-Wan then turns and says something incredibly stupid. Chancellor Palpatine, Sith Lords are our speciality. Oh, sure they are. His real response it's should have been- three years! This is the thing, I, I, I can't- we talked about this already, I just, like, I can't speak to- It's a to... weird line. It's a weird line. With what we've seen, it is strange. Are we supposed to assume they've come very far since then? But even if you've practiced a lot and your powers have doubled, they're still not your specialty? Well, they no, didn't, I... didn't you literally say that th that might be their role? As they are the Jedi that do go for Sith Lords? How many Sith Lords have they gone for? That was what, well, that's I, what I said. <laughs> <an> <laughs> right from the Clone Wars. Is it, yeah, I, I guess we'll never know exactly because these films didn't it's make it clear. It's a weird line, series yeah. Anyway. And um, this... didn't they fight? Uh, they fought because by this stage, uh, Obi Wan had fought Darth Maul again and his brother. Yeah, they fought uh, <clears throat> Savage Oppress. No, <laughs> no, right. Is he a bad guy? <laughs> no, is, he's a good guy. Is he a bad savage guy? Oppressed. Like, like is, is General Grievous? Is he is he on the good side or is he the the bad one? Captain Hope, Hope is a bad guy. Captain yeah. Hope. <laughs> um, yeah, I. Captain Hopeless is just on the other side. I will of agree. Battle. It is a weird line. I don't think I'll concede that it makes no sense uh, because there's there's ways I it can make sense. I won't go that far. Yeah, I I won't go that far. But really weird. Then wait, get help from where? From who? Who on this ship could help us? And how do you know he's a Sith Lord? Or how do you even know what a Sith Lord I, is? Wait, hang on. Instead, you, I feel like I've missed something. We know who Count Dooku is. People is he know talking about someone Count else? Or? Is, right? Uh, I'm so confused. No, he knows the but Dooku. wait, there's more. In the first five minutes, we've already gotten into territory where every single line in action makes no sense again. First of all, once they rescue Palpatine, he says, Get help, you're no match for him. He's a Sith Lord. Obi-Wan then... So he's saying, where would you get help from, I guess? It's like, well, I mean... It's perfectly reasonable to assume that there's clones that have boarded this ship, too. I don't know. Yeah, it's like our, our landing team is standing by ready to breach the, you know, whatever so that they can get in. Like, we cleared the way for them, or the, the in the chaos of battle, we get to... If clones bursted in here, I'd be like, yep, that sounds that Helpful. sounds reasonable that they'd be ready. Yeah, a team of commandos come in. And, you know, you can call... There's a whole battle outside. There might be many people available to come in here. You don't know. And turns and says something incredibly stupid. Chancellor Palpatine, Sith Lords are our speciality. Oh, sure they are. His real response should have been, Wait, get help from where? From who? Who on this ship could help us? And Potential clones, all the people on your team. There's, there's plenty of options. Yeah, this How is a battle going on. Oh, he's a Sith Lord. How does Palpatine know Count Duke is a Sith Lord? Every, like you just said, it's been established. Everybody knows. everybody knows he's a Sith Lord. What? <laughs> In the last movie, it's been established. Everyone knows this at this point, yeah. Obviously, Palpatine would know that. Or how do you even what know? Else and, is and he? What I mean by that is, he obviously, he would know that as Chancellor Palpatine. He doesn't need to be Sidious to know that. He doesn't need to be Sidious, no. What a Sith Lord is. Instead, the whole... I mean, what do you mean, how does he know what a Sith Lord is? That's very node lodged stuff at this point, especially if you're on terms with the Jedi where you discuss battle plans with them. Like, the Sith is a big old asshole. Darth Maul was a thing. That was 10 years ago. Or even more, 13, something like that. But yes, they've known about this for a while. They've probably discussed it at length. The comment goes right over Obi-Wan's heads. I guess Palpatine was controlling his mind, right? 
no. to like make him stupider. How did this happen? We're smarter than this. Then after Doku is dead, there's a sudden urgency to get off the ship when before there was no urgency at all. Leave because they've got Palpatine now and that this place is dangerous. Maybe he meant like the conversation once he was getting up from the chair as it compared to now to where it where it's so urgent we have to leave Obi-Wan. But I mean that's Palpatine saying it though, and that could just be his attempt at being like, I could probably knock out Obi-Wan here. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's what the plan is sort of supposed to be, but... I'm him, talking we'll never make it. It. Why is there a sudden urgency to leave? Now we must leave before more security droids arrive. Oh, right, yeah. Those security droids have always been a real problem. You don't fucking why, but, but you don't... Well, want I mean, I might, I'd rather not fight them than have to. Like, I don't... That feels like a weird point. I'd yeah. rather not have to fight them. If Especially I because it. I'm I'm me. I'm an old dude who exactly. like I can't reveal. I certainly don't want to reveal my powers. So there's no time. We must get off this ship before it's too late. Anakin should really stop and say, "Hold on." Before what's too late? Leave him, or we'll never make it. What's Where are the security droids? Is that good enough? Also, this is a battle. I'd rather not be here. Yeah, they <laughs> you want know? to like, get away from the destruction. Like the idea you, you're in the middle of like just a battlefield. And you're like, hey, let's get out of here. Like, Why would you be worried? Just <laughs> highlighting like this is a sp suspicious thing to say. I would just be like, I don't know. The most I would get from it is just like, wow, it's a little bit insensitive. Yeah, like, God, geez, he, he just came to here to save life. your life. Yeah, yeah, like wow, he's still clearly fine. He just Pounce. needs to wake up. Blur. You know, you're acting like a weirdo. You know what a Sith Lord is? He's a Sith Lord. Why is this- why oh, no. would you not know what a Sith Lord is? We all know it. You're telling me to cut off someone's head. Kill him. And then you're telling me to leave Obi-Wan Kenobi, a Jedi that we've all known for decades. Leave him or we'll never make it. To die for no real reason when there's no real hurry. I don't know that you can say there's no real hurry. There's no real hurry, but you don't need that point to make this sound ridiculous. We can't take five minutes to pick his body up. You're acting kind of suspicious, but no, our lead character- I was gonna say, like, I'm not gonna disagree with that point overall. He's incredibly <laughs> I suspicious. Funny. I just find that funny. You're acting kind of suspicious. It's like, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a <laughs> Feels like a Rick and Morty line to an actual, like, over <laughs> Yeah. I mean- I mean, it does, it falls in line with a movie, but unless I literally just spell out that I'm a Sith Lord to you, until then, I think we're just going to be okay yeah. away with anything. Actors can't form coherent thoughts or are intelligent enough to notice basic things like this. And then we as an audience are constantly sitting there asking ourselves questions about motivation and logic the entire film because the script is a rushed, sloppy mess that was written in a week. There you go. A first draft. Official first draft. All these scenes and all this shit the is just to get Anakin yeah. in the Darth Vader suit for no real reason at all. And people what? wonder why the- What? <laughs> for no, for real, no reason real reason at all. For no real reason at all. For no reason. Uh, I, I'd just be curious what he means by that. Does he mean like in a meta <laughs> way? Like there's no story that's... to actually tell? Yeah, I don't want him to belittle that suit. That is polished yeah, voodoo a story to tell. What's what I'm saying is, like, I, I'm not sure what his point is, but I think he's wrong no matter what. Um, Why well, they told it? Well, I, you, you could, uh, if if Lucas was on record saying he only did this for the money, I'd be like, okay, but there is still a story to tell. I know. There is still a story here. Yeah. The prequels are bad, poorly written films. I stand by my statement that people that like these films are either drooling idiots that just like lightsabers or tiny babies. Anakin. Well... I just, I just find them fun. That's all. They're funny movies. They're yeah. they're funny and goofy, and I like and them. And they're fun. Yeah. And it's like I'm kind of. They're not. If they were all mediocre, I don't know how I'd feel about them. But because a lot of them are, especially the first two, they're so bad in these bizarre <laughs> alien esque ways. That was what yeah. makes them so entertaining. There is an element of man. It's fascinating that these exist. Yes, they are fascinating. Movies, and then there's I stuff think. that I think I legit enjoy too. It's yeah, a weird yeah, mixed bag. Absolutely, yeah. Next, we see our second usage of backtracking when we are reminded that Anakin was indeed a great pilot. He was the best star pilot in the galaxy. You see, he knows how to say, Open all hatches, extend all flaps and drag fins. He also tried spinning. 
That's a good trick. <laughs> yeah. That's a good trick. Wow. What a great and legendary pilot. Stop feeding us this pig slop. Uh, like this, I don't know that they're arguing that spinning makes you a great pilot. It's just something that he did and it worked in that moment, which to be fair, I don't know how much of a problem with it working in that moment. Uh, where yeah, he makes I'm... the rockets slam into each other. It feels a little afterthoughty, his incredible piloting-ness, but... Um, okay, that's something he's really good at. I'm trying to think, like, is there any piloting that even happens in Attack of the Clones? Speeder and Coruscant, but... Yeah, other than that, I don't think he has a chance to pilot anything. Yeah, he does the pod race, but that's different than piloting a ship. Yeah. Um, but similar-ish, I guess, in a way. Um, well, I, I guess yeah, I'm... I, I don't know what would be... Because he called it backtracking, I'm just like, well, I mean, he's just piloting. What else can you really do? A, yeah, I guess it's just something he's good at. We haven't really seen many opportunities where that sort of comes through, but I guess it's something he's good at. Best star fighter in the galaxy? Yeah, that's taken it a bit far, but... Um, well, you said it with reverence, uh, right? Like, for all we know, he's exaggerating because yeah, he just remembers just the good times. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the extend old, uh, whatever he says, drag pins, whatever. Uh, if, if he's like, oh, that makes you a great pilot. It's like, well, I don't, I don't know. It's just That's probably just the thing you should do in that scenario. I, I don't know why. Is, he's treating the scene as though the scene is like, let me prove how good of a pilot Anakin is, as opposed to Anakin is just the best suited out of a lot of them to pilot that thing. Because he's, he's just the most talented in piloting. I don't know why we, we can't be kinder to the scene and just be chill about it. Yeah, um, he's good at he's good at flying. I'm fine with it. I will believe that he is he has he is talented at flying. I'm only I'm sure half pig. So then ignoring the logic that a runway wouldn't exist in a world where every craft can I take off. I don't think this is necessarily a runway. It might just be a flat. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Is it supposed to be an actual runway? I don't know. I never thought about it. Uh, I just thought it was a, a large I, piece no, of I land that uh, you could argue the ships could land on it. I don't know. If that's the case, it would be odd that there's just a convenient runway in a universe where runways are not needed. And I probably can't, just thought out don't exist. I'd have to hear arguments for what people think it might be, because I wouldn't want to assume straight away it's a runway, but I really don't know. Yeah, maybe he... Does he point it out when they're coming down? He's like, hey, look, they use that runway. I don't remember. Good trick. Wow. What a great and legendary pilot. Stop feeding us this pig slop. I'm only half pig. So then ignoring the logic that a runway wouldn't exist in a world where every craft can take off vertically. But on a planet that's nothing but a city, it's a good thing they didn't crash into a space orphanage. Another happy landing. Another happy landing? What kind of crappy dialogue is that? Anyways. That's speak. great. That shit's gold. He's just, he's just a little he's, That's just his personality. Yeah. yeah that's just, I think that matches him well. Dude, if I had just pulled that off, we got the Emperor, we killed Dooku, Grievous was forced to retreat, we killed all those robots, we landed this half of a ship safely, and we're all alive and well, and I'm sitting there resting at the end of a tarmac, and I'm like, man... I am so Another happy good. landing. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, I'm gonna I'm gonna toot my horn a little bit there. Speaking I'm of gonna be happy so landings, have you, have you planned your next fun jet vacation? These hotels and resorts come highly recommended by our knowledgeable team of destination experts based on the amenities, added, added values, and overall experience they provide. And since we refresh the deals every two weeks, there's always something new to check out. Check out these hot vacation destinations. St. Louis, Missouri. Kabul, Afghanistan. Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Nairobi, Kenya. North Korean holding cell awaiting public execution for spying. No refunds. Speaking of destinations, let's take a trip to our film's main setting. Number five, a war with no consequences. The terrible result of the limited script focus is the lost opportunities of all the other elements at play. Basically, the point of all three films is just to get Anakin into the Darth Vader suit and to neatly tie everything together at the end and to make a shit zillion dollars. In the end, when you think about it, nothing else mattered, really. 
Obi-Wan was static and boring, as was Padme, and basically everyone else. And the ironic part is at the center of all this is the largest galactic war ever, which was used as a device by Palpatine to trick the Senate into making him the Emperor, when he apparently had the ability to influence people's minds anyways. Could have skipped the whole war from the beginning. So again, I don't think the war... it'd be that easy. I, I, I don't think if you can control, let's say you could control people's minds like perfectly. It is a big galaxy. You got to go around controlling a lot of people's yeah, minds to get yourself that kind of power. Control one or even ten, you have to get a shit ton. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. War is between robots and clones. And just for the record, I do think the acting and performances are wooden, but not Obi Wan. I don't know why no, we would say Obi Wan is the. Ex he's kind of the exception to the rule for pretty much everyone. Um, oh, him and Ian McDiarmid. Yeah, know, those are the two are, that really yeah. stand out. Um, the the other acting in this is just mm -hmm. bizarre and weird. Oh. The robots do try to conquer other planets, like the Wookiee planet and the whatever planet, but basically the effects of this war are not felt at all on Coruscant, the main setting of the film. The whole war just seems like some kind of minor inconvenience happening somewhere out in space. Even though it says it otherwise. It would be nice, especially flavor-wise, if we got a lot more of this sort of... Oh, man. It, well, I mean, granted, we're only a couple years in, and it might take a while, especially on a galactic scale, for things to really seep into, you know, here. But I think the, the biggest effect of this is, miles upwards, there's a, a huge battle still that's basically raging, and um, we just don't care. That's you know, like we're be. down here on the planet, like we're supposed to be another world away. Yeah. There should be like hellfire, apocalyptic debris falling just on that alarms planet. Alarms blaring Absolutely. and screaming randomly here and stuff. It would certainly it give be more weight if when... the Jedi got straight off of like another happy landing and then they pulled straight into relief efforts because, good lord, yeah. <laughs> a battle on that scale that close. Yeah with all the debris being, falling down to this giant planet city. Yeah, being able to point out a window and say, this is why we have to end the war, da 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 da, da when there's, like, rubble here in the city. Like, this is Coruscant, of all places. You'd think it'd be the safest place you could be, but they could strike at any time with their droid army. And Oh, you're already making me are gonna picture be... it, Rex. The, the, some uh -oh. kind of taxi that takes them away. when They're all happy, because it's hard to cut to tragedy after him saying another happy landing. But... You know, you have them all sitting down, and they move in, they're having a chat, and then Obi-Wan just looks out the window, and you can just see smoke, fires, different places, loads of traffic, things getting locked off, and you can have him to be like, this is... Sirens thing. blaring, yeah. Those little fire, the, those fire putter routers in yeah. the sky, that is the most ineloquent way to say them. Fire but putter they, routers. <laughs> Fire putter routers in the sky. They could be out there just dowsing fires everywhere from the debris and just shit that's crashed. Yeah, and you, you know, he oh, just starts talking about how the war needs to end. The opening title crawl. Padme combs her hair in the window, smiling. There's an active nightlife scene. Ships fly around like business as usual. And then they brabble on about taking back whatever system in like a dry, dull, corporate boardroom meeting. I've always hesitated on suggesting ideas on how to fix the Star Wars prequels, because basically everything in them is wrong. But mm, Well, <laughs> we feel that yeah. way about a different era. Yeah. Um, you know, because I wouldn't want to say, like, there is a lot of things you have to do to the prequels to fix them up. A lot. There is. But they you can be done. Yeah, even the stuff we compliment when dug into pretty deep, you'll find like, uh oh, this doesn't really make a huge. Because yeah. a lot of people say the strength of the prequels of the world building, and it's like, I mean, there's a lot of it. It could use some work. Yeah. But here's a couple of simple ideas to make the audience care even slightly about what's going on. One, skip all that clone troopers crap. Stormtroopers originally seemed to be just dudes in uniforms, like they never said they were clones. In fact, they even small talked with each other. Do you know what's going on? Maybe it's another drill. But you gotta do something with clones, because they mention it. You fought in the Clone Wars? Yeah, I got it, thanks. Well, so, I don't have a problem with um, the prequel's decision to do this. I, I don't either. It's how the army came to be, and the circumstances... Like I said, 
it's the how we got here to this idea that the, the idea is fine. We have to work on how we got here and the execution of that idea. Yeah. But anyway, how about the clones are just like ugly cloned monsters? Maybe like those things from the Lord of the Rings movies. The Urgutu. Or whatever the hell they were called. The things that got birthed by evil magic. Then they attack Cor This is a... We've stepped so this, far away from the, the story the prequels had now that I'm just like, what are we doing? I think this is a remix of Believe Me Now by Electric Light Orchestra in the back as the music, which is very interesting. But I knew I heard I'd have have heard that tune before, but uh maybe someone in the comments will appreciate it. I don't know. But right. yes, we have strayed very far from If well if I said to you guys, like in terms playing. of fixing the prequels, let's make it so the clones are actually monsters that attacked the cars and you guys are just be like, wow, we've what? changed a shit ton already. <laughs> like, whoa. What? Uh, what? Coruscant, suddenly this peaceful republic is thrust into war because clones from some mysterious place in outer space attack them. Ordinary men are forced into service and die by the millions, causing terrible suffering and chaos on Coruscant. This would make battle scenes more emotionally engaging. Then after so many years of war, it becomes commonplace, or even law, that able-bodied men must be a stormtrooper for however many years. And over a generation, they become loyal soldiers. But then you got all those admirals and this officers. This is stuff that's sort of in between. This is more in between three and four. Um, stuff that's to be established near the end of three, potentially. You could work this into the idea of making the war more of a a present force. Um, but, I mean, it's multiple ways to engage with this idea, but... I just I feel, I feel like we're not fixing right now. We're just telling a different story. All those other yeah. guys, and they ain't the Boba Fett clones. They either signed up or were drafted. Perhaps we actually witness a physical decay of Coruscant over the duration of the war. At first, we see a ton of flying car traffic in the first film, and then as the war goes on, the traffic's down to basically nothing. Buildings are in decay, we see food lines... Yeah, we could definitely do all this. I, I wouldn't be against this. We could, yeah. I'd be fine with yeah. some of these ideas. Then Palpatine would make speeches about making the ultimate sacrifice for the Empire, and so on. Almost how a real dictatorship begins and operates. Instead, we get this. I can go early and fix up the babies. See, so I think that's a little bit unfair because we do get some Palpatine speeches, um, yes, that relate yeah. to like the safety and security of the world. It's just that I think you just pick it on this thing because it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> and it is. It is. There's time could have been spent on. And then even at the end of the special edition of Jedi, they show Coruscant celebrating the destruction of the Death Star. And the city basically looks the same. If you were an average Joe, the rise and fall of the Empire might not have even affected your life in the least bit, it seems. Making the sacrifice and risk Might not. Of well, that's the thing, yeah, it, it might not. That That is uh, possible. Yeah, for a lot of people. I mean, that's something that I think the sequels in particular fails to explore. Certainly in The Mandalorian, they fail to explore it. The idea of most people probably don't give a shit. If it's the Empire or the Rebellion that's in charge, especially when you're talking about a, a galaxy scale. A galaxy. Well, yeah. I mean, think of Dexter and his Dinah, man. Like, he's just doing his Dinah what stuff. Change, yeah, what changes for him, really? Yeah, because like, the Empire aren't going to fucking barge in and be like, fuck you, Dexter. Your Dinah is I too mean, liberal. <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the, the peasant who's just a farmer his whole life, just doing his own thing. With his family, does he give a shit who the king really is in that castle on the other side of, you know, England or whatever? He probably doesn't. This, I imagine there's lots of people on Coruscant, especially the other side of the fucking planet, who are probably like, the Jedi, yeah, they're those weird people in the, in the town. And then you read the newspaper and it's like the whole place is blitzed and all the Jedi are dead. You'd be like, whoa. Wow. Or alternatively, you'd be like, okay. Well, well I was, I was going to say, like, they might be shocked at the news and they'll be like, anyway, back to my cereal. Anyway, yeah, back to my blue milk. Like, man, it sucks that a right, bunch of people died. Yeah, that stinks. You know, war stuff. You know, war's terrible. I hope it's over it, soon. In the newspaper, it's, it's like really they tried. Me that much, the but... Jedi tried to assassinate Chancellor Palpatine. You know, the war hero that's gotten us through. That you'd be like, oh well, fuck them. Mm. And then that you I move mean, you on. Could have, 
I mean, what yeah. if, yeah, what if there was a, you know, it's mentioned, hey, we're running out of clones. Uh, so we, we've been expanding clones too fast. We might have to actually start it's drafting people. Conscripting. Yeah. yeah, to keep yeah. up with the numbers because we can't, you know, wait, the war's like, not going like terribly, but we're going to have to start seriously considering these sorts of things if this drags on for too much longer. That's the thing. If they made episode 3.5 and it was about the transition of clones into conscripting people, and you can make any reason you want, like, that clones aren't creative thinkers or something, and thus they're actually valued at much less than the individual soldier that's conscripted. You, there's, there's a lot of things that could happen. Like I said, I'm pretty sure cannon is that an enemy used a genetic weapon that wiped out the clones or something like that. Can the rebellion it? utterly pointless. Nice job, everyone. No one cares! Well, so this is the thing. I think you can apply that to the OT. There was probably some guy maybe even on Tatooine, just doing his farming. And it's like, weeks after all of the events of the OT, someone tells him, by the way, the Empire was fucking toppled. He'd be like, oh. Who's in charge? It's like, I don't know. Like, Alright. <laughs> Moving on with my life. I don't know that that makes it so that the events of the OT thus have no meaning to general people. Yeah, they'll just... Yeah, they'll just be like, oh, so, like, my credits are still good, right? Yeah. Yeah, like that would be the first concern most people probably across the galaxy have. Is like, so I, my money's still worth money, right? <laughs> Just so we're clear. I got plenty I of blue so. milk to sell, so I hope you know we're still in business. Number six, fill her up. With a lot of nothing makes sense. So again, in this film, we're told about those wacky, fun adventures that Anakin and Obi Wan have that we don't get to see. Well, you owe me yeah, one. I Enough agree. for saving your skin yeah. for the tenth time. Ninth time. This is less so a flaw, more indicative of a flaw, right? Like it tells. Yeah, yeah. this is an attempt to fix a flaw. Yeah. And just like in the last film, Anakin hangs around with Padme while Obi Wan goes off on a mission by himself. That's pointless to the ultimate conclusion of the story. I. Pointless it to the ultimate not conclusion. That he goes to kill General Grievous. <laughs> Literally ends the war, man. Come on. Yeah. And to be fair, in Attack of the Clones, his mission, he discovers Count Dooku and Genosis and everything. And everything. Yeah. yeah. And then not the pointless. His missions are actually quite important. They're, they're very quite important. important. Yeah. <laughs> they're, yeah. uh, they're, they're, his is like the main plot of the movie every time. And, um, saying like, I mean, you know, he spends some time with Anakin in this one. I guess it is similar, though, to Attack of the Clones, because they have their opening mission in that as well. It's similar. But here it feels more apt that they have time apart, so that uh, he's not there to help him. Yeah, this this is the Whereas movie to do Attack that. Clones, yeah, in Attack of the Clones, they should have been together the whole time. This is what they call filler. And it's nowhere it's, near it's as not filler. filler. It's not filler. I don't know how you could call this filler. <laughs> it's definitely not filler. Because, to clarify for those listening, something being filler doesn't even make it good or bad, or not being filler doesn't make it good or bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, so I... I don't know the last it's time we ever important. referred to anything as filler, but like... Eh. I don't remember either. I was just, it's just not really our... the way we look at things, I suppose. We just don't... I just don't really think about things as being filler think, or not. I think I want to try and avoid it, because I feel like there are too many instances where a focus on the idea of whether or not something is filler has just derailed the conversation. And of course, I get the flashbacks to, if it's not relevant to the story, then cut it out. It's like, what does relevant to the story mean? Is it just plot? Because character can be happening here. Well, yeah, and how long should a shot, a long a lo yeah. landscape shot last? Exactly. Yeah, is it filler that it lasts for a while? That we see the pan over the, you know, environment? I don't think anybody would agree with that. I mean, it's something you might recognize in, like, like after the fact, you might go, wait, did that? Was it, there was there a point to any of that? Oh, I guess not. All right, moving on. It's, the thing is, there's usually going to be an argument for any one scene. If you're like, it's all filler. It's like, so all I've got to do is find one thing that this scene adds to for the whole movie. And if you, you know, if a character talks in it, you might already have an answer in terms of just like, it tells you something about them, blah, blah, blah. The kind they put in Twinkies. Mm, I like to fuck my cat. Oh. What? <laughs> what? Is this? Oh, that was. <laughs> that was it's blanket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's blanket, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Evans himself is pointless filler, and I'm not sure I even understand him. He's obviously a pawn of Sidious, right? And Sidious is Palpatine. And Palpatine's goal is to keep being voted more and more power, right? Mm -hmm. But yet he helps establish a centralized leader of the opposition. And then they say this. And I assure you, the Senate will vote to continue the war as long as Grievous is alive. Well, if the war is over, then that could end the need for a supreme, all-powerful chancellor that has more control over the Senate. Yeah, that's the plan, though. He wants this to end. He wants to start up the Empire. Um, and so I guess we have to assume... Once he has the power. Once, yeah. once, he is get, well, once he gets this power, the war can end. I, is, I interpreted this moment, I think we actually went over it when we were talking about it earlier, but this is Palpatine basically saying, Hey Jedi, you know, I know you, like, you fucking want me to stop having power, but the only way to do that is if you kill Grievous. And so he's just like, fine, we'll I think Mace Witcher says we'll, we'll make finding Grievous our, like, primary thing. And, uh, cause this is all gonna be leading to the destruction of the Jedi, and then framing them for, uh, being the villains behind all of this, and then... He can dissolve the Separatists as Palpatine, and then establish the Empire by basically giving a big speech to the Senate about how, look, you need me as the grand ruler of everything, because I won the war, I uh, was attempted, people tried to kill me because they wanted to take uh, positions of power for themselves. It's like, I think that's his whole argument, right? It's like, I will make you safe, I will make you secure, vote for me, sort of thing. And I guess he figured this was the best time now. He's uh, it was going to be eventually. Because, like, the, the logic here is, like, just keep the war going for literally ever. When what he wants is a prosperous empire. He doesn't want one at war. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Um, this lines up to me. There's, there's, there's little details and logistics that I would totally take issue with, but I don't really take issue with the idea that he's going to enact the plan of destroy the Jedi and create the Empire at some point. If he does not give up his emergency powers after the destruction of Grievous, then he should be removed from office. Hey, how about this? The robot. And by the way, that's a thing that you tell to the Senate. Everyone in the Senate. Or you put out a public message, or you put it on your Twitter, or whatever the, whatever the Jedi have going on. That's something you tell to everyone. The official position of the Jedi Council, the Order of Peacekeepers, is that once this super powerful politician doesn't need all of these super powerful powers at his disposal, he should relieve those powers and we return to the way things were. And then everyone in the Senate's like, oh yeah, I suppose, I have. so that's where the Jedi stand on the, okay, I gotcha. I just feel like in this universe, there's no PR, there's no social media, there's no journalists, there's no just like public info. Have we ever seen a journalist in the Star Wars <laughs> universe? I don't know I mean, what it, we have. I don't know. <laughs> it's just you wonder if those those people surely exist in this world. So well, Palpatine, you just wonder. Palpatine relies on the Senate, like loving him, right? Um, <laughs> in, 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 implying that maybe they don't even want him deposed, even though that is legally what should happen. Um, and he's just relying maybe. on the Jedi deciding to take it into their own hands. I guess it's just it's weird. I because you don't get. Because the Senate, as this amorphous other group that sort of exists in the aether of this story, you really wonder a lot of the times what's going through their minds, you know? Well, yeah, I feel like um, it'd be cool to have some scenes of Palpatine. We're trying to maybe achieve some other things during them, but having Palpatine be clearly very lovable to the other systems and working really hard to get around to basically everybody. Yeah, there's he doesn't have like an assistant with him that you could say, all right, according to these like these polls or this survey yeah. or these people are worried that the war will da 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 or these people are really concerned about a separatist attack and their faith is in used dwindling is like, oh well let's see if we can have the maybe we can see if the Jedi can go to planet Ordo Seglorum and they can go there just yeah, yeah, to yeah. establish a, a standby garrison or something like you don't you don't see him doing the thing. And if you know, Ordis, we're just... Ordis Seclorum hate him, right? He could then orchestrate more of his Separatist armies to go there, put in pressure on their planet, and then he can be like, I'll help you, I'll send my clone, you know, and then he can make it so the Separatists lose on purpose. He can be like, I saved you with my amazing emergency powers and my quick wit, and, you know, you guys, you must like me now, right? And just, you know, yeah, just little we... things like that. We do constantly talk about what if we just didn't have the Phantom Menace and we had that second yes. movie 
And that would be the thing that you fill up that second movie with. We need to see Palpatine doing all of these things that he needs to do to get the Senate to really, really like him and trust him to the point of like almost craziness. Because where they we, just essentially say like, yeah, you're the dictator now. When he says, I which am is the a really Senate, hard sell we kind of just accept that. We're like, oh, I guess. So, yeah. Okay. He's, he's had enough time that now the Senate basically just are at, at his beck and call. And you're like, how did that happen? You're like, it just sort of did. We yeah, it kind of it is it. Go ahead, Theo. Well, we kind of just have to accept it because instead of dedicating time to showing what Palpatine's been up to, I guess we needed Grievous in a lizard bike chase with Obi Wan. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. Revenge of the Sith is pretty packed. I don't. Not to say that there's scenes that we could not sure. like. There's plenty we could definitely remove. I, I really do think it's the fact that we wasted a film. Yeah, yes. we I, I, wasted at least wasted a film time in general. Yeah, like. We wasted an entire film, and we wasted a lot of time in the two remaining films, I think. Mm -hmm. I think Attack of the Clones wastes a lot more time than Revenge of the Sith, but I would agree. I think so, that too, yeah. It's building the love time. story. What are, you, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, I think it, it does feel that way, doesn't it, though? But, like, th this story, the story that this... Because this is the story, like, that I think we were really invested in. Um, like, everybody was invested in in the concept of the prequels. Um, so really, there should have been, when they were making it, there should have been consideration for, like, we want to maximize this story, so we need to spend a lot of time in the preceding two films to build up to this. But it kind of doesn't feel like that was what happened. Like, Phantom Menace is there doing its own thing, and then we jump ahead to where the relevant plot starts to happen, and even then... Yeah, the main things I remember Clo Attack of the Clones doing is explaining why we have clones. Why and we have clones. Anakin and, and uh, Padme really love each other. Trust me. And, and kind yeah, of. And there's a lot in. There's a lot of there. It, just like with the relationship, as you said, they really love each other. Trust me. I have a really difficult time believing that the Galactic Senate is just like, yeah, you can be the dictator now. Yeah, and I well, think that's need, way more important. Uh, that's, yeah, exactly. yeah, that's a, a really hard sell. Well, there's point. a great irony here, right? Like, oh, the problem with the prequels is too many boring politics. Like, it's not enough boring politics. <laughs> we, uh, need, we, we need we more. Need more. This whole um, fight was, like, the Clone Wars began because a huge amount of systems got fed up with the Republic, and the people in the Republic, at the end of this conflict, they're just like, yeah, let's not be a Republic anymore. And you're like, how did this happen yeah, you're right, because like, the it's, main evidence he uses is, well, the Jedi went rogue and tried to fucking kill me. We need an empire. You're like, what is that? Yeah, but my planet <laughs> still gets representation. Like, that. Like, okay, yeah. but my planet of, you know, 10 billion people, or or my species of, you know, 500 billion people spread across, like, eight, 87 planets or whatever, like, we're not just going to give up our representation and our ability to vote on things. Um, well, no, I yeah, don't think. The, to be fair, I don't think they do lose it entirely. If you remember, a new hope opens with saying the um, something being dissolved. Of the old, yeah, yeah, that's right. The remnants so, of the old republic. Was, I think was, what we're supposed yeah. to think at the at the end of this film is he's introducing the idea of an empire, and that it takes that long to make it so that he's got the final word on everything. And even then, he makes the Death Star to basically be like, "All right, now if you don't fucking listen to me, I'll kill you." Night. Exactly. It's a exactly. long process of consolidation of power because yeah. the dictators always had to do that. Uh, like yeah. even after, like even after Hitler became Chancellor, there was a lot of political suppression and stuff that still needed doing consolidation of his powers and you know i think he's just selling the idea of an empire at the end of this film he hasn't quite done it yet right because yeah. you can't just do it that quickly i mean this is a Feels this is an old institution it still comes off very strange that he just he's able he just you know yeah. goes he leads with that i agree almost. i agree like, yeah. well, because the, the war was won during the republic it's not like you know, like, like, oh, thank goodness the Empire was established and it won us the war. It's like, no, we, we won it being a Republic. We fought real and hard. Maybe that's, maybe that's what we need to do is flip the events, that it is during the middle of the war that he begins to consolidate more power. Yeah, and he's like, like Iron like, Fist level decisions. And yeah, it turns out that they, to, they all work. Hey, out of resources. It, it's, it's like a textbook thing of organize or like conspire to organize some crisis or, you know, yeah. some 
Which we just don't get enough of. And then make and then, Coruscant that one. Cor- yeah, that yeah, exactly. Guys, Coruscant. They're, Dude, this, yeah. is our, this is the seat of the government. Like, Look at all this to... wreckage that has fallen down yeah. on Coruscant. Look at all of the innocent, you know, lives that were lost in from the debris mm-hmm. and the, you know, mm-hmm. as casualties from, you know, all, all that sort of stuff. They're here on our doorstep, guys. We gotta, I, I need to be able to just make these decisions. It's very important. Yeah. It's um, really important. And a lot of people were just motivated by fear. It's like, yeah. yeah. That's what you gotta well, get him to do, I feel. You know, you I got feel like that's what you have to do. So many avenues, because he's he is both the leaders of the good guy and the bad guys, so you just need him to create a bunch of situations where people are in trouble and then save them, quote-unquote. With his, exactly. He would have radical ideas that everyone is against, but he iron fists them in, and they win. Like, And so people are like, oh and, god, this guy knows what he's doing. And I know it's typically not something that we discuss too much, but that would be so much more thematically appropriate. That people yeah. they're afraid of the separatist army. Because remember, fate and as a result, to anger and hate and all that. Yeah, yeah. So you, you play be- in. I yeah. mean, you have that. You, it happens. Anakin's afraid of dudes and this, so he does that. The Republic is afraid of dudes and this, so they do, so that. They do that. And yeah. what we learn is that you—that's not the way. You don't just like. I'm afraid, so I'm going to take the the shortcut, like the the quickest, most expedient route to what I want, regardless of the consequences. That's not the Jedi way. The Jedi way is patience and calm in the face of a uh, a line from the Dark Knight where it's like they were afraid, so they turned to a man they don't fully understand, or something like that. that I mean, that that sounds like a line from uh, I think the so. Dark Knight. Yeah. Um... So I'm really country. stick of looking at this guy on the left. He's just really, I'm, I'm really, <laughs> I keep really at him. not. Keen right. on he him. seems. At him. I don't know if he's having a bad day or not. He seems. How do you walk? <laughs> uh, imagine you just you're part of a species that just ends up with a huge double chin. That's just even the thin ones are like that. It's, it's beautiful like... to them though. Cult- it's very beautiful <laughs> oh, yeah. to them. The more chins, the higher status you are. It's That's how right. the males fight for females. They they. Spin around and thwack each other with their massive chins. I knew it. I, I, I knew it. Not to give up so that was our discussion. Mm-hmm. That was our little discussion. Of Grievous, then he should be removed from office. Hey, how about this? The robot armies are controlled by a yet unseen force, Master Jedi. This war could go on forever. Except for whatever. Well, he doesn't want it to go on for forever. We did talk about this. Um. I, I think. I think what Plinkett's saying is that he wants to give the impression to the Republic that the war could go on forever. No, he, Plinkett's saying he would maintain more power, and that should be what he he chooses to do based on that. But I'm saying that uh, ending the war in Axis' plan to erase the Jedi and then engage the Empire plan. At that point, yeah, like he, because he could do well. You could, you can do both in the sense of he could get the Republic worried that this war could go on forever. We don't know when it's going to end, but he knows secretly. He knows how to end the war, but he wants to play up the idea that it might never end. So that way, he can have the fear of the Republic, and he has the ability to, when the time is right, actually end the war. Well, um. Sure, but it seems to me that what the film's going for is he's dangling Grievous in front of the Jedi and saying, kill him, and I'm done. And so they kill him, and then they're like, you're done now. Um, and then to the point where they try and kill him. I think that's what his goal was. I guess so. I suppose that plan was really poorly executed, so I, it doesn't really even... My, it almost like didn't Well, it makes me wonder, that was the plan. had he not revealed everything to Anakin, would the Jedi have tried to kill him, or would they just be like, hey, I don't know that they would have killed him. That feels they would have tried to remove it. But then, Probably, are we yeah. supposed to believe that that was all Palpatine's plan too? Telling Anakin around the time Grievous was defeated so that Anakin would tell them and then they would come and try and kill him and then Anakin would come right in the last minute. Man, you know what I mean? Timing, like, the timing. The timing. No, all of it is so really, like, come yeah. on, pal. What a genius. It, it, what a <laughs> genius. You get the impression there maybe was some other plan, but uh, maybe it felt because Anakin was just that then. It was just so easy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shockingly easy. Yeah, but Palpatine basically said, "I'm a Sith Lord," and then he was just looking at Anakin like, "What will he say?" <laughs> <laughs> Where you, imagine if you told he that hasn't to pulled Luka, out his he's lightsaber. Yeah, you, exactly. mm. you have a diploma. The reason he tells Anakin to tell the Jedi where Grievous is. 
Our clone intelligence units have discovered the location of General Grievous. I guess so that Obi-Wan could go away and that Palpatine could have more alone time with Anakin to try and sway him over to the dark side. But then when Obi-Wan finally kills Grievous, Palpatine then springs his trap to have all the clone troopers kill the Jedis. And then he blames the Jedis for trying to take over. Why didn't he just do that before? What would he have done if Grievous escaped again? Or if Samuel L. Jackson didn't But when you keep it going, you, yeah, you try you again. Yeah, you just yeah, try I mean, again. The war keeps going, and then you try again. You can have multiple you attempts to kill. Exa yeah. yeah, exactly. You can have I mean, you know, if the, chance to kill Grievous. If the Jedi try to kill him whether or not Grievous is dead, he can still sell that as a, you know, they, they're trying yeah. to fucking kill me, but guys, the fuck. Side note quickly, this isn't a big deal, but I find it somewhat strange how they, the way this is set up, oh, is that cool. killing General Grievous ends the war. Well, and I guess they're just saying that once they have no leaders, they're done, and they only they assume that course, Grievous is the last right. leader. I there do. There will be more leaders. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> there, there should be a hierarchy yeah. of some kind, of course. Oh, absolutely. Right. I'm mean, especially yeah. on this scale. There should be. This is not a war. There'll be a lot like of other could, people. Oh yeah, th you this isn't the kind well, maybe of it's, you just... It could just be a dramatic oversimplification. What they're referring to actually is just once he's gone, they're going to be in disarray, and it'll be easy to win the war at that point. I I think that's probably yeah, safer sure. to assume. Uh, if we're being good faith, yeah. yeah. It's not like the droids will surrender. They need someone to fucking do that for them. And I, it, it, maybe yeah. they're aware that the other separatist leaders aren't fucking happy with this war anymore. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, but that would be another one of those things where it's just, I need to know more about the stakes of this war and the state of both sides. Hmm. Yeah, they definitely don't really detail cool. it, and it's on us to basically just assume, based on I human what history, they what they right. might mean. Yeah. ...and then he melted his own face. When was he going to spring this trap anyways if all these events didn't occur? What if Grievous got killed and then they said resign? What, was he going to just take out a lightsaber then? <laughs> I mean, I I do wonder, like, if what if the Jedi were literally like, we're going to appeal to the Senate, and if the does Palpatine hope the Senate go, you know what, we like this guy a lot, we're just leave him in power anyway. I guess leave he does. Power, maybe, and this is the thing: yeah. if someone said, of course that was his plan, I'd be like, well, that's not really in the film, is it? I like, don't, I don't. Of course. No. Saying I, yeah, I am the like... Senate is not exactly very convincing. Like. <laughs> You, you just wonder, and you're just like, you're supposed to just, uh, uh, yeah, just understand that the Senate really like him. And you're like, okay. And yeah, so they, they, you know, they wouldn't vote for him to lose his... I, you do, I do want to see that scenario run down. The Jedi are basically calling his bluff, and they're just like, chill. And they're like, oh, hey, man, you know, you did a great job knocking out Grievous. Yeah, it was great. Uh, so those emergency powers, I guess, I guess that's it now, right? Like, cap a face. And everyone's like, No. Well, he, <laughs> he would be like, uh, again, I don't even know, yeah, I don't know what would happen necessarily. I guess he hopes the Senate would say, no, nah, we want him to stay in power, he's really good. Then he's really good at just whatever it is he does. <laughs> yeah. Take out a lightsaber before! We'll be able to capture that monster and end this war. So what motivation, now that the war is over, would the Jedis have to try and take over? And it's really apparent. Well, they just don't want one man having so much power, right? I'm assuming that's the idea. Yeah. Essentially, that's fair. And but. what if the Republic? Well, what if the, all the people in the Republic are like, "Oh, like sort of have a point." That's the thing. We never really get to explore that by his actions. Yeah, like help. Bro, I was just thinking. Imagine if you had those conflicts and people started protesting the Jedi. Yeah, like fuck you. Why are you trying to bring him down? Like he's 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 saving the. Republic. Other people going. They were right. Palpatine's going to become exactly. a dictator. Yeah, he's, he's, and then you like, have like yeah. a, a faction yeah. who like trust in the Jedi. Him. The Jedi are always right. It's like, hmm. Guys, we're yeah. a Republic. Let's vote on it. <laughs> it's out of the question. <laughs> well, imagine Seriously. they did, and they you know it was like the six, sixty in forty favor. in favor of him, and he he was elected as permanent. Chancellor with emergency powers was like, oh, okay. And then the Jedi are like, no, we have to kill him. I don't care what democracy said, yeah. which would make us go, ooh. <laughs> yeah, like, that's Mace Windu's flaw. He's like, nah, they got it wrong. Look, the democracy is... What's that clip from that fucking guy with a beard where he's like, it means that all of the people make the decisions, but the people are retarded. <laughs> like this. <laughs> that's what Mace Windu says. <laughs> Patine is the one Something who's trying to take one. over. I mean, he is trying to be the Supreme Chancellor forever. Is everyone blind and stupid? Which leads me to my- There's a bit of that, yeah.
I'm not picking up his evil plans. My next point, number seven. Is everyone blind and stupid? Every character yes, is dumb. They are. But who's the dumbest? Let's Ooh, find out question. just how stupid is Yoda. So Yoda might be a powerful Jedi, but why is he is not? Get it? I, I did like a Yoda thing. Besides always having a look of utter confusion on his face about everything all the time. <laughs> I don't Yoda know, that's seems confusion. No <laughs> Looks good to say it, not confused. Yeah, he's yeah. like, yeah, he, he uh, that's, that's a pooping face right there. Oh, yeah. Ability to use the force other than to throw rocks. I think it is time we inform the Senate that our ability to use the force is diminished. If yeah, that's throughout the prequels where they're just like, the Jedi should be able to predict a lot of stuff because that's like the whole thing, but they just keep telling us and now we can't. Sucks. Sorry. Is it wise of Wind <laughs> is it wise of Windu? Because Windu wants to tell the Senate this, but he doesn't want to tell the Senate that there's a Sith Lord in fucking charge of both armies and also it's Palpatine. Yeah, you're right. So it's like our, our force is all cloudy. Uh, we'll tell everybody yeah, about this. Which is probably not the yeah, wisest thing to tell everybody, actually. That's where I was going. Yeah, I was like, maybe <laughs> don't tell people that. Um, maybe just don't let everyone know that you're just a weaker faction now, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, maybe think about springing that one on the world. But um, yeah, you definitely want to tell them about Palpatine being a Sith Lord who's in charge of the Separatists secretly. You, you definitely want to let them know about that. You'd be a fool not to. And uh, yeah, we, the reasoning we're given is there is a Sith Lord, therefore we cannot see blah blah blah, but it doesn't work both ways. Like, it seems like Palpatine's powers aren't affected by the Jedi being there at all. Like, it, it's it, the, the dark side clouds the light side, it can't work the other way around. Okay. Palpatine can diminish his ability to use the Force, and why is that only limited to the mental and not the physical? Anyway, when Anakin is... Um... I don't know, that doesn't make any sense, right? But it would, if it limits the mental, it wouldn't necessarily mean it limits your physical abilities. Yeah, yeah sure. I, don't, I don't think so. I, I always assume that it just made it difficult for them to use the Force to see the future or scry or whatever Yeah, like if called. it was a Wi-Fi thing, the Palpatine being there just makes the signal weak. And you're like, oh man, my download speed's really shit. Yeah, I don't see how that would get in the way of your lightsaber abilities or... Which other, seemed to be a whole other thing, like you do training for that physical training. Yeah, you know? yeah. Raging with frustration and worry about Padme's inexplicable impending murder by pregnancy, Yoda can't tell that Anakin is... 1. Hiding something really big. 2. Is madly in love with hot pants Padme. 3. Is just teeming with irritation and frustration at the Jedi and at every aspect of his life. I mean, I kind of agree, like, they even highlight that he's a bit floompy on that, that LAAT ride, and I just feel like nothing's being done about this. Uh, yeah, they just sort of let him just stew. Yeah, so and he's hope he doesn't... up with, you know, the chosen one. You know? Seems a bit... <laughs> um, <laughs> I was speaking yeah, to him, he was in a dark room with the shade was all on him, and I was just like, oof, that seems like an evil pose. He, I don't he know. looks really evil. <laughs> How else to describe it? We're in the third movie of six, guys. I feel like something's gonna go real wrong. <laughs> I guess the dark side clouds everything, but by just looking at the guy, I can tell all sorts of things are wrong. And I'm no psychologist. In fact, I threw my last psychologist out a window for asking about my dear mother. Bury them under the floorboards, Harry. No one has to know. It'll be our little secret. So how stupid is Yoda? The guy is like sweating and he looks evil. <laughs> the concept that Palpatine is clouding everyone's There is an element. There is an element in these films of if you look evil, you're probably evil. You're probably in this world, yeah. <laughs> it just you, seems to be this. And if you look like case, Jesus, you know? you're Attack of the Clones, Obi Wan. Basically makes all the characters null and void and utterly stupid. Does his mind clouding ability have a range? <laughs> like when Yoda is on Kashyyyk, is he like, hey, <laughs> wait a minute? I do like I that know. idea. Like, there's a radius for the Wi-Fi block, and so he gets outside of it. He's like, whoa, hang on. Whoa. All makes sense now. Palpatine's behind it all. Unfortunately, the debate is not over. The Senate will never approve the use of clones before the Separatists attack. This is a crisis. The Senate must vote the Chancellor emergency powers. 
he can then approve the creation of an army. The entire Senate is filled. See, I feel like they would know that, though. It's like, oh, you know, like, the only reason that they're voting him in is to... So they they won't approve the creation of a clone army, but they will they say will that you can him. approve the creation of the clone yeah. army. <laughs> That's Which is like, uh... Like, I don't want to think that all the politicians in the galaxy are just that thick. Um, I can't remember. Is that because the difference there is that... Chancellor Palpatine has control over them versus... It might be that he can make the decisions on the fly, whereas decisions made about the army have to be voted on on the floor, which is and, just going to take a lot longer. Well, like, it, it might I be assume... that the Senate have more trust <laughs> in him as a person than in the collective group. Well, I assume that would be a separate issue from, like, if you approve of an army, you're also approving of the people who lead that army as part of that. Well, let's, I guess that's what I'm suggesting, right? Because if they approved the clones without giving him emergency powers and stuff, who controls the clones exactly at that point? I assume that's yeah. part of the approval process. Well, because like, it, it seems to me that each... giving him the emergency powers means he's the one who has like the big say on where the clones go and what they do. Yeah, so not only does he approve of the clones, he approves of and controls the clones, and we're handing him power. Well, yeah, but I think the implication is that everyone likes him. That's, again, I don't think they justified it or showed it, but yeah, that's the Yeah, I guess the that's point. the idea, yeah. Though you would think that, in a, again, like a, the scale of this really fucks with a lot of stuff in the story of we have all of these generals across the galaxy commanding all kinds of different armies. Mm -hmm. Like, this planet has its armies and its generals. This planet has this armies and its generals. And if everyone contributes, you know, generals or leadership to fight with the clones instead of using their own armies, and we're not even going to get into the fact that well, they yeah, just the, seem to be absent. Um, there are planet wars that could go on for so long that you might even forget about Coruscant, in terms of, like, the culture or whatever, you're just like, yeah, I've been fucking in the trenches of, you know, oogly-boogly for so long that, uh, it, who cares what the people back in Coruscant say about what should be done on this planet, it's down to us and the generals here. Absolutely, and you wonder if those people become separatists, or... That would be so cool to talk about and show. It sure would! Filled with stupid idiots. Yeah, okay, that's true, yes. But I was talking about this Senate. Okay, so during the fight scene with Samuel L. Jackson, Palpatine's own electrical discharges either melt his face, or, like, reveal his true form as some kind of really old monster. I'm not sure which, because the film doesn't tell us. I always thought the Emperor was just kind of really old in Jedi, and just kind of looked bad. I'm willing to admit that when I watched it, I assumed he was some kind of non-human, just because of the way he looked. Um, I always thought it was like the dark power changed his body yeah. or something like that. Something's up with him that makes him a little bit non- It's not just that he's old, I figured there was more than that. Yeah, a lot of the dark side users do tend to often look evil. And I wonder Snoke. if that's just an aspect of the dark side, whereas with Christopher Lee, there is almost an element of, are you, like, that huge into the dark side stuff, or are you more a political kind of guy? Dude, with, imagine that you know, more, story. Yeah, like, more of a... He's struggling with being on the dark side, but he just considers it the avenue to best reach his political goals. Ugh. Yeah. We talked about this I mean, before. he's described just, as... Ugh. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. I want it. Give me. Redo the prequels. <laughs> Redo them? Do it right now. But now he has a giant, puffy, inflamed monster face. Luke had lightning all over his face, but it didn't turn his face into a puffy monster face. But anyway, he took... <laughs> it didn't turn his face into a puffy monster face. <laughs> Very true. Tells the Senate that the Jedi, an organization of monks that have been the guardians of peace and justice for over a thousand generations, have suddenly decided to take over the world. Oh, and I just... Yeah, no, I, I agree with this too. I want to see more reason for why the Senate would believe that the Jedi are pure yeah. evil. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Suddenly, whoops, the Jedi had to be exterminated, guys. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, boy. Um, anyway, so I want to be dictator now. Because if you're one of these Senate seats, and you're just told, the Jedi tried to assassinate me, we managed to uh, eliminate them entirely, I'd be like, whoa. What I the don't fuck happened? Again. Don't the Jedi have loads of children? <laughs> Did we wipe them out too? Jesus. I need proof. Can you show us the security footage from your office? <laughs> He's like, no. <laughs> no. Oh. I use oh. my emergency powers to say no. 
And then, yeah, it is funny. It's like he shows the footage and then it shows the spin. It's like, it's a good trick, all right? Jeez. Like, give him well, about a break. Fuck. And it would be really neat for him to at least try and show the Senate the clip of just Mace Windu saying, like, I'm going to kill you, and manages yep. to maybe doctor a few lines to put together so that he says something like, you know, the Jedi. The darkness of democracy will never return. You have lost. And it's the... like, see, he hates democracy. Oh, wait, no, but he hates democracy too. But that's. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, and just so seeds of mistrust. The Jedi believe that they should control everything, and that after the war, they're tired of doing things like peacefully and carefully. They just want to be dictators. It's disgusting and horrible. And then, yeah, just I don't know anything. Propaganda, like fuck the the Jedi have been killing people or doing. The Jedi don't care about the, the troops. They just send them in to get killed. Yeah. Anything that makes me think, oh yeah, the Jedi, maybe they're not cool. But the, the, yeah, we're just, the Senate are just this big brain that we're told things about. Like, they think this, and you're like, oh, do they? Okay. Oh, I wonder why they would think that. And it seems so unanimous. Hmm. Yeah. This also happened to look and sound like a monster that wants to take <laughs> over the world. Don't mind my creepy black cloak. My horribly evil sounding voice or terrifying <laughs> face. I do I do appreciate that. You're just like I do. Why do you look so evil? <laughs> like, you do, just you do look very evil. I was I was scarred in their attempt to assassinate me. You're like, okay, I guess. Also don't mind the fact that I'm yelling about creating a galactic empire run exclusively by me. No no, you see it's the Jedi that are the ones who tried to take over. And that's the thing, it's really simplistic. George wrote it so he's just like, you'll have safety and security with me leading the Empire. And then everyone cheers, okay. and you're like, alright, I that guess... That sounds alright. I want that. You could, like, when we're coming up with the idea for the prequel, someone might mention, like, that'll be the main thing that convinces people of the Empire, okay? And you're like, alright, so now we need to get to the details. How do they, you know, what things happen, what do people say? Because telling us that is very baseline, thin. And that warranted them all being executed by the army that I control by myself without any kind of trial in the courts to prove that what I'm saying is true. Yep, we just killed them all, including the children. And then yeah, we burned there down- Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I feel like this yeah, is- Yeah, absolutely. You're right, you're right, yeah. It's, it's like, mad. Just the fact that nobody's like, hmm, really? Like, the Senate just did you exists have to put it this... down, too? Well, Bail Organa's in the Senate. What if he had the balls to just be like, I must speak, and then he goes, I witnessed the clone troopers gun down a child. Exactly, because, like, and imagine all the people in there being like, wait, here... oh, God, what, jeez. Oh, and then no, you have Palpatine be like, and what was this child doing? And, and, and you know, Bail would be like, what, what do you mean? And then they show the clip of the kid just attacking clones out of yeah. context. You know, and you're like, having that back and forth, and the Senate are like, oh my god, they teach children to just fucking kill people. Jeez. Horrifying. Self-defense, you know, and stuff like that, just, just, but no, no, no. In their temple, and you're all just gonna have to take my word for it. Trust me, look at my face. <laughs> Would this face lie <laughs> I like you? Yeah, do you you say, have... trust me, look at my face. <laughs> Face. You can trust this face. <laughs> Look, it's really far away in the center. They can't see the goopy face. Yeah, just... even his yeah. two like people at his side both look, look evil. evil. Yeah. <laughs> look, he's got to look at his horns. One's like a fucking <laughs> cenobite, and the other one is some <laughs> blue horned wizard. <laughs> he's got his <laughs> staff. He's gonna cast a spell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're like, oh my god, <laughs> you're just the, the fucking. Triad of e you're the Trinity of bitches. <laughs> uh, it's funny because that line is like the best line in all of Resident Evil. It's delivered by a character who I don't even like. Do you guys remember his name? Doctor Isaac. Um, I think, I think so. I, think so. I just called him Jorah. Yeah, absolutely. Which one? Yeah, because there's like three of them. Because there's like one, the dead one, the two clones, and <laughs> the Jesus <laughs> one. The Jesus one. Good times. I've successfully eliminated the only opposition I might have had to form my own galactic empire. Please continue with the applause. So remember to vote Palpatine in the next election that will never happen. Because I said so. <laughs> now, is he controlling everyone's minds or is the Senate that stupid? Listen, if we if we brought all this up to someone who then said he's controlling everyone's minds, they'd be like, well, what a fucking worthless story. Nah. 
no. I, and also, no, I don't buy that. No, I don't buy it either. But even if you did buy it, I'd just be like, what value do you no, find in this story where what, he's just controlling what, everyone? Exactly. What what is what is the cool aspect of his scheme if it's just I'm gonna make him believe me? Well, and also it doesn't seem to work on Bale or Padme. Like, no, how about that? Because there is no mind control. No, this is bullshit. <laughs> That's just a stupid argument. Even the genius Padme is listening intently, <laughs> not sure what's real or not. And Padme is a brilliant genius. We cannot let a thousand years of democracy disappear. Wait, hold on. Is is it a thousand years or a thousand generations? I will not let this republic that has stood for a thousand years be split in two. You know, when writing my review, I originally wrote years. Then I had the sense to go back and check out what Obi-Wan said in Star Wars. Yeah. For over a thousand generations, the Jedi Knights were the guardians of peace and justice in the old republic. Big difference. Oh. Yep. You know, there's a big difference between a year and a generation. <laughs> Maybe George Lucas should have gone back and looked at what they said before filming the fucking movie. General Grievous <laughs> is a stupid, dumb, retarded bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the flat delivery of a what sounds yeah. like a fucking just, just just a guy who doesn't give a fuck <laughs> like saying it. Idiot. So Palpatine orders Grievous to move all the Separatist leaders to Mustafar. It is a volcanic planet. You will be safe. Grievous is apparently- I guess the question marks are like, what do those two statements have to do with each other? You'll be safe, it's yeah. a volcanic planet. It's like, those don't sound like, like they match. <laughs> also, I don't, does this mean like this war is being ended by assassination? Is that like, that's a bit- You're putting all of us together? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you'd be you'd be surprised We're that they don't risk in the first place. They don't have a preference to be like, no fuck, I'm not going to must. I'm going to stay with my armies. Yeah, I have like a planet and people and armies and stuff. I'm, gonna go and I'm not just going to listen to you. You're you in charge of the military, not me. Well, and, and as one of the highlights is like, you fucking Count Dooku just got killed, bro. Like, <laughs> I feel like we're not in a good place right now. A military leader because he has the rank of general, but he just says yes. It will be done. Lord. Without even thinking about it. Instead, he should probably say, um, that sounds like a great place for some kind of ambush if they were to discover where all of the Separatist leaders are. On that- well, It seems like they were already all on Utapau, so I don't know, like, it, it seems like that's just normal for them, but at the same time, yeah, I think it's strange that none of them would be like, actually, I don't really want to go on this weird holiday with every other leader. To the volcanic <laughs> planet. Yeah subject wouldn't it be smarter to spread them out all over the place yep. so that stop asking completely logical questions yes lord sidious wait who are you again and where are you from you don't need to know that's often sort of like that's i think it's fair what is their understanding of who he is? Who is he Throughout outside of? All the prequels, we never really they they go as far as being like he's a mysterious guy who seems to know what's going on. We'll listen to him. Yeah, like why are you listening to this dude? Like what? What if? What if it doesn't work out? Like if? Like you have a lot. You seem to have a lot of stake in this fight as the separatists. But what about him? Does he? If, can he just go home if you lose? Like what? what we have happens? to believe that he gave them something right or like he because with the trade federation folks he was like you'll i'll get you naboo i think that was what made them trust him that didn't work out did it no <laughs> you'd think that that would really erode a lot of confidence in his yeah. ability to yeah but then again he probably and blamed who, them he's like you guys fucked up like, the plan yeah i'm i'm just like, who are you? Why do we listen to you? What do you have to lose? What's your, you know, what's your stake in this fight? That would be so funny if there was, like, the evil Jedi Council. They're all discussing their plans and Palpatine is there offering some stuff. And General Grievous at one point is just like, who the fuck even are you? Like, why are you even here? And he's just like... Yeah, what's your name, really? Where do you live? <laughs> and he's just like, I'm gonna go now, bye. What planet are you on? I suppose you always had Count Dooku vouching for him as a Separatist leader when, in reality, he knows him as a Sith Lord. So you get credibility Maybe. there, I guess. Maybe. This is the thing. If they had written it so that Count Dooku was the most respected and loved leader in the Separatist army because he's an ex-Republic, ex-Jedi who is talking about their flaws and how they need to, things need to change, 
And then he says, no, trust this blue ghost guy. He's totally on our team. He's real good. Trust me. He's a good guy. You know, that could make more sense. Usually there's a reason why... Like, the, you are the big evil bad guy because you funded it or because mm. you have all the plans or the smarts or because you're you the one behind the together. technology or yeah, you're the organizer of it. But here I was like, why are you, why are you here exactly? Well, how come you are the leader? Why are we listening to you? Do you yeah, have military experience? The droids are provided by the trade federation, aren't they? I assume that it's uh, that they have some system where the trade federation provides them. They probably get, all that's separate is chip in to pay for it. Something like that. There's yeah, probably, there's all I'm saying is like, it's not Palpatine you. that's providing the droids, so what else does he provide? Like, maybe he's providing money. I don't know. I, he's, I guess he's providing something. I mean, advice. advice. His advice isn't great, though. <laughs> maybe. See, again, he could provide str amazing wins for the, um, the Separatists because he has so much knowledge of the other side, right? But we, we don't even see that in the prequels where, like, he gives them information. He, he says, like, go attack this planet, trust me. And then they win it, and they're like, wow, like, you, you, you know what's up. You're a good battle strategist. That's why we trust you. Yeah, lots of just empty calories. <laughs> we have <laughs> you know? a lot of empty calories. You know who I am or where I'm broadcasting this hologram from? Just do what I say. Where are my pants? I have a pair of pantaloons for you to wear. <laughs> They're stylish. Who are you? Stop asking me who I am. Obi-Wan Kenobi is a stupid asshole <laughs> idiot head. Obi-Wan <laughs> Kenobi is a stupid dumb asshole too. I already mentioned how he says stupid things in the beginning. But then he rides around on some kind of dinosaur for some reason, and now all of a sudden he enjoys showing off in this movie. Hello there. I got nothing for that. Just yeah, that's, I mean, it was really right very dumb one. of him. <laughs> if I was Grievous, I'd be like, kill this guy. Yeah, just fucking kill him. <laughs> be fair. <laughs> yep. It's almost like yeah, but Grievous really wants to what or what I'm just like, I'm not even sure that is in Grievous's yeah. character. You know, from what we've seen yeah, of him, Grievous yeah, seems to be the kind of person time. that wants to win the easiest way and fastest way. Yeah. I mean, if I was Grievous, there would be an element of, like, what? Uh, <laughs> um, hmm. Uh, what? If, if, us four, <laughs> like, just... if us four were the leader of the droids down there and he jumped in, I would be looking at you guys like, is this happening? <laughs> is that, that, that Obi-Wan Obi Kenobi? Kenobi? Like... <laughs> and I'm looking around. <laughs> it's just like, is this the hologram or something? I, yeah, you poke him. Just... Like, you, are you, seriously? Are you... Like... <laughs> How did you get here? Did you take a spaceship? <laughs> That's Is another that thing, man. His presence should make you go, oh, fuck. Like, everyone get the fuck out of here, evacuate, get to the next secret planet. Holy fuck, if he's here, there's a good chance oh, the Republic are right behind yeah, him. Yeah, shoot him on the way out, but we gotta go, 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 pack that shit up. Oh my god, leave the dry ice, we gotta go. <laughs> Instead, Grievous <laughs> yeah. assumes, like, you must have just come here on your own just to be annoying, and I'm gonna get shit. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna fight you with my lightsabers really poorly. Yep. Instead of waiting three minutes for the clone troopers to arrive and using his surprise... That would have been so much more intelligent, too, yeah. They're all distracted, sure and then be. he jumps down, he's like, Hey, Grievous, I'm gonna fuck you up. Yeah, what he knows once the clones start attacking, Grievous is gonna bolt. And that's when he takes his yep. fucking lizard, and <laughs> he chases him. That's feel weird. I'm not gonna say it's stupid. It's just it's just strange. It's just like I have it's a just... lizard creature dinosaur thing. <laughs> like, all right. I mean, there's no reason for it because if they were like, oh, out here on the sand dunes, there's a element in the sand that makes the repulsor is all floompy. So we have to use you know, like in the first episode of Mandalorian where they say, oh, the only way you can get there is on a blarg, and then they just they like I don't believe them. And yeah, you know, right? No, yeah, yeah. But they at least try pathetically to say it's the only way to get out there. <laughs> it's and one, this, it's like, one step know, up from there's... saying nothing at all when you say, no, you got to. Trust me. No, you, you got to use a blurg. You can't use a speeder. And I, I don't believe you, but at least you tried to lie to me. And I yeah. guess I appreciate that more in a weird way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guys, <laughs> advantage to kill Grievous and end the war. Patience. Use the force. Think. He foolishly jumps into the middle. Again, he did that in uh, Attack of the Clones, which is, uh, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what they're trying to say about Obi-Wan in the prequels, that he, he was more... Is he... Could one say that he's, he's not exactly... Maybe, by may, the books? 
Yeah, because like in, in a New Hope, he's you know he does some he does some stuff that's pretty risky. I don't I don't know that we're supposed to believe Obi Wan is very straight laced and like by the book Jedi. Like yeah, but he's, he doesn't come across. He's not stupid in a New Hope. Also, yeah, I want to clarify. Or any of the, or this OT. this isn't this is really yeah. Dumb. This doesn't count. Like it's, even the, when we when we talked about jumping out and grabbing the droid and attacking the clones, it's like that was really fucking stupid as well. Could that easily really have been dumb. killed. Yeah, that's an Anakin thing to do. Imagine, Rags, they used the Force to pull the droid back. I don't know. The Force is only allowed in very specific circumstances. <laughs> yeah. And they're not the circumstances that you think they are, ever. Um, so yeah, like, I don't know that I'd argue that it's not in Obi-Wan's character to do anything reckless, but at the same time, it's no one's character to do what he does here. Like, who the fuck's doing yeah, this? Yeah, this is... This this is taking it to another level. This is the kind of action that you take if you know that the universe has to bend its plot in order to help you succeed. Mm. All of a bunch of bad robots to apparently challenge Grievous to a duel or something. All them robots could have just started shooting him to death. Then Obi Wan yeah. just. I was gonna say, if someone was like, "Well, we might get some crossfire," but like, it's worth it. Knock out what? Worth like it. twenty worth droids it. for the Obi Wan? Hell yeah! Yeah. yeah. I'll trade a thousand droids to kill Obi Wan. And it, you know, someone's like, "Well, he could just jump up." It's like, "Yeah, but they don't even try." <laughs> I'd, I'd crossfire a thousand droids before I let this Jedi die. Ugh. And I'll silence anyone who gets in my way. <laughs> Stands there while Grievous takes like fifteen seconds to remove his cape, unhinge all of his arms, and grab all of his life. I'm willing to allow that Obi Wan is like, "I will defeat you in a battle." I, I... Also, if you're if you jump down there and you are not immediately shot to pieces and Grievous is like, OK, I will fight you. Allow him his theatrics. Yeah, I, I, I'm chill with that moment. It's like, sure, Obi-Wan's Jamie, if you look at Obi-Wan's face, it seems he's excited to fight him. Yeah. And so we just have to go with that, I guess. Obi-Wan does want to battle him. He doesn't just want to execute him. Same yeah, and he doesn't want to get shot to pieces by all these lunch. robots. Because the robots also are that. stopping so that they can fight. So as long as you're fighting Grievous, you're not being shot by a thousand robots. Which would probably hurt. Which would probably hurt. Stab him and cut his head off in like one second. Eventually, though, after another pointless, unexciting, tensionless, sterile, dull, consequence-free, lame, tiring, visually exhausting chase scene, Obi. I don't yeah. agree with all of them. Um, but that's fine. A lot of it's very, like, subjective. A like, if Sid is not yeah. exciting, it'd be like, I mean, shit, tons of people would find I mean, that exciting. I can understand how, I, but... Yeah, yeah, it's just a matter of the fight itself is shit. And then he just force pushes this, him away, yeah, then he just, shoots him in the end. There's not enough like, okay. uh, characters using the agency they have. They keep only using it when the script is allowing them to. Obi-Wan does kill Grievous with the blaster by shooting him in his heart. So uncivilized. No, decapitating people is uncivilized. And I'm also sorry that you're so stupid Maybe. that you failed to see the obvious tactical advantages of a projectile. I think you, you don't need to... It's sarcasm, I think. I don't know you need to take it that literally. I assume Obi-Wan's having some fun saying that. I don't know that we're supposed to actually believe that he thinks it's uncivilized to use guns. I, I don't know. I guess I I guess I wonder what the point of the... Sar the point he's trying to make is with the sarcasm. Um, maybe that he uses a sword. And that is, maybe they're associating, like, that clearly a sword is less civilized because it's old attack, and so it's ironic, or, or, or uh, silly that he would, he would say, I it's don't like really the, know. It's like the Sith Lords are our speciality <clears throat> thing, where you just have to, like, stop and, like, what is he trying <laughs> well, to say? Well, do you remember, the same thing happens in Black Panther, uh, Okoye says that guns are uncivilized or whatever compared primitive, to a spear. Primitive, yeah. Or primitive, yeah. <laughs> Which is like just mad. fucking not is, true. To, to say that guns are uncivilized only to then use a sharpened stick. That's what like, I'm saying. I, I assume that's what George was going for to make us go he he because he uses a sword. But I, I don't I don't right, know. Whereas in, I don't in know. Black Panther, I think it was like meant to be. Hey, well, she's right. In it's Black like, Panther, it was definitely supposed to be she's right because her spear is magical and does magical things. Yeah. But so I, fucking I know, stupid that they have spears, by the way. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. God, that it's movie a sucks. Stick. It's one of the oldest pieces of technology. Do you remember the, there is? when, when like the Infinity War, when the army's coming at them, they all have to awkwardly aim their spears to yeah. shoot. 
things. Because there's no sights on the Yeah, how do you spears? Yeah. You don't put sights on a spear. It? Like, why don't you have rifles? <laughs> you have to eyeball it. There's no other choice. You have to. It's <sighs> like, yeah, uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's like a Resident Evil fight, or uh, what is it, Retribution. There's no sights yeah. on her machine pistols she uses the whole fucking movie. And like, Vectors, stop. Vectors, right? How do you... Yeah, how do you, how do you, how, how do you shoot at things? You just eyeballing it? Yes. Terrible, terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible. Yes, sir. But yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure. I, for a second there, I wanted to defend this line, but now I'm thinking about it. I don't even know what, what was happening with this line, really. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe someone else can explain it better. I, I just, I'm not someone, sure. Someone who responds to this, let us know in your response there what you know. Obi-Wan really meant, and tell us what we're missing by his strange comment. Weapon. Also, like it just saved your retarded ass. The Jedi Council are all stupid fools, and they don't know what they're doing. Yes. I sense a plot to destroy mm -hmm. the Jedi. I sense a plot to destroy the Jedi. So the Jedi have their dumb meeting to talk about things. One of the topics is who's going to go to kill Grievance. Remember, killing this guy will end the war. So they pick Obi Wan over Anakin for no real reason when they both could have gone. The um. Don't I, they want Anakin around to keep tabs on Palpatine? And they, they, I think they say Obi Wan is just the most seasoned Jedi. So, like, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I, I, I in yeah, fact, I guess I don't have an issue. I would, I would have sent. I think the issue is sending because they are sending Obi Wan ahead of the clone ar cl clone army. Because mm. mm -hmm. the clone army is just like there inexplicably. So I assume they were sent. Um. So. Eh. Yeah. Both went to rescue Palpatine, right? But then they decide to give Anakin the mission to spy on the Chancellor instead. It's very dangerous putting them together. Hey, well then don't put them together. <laughs> Why don't you spy on him by watching the security holograms that record what's going on in his office? We don't talk about them. We don't talk about <laughs> security. The presence of security cameras in this trilogy is an extremely tenuous one. Well... I think, yeah, like, I was, yeah, I think he brings it up, because I'm having, like, thinkies of, like, wait, I feel like we've talked about this before, have we? but it's like, yeah, just download all these videos, man, can you not do that? Because this is, this is uh, amazing content access. to show the Senate. They've just got access to security footage from his office, very cool. Well, so <laughs> this, this, this moment yeah. is from, um, after he kills the children, right? Or is it not? I'm not sure, actually, it, now that This moment? Remember we were talking about how is it, it weird that he? Office, well, how be, strange because yeah. it looks like it fast forwards, you know, when he presses a button. Yeah, right. And then it fast forwards to like, "Hey, good job killing them children." <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But again, using Jedi wisdom, they just send one guy to go kill the main bad guy. So is it wiser to send Yoda? Well, they send to the army after him. Yeah, and, and to be fair, all the Jedi are very thin uh, right now in terms of they're all over different planets fighting wars and stuff. I, I don't know yeah. that that's a problem. And I think you can believe that Obi Wan can assassinate uh, Grievous. <laughs> what yeah. he ends up doing is pretty stupid. But like you, you assume that he wouldn't do something that stupid. You would assume. Totally pointless battle between robots and Sasquatches, or it's not a pointless battle. I mean, it's not pointless. This is the war. Yeah, then they don't want to lose Kashyyyk. It's an ally. Yeah. Or is he this is the off? droid attack on the Wookies we've heard so much about. Yeah, Kiri Mundi was fucking very invested in this. Going to the place where Gravis might be and helping to kill him. How important can Can't risk Yoda, I don't think. So, I guess he's trying to say that, like, this war would be irrelevant compared to ending it by killing Grievous, so send everyone to go get him, and it's like, but these wars are happening at the time that we've discovered Grievous should be killed and ending the war. Like, these wars will be fought even if Grievous is currently, you know, getting killed. Yeah. It takes a long time for a war to end, yeah. usually. So you gotta fight this war. Scale, like, imagine. You gotta fight this war, and you gotta send someone to go kill Grievous. Like I don't know that you can you you just go ah the Wookies yes they'll they'll lose a few people but the war will be over so it'll be fine. It's like I don't think it works that way. The planetary system for another day really be the brilliant script does have an excuse for this lack of logic and it's this. However, it may turn out just to be a wild panther chase. Oh, that's a good reason just to send one guy. That is a good reason. Uh, if, if they've got bad information and he goes to a planet where Grievous isn't at, then you haven't wasted... Let's say, for example, you did send Yoda and a bunch of other Jedi and loads of clone troopers on top of the ones that are sent. 
and he's not there, that's all time and resources that could have been spent saving other planets. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's bad reasoning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if he, if it was like maybe just send two, I'm like fine, I guess. But I don't have an issue with this really. What if it's not a wild bantha chase? Also, who's in charge of this war? Who's like the George Washington here? Is it Yoda? Is it the Jedi Council? It seems like they're in charge because they keep talking strategy. We're keepers of the peace, not soldiers. I can't fight a war for you. What about the droid attack on the Wookiees? He so said it. Conehead did. guy didn't remember to mention. To be fair, I, I am a little bit confused on this. It's like, so the Jedi decide everything to do with the Jedi, but they also seem to command the clones. But they're are they told it's, what the clones are supposed to do by Palpatine, and they're just logistics, or yeah, like they have general orders from Palpatine, but then on the yeah. field, the Jedi will tell them where to go and what to do. I don't know. It is either way. It seems of... so unthinkable to me that the Jedi are operating in this administrative capacity in a war over clones who are literally bred for this exact purpose. You'd think that you'd breed some clone generals and some clone lieutenants, you know? Yeah, you'd have your clone command structure, and maybe, you know, some actual people from the Republic? I don't know. But it's, it seems like the Jedi were just like, we're gonna lead them, and you're like, oh, are you? Like, yep. Are you? What? Why are you? I thought you were Keepers of the Peace, not soldiers. Do you know stuff about logistics, Mr. Yoda? Are you aware of how to wage a war? Yes, he is. Yeah, because it's he, not yeah. just going to the battles and fighting. It's about getting the people and the inf and the equipment where they need to I mean, be at the right time. And just think of the fucking the logistics. Sense. How yeah. to just feeding, clothing, maintaining well, yeah, an army, supplying them. Stuff you don't think like, about. Um, you are not. But... You're just not capable of doing that if you don't have experience in it. Like that is a super. I mean, logistics is what wins wars. And it if you put that on a galactic scale and you're like, you just have to have borderline geniuses who are even, organizing all this stuff. Even just broad strategic and operational goals, I have no idea why I would have any reason to think that the Jedi have any skill in terms of strategic planning and, you know. Yeah, imagine events like we've gone to planet A because that's where the Separatists are and they arrive and they're like, they just left. They've gone to planet B. And you're like, fuck, I guess we go to planet B. And as they go to B, the Separatists arrive back at A and shoot them from behind. And so it's just absolute chaos, logistically. Like, oh fuck, we, ah, some of our men are still on the planet A. We've got ships that aren't even prepared for battle. All of our offensive ships have just moved to planet B. They need to come back. You know, basically making it so that a, a team of 100 can be, be beaten by a team of 5. Depending on how you, you know, execute things. But we didn't get any of that in the prequels. Not that you have to, but like it would have been interesting. Mm. Yeah. Or at least further justify how on earth the Jedi ended up in charge and why they accepted that state of affairs. Mm. In the Wookiee planet, they probably all just would have forgot about it. They're like, oh yeah, that's super important, isn't it? He's right. It's a system we cannot afford to lose. It's like he just casually brings that up and that one line changes where everyone's gonna go. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've ever wondered how a war would be run by disorganized hippies, here it is. Then as if their strategic decisions don't make the Jedi Council look dumb enough as it is, how they deal with the power-hungry Chancellor makes them look even more dumberer. The dark side of the Force surrounds the Chancellor. The opportunities to stop Palpatine's <laughs> plan and prevent Anakin- <laughs> It's such a light of like, oh, really? It does. <laughs> the, that sounds bad. He's like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, oh. Okay. Should we tell someone? Anakin from becoming evil were so numerous and obvious that they could be put in a giant list. Let's do that, shall we? One. Tell Palpatine that his term is up. If he changed the law, argue to make a new law to change it back. Then ask him to state his reasons why it shouldn't be changed back. Ask him to explain why he in particular is so qualified to conduct a war. Use the process against him. Have Jimmy Smith's call for a vote of no confidence in Palpatine if step one doesn't work. The reasoning is that if Palpatine doesn't- To be fair, we are told that basically Mace Windu doesn't think these things will work. And that he wants to kill him. Prevent him from winning this way. The idea that that's what they go to first and don't even try to do another option? I mean, he does say you're under arrest and then he later says- uh, he has control of the Senate and the courts, he's too dangerous to be left alive. 
All I'm saying is the film's argument is that Mace Windu does not believe these other strategies would work. Resigned, then he would be fighting for an unlimited term for no good reason. He would be going against the very foundation and ideology of a government run by democratically elected officials based on some set of rules or- That is true. Unfortunately, they seem to cheer when he announces that the Empire is a thing soon, you know? Like, apparently they by are the on board with him just taking control. And what is that? That's so like an empire, right? What does that even mean in this sense? What now? Like an like, what's the like an empire? In terms of in in a oh in, like in a, the the structure of the government? Do you mean? Well, like, what does that mean here, though? Does it mean that so all these people who are cheering for an empire? Like, what do they think that means? Well, he tells empire. them that it means they'll be safer and more secure. I'm assuming that's what they're clapping for. I guess it's and what they, are just, they agreeing to in the in like yeah, Jesus like they're. He says, "I'm going to make it an empire," and everyone just fucking cheers. And I'm like, but what does that even mean? Because they certainly don't know. Because that in and of itself doesn't really like mean anything. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this comes back to everyone in this universe is an idiot. Yeah, so. Yeah, wait, wait. The, the simple shit we're given is they're all sad about the war and don't want to die anymore, and then he says, we'll be fine, and that will be fine because of an empire. And they're like, woo, empire, that, that's what that does, I guess. So, like, because in this sense, because an empire is when you have, like, a bunch of states or countries, and they're all controlled by, like, an individual, generally, like, an emperor. Um, but... So I guess it's just so but but they already had a system where a bunch of different planets and governments all contributed towards this republic. So the only difference now is essentially I'm going to be in charge of everything now. So it's going to be an empire now. Again, I, I think they didn't justify this, but I, I guess we're supposed to think that they all love him and they think he's fantastic and that, yeah, he should lead everyone. I don't know. Maybe I seems I guess unlikely, curious, though, right? But like. Yeah, it's However seems much super you like unlikely. me, I assume, Rags, you'll want to maintain control over your planet. <laughs> like, uh, I'm good. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll help out with Republic Wars, and hopefully you'll help me out when I get attacked, but I don't know about the whole, like, you control everything that I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, we don't we well, get to explore any of that. Yeah, like, now that the war's over and we don't need you, you're going to control everything. It just baffles me. You're gonna have to work hard to convince me of that. Our constitution. I love democracy. Find out facts about the clone army. Look into where the clones came from a little more thoroughly than not at all. Look into- I mean, let's be fair, the whole clone thing is fucked. We the tried to talk about Camino that with thing. Attack of the Clones. It is so fucking confusing. Um, it is- It is the just fact that they're all, it makes sense. They are all Django Fett. How is that not already? Like, wait, what? <laughs> Who's this guy? <laughs> Who approved it being this guy? Who is Isn't this that guy, guy? evil? And they're like, yeah. So is how did he... this happen? And you're like, uh, well, he was just a great template because he's a he's a good guy. By the way, I... in the Clone Wars, they find out that the clone army was bankrolled by Dooku, like Dooku as Tyrannus. We'll see know it. That he's a, I like, know chunks of that as well, thanks to the games. There's uh, the bounty hunter game. Like it's all about how Django earns getting chosen as a template, um, and Tyrannus is the one that's like guiding you through the game. So it's, I guess, that's their way of making that understandable. But when we covered Attack of the Clones, a lot of people were like angry at us for not knowing the ca the Kaminoans were evil, and it's like that's not in the movie. It's not in the movie. No. You have to you have to piece it together in a way that I don't think I I can't remember how I worded it when we covered Attack of the Clones. But my conclusion was the film accidentally stumbles into the idea that it makes more sense if the Kaminoans are in on it. Because uh, it makes more sense if they are, yeah. but that raises more issues. But I think it solves a little bit more than it. It makes more sense that they are in on it, but I don't think that the film does anything to even really hint at it. You just have to pick it up from details that the film doesn't intend for you to pick up. Yeah, like, it's, it's happenstance that it happens to be nice that to have way. one thing be explicit. Like, one line somewhere that's like, oh, right, oh, okay. 
and even getting into the bankrolling thing, the Republic is going to want to know who's paying for all this. That, but, but the first thing they're going to ask is who's paying for all of this. I mean, that's pretty funny, Or who right? did pay for it. And then there's just like, what, we just, we don't know? It's just what it was just a donation from a mystery. Like what? What? Well, how, what's all this? How fucking insane and confusing would that be if they did find out? You know, Count Dooku funded the clones. You're like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> He's isn't he like the main bad guy We're right now? Finding him. Right, yeah. Why would they send Count Dooku to do it to even have that be a thing? Why would Dooku be using an alias? Why would you even have that be a thing that could be discovered? Just uh, mm. yeah. It's I don't, all I don't fucked. Know, I don't know how many people know. Darth Tyrannus or whatever. I just it's just why why have him do it anyway? You you think you'd want someone else doing it? I don't fucking know. It's they didn't spend enough time on that one for the movies at all. I'm not I'm not gonna pretend like the Clone Wars is apparently gonna fix it all. Cause I doubt it. But uh, it makes it worse. They, okay. <laughs> oh my god. There's many it's people in chat right now. Like shut up, Theo. It makes it great. Shut up. They find out. <laughs> they find out explicitly that Dooku is Tyrannus and he paid for the clone army, and then they just decide to do nothing about it. What the hell? <laughs> they have a big meeting where they sit down and talk about it, and they decide actively to do nothing about it. Writing. If you suspect Palpatine is up to no good, try to sense his emotions. If he's able to block you, he just might know the ways of the Force, specifically the dark side. Hell, just fucking ask if he's a Sith Lord. He might just tell you. He's he might, <laughs> yeah. You know, Master Yoda, I am a Sith Lord. Master Yoda, oh, your girlfriend crazy. is dying. Perhaps we can save her with the dark side. <laughs> Perhaps we can come to some kind of arrangement. <laughs> Did you know that Yaddle is going to die in childbirth? Oh, no. no, not Yaddle. Herdachlorian count. Check his metachlorian count. Get some blood from his stool. Physically <laughs> confront Palpatine. Or instead of confronting Palpatine inside his private cramped office hallway, wait until he's in public to arrest him. Eventually he'll try to escape or attack you, and then he'll be exposed in front of everyone. That's if he doesn't, point. then he- Oh yeah, it's one of yeah. those things where everyone in this universe is a huge idiot. And the worst imagine, possible um, way that you could have carried out this plan is the way that they did. Imagine you arrest him, and because he can't like make a scene in front of the public, and then you fucking like just do a standard search. And you're like, is this is this a lightsaber? Is this a like, lightsaber? Uh, no, it's a dildo. It's, dull, it <laughs> it's <laughs> red. It's a red lightsaber. It's red. You know that that means you're evil, right? <laughs> it's like, yeah. No. Only evil people have these. I've no, seen I the just, movies. No, I just like red. I just, I like it. It's it's, cool look, color, I needed a butter know? knife, and I went to the store, and that's all they had. Let's do it. Let's do a metachlorian test on you. No, no, oh, wow. that would be. That it's would an be invasion insane. of my privacy. Man, invasion of my blood. <laughs> yes, it's my blood. So, my, my body, so my choice. Many, so many Get metachlorians. <laughs> that's a lot of metachlorians. Jesus well, as, Christ. As Plinkett said, get the blood from his stool. Easy. Yeah. Qui Gon's turning over in his grave with all of these metachlorians you got. <laughs> he walks up to Palpatine. You are the chosen one. You're metachlorian. You are the chosen one. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. You're, okay. the cho you're the chosen. Fuck this Anakin kid. You can actually arrest him like planned and elect a new leader in his place. Use blatantly obvious evidence to your advantage. Before confronting Palpatine with a lightsaber, again in private with no witnesses, show the damning security tape footage to the Senate, which is actually in session at the time you find it. Agreed. These are all good points. Yeah. Or take it's, it to it's... some place and broadcast it over the news. But if you need to directly confront him, then at the very least, team up together and murder him. Send me to <laughs> kill the Emperor. I will not kill Anakin. Instead of That's actually a good point. It's like, hey, how about we both kill both of them? And then, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Two against Putting one, you know? Feels like a stronger plan. Up, Obi-Wan and Yoda should have first attacked Palpatine and then went and killed Anakin. How's that for wise? Put mm -hmm. me on the council, coach. I'm ready. Newt Gunray is the stupidest asshole ever. <laughs> this fucking idiot has been around for three films and is the dumbest person in the galaxy. She can't do that! Shoot her! Or something! In The Phantom Menace, he was involved in a pointless business- I don't know, man. Suggesting just shoot people? That's just, like, a good idea. Think of all the problems that would have been, you know, saved. And just stopped if you just some if just just shooting people.
Like, don't do this ring and roll where you're trying to do these fancy pants kills and stuff. Like, just shoot them. It'll happen. He says, patience, she will die. I just want to see you get ripped apart by that creepy wolf dog monster alien thing. Instead Those of shooting. Those things are creepy. Mm. I think we had a discuss. It'll, I guess it'll be out our discussion on which one would you rather, like, have to fight or something like that. Yeah, I think we talked, I think about, we that talked one about it. I think we talked about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, we'll save that one for when those happen. This arrangement we did, with a distant hologram like... that looked like death and placed into a situation <laughs> where him and his trade federation were obviously being used as pawns in this guy's plans. Danny gets arrested for causing a galactic war and yet somehow reappears in the second film. Now he agrees to yet again. Yeah, apparently. Uh, I can't remember if there was a line for that, like how they avoided just permanent jail. I'm not sure. Yeah. I, yeah I'm, I'm sure strings could get pulled with the separatists and stuff. And lore with planets and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Part in another scheme by the same hologram that looks like death. This time, his only reason for doing this is that he wants Padme killed because he apparently blames her for the whole Naboo fiasco. Not that guy. Is she dead yet? So even though Newton is extensive trade federation that's large enough Newton. to conduct a war, probably could have mustered the resources for a simple assassination. He again relies on Darth Evil to take care of it so that the Darth plot Evil. for the second film can get going. However, in the third film, Newt Gunray is still going along for the ride with all these Jokers. Even though no one has yet to kill Padme, and he seems to be getting nothing out of this arrangement other than the destruction of all his Trade Federation ships and robots. Hey Newt, you're being had. It's time to stop making decisions, buddy, okay? It's time to retire. I mean, all I'll say, Stop making decisions. <laughs> very thin defense of Newt Gunray is just that, yeah, he he's in way over his head and he's manipulated for ages until his last lines are basically just, I don't even, I hate war, please stop, I just want this to stop, and then he gets killed. Like, I, I don't know, I think we're just supposed to assume him as a character, he's literally just a fucking puppet. Hmm. You're wrong. Yes. So Hang people up are the old like hat that. Thing. Yeah. I guess. But um, I still agree, it's just like, he managed, he went for a long time with all of this, with really not much yeah. to go on. Oh, I guess he died then. Anakin is even more dumber than New Gunray. So the dumbest prize award goes to none other than Anakin Skywalker. I don't know what to say. Anakin wasn't really seduced by the dark side. He was tricked into becoming evil. I don't understand. I'm not gonna die in childhood. His pathway there was very... That or very... Anakin is the mm. dumbest person ever. What do you mean? Possibly. For example, Anakin discovers that Padma is pregnant. He then has a dream that same night that she'll die in childbirth. Yes, Jedis have premonitions about the future. It is the future you see. Future? And I guess he had a dream about his mother getting raped by sand people. So anyway, he's sitting there with Palpatine, and Palpatine's talking about the Sith again. The Dark Lord of the Sith. And we're like, why does this guy know so much about the Sith? <laughs> it's like being in a casual conversation with someone that you've known, and then they start talking about how they're currently reading Mein Kampf. <laughs> Mike just raised I mean, an eye. You can do that for research, I don't know. Yeah. I was researching the, the Dark, dark Side, side yeah. the Sith. You know your enemy and all that. Eyebrow and be like, wait, what did you just say? About Mein Kampf? But right, instead, the fact that this guy starts talking about the Sith and the legend of Darth Plagueis or whatever, Anakin is just sitting there like a retard. Oh, can I still say retard? Anakin is just sitting there like an exceptional individual. Then he talks about a magic trick to save people from dying. You could actually save people from death. I will even learn to stop people from dying. Wow. That's pretty convenient timing. I will then execute many children. Like, I just, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I just, it, it fucking irks me to no end. And Anakin. it's not convenient timing. There's many, there's years and years in between these two events. But yeah, mm. it's it's one of those, like, uh, Anakin is an idiot. It's like, see, he's motivated by wanting to keep people alive. Unfortunately, it ends up on a path where he's killing everyone. You're just like, okay. Mm. All right. I'm willing to bet money that if Palpatine had said, you know, Anakin, the Sith Lords have the ability to save pregnant women from <laughs> dying during childbirth. 
I bet even if he said those exact words, Anakin still would have just sat there looking like a retarded Neanderthal. Oh, can I still <laughs> say Neanderthal? Good as a point of view, Anakin. Uh, Sith and the Jedi. Yeah, that, that is the, the biggest red flag you could ever get from anybody. Good as a point of yeah. view. <laughs> like, if um, anyone... You, fun, fun fact from EFAP Wisdom. If someone never starts conversations or explanations with, well, it's good and evil, it's just points of view. Red flags everywhere. Run, All the flags. Bring it up everywhere. It's like a fist fight on a soccer field. A similar in almost every way. <laughs> <laughs> idiot. Maybe this Basically. guy that seems to despise the Jedi and keeps talking about the advantages of being a Sith Lord might be a Sith Lord. A Sith Lord? Yes, the one we've been looking for. And they've been actively looking- oh, So stiff, man. Everything yeah. is stiff. Yeah, I mean, I think the that episode one was probably the worst, but geez, they're all bad. You just told me that the biggest villain of all time and the classic enemy of the Jedi has orchestrated this entire war, is in charge of the clones, in charge of the Republic, and yeah, I guess we can kill him. We should do something about this sometime after mm. we go get our Starbucks. Yeah, I need a coffee first. Come on. Yeah. We need Game the first. clearly we need the energy. The Sith Lord. Hmm. Who could it have been? Could it be this guy? <laughs> or what about this guy? Or maybe it could have been this lady. Or maybe it was a pig. <laughs> so if this were the Dark Ages, maybe oh, Padma might have died during childbirth. I'm not an expert on the subject, though. In fact, I'm not an expert on anything. But really, in this technological medical wonderland, how about you do a C-section with your lightsaber? Seems to be pretty accurate with it. I guess this is all just a matter of perspective. But again, it falls in line with the fact that just the basic amount of common sense would have foiled all of Palpatine's plans in an instant. Yeah, I got not, not though, much to Palpatine say here. To flat so yeah, that we're having that problem again. I just yeah. agree with all of this. So, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, this is all that. correct. Yeah, he's he, Jedi, he is uh, correct here. Unthinkably stupid in the prequels. This thing, I think Everyone if you, dig, you dig in into it, galaxy. everyone's plans start to fall the fuck apart. Mm. Yeah. I'll tell uh, him that yeah. he's evil because he can't take a hint. Even the nature of the dark side. Even Ray Charles could see that coming. And he doesn't he know was... anything about Star Wars. Then an awkward That's fight true. ensues and Anakin is forced to make a decision. Help Samuel L. Jackson in a robe, or help this weird guy with the weird monster face who just told you a very vague story about how he once knew a guy who knew how to save someone from dying or something. Well, the choice is clear. Like I said, though, I just, it, it amuses me to no end that he's like, yeah, save people from dying. He's like, all right, I'm gonna kill awesome Samuel Jackson. Now let's do it. He's like, yeah, yeah, we could uncover that secret. Like, uncover the secret? You... You're a, you're a naughty liar. I thought that we had this under control. It's like, nah, we gotta look at some books, gotta look at some history. I don't even know if we can do it, really. <laughs> it's like, oh. But, you know, Anakin doesn't give a fuck. He's just like, alright then. What's next? Kill children? Okay. Tick. Here. So long, Samuel. I hope you burn in hell. Oh, jeez. I hope we had a stunt double for that. Anyway, so Anakin kneels before Monster Mash and pledges his loyalty <laughs> to the Graveyard Smash. Well, that's the no reason for him to pledge his loyalty to evil, right? And all of it was sort of involving saving Padme. To to Plinkett's credit, his evil did catch on in a flash, so it all it all mm. kind of suits him, yeah. Just help me save Padme's life. Then Dracula is like <laughs> Uh, only one has achieved, but if we work together... Uh Dude, what happened to your voice? <laughs> it's like yeah, like, yeah, I did it. Uh, I, I know... If no, oh, that's... That, that's... Oh, that the lightning. Green smoking it, finally caught it, up to him. No, that's the vocal... He, he got vocal fried. Oh. <laughs> I know we can discover... You should make YouTube videos now. Wait, wait, wait. What? Can't we do it like now? My lady's got a pretty big baby bump and she does deliver two full-size babies in like six hours from now. Also, you never said it was a secret. Yep. Oh, I've been tricked. Holy shit, what have I done? I just killed Samuel L. Jackson for this shit. Who's gonna play Nick Fury in the Avengers movie? 
So despite the questionable logic and the very convenient timing of Palpatine's promise to save Padme from dying during childbirth, Dumbass agrees to just go off and kill everyone to neatly tie everything up. It's, it's absurd. It happens right next to that scene. It's like, the fuck? Yeah. I'm, I'm so sad it, about killing the not... Jedi Master, but it's fine. I'll kill everyone else. Yeah. In for a penny, in for a pound. Yeah. Even though to him, none of it would actually make sense. Go to the Mustafas. It is- I- I can so agree with this. It's such a jump. It's like, alright, I saved you from Mace Windu. Now let's work on saving Padme. And he's like, yes, yes, yes. But... Let's kill all the Jedi. You're like, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. So- like the next step. Oh, actually, someone just posted this in my server. So, um... This is topical and coincidental. Okay. Ah. Um, just the fact there's a reference, or yeah, they're, they're all Star Wars references, and Halo Star Infinite, and someone just posted it in my server. I thought that was a neat, neat coincidence, especially because we're covering, you know, like Grievous says two of these. Mm-hmm. Cover. I just I thought that it was. Thought it was pretty neat. It pretty neat is reference. Neat. Also, I, like any moment now, I'll probably have to mute for a moment or so, and uh, I got a delivery coming in that should arrive any second. So if I say hold on and I mute, that will be what I'm going to do. Very to, well. You know. Let's fucking do it. System wipe out Viceroy Gunray. Wait, why are we killing the Separatists? And how do you know where they are? Yeah, that's the the first question, I think. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, you have access to their location? You're like, yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is that a uh, problem? A, a clone <laughs> intelligence <laughs> unit <laughs> discovered the um, place yes, where they absolutely. are. Whoa, 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 yeah. When? He's like, literally five minutes ago. Just now. <laughs> before, before Mace Windu came in my office, I got a text. Yeah. What, that, it's like, yeah. what are the odds? Yeah, pretty low. Anyway, <laughs> go kill him. <laughs> please. Pretty please. Why didn't you just tell us where they were before? After you have killed all the Jedi in the temple. Oh, now we're killing all the <laughs> Jedi too? That's wait, what wait, I mean, what? Like... Should I kill the entire Senate as well? <laughs> wait, cool. After you've killed the Senate, we'll like sort out I want out you to kill all the Senate, one by one, with your lightsaber. And you know he'd say yes, because that's just how it works in this film. He'd be like, okay. I have to say, Go oh, and kill all the Gungans. Padme, don't you understand? <laughs> I did it for you. Travel to Alderaan and steal everyone's left shoe. <laughs> I, I did it all for you, Padme. It was I wonder a terrible romance. if the Emperor was like, kill Padme and we will save Padme. <laughs> <And> he's <laughs> like, I gotta do it, Padme, for you. I have to kill you for <laughs> you. <laughs> I... Anakin, have you thought about any of this? He's like, no. Not even a little did bit. Did I what? Why not killing besides Padme? Vader's pretty fucking dumb. Oh, it's done. Excuse me just a moment. Perfect. <laughs> he's he's not a fan of the Phantom Menace, you could say that. He doesn't like him. <laughs> he doesn't like it. Well, it's funny, like, all I'll say about this, right, is a lot of people do these sorts of jokes in this, like, uh, there's the one that gets spread around where some guy bought uh, a roast eco toy and, and chopped its head off. Um, and they say, like, the Plinkett videos gave birth to a lot of crazy and uh, toxic people. I was like, I mean, I feel like this would be classified similarly it's by just... a lot of people, but it, we're supposed to believe it's just funny. It's just a joke. Because cause for us, because we know that it's just a joke for funsies, and then yeah. a bunch of assholes out there are like, oh, this is definitely like a real, I'm going to look super deep into this and psychoanalyze this. Oh my god, yeah, what he's a Nazi and we have to ban him from Twitter. Psychotic neckbeard peas on video to prove that he stalls battle. So you're just like, it's just a joke. You'll be fine. Just, yeah, calm down, fucking babies. <laughs> Ha 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 
<laughs> Number eight, blue screen blues. The magic of technology oh ruins the oh, magic of movies. Oh, boy. Now, I may be a very old alcoholic murderer, but I understand the need to shoot stuff on a blue screen, also known as a green screen by racists. It's a necessary tool <laughs> for compositing shots together to make the new modern movie magic happen. They've been doing tricks like that since the early days of cinema with rear screen projections, matte paintings, and so on. A lot of modern filmmakers have done some really great work with the green screen and compositing and computers. If you know what you're doing, you could seamlessly blend everything together or create a movie that has a visual style to it. Depends on the movie, though. Hey. Completely agree so far. We're all good. Yeah, so far we're good. They don't film romantic comedies against green screens. And it's not yeah, a good idea. To I'm pretty sure they do. At least these days they do. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's why there are scenes of Black Widow where she's just sh sitting at a fucking on a patio and it has to all be green screened. And you're like, like, why, though? Yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll, we'll probably get into that in a moment. I'm sure it'll I'm come sure up. I'm sure we will. Here's the big butts coming, no doubt. To try and pass off every single environment as a real environment. The human eye can detect fakeness really well. Not too hard. Uh, the yeah. irony is, I mean, no, I, I would I, say in this it, movie, it yes, but it's, yeah, but it always depends on how effective. Like, I would, I would say that there are many, many, many instances of visual effects that people don't notice, and you need to yes. point it out, and then they'll notice, and it's like, oh, oh goddamn, we're actually what about good at this? Uh, the, f the famous example that a lot of people use against Plinket is the um, the audience in the Phantom Menace pod racing scene is practical. But a lot of people think but it's shitty CGI. It's like, right. what does yeah. that mean? What are we, what's happening there, you know? Yeah, exactly. It becomes, Clearly bad I acting. <laughs> I am. Um... Well, yeah, it's just, it makes it a little bit harder, right? To Because uh, there are certain instances where it is real, but for some reason it just doesn't look very convincing. And the, conversation, the conversation, the conversation yeah, doesn't seem to go further than that a lot of the time. So, for example, everyone watches Infinity War, and half the people come away going, man... The purple dude, that was distracting. The other half go, what do you mean? Like, it was amazing. Yeah, now what do we do? Because it's like, who's wrong? Yeah, and you can appeal to fidelity, I think, but at the same time... Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Saying, like, the human eye can detect fakeness really well, it's like, can it? Like, a lot of the time... You know, like, uh, Dune is going to be a good example, as Rags brought it before, but... You watch that movie, it's like, I can't be sure of exactly what is CGI and what isn't in that. There's a lot of stuff where I'm like, okay, that was CGI. But then the stuff where I'm like, that, I, uh, hmm. Right. And I mean, at that point, it's not really it, fakeness. It's like, we're kind of, it's, it's what? not, that's kind of missing the, uh, the most important part. Uh, you I know, f credit to Black Widow, I didn't know the scene where they were sitting at the fucking table was on a green screen until I saw the behind-the-scenes thing. I was like, you fucking kidding well, me, really? That, that's always going to be the thing. There are a lot of instances where you're not going to notice. Yeah. It's because you, you notice... it. You notice bad CGI, you often don't notice when it's good. Like... Except if it's something that's very obviously not achievable with real things. Well, when we like were watching that, like Revenge that. of the Sith, there were several moments we were like, ah, oh, that background looks so fake. But then there was plenty of times yeah. where I think I probably would have just been chill and been like, yeah, looks yeah, fun. yeah. And of course, there is the question of how much are we paying attention to the fact that it's CGI, given that a lot of the conversation around the prequels is about the visual effects. Because the easy thing, again, would be, man, you know how much CGI they used in the sequels? It was probably the same amount. It's probably, just yeah. you didn't notice it as much, because it's better. Yeah, um, um, the compositing for people on the backdrops is like, we're just getting better at that all the time. We're getting a lot better at it, yeah. We're getting a lot better at integrating uh, digital characters and things like that into shots. And, like, we're <laughs> almost jumping the gun here. I'm pretty sure he's going to be making this point, but, like... You know, if it was like, you shouldn't be relying on CGI for everything, it's like, but what if you're really good at it? Well, yeah, um, and of course it's just the thing of, like, it depends on what, um, it, it, it depends on what kind of story you're telling. Like, science fiction stuff is generally gonna use more of it than yeah. normal contemporary um, setting things. You know, you, Same goes for fantasy. 
when they when they're building that scene in Fellowship of the Ring, and they're like, "How is our big practical Balrog looking?" And it's like it's falling apart. It can't like we can't move it to make it look real. Blah, blah. And then <laughs> someone is like, "Oh, you guys really gonna rely on CGI?" And they're like, it's "Yeah." Like, what do you mean we we're are. gonna rely on it? Yes, I mean, we're, we're gonna work really hard to realize something that <laughs> will be iconic awesome. as fuck. Um, and then if and you go, was. okay, well, that's just one time and it was specific and needed. It's like, okay, so theoretically there's a movie where every scene is that. What, what Now what? Well, I mean, there are, it's well, 3D animated ex films. Exactly. Because like. <laughs> I, I would wait for, I'd, I'd put down my bear trap and they'd be like, there's no such movie. And it's like, actually, there's a whole industry of these movies. Exactly. Yeah. Um. And, and I mean, it's interesting, right? Because you've probably often seen on EFAP where it's like, man, it'd be nice if there were some 2D animated films now. But it's not like a, uh, it's not a, it's definitely not a slag against like 3D animated films. It's more just, it would be nice if there was uh, and still those 2D animated films like The Lion King. And, I am bad. And you wouldn't and have people being it. like, I don't know, man, drawn? Like, how can I believe there's any weight to that? It's literally. Like right. little, little well, drawings. Well, I mean, exactly. So, somebody could be like, "Man, you know, like the Little Mermaid." It's like these are these are little toon cartoon things. But like, you look at what Pixar's making now. Like, look at the lighting. Look it's at incredible. The, look Toy at, Story like, Four. The effects, look at the rendering. F Toy Story Four felt weird to watch. So I was like, "Oh my god, I've never seen Woody in such like detail." But I think that's the thing that uh, a lot of people don't notice. If you compare Toy Story One to Toy Story Four, night man, and day, yeah, yeah. night and man, day, people the, don't remember. The, um, people don't remember, or I think people remember it looking a lot better than it. Did. Like, of course, Toy Story was groundbreaking, revolutionary. Like, mwah, like it's beautiful in terms of well, kicking it, off this yeah. uh, this whole new world of three D animation. But I think because we touched on it earlier, but um. When it comes to like visual effects, 3D animation, CGI, a lot of it is you are developing the techniques as the situation demands it. Like once a film is like, oh, we need to do this, then it's like, okay, that now yeah. we need to think about solving this problem. This we want to do this. Now we need to figure out this problem. Like how do we render skin that looks detailed or like hair or and okay, now we need to we need to render like realistic looking cars. How does the light reflect off of it? Yeah. That's like that's the process. It's highly iterative because there there will just be new problems that you encounter, and then you need to get over them. It's constantly building on on it. And of course, in order to get to where we are now, we kind of needed this era, like the prequel yeah, era, of course. where we hadn't figured it out. Um, in much the same way that in order to achieve the fidelity that we get in video games now, we needed the PlayStation 1 and 64 era where everything looked really blocky. And again, that's that's kind of its own style at this point, like 32-bit. Uh, um, but yeah, it's just, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't like this just shitting on <laughs> the idea of using visual effects. It, it's, it's always a conversation of how well integrated is it. That's Absolutely. what it's always going to be. Let me ask you this. Do you think oh. in that in a similar vein, do you think that people remember graphics being better in films, or do you think they remember graphics being better in games? Um, I think that would depend on what era we're talking about, but I remember this because I I uh I remember I I watched recently some footage from like old Mario Kart games. Um and I watched uh some gameplay from Mario Kart DS and I'm like, man. I thought this game looked a lot better when I was a kid. <laughs> like, I remember thinking this game looked much better. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, hmm, when you do think about old games, because I remember, like, I remember when I got my PS3, I was like, holy shit, look at this. Like, mm -hmm. look at these graphics. They're insane. And then, of course, you look back at them now, it's like, ooh. It's a bit rough. Well, yeah, but maybe uh, you know we still get surprised. I think Infinity War was a surprise with Thanos, and the uh, uh, Dune is a surprise for a lot of people visually. Like I think we're still going. Yeah. It's, it's not stopped. I think we're still going as well. I because you often see people say we've reached the cap. People said about video games, and they're totally wrong on that. Like video games can absolutely go much, much, much further. In Especially terms. considering the, the, VR is currently like in a. It's 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 almost like when we move platforms in terms of capacity for video games the graphics go back down again and then they start charging back up it feels um, that way yeah um it's like switching I mean, gears it's kind of, well it's like uh it's like handheld as well right you look yeah. at the nintendo it's like dude super mario odyssey that's like a mobile game <laughs> like but it ain't well, look it, at it you know 
hopefully we're all still alive and well by the time VR gets to the point of like the Oasis and Ready Player One. It'd be cool to yeah, try which that out. Probably will. But even then, if someone said now it's at the peak, it's like no, still not because there's there's a whole part where we all get plugged in directly and like it, you know, all kind, of, you know, we human imagination is just like we we get we get more and more and more and more as time goes on. And I think that maybe when you watch Jurassic Park in '93, be like we've peaked, this is it, and it's like. No. Well, <laughs> like, people keep saying that. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure people thought they peaked on those like pre-rendered Resident Evil two like uh, cutscenes. Like Lord of the Rings, right? And I would even argue Lord of the Rings yeah. can beat out a shit ton of things that come out today. And it's like, okay, but then we are again talking about execution, aren't we? I mean, give yes. your imagination a bit more credit. Absolutely, yeah. there's so much yeah. stuff for us to realize still. Um, and also, maybe just realize, like, the world, it's a its a pretty place out there, all right? We, uh, we, we, we got a lot that we, oh, yeah. we, you know, could still capture about the beauty and, and majesty of existence. And the graphics out there are thousands of years old. Yes. They are. Well, um, thousands, like, billions, but... To circle us right back to why we paused as well, fakeness. We can spot fakeness. It's just like, mmm. No. If, I, I don't know that it's that simple. Yeah, if we're supposed we to believe... tell ourselves we can. Yeah, yeah, because like, like I said, I was saying, Rags, I think you were muted, but um, that Black Widow scene, if you if someone was sitting with me watching it on the table, and they go, oof, that background's fake, I'd be like, oh, is it? I'd be like, I, I couldn't tell. I, I think it's silly. Well, but, um, I mean, here's... But what I'm suggesting is like I couldn't, I can't spot the fakeness every time. I don't think anyone can, so I don't think that's the yeah. issue. It's I and that I'm thinking about this now because I just looked up uh like the Nathan Drake from Uncharted Four and it's like man this this looks like a real dude but he doesn't you know like yeah like you can you can tell that it's not um like you look at it and it's like man that is really convincing but also like I can tell that that's not actually a person um like I can tell yeah. it's a video game character because of just certain things that aren't as detailed as like a real person and yet. If you present this to me, but then you present something in like Revenge of the Sith that had more polygons, like almost certainly, or just just more going on in terms of like detail, I'm like, oh, that's not as appealing. And if that's the case, then fakeness isn't really what's relevant here. Like whatever fakeness means well, as like, an abstract concept. Yeah, lightsabers are fake, detail. but none of us have any problem with the lightsaber looks in all these movies, really. No. Um, yeah, exactly. So it's it's just uh, yeah. I I just struggle. I feel like there's so much more to say on this subject, and I do feel like Plinkett's kind of damaged this subject because he he makes this point a lot in these videos. Right. Um, yeah, I'm gonna start it off this video with that. Yeah, and 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 someone might be like, "Well, that's pretty fucking harsh." And I'd be like, "I think it's just a matter of he did. He probably agrees with a lot of the stuff we've just said. He just ha didn't go into it. It's more of a surface <laughs> he didn't level. Go into like it as much. And a everyone lot of ran with it. Everyone intuitively finds a lot of the areas in the prequels fake. And when you see the behind the scenes of it's just a blue room, you're like, oh, that's probably why. All right, there it is. It's fake. It looks fake. We thought it was fake. We don't like that. Don't do that. And it's like, it's, it's, there's more to it than that, but okay. Star Wars is that even though we see the most vast and open scenery generated by a computer, I just know that the actors are being filmed in a smaller space and restricted. It just doesn't feel right, and it shatters my suspension of disbelief constantly because it doesn't look real. Here's a couple examples, and I'm not sure what to pin this on, the use of the green screen or just poor direction. But it's a good example of why the prequels suck. Okay, so like the most important thing ever happens. Anakin tells Samuel L. Jackson that Palpatine is a Sith, and that he's going to get them all. I think Chancellor Palpatine is a Sith Lord. A Sith Lord? We must move quickly if the Jedi Order is to survive. Then they just start walking at what can't even be described as a brisk pace. Yarn. Now in comparison, let's take- I'm not sure what has to do with CGI or compositing. Or yeah, I guess the point is that the space isn't big enough for them to walk quicker, but I feel like that's a set complaint. I was gonna say, that's, yeah, I still don't think- set. I don't think you that's going to do with the green screen, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's just, you, you were in a too small of an area, or- they weren't directed this, to run. Yeah, I would call this a writing slash directing you, problem. Yeah, Obi Mace Windu should take out his cell phone and be, and be like, dude, he's got Yoda on speed dial. Um, he's like, hey, Big G, um, uh, yeah, you wouldn't believe what Skywalker just told me. And then they have like the conversation as they're running. 
And then he tells, see that clone over there? He's like, hey, hey, Palpatine's a Sith Lord. And he's just telling everybody. I don't know what the clones are. I wonder what those clones were talking about back there. There's two clones talking to each other <laughs> by a by a little battleship, and I'm like, what What are you guys talking about? I wonder. We will find out in a, in a movie, bonus movie about the history. Um, I don't want any more bonus movies. No, I know, but I yeah, if he said like a Sith Lord, how do you know that? And he goes, he practically admitted it to me, and then you know he just stares at him for like a split second, and then just starts running off. And you're like, and, and Anakin's like, whoa, 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 what, what, what are you gonna do? And he's like, stay here. And he's just going. That that would be way more yeah. believable to me than um, something. Let's just calmly do walk yeah. towards the next place. It looks like you were going that way anyway. <laughs> Nothing changed. I'm going a little bit faster. Well, let yeah. me see if I can slot this into my very busy schedule. There's a war going on, you know. Let's mm. see. You meet up with this and there and do that. Maybe I could uh, do a thing. Take a look at a scene from that recent Star Trek movie. Jim. I'm not kidding. We need to kick your heart rate down. Well, you Kirk realizes I'm that gonna, so I'm just gonna look up how many visual effects shots were in this movie. I would also think this might be a bit unfair. Uh, there are actually scenes in Revenge of the Sith, but I, I guess he's just saying like, because over a thousand special effects shots in this movie. <laughs> well, but I'm a little bit confused again. anyway. I don't see what this has to do with. Special effects, as opposed to just well, yeah, direction. I guess the logic is you should have built a set, because look, that you can run, run on this freaking green screen set. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're warping into a trap. So, uh, th yeah, this is this is complaints about directing. Then, not yeah, this is not CGI. Visual effects, yeah. Um, how about a sudden swell of action music as they run and the camera follows behind them in a frantic pace to gather other yeah, Jedis to go confront Palpatine? Yo, what if that clone, who like secretly knew about all this stuff, he hears those two talking and he's like, <laughs> oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, and he just like speed walks away. <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah. or he just walks up and he goes, what are you guys talking about? Because I thought you just said something like Palpatine is like a Sith Lord, which sounds ridiculous and stupid. Like, what? Who, that why, would, <laughs> why would you say that? That's so stupid. Palpatine. I, I don't know. Maybe Samuel was being discreet or whatever. But the other way just sounds more exciting in a movie. I mean, we're not making straight story, right? But they probably just had like 30 feet of green screen and track to work with. And those are the lines that they had to- I don't know if it's in this video, but he totally recommends that JJ should make Star Wars and he'd do a way better job. And it is absolutely oh, the funniest fucking I thing now. Oh, I remember oh, oh. in their Rise of Skywalker video, they talk about that. Yep, they. How long time he ago, literally he's apologizes. Like, oh God, what have I done? Yeah, <laughs> <He's> <laughs> like, he says it's not my fault. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I didn't mean for this to happen. To say, I guess. I guess it just would have been a lot harder to film if you had a camera with the steady cam and they're running through the Jedi Temple and it was all action packed and stuff. That would mean but you're showing would scenes where there are green yeah, screens on the this, set. Yeah, that's what I mean. This, this argument doesn't work. This is just direction that you're talking about. Yeah, you, like what you're suggesting is better not because of CGI. No, it's just better camera work, more intense. Yeah, better. Yeah, and the, and can... the director is passionate enough to be like, I need this happening, this happening, this happening, and we're going to have the instead of just your talk and walk forward. Yeah. <laughs> You could do all of that stuff behind a or in front of a green yep. screen. And, and stop drinking his coffee and they would have to move all the monitors and things. What, whatever doesn't require me to have to get off my chair or have to move all this shit. Don't worry about the audience. As long as you're comfortable while you're directing the film, that's all that matters. Just have them talking in front of the green screen and use two cameras to shoot reverse angles and have them say the line. Yeah, see, this isn't CGI's fault. Yeah. CGI's sitting here like, why are you angry at me? I didn't do this. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, this is the camera placement and the this direction. Is, this, isn't, this isn't my fault. Yeah, I, I, I made Lord of the Rings have the other day. Have you seen the Balrog? Like, How many what times are you doing? Yeah. The Balrog. Yeah. Like, that, I made those like two years ago. <laughs> like, calm down. ...and just get the scene over with. Just sit in the chair with your coffee and watch those monitors. Because then if you don't got to get up... Because maybe he's trying to imply it's like it can encourage laziness, but I feel like I could make that argument for practical effects. It should be like, yeah. you just go, ah, oh, fucking you, you practical Puppet effects man. You. Yeah, you make it and we'll sort that out later. Makeup guy, do that thing. Yeah. 
it makes it easier. It is his way of actually trying to make the best possible film that he can. Oh. I, I'm sure George thought that. That's fine. I just. You know. I'm sure he thought <laughs> that. Okay, and cut. Okay, great. Another pretty clear example of what? green screen disadvantage is when the actors don't know what they're doing. Whoa! Like, I mean, that's just. That's, <laughs> normal. that's just that's, funny and fun. That, it happens. That's yeah. very funny. Hey, that, is just, that is amusing. When Obi Wan confronts Grievous. I'm gonna guess they just had Ewan McDonald standing there looking into green nothingness, <laughs> and someone was telling him that Grievous was right there. Well, like, the thing is, he lights up all of his swords and does kind of this... So, my question in here would be, like, what do you think about stage productions, like, where actors have to really do a lot of mental, uh, mental legwork? To like, you know, imagine well, I, or uh, infer a stage or anything keep, like that. I'm gonna know? keep doing it. Ian McKellen's fucking performance when facing the Balrog makes you believe that Balrog is there. Yeah, and it ain't. It ain't there. <laughs> now, I'm no director, but like, maybe in this instance, the director should have, whoever that was, I don't know, what, but maybe the director should have been like, all right, Obi-Wan, here's what you're gonna be seeing. And then you do the acting, and then we will CGI the things based on like where you're looking, yep. and that's well, probably of did. That is that again matter. CGI is sitting there being like, "This wasn't my fault. This is George Lucas' yeah. fault." They could have made, they could have CGI'd whatever they wanted. Because he's right. Uh, there's a flourish, and Obi Wan is standing there as if nothing's happening, and it's like, yeah, someone didn't tell him what was happening. Yeah. Why does his right hand look weird on that lightsaber? What's going on there? I think it's because it's the like in his robe? Is dangling over. I think yeah. that's why. Mm. It looks very strange. Kind of this like karate show off stance thing, but it happens quickly, right in front of Obi Wan's face. Gravis could have just lunged right at him super fast and cut him up into like 20 pieces. He doesn't even flinch or react to this. He just stands there, probably because Ewan had no idea what he was supposed to be looking at at that right, particular that's not, Maybe. That's not yeah, and, yeah, but that's that, could be, that can be solved, yeah. You go, Ewan, he's about that's to do a little flippy flappy. What we want you to do is take a step back as he does it. Yeah, he's going to do this crazy flourish with four lightsabers. So you need to like jump back or react or mm -hmm. get, put your lightsaber in between you and him. Um, and what we'll do is we'll do like, we can you do like 20. Like just, just we'll do it like 20 times and I'll look through them and if one of them is looking good there'll probably be plenty that'll look fine but I'll pick yeah. whichever one's the best and then I'll send those to the CGI guys yeah. and then they can animate based on what you've done and it'll and look I guess great that because that highlights because a lot of this can be on because there are you know sometimes there's nothing sometimes there's a tennis ball sometimes there's a person in like a green floopy suit sometimes there's a prop that they have you act against well, there are um, many, many, many different options that are available that are all ultimately leading to CGI. Well, they did with uh, Josh Brolin, right? Like, they put him in some weird suit. They put and him his, in the suit and the they Thanos, had a... Is there a Thanos chin stuck. that he had? I think, uh, I think, well, one of the things I think they had was to make sure that the eyes were lined up. They had a picture of, like, Thanos' yeah. head at the height that he would have been. Um, and, of course... Seems like a got, reasonable thing that well, should just I mean, be, like, the, the default... Well, one of the things that we can do now, because of just the advancement, is, like, there are ways that they can just review the footage on set, like, with, with like, the, the motion-captured performance, like, imposed in the, uh, in the shots, like, on set, so that they can check and see how it all lines up. Like, we're getting a lot better at doing this. Yeah, and, and let's be fucking honest here, okay? Someone said, uh, this, this is still bad because it's too much CGI usage or whatever, but it's like, but at this point the actors are getting what they need, right? And that you can believe it, and so is, have we not solved the problem while also yeah. apparently not meeting the standard? Because I think, look at this image, it's absurd, but that's the actor's job, yeah. they have to treat this seriously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and they, they do, do a great Thanos job. Convincing. And if someone yeah, said yes, convincing. but they're acting across from an actor, and I'd be like, okay, but you don't. You, I'm, I'm sorry, I know because like there's the famous thing where Ian McKellen was like breaking down on the Hobbit set because he was doing full scenes without any other actors, which sucks. Um, but these, I assume, are the challenges that you face in lots of these movies, right? Yeah. You gotta, you gotta pretend to be a thing and deal with a thing that's not actually there. That is your job. Yeah. Um, and I think that looking at this, when I, if I arrived on set and they're like, this is the villain of the whole film, I'd be like, okay, uh, right. And they're like, no, seriously, 
you need to take this seriously. I'd be like, no, yeah, okay, you, uh, definitely. Um, but you know, and it worked out pretty great. Thanos was awesome in uh, in all Infinity yes. Tisms. Granted, this video was made, like I said, I think in 2013 or something, so... Man, 2013 was after Avatar came out. He hates Avatar, or I think... That's... Think well, I mean, I'm not a big fan of Avatar either, but, like, goddamn, yeah. Avatar is impressive as a technical feat. Sure. Um, well, we had plenty of examples, like, didn't we? I just... I don't know. And Avengers was out by this point, too. Like, Iron Man's, you know, I'm telling you, man, I think the Balrog shit. is better than the Rancor, and it's a pretty direct comparison. I mean, yes. I so, like, yeah. who is... Is anybody actually gonna argue that the Rancor is better than the Balrog? I think the people who will will say, well, Practical kind of always wins out. And I expect, it doesn't. Well, it doesn't so always win out. does Practical win out when we have the fucking elephants in, uh, in Return of the King? Like, what? Well, that's... I fucking adore that shot, and that's probably all yeah. CGI, all of it. Oh, oh, yeah, that is that is like one hundred percent CGI. And Lord of the Rings, <laughs> pretty sure. Return of the King would would have been out for like a decade by now, and it's like Plinkett, please yes. talk about that. What do you think of that? Is that bad because it's not what about real? King and Kong from King Kong. What about uh, what about all those... Caesar from uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes? That was out by then. All and those God actors it, reacting to the giant elephants that don't exist. It's like, is that a problem? Yeah. I, man, I feel like Caesar actually is one of those ones where it's like, do you actually think this would be improved if it was prosthetics? Well, as opposed here's to the thing. very realistic looking chip. I think that choice is better than not only prosthetics, but also like training real monkeys. I feel like it's. Oh, I mean. You're I never going to be able to get what you, you got. Can, exactly. Exactly. And but Mahler, that's, that's all Hollywood like... productions. Put your goom, bah. Nice. Uh, I guess monkeys. that's the thing is, um, it, you know, are we. Because, like, I really like Andy Serkis. Like, I respect the hell out of that guy. And Gollum, um, right? And it's like, excellent. He, well, he's he's a lot of... He was King Kong in King Kong. He does a lot of motion capture stuff. And it's like, man, like, what think, he does is really cool and impressive. And it, I don't like the idea of shitting on it because it's CGI. Well, I think the, the caveat people would give you is like, well, no, that doesn't count because that's a person uh, compared to just a green well, sure, screen. sure, but I mean... I, but it's still visual effects. Absolutely. Uh, and I still, you know, the point still stands for all the other examples by that standard. Um, yeah. There was no guy for the Balrog standing there going, ooh. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, like, and when we talk about the idea of fakeness, it's like, so I know that chimpanzees can't do what's happening in that film, but nevertheless, like, I'm immersed in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in that. Um... And, and meanwhile, there'll be instances where, like, I know that forests exist, but this one in Black Widow, like... Looks fake as fuck, look yeah. look real to me. So, I don't know what's what's happening there, because, you know... For a second, it's a little... this kind of stuff stands out to me, and it takes me out of the movie, because it looks fake. You know what else takes me out of the movie? My spastic colon. <laughs> so that's what the oh, doctors no. meant by unexpected fecal release. I did write a letter to the staff at the Cedar Lane Cinema, apologizing for the mess. <laughs> and even though they did clean up a half a gallon of my feces, they seemed to think I was referring to the movie. Dear Mr. Plinkett, there's no need to personally apologize for the mess that was Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. It certainly wasn't your fault. Additionally, we do thank you for your kind words about our staff and the wonderful cleanup job they did when your spastic colon suddenly released a half a gallon of fecal matter onto the floor of our cinema. We would have never expected that one man could eat so much corn. Please accept our sincerest apologies for your film viewing experience. Sincerely, Cedar Lane Cinema Management, T-Neck, New Jersey. Well, wasn't that nice of them? The last example is the opposite of restriction. And if you spend enough time and effort on a sequence, you can literally do amazing things. Dude, that looks really good. Like, it does look really good. Like, can we pretend that doesn't it look good? Look great. I don't, I don't <laughs> know if it, what was, was he saying this does look good or was he saying it's excessive? I, I, I don't know. Good. I think he's saying it's good. Yeah. Let's see. Of restriction. And if you spend enough time and effort on a sequence, you can literally do amazing things with your characters oh, and put okay. them anywhere. Let's look yeah. at that Mustafar fight. Obi-Wan is mad at Anakin because he killed children, also known as younglings, <laughs> so that we don't have to use the phrase killed children. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in a movie He's made probably right about that. Yeah. Anakin is mad at Obi Wan because Obi Wan's a meanie head. So they fight <laughs> and they fight 
and they fight more and they keep fighting. It was a challenge in the Obi uh, Anakin fight because three or four minutes in, you get over the initial explosion of the fight of why they're fighting. He basically says that the character's emotional state is no longer important because the fucking fight goes on for too long. That's probably why they have yeah. that little seed of like, my point of view, the Jedi are, is like, remind us of why they're even <laughs> fighting. Like, why oh, they're God. Fighting. <laughs> They explain in excruciating detail just how much work went into shooting a sequence like this, and it's quite amazing the level of difficulty and complexity. That feels like it's at odds with the stuff he said right at the beginning. It does. Yeah, it does, how does this, we can just say this about all the things you said before. I don't know, because like, yeah, he's like, oh, this, it's not impressive anymore, and it's not uh, creative, and it's like, I don't know, it seems like we're highlighting how impressive and creative this is. Yeah, look at how they, because cause this this feels to me like the thing right right here. We need to know what this is going to look like before we shoot it. We need yeah. to know where they are so that we can build the digital location to match. All to make a sequence that the audience will ultimately find boring, because there's nothing- They don't. No, they I, don't. Come on. Do, I, it was no, boring. No, no, no that, it's, it's not, not boring. boring. It's not. I'm trying like, I can understand- Feeling that way about a lot of sequences, but come on, the Anakin Obi Wan fight, come on. By the back half, for me, I was like, just because it overstays its welcome, I think. Um, uh, I could, I could agree to it being boring. It's long, but I just say well, I'm, I'm not, not bored by it. Yeah, I really I'm not, enjoy watching it. I'm not saying people can't find it boring. I'm just saying, like, if we're going to appeal to boring, which is a feeling I'm people experience, not you're boring. not going to win that one with the general yeah. public. Most people find this part fun. Nothing else going on other than that they're fighting. While the blue screen restricts in some cases when you don't want to spend too much time on those boring talking parts, here it can cause creativity overload. Look, I know shooting on location is a horrible pain in the ass and can get expensive. And I got respect for Lucas for the shit he went through making the original Star Wars film. But really, the notion that bigger and more epic equals more emotion for some reason is just a fallacy. I when mean, I, I agree, but that's not a CGI complaint. That's just a broad storytelling complaint. Yeah, like... If someone... You can go it, too big it, practically. You imagine can go someone too says, big. Like, I, was, I was chill with all of um, Moria. I thought it was great. Helm's Deep, yeah, top notch. But Pelinor Fields, like, nah, they're just yeah, stuffing shit on the yeah. screen at this point. And, you know, that's not how you make something epic. You don't just shove a thousand elephants with two thousand horses and a bunch of dragons and shit. Like, that's just excessive. And I just be like, no? <laughs> like, I don't know. What do we well, do? Well, it all that? depends on context. Yeah. I don't know. Like, it feels a bit too broad there. Portage of George making these movies, I see a few things. I see a man that likes to keep pushing the envelope of visual effects, and a man that likes to film scenes in the comfort of a controlled environment while drinking his coffee and watching monitors. Let's do man. this the old-fashioned way! Just... Hey, you guys see that one James Bond movie called Die Another Day? Famously very bad. <laughs> but that's fine. <laughs> There's a pretty awesome sword fight in that movie. The neat thing about this scene is that it feels real. The guys get tired and bloody, and it really seems like they're fighting, and not just endlessly hitting each other with glow sticks inside of a video well, Again, game. that's that's a complaint for choreography then, right? Not mm. choreography. Yeah, yeah. 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 And again, I feel like the next person might just say, no, nah, I felt the most weight in that fight out of all the ones in the prequels, maybe even all of Star Wars. Yeah. Like, someone could argue that. Mm -hmm. Feels like we're, we're in the... It's hard to be definitive about these things. With this sequence, it took 58,000 people to make. 917,000 man-hours and 243 Mad. million hours of computer animation. They weren't yeah, working that on sounds some really hard, like that construction scene. project. It was yeah. just a scene in a movie where two guys fight. It was just a scene in a movie where two guys fight. That, man, that feels yeah, like... That's not fair. That, that's not fair. I feel like that's not that's fair, fair at all. Why simplify it like that? Like, How long did it take for them to do the fucking Balrog? <laughs> like, probably, which is probably just like a fight between some hours. spooky monster and a wizard. <laughs> exactly. Just have them fall down a hole and stab <laughs> it like a practical <laughs> monster. Dude, you imagine you do that practically. It's just a toy for both of them falling. They've been dropped in like a sewer. <laughs> you they, just put a bun they, 
They attach a that's... bungee cord to Ian McClellan <laughs> and they push yeah. oh, God. a cliff and he has to act in like five second increments before they pull him up again. And then push him yeah, right. his old again. man heart can barely take it. We, we did it. It took us 17 hours, but we did it. It's, it's done. done. Ian is just no, shivering in a corner. Get it again. And then get laying it again. Laying on the ground. Again. Sweet Terra no! <laughs> of some volcano somewhere and film them fighting there. I have a guy there with the smoke machine. That would have machine, still taken many, many hours. Shot, I, mean, I, I don't know that... Does that just look better uh, automatically? I don't know. It could. Yeah. It's, it's still going to be down to execution. And then, yeah. It's always just, execution. A painting background or a computer background. I have a guy pouring fake lava down the rocks when they're fighting. And have the scene be five minutes. The point is, Anakin loses. Stretching it out for so long in such an over-the-top show- I don't know that we can say how long a fight should be, it's tough, okay? The fucking Empire yeah. fight is pretty damn long. And there's like three stages to it. ...off way only makes me think of one thing. I think of a little middle-aged businessman who's short, he's balding, and he has a tiny penis, so he buys a red Lamborghini to compensate. This entire sequence is the film version of compensating for lack of a story and ability to connect with the audience on an emotional level. Now, I ain't saying Lucas has a tiny penis. Don't misinterpret what I'm saying. This is an anal G. Oh god, this has gone too far. I've gone too far in a few places. And there are two types of people in this world. People that understand what I'm saying. People that like the Star Wars prequels. Okay, that's enough for right now. I don't know about I'm that. Head on. Mm. Hey. Hey guys, has anybody seen the keys to my red Lamborghini? Number 9, The Importance of Darth Vader. The biggest problem with Revenge of the Sith and all the Star Wars prequels in general was ironically Darth Vader himself. He was way overemphasized in these films for some reason. And this is the reason why these movies don't work. And look, it's got um, nothing to do with um, So it's yeah, explain your before he explains yourself. it, I'm like, he was? I mean, I... There were references, I guess. Yeah. yeah. You but this is also, be... these three movies are about how he becomes him, so I don't know. Yes. I feel like this is what I would say about the sequels, but even then, they, they don't bring up Darth Vader that much. Yeah, not much at all. Aiden Christensen. He had a fine job with the material given to him. He's not a bad actor, kids. Leave him alone. Even Sir Lawrence Oliver couldn't read these shitty lines. It also wasn't the fact that Anakin was a jerk the whole time. I mean, that didn't help, but it goes beyond that. It was the fact that Vader was just so central to this story and all the events of this universe. Darth well, Vader well, will come not, more. not really to these three. You know, he's not central to... Yeah, go ahead. Didn't the, uh, didn't the... I sometimes get this fudged. In the original trilogy, he was, like... There was emphasis on him being like really important, right? Or was that more of a prequel? Well, A New Hope, he's an attack dog, and then Empire gets upgraded to like almost main villain. Yeah, people yeah, like him so much. Um, I, but the whole chosen one thing that was uh, that was prequel. Right? Well, but this is the part where I'm getting confused because it's like, but that is the prequel storyline. It's the Darth Vader, as dumb as it sounds, was created by Palpatine by manipulating the Force or some shit. And uh, he hopes for him to just become the most powerful Sith ever. And so he just yeah. tries to manipulate him up to that point. And that's, he's saying, like, you know, Darth Vader will become more powerful than either of us. Like, yeah, that's what Palpatine believes, and he's hoping to facilitate yes. that. I don't know that I have an issue with that. I think it's the whole creating someone of the Force or whatever seems dumb to me, but, like, you know, everything else follows. That, yeah. No reason other than he's Darth Vader and that he's famous to us. I ain't get shot. No. I mean, I, no. I can see why you're saying that, but no, they do have reason in this story. Or at least sense. an attempt at justifying that. ...the gross limitations in the writing. Lucas allowed the outside world to seep into the storyline when it really shouldn't have. Since he first walked onto the screen, Darth Vader has become a cultural icon all over the world. Shut up! We don't even need to get into that shit. We've all heard that crap before. I don't understand. These movies are his origin story. Uh, he's going to be important in some way yeah. to some people. Yeah. I look back at it from a story perspective and a new hope. He was just a weirdo in a suit. That doesn't matter. I did. Fine. 
Why? I don't know. He was a part of a bigger story. Leia made fun of him to his face when he was standing right there. I should have expected to find you holding Vader's leash. He did dirty work for Grand Moff Tarkin. That's because that's Emperor. Leia. Yeah, I yeah, was gonna say, like, Leia does that, that with kind of fucking person. Grand Moff Tarkin as yeah. well. She says, I, 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 like, you could smell your foul stink when I was brought on board. She does that to everybody. She's Leia. Real commanders didn't really respect him. They made fun of his religion. Your sad one devotion did. to the- I mean, yeah, not yeah, only is it one I'm of them, but- Yeah, look at how that panned out for him. And the, the, this isn't, you know, we've been, I've been critical of A New Hope sometimes here and there. It's been known to happen, and I don't know that this makes sense. I don't know why none of them are aware that Vader is a fucking horrifying piece of shit that will literally force choke you to death. Did no one tell this guy that the Force is actually a thing that he could use? I guess he just didn't believe, because he yeah. says, like, your devotion to a sad religion is, is bullshit, that he's just, like, he straggles him with magic. <laughs> that, just, that just shows how good Palpatine was at destroying the Jedi influence. Apparently, yeah. though it's only Apparently, been, was it 19 if, years? Uh, it's like, hmm... Uh, I just don't believe you! This guy would have been what, and is like, he would have been alive, for sure. When he's probably in his 20s, yeah. then. Maybe, yeah. Across the galaxy, like no one remembers the t thousands of generations. It was literally of no, wars with these off. people. They would famously use the force. It's just yeah, that's what I mean. So like people are alive now who fought in those wars. Exactly. It's a little bit of a stretch for me to believe that this guy is just like, like lol. There, there were no, there were no Vietnamese. That never happened. Your magic is real, spooky guy. That ancient religion has not helped until he choked them. He even flew around in a TIE fighter, where he could have easily been killed. What does that have to do with anything? I guess he's saying he's a small part because he could have died. <laughs> Grandma talking did that. die. <laughs> Vader didn't. Yeah. I don't know, this, this just seems a bit flimsy. He was a carryover from an older era, I guess. But to me, it just seemed like one of the bad guys that carried out the business of the Empire. He was like a not- He does that throughout. Even though he becomes like the most think, important I think, character. So I think the point he's making is that um, Darth Vader was important, but he was a piece of a broader story, and that making Anakin prequel series the prequels series about. Well, I think I think the idea is it's. I think he's saying that it's like retroactive significance almost. He's, um, is he is he objecting to the whole Force Jesus thing? Maybe. Well, because... I think that's I think that's the angle. I don't know that it doesn't I think it lines up. The Emperor basically put him in a position where he's like, You're my enforcer because you're very powerful. Yeah, you're very good at this thing. I could send you to do stuff and you get shit done. You have yeah. for you have magic powers and a lightsaber. Like that's to be like, great. yeah, he's in positions where he could die. It's like, yes, he is. He he is. A lot of them are. He, he definitely is. And, and it is an army. From what I can tell, Vader likes to get involved. Hmm. I yeah. don't know that that's incongruent with... Uh, he likes to get see. outside, you know? He likes yeah, to... He gets stuck in. He fucking stabs people. Nazi SS officer that would go in with the troops, smash things up, and let you know that the Empire meant business. He was not Space Jesus. Jesus, I'm so oh, sorry. Well, I mean, that's just, yeah, I mean, you can take issue with that aspect. I don't know that the rest of that compares. Um, well, you can call him Space Jesus. Emperor Palpatine created him to be powerful. That's what we, uh, I don't even know, that's, that's not even the movies, right? That's just something you have to find out. I don't out. think that's, I think that's external. We just get told in the Phantom Menace just... that he was created without a father. You know, like, uh, Random immaculate uh, force conception. Which is why I understand the Jesus comparison, but... Um, I don't know that this fucks anything about him in the OT in terms of he was created to be a weapon. I don't, I don't know. He had to be in this review. Please forgive me, Lord. I know you hated the movie you told me. Vader's totally overblown importance started with the implied religiousness of a virginal birth to the suddenly invented notion of some kind of space prophecy that made absolutely no sense at all. It's even kind of implied that Palpatine made Anakin by using his Sith power? He could use the Force to influence the midi-chlorians to create life. Look, Vader was Delivery. just some kind of <laughs> asshole in a robot suit. <laughs> so, while my issues so, with- Duff, I don't- Go ahead. He's not just an asshole in a suit. I just feel like that's not 
Is yeah, now he's underplaying his role in the uh, in the OT. Yeah, like he was the main antagonist of Empire. The yeah, um, the hierarchy was just uh, Emperor Tark and Vader, but Tark and Vader seem to control. You know, like an admiral and a general. They like different aspects. Yeah, yeah different. Exactly. And then Tarkin's um, out, and I so he's just second in weird. command. And, and remember, like, Darth Vader saved the day. He, he yeah, Darth Vader temporarily the inconvenienced the Emperor. Yeah, oh yeah, right. <laughs> That's right, he did! <laughs> I keep forgetting he wasn't dead. I keep forgetting, because it was so... He fell down a giant tube and blew up. Well, if you look at the alternative scene when he tosses him down the hole, the Emperor's like, Oh no, you totally got me. Yep, I'm dead. Oh no. <laughs> oh no! He's not forced to push some wind up there. Yeah, I'm dead. I'm definitely dead. Don't come check. <laughs> it's because every- Oh, uh, oh yeah, what was I gonna say? Um, the, uh, yeah. the, yeah, when it comes to the prequels and making this whole Space Jesus prophecy thing, like, I- I hate the concept of destiny. Fuck it. Never use it. Ever. I don't like it either. Um, yeah. So, but the, uh, but I don't think they ever confirm that it is an actual aspect of the universe that he's going to do these things and there's no other way around it. Um, so I don't know. Um, it's a vague just, prophecy I, and it makes characters decide stuff based on it. But yeah, I would have done, I would have done without the prophecy and just, had him be a character who, based on what he does and who he is, is seen by some characters as someone that they can influence. Him and I guess the interesting part, though, is that it is the prophecy is like, oh, yeah, you're the chosen one, but it, it ends, this series ends with him screwing everything up. So it's like, and then only to then later on come back and save the day, like, you know, several decades later. So it's like, it's not as straightforward as, as usually the case. Where, like, the prophecy is, you know, yeah, you're the good guy, you save the day, and then he does save the day. He kind of doesn't save the day. He's, uh, he kind of screws everything up, which I guess is a decent, um, way to flip it, but then again, I probably would have discarded it, too. I don't know, fate and stuff like that is just... Fuck it. Don't do it. It feels like it often leads us to places we don't want to go, uh, in terms of storytelling. Yeah, don't don't rob your characters of their agency and their yeah. personal, you know, ability to do things and make decisions and influence events. Just don't don't do it. Don't do it. I wonder how much of it comes down to it. I do wonder this that how much a lot of people hate it is because of the fact that it's so common as a instead as a thing, of actually like, why. Like, they see it more as a trope and not why it's Maybe. bad. It's just yeah. so much. They think it's overplayed instead of and this it is. is why it sucks. It absolutely is overplayed. It happens a lot. I guess I just want to appeal to something deeper than that. Um, yeah, but I then mean, again, it is... it is a preference, right? I just don't like it. Yeah, I guess there's nothing objectively bad about a universe where actual predeterministic well, fate hmm. exists. What does that but... mean, actually, with the Force? Like, what, what does that mean uh, well, when the Force recognizes a chosen one? Well, here we are in 2000 and whatever, whenever this is coming out. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, we we know now that the force is not it's 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 actually, it's kind of a misnomer now, because the force is not a force anymore. The force is an agent that has a yeah. will and is trying to enact some kind of a plan and has like it has plans for the universe and for people and it's just like this supernatural dick um <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, it, a bit. what the force has really been ruined by the sequels it's um, really been fucked up the sequels have definitely fuck when you think about like what the sequels tell us about everything so yeah the force um, is a, basically it's a guy who wants stuff to happen. Which I don't think was ever the original no. intention. Yeah, I it was just this. If... It was just this. It was a force. It was like properly named. It was just a force, not an agent. You wanted to argue that the prequels have done damage to the force. It's like the sequels have just destroyed it completely. Especially with yeah, the whole the... the force releasing stormtroopers thing. Like, oh. Yeah. I'm um, at least with Metachlorians, where it's sort of like, well, I mean, uh, do you have Metachlorians and that's why you have the Force, or do you have the Force so you have the Metachlorians, which comes first? Can they change? Can you get more of them? Can you get less? It's, it's a lot of blood like, transfusion. Uh, yeah, how is it's very flimpy. It shouldn't have been brought up. Yep, should have um, left should, it alone. 
they could keep they should keep that shit ambiguous as fuck. It's like the force ghosts. If we have to have force ghosts, keep them super, super ill defined. Or you can make it so they cast um, lightning on people. Or and hit people with sticks. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> uh fuck thanks it. for that, Ryan. You did it. Because everything is so tightly focused on one thing. The Darth Vader is some kind of be-all, end-all puzzle piece to complete the universe for some reason. Which at first was to bring balance to the f I don't know that I'd go that far. I, I think uh, there is an yeah. interesting idea There's too much world that, building. Yeah, there's lots of other stuff going on, and the Jedi seem to be in a pretty good place, and they're like, there's a prophecy that this guy is gonna make everything great. And it's like, hmm. Things not great now? Yeah, I, I always felt that way. It's just like, you guys seem to- I guess you think they can get greater? Alright, that's fine, I guess. And then the idea being that his choice to execute the Emperor, and thus bring down the Empire alongside Luke, that was him bringing balance to the Force. So the prophecy is technically true. So, Alright. It was him that made it all fucked, though. <laughs> like, yeah, maybe that's the idea. Respect, maybe it would be better to just live underneath the Empire for a while, until the Emperor just dies of old age or something. They often do that in storytelling, where there's a prophecy slash destiny thing, and it's like you end up causing it by trying to not be it, or in an attempt to force it to happen, you end up making something else happen that yeah. could be applied to yeah. it. But even then, those are typically one of those, like, in hindsight, I guess that's how it happened. It wasn't necessarily going to happen this way, Yeah, but it happened because you did this, or as a result of knowing a supposed prophecy, because I have no issues with people in a world accepting prophecies to be true and acting that way, mm -hmm. as long as they are actually, like, true. Um, because there's a difference between a prophecy and just a, a reasonable prediction that you're making. Um, but like you have, or, or prophecies serving some lesson or point. Um, I think it was sort of mana. So one of the best birthday presents I ever got was a Game Boy Advance SP with the game Sword of Mana. Oh man, I remember getting that on Christmas. Jesus Christ, that was a stellar gift. Thanks, Grandma. Um, and I really, really love Sword of Mana, that Game Boy Advance game. And one of the spoilers, I guess, one of the issues uh, or one of the aspects of that game was there was like this prophecy or this tale about this Sword of Mana that could like conquer evil. And it's just the best thing ever. It's the best sword ever. And it's super magical and amazing. And it's just the tits. And we got to go get it to save the world or whatever. And then you finally, at the end of the game, you like get to it. And it's just this old rusty piece of shit that's been sitting in the dirt in some old temple. And it's just worthless. And the whole point is that it's not about the sword itself. Like the, what you did to get here shows that you were, you know, you're capable of doing all those things by yourself. And it was about the journey, not the destiny, that sort of thing. And so that was one of my first, if not my first, really big sort of introduction to that as a concept of, oh, hey, that prophecy. Oh, maybe it's not really, you know, it's, it's actually something a little bit different than what you might have thought. I appreciate it for that. Uh-huh. Force, you refer to the prophecy of the one who will bring balance to the Force. But then it was later changed to destined to destroy the Sith. Is he not to destroy the Sith and bring balance to the Force? Which makes a little more sense, I guess, because eventually Anakin does... To this day, we still wonder what balance to the Force means. Well, they try to change it in uh, the sequels. Because it was simple, and I'm pretty sure George is quoted as it being as simple as the Sith are like a corruption of the Force, they make imbalance. Yes, balance them. is good. Balance is, is <laughs> the good guys, it's the light. Yeah, meanwhile but in the now, sequels they were like, well no, it's equal amount of good yeah. and bad guys makes balance. It's like, Just wait, what? fucking absurd. What yeah, this fuck? weaponized hatred that actively corrodes your existence, we need some of that. <laughs> we do. We need some of that to balance out. It's balance thing, like, you know, no offense it's to the creation and idea of the Sith, but they are absurdly evil. Like, <laughs> it's not much. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's just really evil. It does destroy the Sith by throwing poor Palpatine down a mine shaft. But that was a prophecy. Well, that was told what, like a hundred years ago? By who? Where? The prophecy is that Anakin will bring balance to the Force and destroy the Sith. He becomes Darth Vader. Darth Vader does become the hero. Darth Vader... Nope, that would be Rey you're talking about. No, that's... Rey's the Rey, one that actually the brings balance. Plan. ...does destroy the Sith. Rey killed yeah. all of the Sith. Yeah, but it, and she was all of the Jedi, too. Yep. Yep. That was Meaning very cool. Mm. and the Emperor. Um, Captain Marvel. Does that sound stupid to anyone else other than me? 
Is this real? Is this on? How about a prophecy that some guy was gonna blow up the first Death Star? I'm just gonna take a wild guess here and say that in all those spin-offs and books and magazines and cartoon shows and whatever, they are Sith Lords beyond Palpatine, right? I mean, all you need are just some midichlorians and a lust for power to learn the ways of the dark side, Yeah, but right? Palpatine's the big chungus evil. Yeah, and I think when they find out... When they first interact with uh, Darth Maul, I think it's a surprise to them all that the Sith are around, right? In Phantom yes. Menace, they're like, what? Uh, yeah. So does the prophecy really make any sense? But then Anakin gets his ass kicked by Obi-Wan, causing him to be severely hit. I mean, to, to give a sliver of, like, benefit to the story, I think the prophecy yeah. is interpreted and that's it. I think literally Yoda says maybe it was misinterpreted. I think so, too. I think it is very kind of up in the air as to what the prophecy means, or even if the prophecy is being accurately reported as opposed to its original form. Or if it's all bullshit. I'm sure the characters or in the it, universe think it might be bullshit. Very possibly, yeah. Handicapped inside a robot suit where he can't breathe without the aid of a respirator. So really, all that for what? One scene where he kills some children and a bunch of helpless cartoon characters? Very generally speaking, you could have done these prequels in two ways to make them not totally suck. Alright. No One, more than two. Make Anakin a smaller part of a larger story. Have Anakin just be I mean, like I kind of agree, yeah. I agree with that, sure. Yeah. Um, especially knowing how the 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 relationship focuses in this and how crappy it is and how I would have much I would just prefer general world building and political intrigue instead of just so much Anakin. Yeah, it's not that I think it cannot work, but if we were building this and someone was like, right, was so he's still made of the Force, right? Be like, no, we're not doing that. No, he's no. a guy <laughs> who's born on the planet. He's not some secret mega. He's not. He's just a guy who's good at stuff. Yeah, I'd probably go with that. And then, yeah, I'd be happy to his story is happening alongside a grander story that we're trying to tell respected noble Jedi Knight, maybe even like a family man, and then have the dark side and the end seduce him, and he does a bunch of bad things. Yeah, like, remember when Master Chief was just a guy who was really good at his job? Yeah, <laughs> and then he became the super duper most important person. Yeah, now he's some destined chosen forerunner horseshit, and he's like, oh, just mm. stop. stop. I, do, just... I do really hate it, like, as a, as a thing in general. Hate to see it. Or two, make a character story that focuses no, almost you can't entirely handle it. on Anakin's rise and fall. Which is what they did. The problem is, is that Lucas doesn't seem to know how to write a character like Anakin in that way. The whole character Apparently. arc with Anakin... He does feel... George Lucas feels weak on character. Like... He does. It's not very good at writing people, I'm sorry. We're, we're lucky. Don't... We're lucky we got what we got. I yeah. mean, I think that's just sort of... We're kind of lucky that we got a new hope and... Uh, the Empire Strikes yeah. Back. Mm -hmm. With him getting more and more pissed off because he didn't have enough power to fix all the bad things in his life. Specifically, people dying. It's a good thing Padme fell in love with him or else he'd be saying, I will someday have the power to make people love me. Anakin can't deal with loss and seeks out the dark side. I mean, I don't know if that's played off as a joke, but that would be a thing that you could do. I was like, about to say... I I had two reactions in my head, half a laugh, and then half a like, well, wait, that could work, right? <laughs> well, that's literally something that, I mean, to be loved is, I mean, I guess for some reason, when a lot of us hear that, we think it's jokey, but like, wow, to be loved by everyone around you, that is, that is something that very few people can ever have, and it's something that people dream about, and that is a pathway to being able to do incredible things. That's a lot of power. Just... Yeah, I, I don't. That's not really thing at all. Like, if if you have an evil person and their goal is, I will one day become an, so powerful that I can ha I will make people love me and adore me. I mean, that was that was a temptation of Galadriel. Oh yeah, like it's not a yeah. joke. Not a joke. That's a that's a legitimate thing that is very potent. True. Dark side. Got it. Do we need to set that up over three films? You're not all powerful. Well, I should be. I want more. And I know I shouldn't. Now this personal weakness is fine, but the huge missing ingredient is that we never got to know Anakin as a person. I don't gotta go through this again, do I? Oh my god, a rare image of uh, 
Jack with hair. You can see him in some of the old best to the worsts. He's still got he's still hanging on, but Jack is like my go to example to just get rid of it, guys. You will look way better if you just get rid of well, it. Well even he doesn't grow the beard at all either, so he's just like uh it's like goodbye hair. Yeah, he clean shaven now. I mm -hmm. think he could have the beard with him, uh, a shorter one. I mean like you look at um look at Josh. Josh looks like shit without the beard, quite frankly. <laughs> but with the beard, he's like, hey, you're like a big old you know, you 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 look you know he, he looks, looks like, like a really friendly. He'd be in a tavern, you know, and you'd be like, oh hello. Yeah, he's like, what? He gives you your quests and stuff. Maybe yeah, sell some but... potions and some 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 beer. I don't know. You go back to some of those old best of the worst where Jack's still hanging on to his hair, and you have a clean shaven Josh, and it's like, oh god, you you guys made some correct decisions. You guys, at one point. you need to go on yeah. your rocks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> The tragedy element actually comes from caring about a character, or at the very least relating to him. We as an audience don't care at all about Anakin. The biggest missed opportunity- See, because this is, this is, I feel like, a significant approach difference that we have compared to someone like Plinkett, where he's like, we don't care about him because we can't relate to him. I'd be like, people do. Like, there are people out there who do. So does that mean that we should try and think, oh, let's tread a little bit more carefully with how we describe this? Like. Should you be I using like, I statements or? I feel like we're not starting in the right place. We don't care about him because we don't relate to him. No, 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 no. Why don't we relate to him? That's the problem. The write him so that we can relate to him. That's there's a, that's where the talent of writing is in. How can I relate to this person that doesn't exist in this fictional world that doesn't exist? You know, how do I relate to this person? That's why writing is difficult, and not a lot of people can do it. Especially At the same these time. Days. I think, I, I've probably made the mistake before, but I think I typically, like with Ray, for example, I'd be like, people have trouble relating to Ray because, as opposed to people don't relate to Ray because. Because there are people who are like, Ray is the best yeah. Star Wars character. I love her and her journey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah speaking in general terms, though, the, mm. um, well, there, there really is. There's a difference between that and saying something like, um, uh, you know, like something that is just an inconsistency, like a, a strict plot hole. There's no need to be like, some people find this to be a plot. I was like, no, it is a plot hole. That's it. it. You care about it is, yeah, it's you, man. But yeah, yeah there, there is that aspect. But yeah, the idea is a, I don't even have to, you don't even have to relate to people necessarily to care about them. But if you're going to have a protagonist who has a tragic story over the course of three movies or one and a half, or whatever, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, you're setting yourself up. You decided to do it. You didn't have to make this movie about this thing. You made that decision to do it. And when you make that decision to make it's, this a really character-focused thing that's a tragic story, and you can't execute it well in terms of writing, I don't know what to say. You should have should have been better. Directing, <laughs> I'd say. I found it amusing to get. That's a big problem for Anakin. Yeah. Um... I am amused by the fact that I get reminded every once in a while, it's like, yeah, this was three movies of story, but at least they actually achieved a story. Like, the sequels is three movies of story, but what even was all that? You know? It's like, yeah. the fuck was all that? I don't feel like there are any reset points in the prequels, you know? Yeah, it feels like no. it is going from A to B to C. Like, I get it, but... There were probably at changes the... between, but still, yeah, at... there was... At the end of the... the... At the end of the Clone Wars, let, let's take the middle of each trilogy. At the end of the Clone Wars, I was going, man, what's going to happen next? Yeah, and at the end know. of The Last Jedi, I was going, what is going to happen next? <laughs> like, yeah, it's done. We're done. What's going like, on now? Yeah, I, I couldn't... It's... I was, I was interested in seeing what would happen after Attack of the Clones with this war starting and all that, and you get the conclusion of the trilogy, and you're, you know what's kind of going to happen, and how are they going to actually make that be a thing? And then with TLJ, it just feels like a this weird reset to the whole thing, and you only have a movie left, and what have you done with it? Well, yeah, there's that so. set of lines from Luke where he's like, the Rebellion is reborn today, and it's like, no, it was wiped out. We've got a couple people left on the Millennium Falcon, that's it. Yeah, we got 40 and he's on like, one spaceship. And then he's like, uh, I am not the last Jedi. And it's like, wait, Rey doesn't know anything about being a Jedi. She can use the Force, but, she, you know, yeah, like, she's Je telekinetic. Jedi is like there's a who culture. people across the galaxy. Yeah, like she doesn't. Jedi are an it's so yeah, it's just such a weird ending to a film as well because they're all so happy. It's like fuck off. Yeah, like this is shit. Like five planets got blowed up, guys. Like, do you do you know how shit that is? I know we just don't like to think about it, but 
Like, man, it would have been better if the Rebellion lost in the OT, because he wouldn't have had five fucking planets explode. Yeah, the Empire would probably have chilled out as much as they'd be probably dicks, you know? Would have. Yeah. Like, yes, the Empire was bad, but I'm like, man, is it worth five planets? Oh, man, I'm, I'm, a, I'm big into having principles, guys, trust me, but five planets... Oh, and it, it bet it's easy a decision to make when they're not your planets either. Well, but, oh. Not to mention, when you find out they have a thousand star destroyers that can shoot Death Star lasers, I think we would have to have an honest conversation. Like, I think we might have to surrender. This is yeah, like, yeah, just give up. Just get up. Get give up. This is for another generation to solve one day. This is they threaten. This sounds like if they if they drop one of those fuckers around every single planet in the galaxy, it's like they've won. <laughs> like, what are we doing yeah. now? What more can they can can they do? It's just give it up. Just live your lives as best you can. Maybe one day there will be some internal struggle, or you can get people in charge who are more sympathetic. But just it ain't happening anytime soon. You just live your life. Just unless try to be happy. They don't know which way is up. Uh, unless, unless, but that could never possibly happen, Mahler. That would be ridiculous. That movie was so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> it's like the meme I posted in this channel with the uh, the Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, I'll put it on the screen now. Um, that's the thing. Like the biggest, most significant, single stupid thing in all of the nine Star Wars movies. Like the fact that they don't know which way is up is honestly a contender. I was wondering yeah. if you were gonna. I, I was wondering if you were gonna say either that or somehow Palpatine returned. Oh, that's my favorite line. It's a, a pretty film. funny line. <laughs> yeah. I, How, <laughs> it really is just, it's like the ultimate gave up line. We don't give up. Do you, do you think he spent <laughs> about five minutes and he was like, I don't know. Just say that he doesn't know. The character doesn't fucking know because I don't know. <laughs> Nobody maybe knows. I, maybe the idea was that the writer said, allegedly writer, said, or writers said, you know what? Fuck it. We're not going to make this make sense. So let's just eat that one. Let's just chalk that up with an L, but we'll try to make the rest of the movie really good. And that's what they thought. I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm saying that, <laughs> that's, what, and they that's what they thought. They just took the L on the Palpatine coming back and focused on the, the, the rest of the movie in their minds. Honestly, though, I think the entire fleet not knowing which way is up is probably dumber. You think so? Well, Hmm. Yeah, because up. It's just that way. It's, it's, and like, yeah, people have like tried to rationalize that, but you can't. Their, their problem is they don't know how to get up into space because their little transceiver thing isn't telling them where it is. It's like, it's above. Go up. Yeah, I guess it's like <laughs> Harry Potter. You can believe that you can tell to make like a cat fly in the air or something. And you're like, okay, that's good. But if he got shot in the head with a Glock and somehow lived, your brain wouldn't accept that as true because it's just a more base level of cause and effect that you just can't accept yeah, to be true. You know? Somehow Palpatine returns, like, is that his way of being like, a different writer can take care of this? I'm not doing it. I guess there's some level of, well, maybe there's magic bullshit. Maybe there's yeah. some, like, Sith spell, maybe something, something the Force, but not knowing which way is up, like you can't, like that's too basal of a concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like up. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fucking it's, up. <laughs> the opposite of gravity. Like it's, it's just, it's, it's one of those fundamental aspects to your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah in the whole trilogy is that we never got to see any of Anakin's training. It's always just assumed that he was trained at some point we don't see. Sure, Obi-Wan says a couple things here and there. Yeah, I think that's a huge missed opportunity for both the Sith and the Jedi, seeing them trained. Yeah. How fucking cool would it be to see Dooku being trained by Palpatine? The amount of dialogue I could have in these scenes. You can do more with the philosophies as well. Yeah. In terms of you could give yeah, you could. Yeah, 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 yeah. The 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 dark side and the light side training. Um, you could see the. I mean, especially if you started him off young, right? Anakin was, you know, if if in the first film you want him young, at least have him in a Jedi temple being trained by somebody. Um, you could have Obi Wan could be reminiscing about Qui Gon. You could have Qui Gon in the film in flashbacks. Um, 
of, you know, if Qui-Gon taught Obi-Wan this, and so Obi-Wan is passing that knowledge to Anakin uh, based on the way that Anakin receives his training, the questions he asks and the explanations that Obi-Wan gives him. Uh, there's so much that we could learn about these characters as one is teaching the other. And maybe Obi-Wan's learning a little some along the way as well. Um, maybe. It's, it's, there's a lot that you could do with that. But we had to have those Gungans. <laughs> But it's nothing extensive where we as an audience can actually learn more about the Jedi ways and understand what the fuck they are. When we see Luke training with Yoda, he's asking questions. Is the dark side stronger? Yeah. No. No. He's learning things, mm. making decisions. And even the way that how he instantly answers. Like there's the is the dark side stronger? No. No. He's instantly like a it's a, he quickly cuts him off almost as well. Yeah, you don't, as you don't to, be thinking that. Don't think it. that. It's not. Don't think that it is. It's not even up for discussion. It is not stronger. Decisions. Yoda is teaching him. And we are learning. We learn about Luke. How he thinks, how he responds to things. We'll never get it out now. Some of the more famous Star Wars moments come from this period of Jedi yep. training. Do. Or do not. There is no try. We are never shown the most important character development moments in a film that's almost exclusively about a character. All we yes. do is learn about why he's angry. Yeah. I know why I'm... Yes. Again, it's just indicative of George's writing. He's like, all the audience needs to know is that he loves Padme and he's sad that she's about to die and he needs to save her. Yeah, it's one of those, George knows that. And George knows that George knows that. But George can't understand that we don't know. George doesn't understand that we can't see what's inside of George's mind. It's a it's a problem that probably happens to a lot us. of writers is a lot of writers assume that every mind other than theirs just sort of knows what's going on in their mind. Like, I know everything about my character and my world. And so therefore, you might forget to relay all those things to other people who have no clue what you might be, you know, what you might have in your noggin. I mean, I don't know how much more detail there was for Anakin's character in his head. I, th I figure he gave us everything he thought was enough, which is I love Padme. I. I want power to I save think, people's lives. I think there was probably more to it in his head, um, but it just just the sheer amount of time that is spent that he's probably thinking about stuff, I think there was probably a lot more to it. I, mm. I just think he just did a bad job at conveying a lot of that stuff. And I'm not familiar with a lot of the deleted scenes and even just the storyboard ideas that never made it into the film. Those could be chocked full of the stuff, and I just don't know. Maybe. But I I bet he's got some I, I bet he's got stuff there and he just did a bad job at relaying that info in the film. I just think he did a bad directing job, really. And right and right. Yeah, the whole schmagaggle. However, as poorly set up as Anakin's sudden turn to the dark side was, there is one redeeming quality here. There was some kind of temptation involved. As much as I loved the ending confrontation in Jedi, the Emperor's approach always bothered me. It was because there was never really anything to tempt Luke other than just a vague threat, and the notion that the more hate you have, the more powerful you can become. Luke never really sought power, and there was nothing really for him there. I don't know about that. He wanted the power to be able to save his friends. That's the thing. Yeah, and, and like, the Emperor's yeah, looking you for save your an upgrade. You want to save Vader. your friends out there? Well, hmm. uh, he's, if you here's a way to get all the power that you need to save your friends, because that's how it starts. That's uh, dare I say it's reincorporated in a conceptual way with Anakin. You want to be more powerful to do the things you think are good? All right. Yeah, and he's like, kill Vader, take your place at my side, I'll teach you a bunch of shit, and you'll be more powerful than ever. I think it's enough. All he really just had to say was no thanks. This one little moment is more interesting than anything that happened in all three prequel films. How Vader became yeah. Vader is- But I would argue that it's informed by Vader seeing his son stand up against the Emperor in the face of getting given power, which is something Vader didn't do. Inspirational, you know? While also being like, hey, don't kill my son, he's kind of cool, I like him. It's not as interesting as his redemption, and how he became Vader really didn't matter. It just needed to be mentioned in one sentence. Vader was seduced by the dark side of the Force. I, get, I, I, I mean, if you want to go down the route good. of... I think this works. Yeah, you don't need the prequels, sure. This alone would have sufficed, absolutely.
I th I don't know that. I, mean, I think we could argue it. it actually helps out a little bit in that specific regard that Vader was in seduced sense? in a sense of wanting more power to be able to save his lives, etc. And then he sees his son offered that same thing, and he refuses, even in the sense of he'll die before he takes it. Vader seeing that, just being like, "Fucking hell, I should have done this." Or are you are you saying in the um in the sense of Obi Wan's quote here, a new and a new hope, and how that. Yeah. can be remembered for the end of this the quote OT. plus well so i'm saying the prequels can help in the sense that we know he was he wanted x emperor offered power that leads to x and he accepted and you could argue that luke has a similar situation but he's still denied while vader gave in and, and did it and then he sees his son doing that and that's all he needs to be like all right i'm i'm done being evil like, I think that all that works. I think it lines up. Uh, yeah. Once uh, again to execution. But yeah, sure. Really pertinent it's, here, so. Yeah, in that aspect, sure, yeah. Oh, that happened. <laughs> Number 10, execute order. What? So what's the deal with order 66? I've literally hurt my brain thinking about this one. I don't know. If it's a reference to something, please email me the answer to... I don't give a crap. It's because 666 <laughs> was too evil, but 66 Rags. was kind of close. Rags, stop. He's right. going to say all of that himself. Oh, is he? You probably heard it from him. Crap and who cares? I'm, I might have, <laughs> but I assume <laughs> that was I assume that was common knowledge. I don't know. But um... I, I well, I I I have seen this, but it has like actually been years probably. So maybe this is where I heard it, well, but so I think that it checks out. A lot of people of saw this and probably absorbed a lot of I think a lot of the things we talked about when we were just talking about the movie, a lot of conversations were inside of my head from knowing points that he's raised before. Maybe. Crap at who cares, you stupid dipshit asshole dot net. <laughs> but the best I can figure out is that Lucas is writing the script and he gets to this part and he thinks to himself, Hmm, what should the bad man say now? Should it be a code word like Begin Operation Hot Zone Kill? No, that sounds stupid. What about a number? What's like an evil sounding number? Hmm. Well, 666? No, that's too obvious. Yeah. Why don't we just <laughs> execute Order 6? Execute Order 6. No, that's too <laughs> simple. It makes it sound like they don't get that many orders to begin with. <laughs> What about Order 66? <laughs> Execute Order 66. Okay, that works. Let's move on. <laughs> that's probably it, yeah. yeah. That's probably it. Number 11, The Language of Cinema. Now, if you'll oh, permit me, I'd like to, to compare the... Revenge of the Le Sith with okay. what is widely huh. considered to be one of the greatest motion pictures ever made. Citizen Kane. Hey. Is that fair? Hey, we've oh, seen boy. that. Nope. I don't, I don't, I don't usually make that up. Like, it's like, how can you compare these? That's not fair. I'd be like, it depends no, what you compare it, I guess. It, yeah, I guess we'll just yeah, find it out, depends. you know? It depends yeah. on the nature of the comparison. You see, there are many levels of irony here. Too many to think about. But in short, you got two directors that both have total control over their film. Wells used special effects to extensively tell a story. And Lucas used a story to extensively tell special effects. I don't I know agree that's... with that. I, I think that there was a lot of really nifty ways that he used special... Like, the, I think the Senate scene is really cool. Like, this big-ass chamber with all of these planets. And you get a sense of scale of how many people are involved. And the potential bureaucracy that might make some planets upset. And you didn't have to do that. It could have been a lot more simple. It could have well, been a he... lot more... Rounded and small. Not like 10 minutes ago, he was talking about the amount of effort that went into the special effects. Like, you don't, I don't yeah. know that we should be writing them off so much. I know that someone's gonna be like, well, he's saying the special effects existed to be special effects and show them off as opposed to facilitate the story. But I'm like, I don't agree with that. I think that a lot of those decisions yeah. were made for the story. Yeah, I mean, and plus, I mean, like, you have stuff like, uh, like the Clone Wars, for instance, you know? How you, know, you have some, these massive space battles, and I'm like, man, if you got the special effects to do these, uh, like, there's some cool sequences. They look look neat. I appreciate a lot of the work that went into them. You know, mm -hmm. it would maybe it would be strange if with with the budget with the budget that you have and 
the you know the scale of the story you're trying to tell if we didn't get those special effects utilized to help build this world up citizen kane is really about william randolph Hearst, but in his own way lucas kind of became his own charles foster kane going from an idealistic young filmmaker wanting to rebel against the system to becoming the system and a bit of a weird ah, see, recluse poetic, himself. It rhymes. <laughs> now, whether Lucas realized the personal irony or not, I think he tried to make no. Anakin Skywalker into his own Charles Foster Kane, and maybe what he thought would be his own film masterpiece. Everyone just always says Lucas is just a horrible commercial sellout that just made these movies to sell I, toys. And nah. I think he could have no. done a hell of a lot worse if that yeah. were true. Nah. Yeah. I think we've like, seen what it looks like. We know what it now looks like when they yeah. really just like trying if, to... If somebody like killed your whole family and you kill them back and someone goes, you're just a murderer. It's like... You I mean... This is a bit more... Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, a, a they killed one person and they had good reason. Like, yeah, George... <sighs> If someone was like, you see, you did it for the marketing, the, the, the toys, the blah, blah, blah. I was like, no, I'm pretty sure he was invested in telling this story. To, and also uh, in the toys. Y that's I the mean, thing, the you toys, can have both. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you can have he both. Was... And also, remember, there was a studio involved. Like, he still had to make money for the... the... Like, yeah, you would be pumping out Star Wars movies, probably, right? If he was only doing it for the money. You would be doing what Disney I mean, tried yeah. to do and then slipped and fell into mud. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, exactly. We've seen what it actually looks like, and what it looks like is, yeah, what Disney's doing, where there will always be new IP. There is new, it's an IP, it has got to, there's got to be factory. more. We need to make more because we got to have this many shows this quarter. We, we got to, that's, we got to do it. Meanwhile, he was like, I want to show you the story of how Vader became who he was from the Jedi Knight or whatever. And you're like, okay. Like, if you ask Kathleen Kennedy, like, what story are we trying to tell in the sequel? She'd be like, um... The story of Rey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, okay. Yeah, it's just some vague bull, like, just nothing. And make shitloads of money. But I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt and explore this. So let's call this Citizen Vader. Shall we? <laughs> so we got a boy who was taken from his home and his mother at a young age. You going, Mom? What about mom? And away from a bad environment, slavery, or an abusive father. Eventually he becomes an idealistic young man with a set of principles. You got the Jedi Code and Kane's own Declaration of Principles. Then slowly each character is consumed and ultimately destroyed by their own arrogance and lust for power and control, and a fear of losing the ones that they love. A fall from grace, if you will. We even have a necklace sled theme going on at the end here. It's a classic tale, really, but it just doesn't work with Anakin because sure, the character doesn't strokes. feel like a... Well, and there's the thing, if you, I don't think it's unfair to compare. It's interesting to think about. Yeah. There's obviously way more details to go over, but, you know. Yeah, it's broad strokes are similar. Yeah, absolutely. A real person Definitely because it's written so horribly. The fact is that this script feels rushed and not thought out, probably because it was rushed and not thought out. Yeah, they're already building sets. God, help me. I'm gonna have to start this script pretty soon. Also, Lucas is... <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you're joking. Look, I it's... hope, I hope... Holy the... shit! The <laughs> fact is, great movies have likely been created that way in the past. But um, goddamn. But man, is it, it's, it's, it's like, yeah, I'm gonna do the 100 meter race with one leg. You're like, okay. Now you, you can do that. You can do that. But why? <laughs> He's notorious for not being an actor's director. I will not betray the Republic. Mm -hmm. You know, my loyalties. So you're turning on, but it's. I have rewritten, I spent the whole weekend rewriting the scene between you and Palpatine, um, where you turn. Yeah. And I've added some more to that. They give you a performance. I mean, he's I don't think coming about. back. He's, I'm pretty sure that he. I'm pretty sure that he's not like resentful about being part of. I, was, Star Wars. I don't think that was a great example. That was fine. Yeah, that conversation was fine. I'm, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I want to see how the whole conversation went. I just that's not enough for me to go off of. And yeah. maybe he's just not good at like if he was bad at Maybe. explaining what he wanted but he was really good at picking out the good things that the actors do we might never know
It oh, seems like a very yeah, normal I'm, conversation. He's like, I've rewritten the well, scene of the weekend. Conversations on set. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, hey, look, we got movies now. I mean, we like apparently people showing up to like Doctor Strange. It's like, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing today. <laughs> like, because they're figuring it out this day. And it's like, man, holy fuck. But apparently yeah, that's just like you know what? a thing that happens now. What the Red Light Media advocate for the most, it's to let the writer director have his vision. And this is just This is yeah, what that is. He, this is what she yeah, did. Look yeah, upon this and despair. Sometimes. This is what it means sometimes. What you want to have happen. Uh, and then you do another take and then you talk again and you just keep going through it until you get it the way you want it. He seems to just view actors as a tool, like a computer. They kind of are. <laughs> to a degree, I mean, you know, they're not. They are. They are the uh, pieces of resources that are used to bring your ideas to life. Just like. Well, yeah, because ultimately sense. everybody there is working to execute on a vision of some kind. They can like breathe their own life into a character, absolutely. but at yeah. the end of the day, they are just an um, instrument in the portrayal of something in a script. I'm sure that Joss Whedon looked at his actors as the tools that bring his shit to life, and you've got all those stories of him being dicks to him, and it's like, yeah, but that didn't mean that what ended up being created wasn't pretty fucking good. I don't know, like, in a lot of his stuff. It's almost like he's implying that, because especially with that speech bubble, or thought bubble, that the actors didn't even like George Lucas, it's like, I don't know even, I have no idea. I'm pretty sure I have no that. clue. Maybe he's a really cool guy on set. I don't know. He could, yeah, maybe he could be he's, completely normal. He could be a bad director, but he's maybe he's a swell guy and he's really kind and he's just the great good to be around. And I mean, he's he maybe he's totally earnest. He's just not that good, but he's a nice guy. There's so I hear about Ryan guy. Johnson and Zack Snyder. They're both very friendly and nice and wonderful to work with. They're just yeah, they just, shit up <laughs> they just make shit like this. I don't know. Or a prop. You know, sometimes an actor can bring a whole new level to a scene that you didn't imagine in the first place. But in the prequels, there is a very clear line of distinction between the actor scenes and the special effects scenes. The action scenes can be animated in any way possible. There's a lot of good action in this movie, I guess. When you animate all sorts of shit, the camera can move around unrestricted and things generally move faster in a more visual way. These action scenes would be really neat if we knew or cared about what was happening. I mean... It's a really weird visual when we know you, exactly what's happening here. Yeah, I mean, whether They're you care... Obi-Wan is trying to execute General Grievous to end the war. Like, we, we know that that's the, the case here, okay? And Obi-Wan's riding around on a dinosaur trying to hit a lizard who's inside a robot suit with the stick with electricity on the end while the lizard... And so I feel like you could do this with a lot of stuff that yeah. happens in Star Wars. Yeah. Like, it's gonna... It's, it's just muddying his points. Wow, the Calamari guy is flying in his ship to try and take down the, the shields of the guy. Death Star, but the, ship, the shields are still up because on the, the ground they haven't deactivated the... Yeah, you, you oh, can... Oh, no, well, shit, man. I was gonna say, to be... It just feels more yeah. apt on that point, you'd be like, the fish is trying to wait out for the little monkey people to destroy a building that will then make the giant bull that shoots lasers stop working. It, like, it feels yeah. to me like the thing of like, oh, all you do in this game is jump. It's like, yeah, all you do <laughs> is center the screen on the thing you want dead. It's like, yeah, we, we, can, we can do this with mm -hmm. everything. And the robot suit is riding around on a giant robotic hamster wheel. But when it comes to the dialogue scenes between characters, it's a whole other story. The scenes typically have the blocking of a soap opera, something that's shot for efficiency reasons rather than artistic. They are so dull and unimaginative, it's almost a contradiction given the amazing environments they're set in. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even use this as an example, uh, but yeah, a lot of the dialogue sucks and it's boringly shot and it, it just stinks to listen to and the acting wouldn't, and I guess that's what he wanted, but I, I sure wouldn't, like this here, this background looks empty and sterile and artificial to it me. It does. Yeah. Because it's it, just, it doesn't feel like the copy like paste thing again. Yeah, it's just all, it's ridiculous. Like, what is this supposed to, is it just scale what for its own sake? What is this place? It's all empty. Like, what are are those here? rugs? What, yeah, what is this supposed to be? Is this... What is this place? It just looks so fake and... Yeah, like, like what is the point of this place is kind of the, the question I don't believe, that you have. I don't believe this is a real place, you know? Yeah. Um, I'd be careful with him picking on shot reverse shot as well because it's like throughout loads of great movies. Um, it's common for a reason. It's, him, it's a pretty... 
efficient way of letting people know what's happening. Him bringing it up influenced a lot of people going forward that whenever they saw it in uh, in anything, they'd be like, Ew, Shot Reverse Shot. It's like, guys, Shot Reverse Shot's not like an awful thing in and of itself. Uh, just, just, if you want to argue he's just over-reliant on it, it's like, okay. Uh, yeah. but saying, like, there's no artistic merit to it, he's just doing it for efficiency, it's like, oh, do you know that? Yeah, I don't, I don't know that. Um, I just don't, I just don't know. It's just film is a visual medium, and Lucas is praised for being a pioneer of film visuals because he revolutionized special effects. The irony is now when he's given two humans and some dialogue, it's a boring disaster on film. It's fairly apparent he just wants to get these scenes out of the way to get us back to the action. But in a film that's primarily a character study, apparently, is that really the way to go? Most of the dialogue scenes are done one of two ways. Either characters walking somewhere, or people sitting down, usually on a couch. The story is so bland and uninteresting, what people are saying usually doesn't connect to the environment they're in anyways. I, I will agree in the sense that I really wish we got more variety in what these characters are doing while they talk. Because a lot of the times when you... That? Yeah, a lot of times when you talk, you're also doing something else. You're... You're... You're interacting with your environment. On computer, you're reading you're something. A, yeah, you're, you're cooking yeah. a meal. You are fixing something. You are adjusting something. You are doing a task or a daily chore. You're, if you're a politician, you might be looking at a news feed. Reading or, legislation. Yeah, you might be taking medicine or check. Like if, if Padme's pregnant, maybe she's doing some sort of do-at-home test or something. Uh, they're something right but uh, so many of these conversations it's it really is just people just sort of walking someplace but they're not doing anything or they're just sitting down or they're not like making use of this world that they're in um yeah. there it lacks a lot of variety and i think that's why so many of the conversations feel really dry it's because they just they're just around to deliver lines it feels like and the camera couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> the camera yeah, doesn't know what kind of conversation's going on. It's just well, here's well, because it's always faces. eye level. Yeah, like yeah. it's never, it's never down or up or emphasizing just, height. Well, yeah, yeah and like it'd be interesting to get George Lucas to explain his logic with all of this. Like, what did you think you were achieving? And if he was just like, "Well, I just want the film to be consistent in how it frames everybody in each of these scenes," I was just like, "Oh." Like, imagine the first time we see. When we see Grievous encountering um, uh, on the bridge, Grievous encounters Anakin and Obi-Wan, and he's originally in his chair, and then he turns around, Anakin says, I imagined you'd be taller, and then he stands up, and the yeah. camera rises at his shoulder level, like, to, to loom above the other two. Something like that. Yeah, just um, play around with, yeah, with the you visuals. Shoot, when, when you see Count Dooku, shoot him from a little bit below, you know, a below yeah. eye level. So he, so he, like you're looking up to him. He's more domineering and he seems more... Pretty uh, basic like, shit, you know? Yeah, just stuff like that to mix it up. And you don't have to go, you don't have to go crazy evil dead levels, but you can't, I mean, fuck it, go for it. As far as yeah. you do it. But this is like something that's a little bit more just interesting, you know? The camera is a tool that you can use to have to add and to I the guess storytelling. I think it's point here is like yeah. that he's really not using. I totally it, agree. Uh, yeah, yeah. You'd definitely be doing way more. Um, I just, I just want to be sure we don't step on shot, reverse shot as some kind of like you, you've done uh, it wrong yes. if you use that. Yeah. It's like, eh. But yeah, yeah, but if it's all you do, like you could mix it up. You know, you could be a little creative yeah. or interesting. You know. They could be anywhere, really. I was so worried about you. When we have a scene that I, I like, I've said before that these these seem like they're kind of like they seem like plays, like theater plays, almost in a way. But I don't mean that in a good sense. Whereas sometimes I might mean that in a good sense. Um, mm -hmm. An example that well, comes to mind that... is, yeah. No, go go for it. I'd say mm -hmm. a good example of that is Excalibur, which we will watch one day. Uh, but I really love that movie, and it has this theatrical sort of nature to it that I think kind of adds to the movie. But in this one, I feel like it takes away from it. Um, uh, but it is just, yeah, do more. D take advantage of things, you know? 
Yep. Because this this the is this would be, be an example of him. Yeah, what's that? Just you know, the camera could be anywhere. Like you can do whatever you want. It doesn't have. Especially to. if yeah. everything's on a green screen. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, like when he brought up the idea that the story is meant to like show off the CGI instead of the other way around. This would be an example of that that I would probably agree with. A lot of these just talky talky scenes where the actors are just doing basically nothing but talking. And it's almost like our focus is supposed to be on these expansive CGI bonanzas that are in the background. Like, look at all this. Look at this. Look at all the clones back there in the ships. And look, they're out here on this balcony and there's this big spaceship over there about to take off. And, but but it's just they're just sort of there. It's it's window mm -hmm. dressing and it's not really doing anything for the scene or the characters or and it's not being interesting. Scene that starts with characters walking, they'll usually slow down and then stop. Then we'll go to what's called shot reverse shot, basic over the shoulder camera angles of two people talking to each other. This is the most basic and simplistic way to shoot dialogue scenes. Now to spice it up, at almost the exact same moment in a scene when the shot reverse shot starts to get boring, a character will walk away and go over to a window and then look out the window. When you say, I want more, but I know I shouldn't, mm -hmm. you can turn away. Lucas broke new ground by giving Natalie Portman some business during a scene and having her packing a suitcase. Oh, I was just, this is, yeah, yeah like that, it seems out about, of, yeah, yeah it seems mm -hmm. out of place. Like she's doing something. They're having a conversation while she is actually sort of doing something relevant to her job or her f upcoming tasks. That's the thing, the prequels really Typically just feel stiff all around, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, they do. Very they do stiff. feel, yes, they feel very stiff. Very fucking stiff. Anime scenes, though, are usually again, them sitting down all around. Yeah. Yes, this is all direction, correct. There's no, like, do they put anything down on these tables in the middle? <laughs> I don't and even, I think dude, that's rags, I don't even know those like, tables are real. Oh, that, and, right. and that's the thing, I, They right, probably it, are. That's, what, well, that's kind of what I'm saying. more real by doing shit with you, it, you know? Yeah, and I can't, I often can't tell what is real, as, as we've seen before with the prequels, because of just the way that it all comes together. Yeah. But yeah, like how you could have you, you need to flavor, add flavor. Every scene in a fantasy or a Lord of the Rings is great with this. There's always something kind of happening in the back. You're you're there's, there's a lot of stuff's going on. Um but you could have someone come in, serve drinks, you could be doing this, doing that, they could set something down, they could you could always kind of have stuff happening, but my eyes are in the middle, an empty space in the middle of two groups of people, sort of. And I don't know. It's mm. and he he had to have learned about this because he, he went to film school. Do you think I, you just pick it up via, via osmosis? Um, well, I, I I think the thing is is that there are there are aspects of of like filmmaking and any creative medium that you don't just immediately notice. I mean, goddamn, we even go to the basics of writing. Like the fact that is often redundant, but we use it a lot because we don't think about it. But like the little touches in terms of chopping away redundant words or um or trying to tighten up things a lot of that is what makes for good writing there's a uh, lot like of phrases and writing. turns of yeah there's a lot of turns of phrase that we use turn yeah turns of phrase not turn I think of phrase turns of phrase it is turns of phrase um there, there are a lot yeah. of turns of phrase that we use that we couldn't define on their own they just sort of it feels right to put that into a sentence so we do it yeah I guess that's what I'm getting at is I I can I can easily see that these things kind of you just you need to think about them consciously, but uh yeah, I don't know. Not to derail yeah, a lot of them but I find it interesting that you treat sentence as though there's a silent T. Who? Sentence? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I guess it's because of how my sin ended. <laughs> there you yeah, go, yeah. Sin, yeah, I guess it's just how I say it. Sin, sin, sin sentence. Sentence. Yeah, because I just I guess when I say it it just sort of Sentence. Kind of all fuses together. Sentence. 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 Yeah, fuck, sentence. Fuck. I'll Holy say shit. sentence. <laughs> now I'm getting confused. Sentence. 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 But, but what's interesting is I'll say penance, but repentance. Right. Well, I mean, because that's the right way to... 
Yeah, so it's just like a. Ones, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's, it is uh, interesting. Well, <laughs> sentence and repentance. It's like, yeah, they're both very similar. But I, yeah, it, I guess it's just an, an aspect of how we speak. Mm -hmm. It's like that really big letter in the alphabet, L M N O P. It's it's uh, it just sort of sort it just kind of goes together when you're saying the words. And well, it I mean, just sort of becomes of a thing. I mean, that's how tea. words. Uh, that's how words. Uh, many words that we do use regularly. The only reason that they exist in that form is because they used to be something else, and they just sort of changed yeah. over time. Yeah, I guess it's when you say it, I always would type it correctly, but I guess when I say it. Because of the sheer speed of thought, whoa! It just kind of rolls out. Um, actually, if you'll give me just a moment, uh, I'm gonna get a drink real quick, and I will be back in a moment. Oh boy! It's a nice segue. You guys can talk about words for a bit. Words. You guys have. They're fun. pretty cool. Well, I uh, it was the the book um elements of style, which I need to finish, but that book is just really useful and just hey, this is how you're supposed to write it. Okay, please just write it like this. But but even more like practical stuff of hey this is when you're meant to use a semicolon this is when you're meant to use just a regular um, colon it's stuff you don't think about but matters. Theo, I'm surprised you haven't spoken more on this subject. Uh, well, I'm thinking of what to say really because my brain's full of other sentence structures at the moment because I've been uh, learning to read Latin. So, wow, oh, nerd. Boy. Yeah. You know, Latin Dead has a case system to... that we don't have in English anymore. Which right. Means words can't, like, which means word order doesn't mean shit in Latin, which is something interesting by comparison oh. to English, where uh, word order is like the most important thing about it. In Latin, so... every word, like, it's its role in the sentence is dictated by its case, and it has very little to do with where it's placed, which is really cool. Hmm. That's really cool, but also I didn't know that. <laughs> I uh, hmm. I always thought that the placement did matter. Uh, there's general conventions in Latin sure. with sentence structure in the uh, verbs tend to go at the end and the subject tends to go at the start. Uh, right. Beyond that, it's, it's open season, especially once you get to things like poetry, because of course yeah. they're going to fuck with more rigid rules that you'd use in more formal writing. That's right, you can start to really goof off. I think most of the Romance languages still have case systems. I don't know much really. I, would, I have no idea, yeah. This is my first experience uh, learning any other language, so... Wow, they didn't what teach you Welsh? Learn. One that... <laughs> they did not teach me Wow! <laughs> I didn't get taught Welsh either. No, uh, that makes sense, because uh, you're Australian. It's discrimination. What do you what do you mean because we're Australia? New South Wales. That's one of the states. Yeah. It's named after your country. That's, and it's that's, more important. It's nice. That you try to be scale. you know, you try to copy, but you know, you'll never be the what true. Do you mean try well, I mean it we don't need to be the true Wales. There's the one true Wales, and then there's New South Wales, which is more geopolitically significant than the original Wales. Yeah, but America is more geopolitically significant than Australia. Yeah, sure. That doesn't make Australia I'm, worthless. I'm I never back. said that. I now it see. There's your problem. Why you you assume mm -hmm. that I was saying that Wales is worthless? I said no such thing. No, I didn't say you said that. You implied it. You implied that that's what I said, no, and I did not. I was not. just making a statement. You implied that that's what I said. <laughs> don't don't run away from it. Hmm. Seems that like you're your uh, putting words in my mouth there, Fringy, and that's very Seems rude. Seems like you were putting words in my mouth by implying... You like, said that what I, I implied. I didn't say you implied anything. I'm saying that you implied. Yeah, nice. The implication is the implication that I meant something that I didn't mean. Yeah, that's rude. You shouldn't do that. Assuming makes an that, ass out of you I, and me. Friend. I'm glad. I'm glad that you agree that that was a rude thing of you to do. You did it. Not I'm me. glad we're getting somewhere. <laughs> I, I'm all glad I we're said. Somewhere. Rags, do you agree with this statement that America is more important geopolitically than Australia? However, Australia is not worthless. I agree with that. Yeah, there you go. Yes, but in the context of me saying that New South Wales is more geopolitically significant than Wales, that was your follow-up. Why did you say that? It's the thought I was having. You know that you can't just be doing that. That's just the thought I was having. <laughs> no, you'd make a spot. shitty lawyer. You know? <laughs> hey, 
Wow. wow. <laughs> Resorting to personal attacks. Jesus. People would be like, in the chat of the YouTube stream, like, this fucking prosecutor is just desperately trying to prove what someone was thinking. Which is fucked it's just up. It's just, man, resorting to these personal attacks, that's cruel. Oh, now you get desperate. It's very cruel. I can't believe it. You're still, you're still doing it. Yeah, I mean... People would have told you how it makes me feel. I, I, I hope it makes you feel bad, because you did something very rude. That's really... That's so cruel. It's the only way you'll learn from me. We're it. getting you there, step I, by step. I thought... I, I thought the, wel the Welsh people were always very polite and nice. Wow. I, I think they are. I don't think it's polite to ignore people's failings without trying to highlight them for them so they can learn. Man. Hmm. So, you know, we we're learned getting something there. about we learned something about the long man today. Jesus Christ. If you've invented it, it's really not a fact of me. It's just rude. I I have been over it several times. I feel like the point's proven, case closed. I, good luck to the future. Just, you know, be careful in conversation. You can never know when you'll slip up. What's up, Theo? Yeah, what know. are you doing? I'm just, How are uh, things going? My main point is Australia isn't worthless, and I got loads of pushback by the Australians. Like, if you, like, you know, that's, that's oh, how you feel. We were talking about, you know, I literally said that I agree. Happen. What an interesting reframing. Children, of children, you're all worthful. Worthful. You're all worthful. Fucking. The location will vary, the positions vary, but usually it's just them sitting there talking. In fact, one scene even begins with them already sitting down on the couch. They didn't even need to walk over to it. Hey, doesn't this lady Thanks. have a job? Is her job to sit on couches all day and- You do get that impression with Padme, sort of. You're just catching that... her in her free time, gosh. Yeah, I guess <laughs> this is all- I don't know why both... she's busy being a senator. This is all free time for Padme. Also, it's a lot of it's free time for Anakin too. Um, yeah. And they're so just spending all time. this time together. Well, yeah, um, she felt way I mean, more I'm driven still... in the first two films. Yeah, absolutely. In the first one, she was really trying to make stuff happen, it seemed. Um, and, uh, and like, I think I can't really. That's one of the, I think that's one of my issues with Palpatine is I just don't know where he finds all this time to be simultaneously Darth Sidious. And is, does he have like a green screen room hmm. where he dresses well, he up does. in the robe and then he just puts it away in the closet and then he goes back to his desk? You need that you know? scene where someone knocks on the door and he goes, ah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah, yeah. hold on. I mean, and then like he he's in the room. And then as he's <laughs> taking his robe off, fuck it, falls over, and <laughs> smashes into a table. And Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine, I'm fine. Count Duke is on the I'm other like, end like, what is happening? <laughs> What's going on? He's like, oh, did I shut this off? Lord. Oh, just That's fucking, me. you know, just be it's you know I'm having just a bad robe day. <laughs> uh, like ch uh, there's a knock on the door. It's like Chancellor, your two p.m. schedule uh, appointment is here. The delegates from uh, Ordo Seclorum, Ordo they're here. <laughs> and he's like, oh, tell him I'm taking a big shit. <laughs> and he's just. It's, it's not coming out, all right. It's just not coming out. It's, not, it's stuck in sideways. I, I, I I'll be there. The and it's oh wait, no, I don't have the force. No, no, I definitely don't have the force. I, I mean, I said I wish I could just force it out. That's what I said. I yes, yes. <laughs> all right, it's all it's, it's, it's all the, it that, that blue bread I've been eating. What Wings of Redemption said is poop did. It went sideways. <laughs> and, his, and his grandma had to fish it out. Oh my god. <laughs> We were having a fun joke here about Palpatine and his robe, <laughs> and you had to bring up Wings of Redemption's poo. It seems the freeze to laugh, and so I think we're right. <laughs> <laughs> Just why would Theo's, you tell Theo's anybody that that happened? Because <laughs> he thought it was funny, and anybody? it's like, oh, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> it is funny. It's very funny. I'm just oh, thinking no. about how I I hadn't thought about the fact that. The the way the dialogue is shot is a large part of why it seems like no one's ever doing anything or has anything to do. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> what I'm an interesting it from that angle, like because nobody's ever really got anything to do. They're just wandering around. Like I guess maybe Mace is gonna he's gonna wander around with Anakin, then he's gonna go back to the temple and do some more taxes. I don't know. Like yeah, we might wander around in the temple. You don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah place to nice wander. Walk. I just don't buy that Palpatine has all this time to be Sidious and also to be Palpatine and no one is just like like when at the end of Attack of the Clones, when um, 
Dooku comes back from Geonosis and lands in just the shitty Detroit section of Coruscant with all the fire and everything. And he lands and Sidious is just there waiting for him. I'm like, how did you get here undetected and no one knows you're here and you have yeah. time to do this? Like, I just don't, I don't buy it. Yeah, I think that's it's a good thing everyone in this universe either. is an idiot. And talk. Oftentimes during a couch scene, one person will stand up, walk a few paces away, and then turn around. In Citizen Kane, the visuals and blocking were so much more important than just telling the story about how a guy becomes a selfish a hole. It's such a rich film in its detail I and agree. execution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of great shots. It's a great oh, yeah. movie. Except for the greatest room trashing scene in cinematic history, which even Tommy Wiseau couldn't top. You fucked that room up, Charlie. But Kane is primarily about the characters, and it's way more interesting to watch just because of the attention to detail, the direction, and the framing. Now, comparing Episode 3 to Citizen Kane is not fair, I'll agree. Episode 3 is an art, it's commercial diarrhea. But what irks me is just no, how basic it is. It is more so art than I'm, the sequels. I'm, I'm sorry, everybody. It's art. <laughs> it's, it's all art. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all art. art. Yeah, it's all, it's art. all art. But, but I mean, just more art about, than others. If we're talking about art in a more colloquial sense, the, this film is more trying to be something than like the sequ the yeah. sequels exist yeah, if, to make money. If you want to draw a line between, it's just trying to make money versus they're trying to tell a story here. It's like the sequels are way worse for that. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. Static things were filmed. They just put people in front of a green screen and said they were going to make the background interesting later. Even when they're not on the green screen, the scene construction is pretty awful and boring. Like the scene in episode 2 when Anakin is told about what happened to his mother. Instead of coming up with a creative visual way to get this information to us, they're all just sitting at a table. This is why people are bored during these movies. It's like it's a fucking play or something. I honestly think that I, you could get away with this if the dialogue was play. good, though. Yeah, yeah, you could. If the dialogue was yeah. really good and the characters were very interesting to listen to, sure. But if you don't have interesting characters to listen to, and you don't really have anything happening visually that's interesting, like, I could see There's if someone came to me... me. Yeah, if someone came to me and said, Attack of the Clones is, like, the most boring movie I've ever watched, I'd be, yeah, I understand. Yeah, I, get I totally get that. I totally understand why you think that. Amparo even brings out beverages. Here, would you like a refreshment while this guy tells you about how your mother was kidnapped and raped? Wow. And then check out... I mean, they are in a desert. <laughs> it's probably hot as fuck. Yeah, and it's I don't have manners. a problem with them just putting drinks in. But have... sorry, this pause. I don't know if he's about to bring up this point, but holy fuck. Fuck, look how close that lightsaber is. He is close, is. yeah. Oh, oh god, man. he sneezed, if he sneezed, that Mate, lightsaber well, here's, gonna go through his face. I mean, I mean, that's that's just the level of control that Mace Windu I, has over his lightsaber. Yeah. I would yes. guess that's just death right there, because it's that close <laughs> to that heat, you're done. That must that's be hot. hot. Yeah. But then again, yeah, yeah, Mace Windu's hand is right next to that too, so. That's how his, that's how his face got melted, he was yeah. just that close <laughs> to the lightsaber. Yeah. Man, my my joke, my joke is what it mm -hmm. evaporates from me. I oh, did you say it that? Was close to his face. Nobody heard, and then you said it was close to his face. Oh, I thought we were all pointing out how close to it. Yeah, his face. I thought that was and the whole point of the would, screenshot. And then it would melt his face. His oh, face yeah. I think I get it. Yeah, I did. It must have. Uh, been. That's right, Fringy. What that What's means is, <laughs> Fringy. That's confirmation, and that's like confirmation that that was a really solid comment to make well yeah because everybody thought it <laughs> so yeah because yeah because if rags also said that independent of hearing it from you that, that's a quality comment right there it means everybody yeah that's right that's right that's pretty great fringy mm -hmm. nice i'm proud of me what do you what do you think theo it was pretty good all right then we did this <laughs> exciting shot <laughs> when you isolate that, yeah, it, 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 it is like <laughs> the music going and everything. <laughs> That's the funniest damn thing in this review. <laughs> it's. I'm trying to think of how to fix that. It's like, I mean, I guess you just don't hang on it for so long, right? 
Yeah, I don't know. Move the camera yeah. it, maybe. Track I don't the camera know. with him. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, handheld is probably the choice person, here. Absolutely. It shakes a little bit as the cameraman's, you know, coming along with them. Or, you know what? We don't have to see him going up the stairs. Or, I mean, walking across the lobby. Don't. We know how they get to the place. He could arrive there. Maybe he's panting a little bit like he was hurrying his ass off. The point I'm trying to make is that there is a very basic language to cinema that seems to have been totally ignored. Okay. You yeah. can create an emotional connection, and people will remember the movie emotional and it'll stick connection. with them. Then you got some movies you see. It's the first one of these videos, he, he's talking about protagonist, and he pronounces it protagonist. It's just... Protagon <laughs> pro protagonist. Protagonist. <laughs> protagonist. And you don't even remember seeing it. Some very basic images. Yeah, like, the Transformers movies are kind of like the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. They just all, with the exception of the first Pirates movie, they're all just sludge in my memory. They all just mix together. And I don't know where one ends and one begins and which one was which. Like, the Kraken one, I don't know if that was the second or the third oh, or the fourth. A, I just, I don't one. remember. Oh, Is yeah, right. The second one? Third one, it's just dead. Um, oh. Right. This is the thing, Clear. I remember the differences between the Pirates movies because I watched them... I, I want to say recently, but I think it was two years ago now. Uh, but Transformers, yeah, I'm, I'm like that. Transformers, when I when I picture the movies in my head, it is honestly like it's like a big shot. It's daytime, but there's just machinery flooping yeah. around everywhere, and I don't know what any of it means. I unfortunately I remember the Transformers movies quite well, um, so I remember exactly which one was which. Do you which remember one, which, which one? Was the one with which one was the one with the black robots? Ah, uh, that was two. That Who was couldn't two. read and had the weird buck teeth? Yeah, that's right. That was two. He got in trouble that was, for that. That was, that was a decision. <laughs> yeah, that was a decision. Which, that was which is the one where Megatron turns into a bunch of pixels and can fly around? Ah, uh, that's four. Yeah. I remember just yeah, being like, four, what the fuck is happening? Like, Holy shit, the four is a fucking piece of shit movie. Images can haunt you. They can make you laugh. Most of the time, it's a simple cinematic trick to do this. Placement of characters in the frame, the setting, the length of He's right. Like, I, you know, the, the amount yeah, of creativity he's showing in these images, like, there'd be so much for us to talk about in terms of why they mean so much more than what we usually get in the prequels. I, I don't disagree with this. Absolutely. I mean, the prequels are so flat. The, they are incredibly flat. And I mean, now, now part of the commentary is related to, like, Marvel movies and how uh, a lot of Marvel movies don't, I guess, try as hard to get like really dynamic in terms of shot composition and camera yeah. movements and stuff like that. They don't really but... make... Sorry, go. No, go, go for it. I was going to say, they don't really like make usage of the medium very well in that sense. No. Other than um, well, just yeah, yeah being able shot to like a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Well, it, we need to, we see what we need to see, but we're not particularly interested in seeing it in a very unique way. And oh, this, the manner okay. in which it's conveyed isn't really like saying anything more about what we're say, seeing. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, maybe would you th would it be wrong to say that the prequels are shot like a storyboard? Uh, I mean, a lot of great yeah, shots come from storyboards. Yeah, yeah, so. but like you think of all the the all the moments in between those images, right? And like, what do you think that, especially when it comes to the segments where there's like talking or traveling potentially he just didn't really fill in all those spaces was he didn't make anything interesting out of that storyboard in the in, in, in big sections of this um i mean I, I i i'm kind of trying to figure out what you because you might be thinking like key frames it's like, right the really like, like a comic book almost but it's like it's it shot like a boring comic book but i guess that's why i because comic books can be hyper dynamic and cool. they can yeah and it, and a lot of them are because there's such an emphasis on uh on on the visual it shot, aspect. Of it. it shot like a PowerPoint. Yeah, and the and that there's no there's no vision to it. There's it, no it's, movement. It's there's not much brute, movement. I think that's the conveyance big. of details. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yes, that's that's definitely what it is. Because I feel like if it was me and I knew I only had X amount of minutes for my story, I'd be how can I make this shot interesting? How can I how can I make this shot interesting? How can I make this shot interesting? How can I tell something? How can I have a second story happening here, like in the the well, details of the world or the 
you know, how can I cram great. stuff into? It's like I've it's like I'm playing Minecraft and I've only got so much space to work with from my house and my farm. How do I make it look cool and interesting and also serviceable with the space that I have? How do I make well, it work? It's like, uh, it's like Theo said, it's when, when you're doing really cool stuff with the shots, you're you're achieving certain storytelling objectives without having characters, you know, just say say things and uh and and have the actions occur. You're going beyond just the action and dialogue to achieve an effect. And that is probably a good way to describe the prequels. They are very literal in that yeah. there are no <laughs> there is nothing that is obscuring your ability to understand exactly what is happening. There is no attempt to b increase uh, the the tension in a moment with a shot, or uh, or you know uh, to play with people's expectations. Very limited subtext. Like yeah, yeah, exactly. Because subtext can be achieved really well through cinematography. Yeah. Uh, Etc. I don't need to reference Citizen Kane to make this point. Let's quickly look at a basic example from the original Star Wars trilogy. Well, yeah, the original's got a lot of good ones. Yes, yes, but now, we must eat. They take this simple scene of expository dialogue where an admiral basically just tells Vader that the Falcon is in an asteroid belt. Our ships have sighted the Millennium Falcon Lord, but it has entered an asteroid field. But they use cannot... this opportunity to do something creative with the characters and the location. We are reminded that Vader is both human and machine by showing him inside his little breathing pod. And this is also the very first time that we ever see Vader in a position of vulnerability. This adds a lot of depth to his character that we haven't seen before. The framing suggests that there's a clear separation between a normal man and what Vader has become. So I'll say one thing too, that watching the OT throughout it, though, th like it's, it's weird to say, but they're not really on starships, but it's weird when you see them on movie sets. Because your mind is like, oh, they, they do such a good job trying to convince yeah. you with the set work that they're actually on a starship. That seeing them on a movie set feels wrong. It's weird. Yeah, it's it's it feels wrong. You know, mm. like I my mind more than most things just accepts. Oh yeah, they're on the Death Star. Of course, yeah. <laughs> they're on the yeah they're they're on the Star Destroyer. Yeah, they're they're on the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, that's where they are. They're not on I a movie like set. When we talk about visual storytelling, probably like the the good way to do it is the opening shot from from a, a New Hope. It's like we got this tiny little ship, and then this massive destroyer just flies in. It tells us a lot immediately, without any dialogue being spoken. Yeah, the the good guys are in a position of weakness. The bad guys exactly. are the dominant force, and they are yep. big and strong. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's he just, talks about yeah. that shot in uh, his Phantom Menace one. That's what I, I expected it to come up here, but I think it's because he's done it already. Yeah, maybe he has because it's it's just a really good example of visual storytelling. You've told me a lot. You haven't said anything, but we don't do that as much in the prequels. So whether or not you know it, your brain is being fed information about Darth Vader's character, and you're made to feel a certain way. All while we're doing the business of the plot. If this were in a prequel, it would have been done using two characters standing in a room against a green screen done in yeah. shot reverse shot. Oh, yeah. I guess they could have put it millions yeah. of asteroids flying around <laughs> the window behind the theater <laughs> to make the frame interesting. And when you got a set and actors and things to work with, you can make an interesting I mean, imagine how shitty the fight, like on Cloud City when Luke is fighting Vader and they're going through the hallways and it's dark and they're in just the the the, the depths of this installation floating in the clouds. And it's just you just feel like you're in another world because of how far away they've gone from everyone. They're really, you just lose yourself in the scene. Yeah, I love the Batman fight. Um, yeah. You just said, though, he implied like when you have things that actually like or part of the scene and stuff, and, and again, I'm just like, don't drift too close to saying the presence of CGI is something we don't want. It's like, yeah, that's, come on. That's I nice. mean, if we wanna, if we wanna make a Star Trek, uh, this is Mike here, so let's let's talk about Star Trek for a moment. I don't know if you guys have seen much Star Trek. Theo, have you? TNG. No, not much of a Star Trek All person. Right. So, in a lot of the first season of TNG, they're they're using just like 
studio sets to be foreign planets. Like yeah. some planets are foreign, but like they're they're just on this set and there's just some like rocks and then the background is just a color because that's what the wall is and there's some clearly fake ass plants here and there and it it's obviously a set and it looks like shit you know all of that is real all of that is practical looks terrible exactly right and then in later seasons they actually go out into the wilderness when when Darmok and uh, episodes like that they go out into the desert or into the badlands or wherever and they film these scenes and you can tell it's really outside that's all practical too but it feels so good you know and so yeah. both of those are practical one works really well the other one works horribly mhm interesting scene yep, there are at the bad same time effects. the characters talk Framing, blocking, character placement, lighting on the set, camera movement. It's all part of making a movie and making Agreed. your audience feel a certain yes, way yeah, about absolutely. a scene. When Anakin pours his heart out to Padme, they're sitting on a couch. When Obi-Wan tells Padme he's got to go kill Anakin, they're sitting on a couch. When they talk about the assassination plot, they're sitting on a couch. Sitting on a couch, sitting on a couch, talking in a room, sitting at a booth in a diner, talking in shot, reverse shot, sitting at a table, walking somewhere, walking in a room, walking and talking, standing and talking, standing and talking in a room, talking in an elevator. It's usually just two characters or sometimes three characters. You could have had a really cool aspect. To, oh, yeah, this is like, this may be like the, the most fakest place ever. In yeah. The but, um, shit. God damn. Yeah. Oh, this <laughs> one's fucking, fucking shit. shit. Dude, it looks like a video <laughs> game loading screen from like 2002. Yeah. yeah. It should be like, they're like, yeah, loading into press the R to reload, like at the bottom or yeah. something like that. Um, but you have, like, in the scene where in the elevator, you could do that whole. Like you get a, a wide shot of the outside watching the elevator go up the building, but you could still hear the characters talking stuff like that. Movie could have been full of things like that, but well, hmm. the point's being made right now. So and they're always talking and sitting, but it's really hard to film a complicated scene with lots of different creative camera angles when you're just sitting in a chair with your coffee. When I shoot, I have uh, two cameras, A camera and B camera. A camera, B camera. Two people talking to each other in front of a green screen. I, mean, honestly, I am just surprised Isn't that George that didn't you... want to do more dynamic things with the camera, I guess. Yeah, I, I wonder, did he just get complacent and not know it? Did he just not... Yeah, is his creativity happened? not really that there? Did he have a different crew to work with that just weren't pushing him? Maybe was or did he just really think this will work. Trust me, this is just this is gonna. This is what we need to do. Is it just physically? Was he just more lethargic in his you know older older age? I maybe I don't know. Maybe I have no clue. And it's not just know. the fact that every dialogue scene is dull. It's that these films have predictable and uninteresting editing too. The first cut of Star Wars was an unmitigated disaster. I come in on weekends and I recut the film on my own. Okay. And I tried to get the editor cut it my way and he didn't really want to and so I had to let the editor go. It was uh, cut in a very traditional manner of just playing things out in masters and then going into the coverage and let the actors' rhythms dictate the cuts rather than having the cuts kind of uh, drive the rhythm of, of the scenes. Well, let's just, we'll leave this for the time being and we'll create this other shot and then if this other shot works, we'll come back to this shot. So there, consequently, there wasn't um, any excitement in the footage the way that it had been put together. It's so boring. It's like a logical computer program edited the movie. The pacing sucks, there's no style to anything. I could talk for two hours about the editing in these movies, but one little thing has always stuck out to me, is that there is almost always a dropped my lightsaber reaction shot. Sometimes it's necessary, but most times not really. I mean, when someone stops using their lightsaber, we understand they dropped it. But almost every time someone loses a lightsaber, we need hmm. to cut to a reaction shot of it falling. Like, we didn't see that it happened. Interesting thing to notice, because it's true, I guess. Yeah, uh, it, it is interesting to notice. Yeah. 
I'm sure I've picked up on it here and there, but I guess I didn't realize you how don't prevalent think about it, it was. When mm. Yeah, when it's mm. all played to back to back, you know. Yeah, I, like, we need I to... think I commented on it when we were watching Revenge of the Sith when um, it was Grievous's little speeder bike wheel. When it like crashes over the side, we see it keep going over the side for a bit, and then it just cuts back. Like we didn't know what would happen to it. <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's just a style thing of his, but I don't know what purpose it serves. You know. Mm. Sometimes it has a this... purpose, like here, like uh, or, or when Maul kicks the lightsaber into the, the yeah. pit, because it emphasizes just the depth of the pit and the peril of it. But sometimes it's just like, yeah, it just landed there on the ground. This is important for some reason. It only happens one time where we don't cut to a separate shot of it falling, and it works just fine. But I think it was because the action was so fast that they couldn't cut to it, or they would have. <laughs> Speaking of pigs, I mean lightsabers. Now we're 12 to final lightsaber fights and all lightsaber fights. At long last, we get to the part we've been waiting for. The end of the movie. The epic duel between Obi-Wan and Anakin. And for some reason, it had to be epic. I don't know why. They exchange a bunch of awkward why. and pointless dialogue, and finally we get to the fighting. But it looks like at this point in the film, they're pointless. Ran... Still calling it pointless. It's yeah. awkward, it's, yes. It's badly yeah, it's written, awkward. but it's not pointless. It's not pointless. A lot of money in the budget, because all of a sudden the visual effects no longer look so great. But we come to the end where Obi-Wan has the high ground. I have the high ground! Which is just eight feet higher than Anakin. He warns that's Anakin a lot not to when you're that's six feet tall. Yeah. I, I, was, I, was, I was about to say, like, no, that's not the point. The point is, like, Anakin can just go to the side. Like, yeah. The, it's a bizarre that's moment. Like, it's a great meme. But it's a great movie. I think what they're going for is it's like a challenge to Anakin. And Anakin's like, I can beat you even. And then he's like, you can't. Yeah. He's like, I can. And then he, Oops, yeah. Try it. Jump up at Anakin's face out. and try and cut him. Because Anakin's the bad guy. But Obi-Wan forgot something that happened to him before when someone else had the high ground. Or maybe Obi-Wan learned from that experience. And then learned that instead of standing there, you should swing up at the guy. When he's jumping over you. That's something yeah. that Darth Maul yeah. didn't learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was, that's what he learned, yeah. That's, yeah. Don't stand there like a lemon. Fight. Anakin jumps over him, he gets his arms and legs cut off, and then he rolls down the hill and lands in lava and gets burned up. Obi-Wan goes home, Palpatine shows up and brings Anakin back to his home, and their robots put Anakin together in another robot suit so that he could breathe. They just take him against his will and seal him in. Give the guy some cream or something to put on his face. I don't know, now I guess he's Darth Vader. And since Darth Vader technically appeared in this film for 10 seconds, we could put him on cereal boxes, on cereal, and candy boxes, hard and boxes, and boxes, and boxes. Oh, yeah, that's marketing, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, I mean... Boxes, Those voice changes well, are shit, by the way. Hmm. What really happened in this ending was that Anakin shows that he's really just a murderous, crazy person that needs to be in a mental hospital. He even tries to choke yeah. pregnant Padme. Yeah. The whole reason he turned to the dark side. Uh, Hen, uh, you know what? Thinking about it, it wasn't even a joke when I said to save Padme, you have to kill Padme. <laughs> it's like, he probably would have done it. I if I were Obi-Wan, I definitely would not like look back on Anakin with any kind of reverence or longing for the good old days. I think I agree. I uh, agree. They need yeah. to show us a lot more of their relationship going well. Yeah. And he was a good friend. I would be uncomfortable <laughs> talking about him, actually, and filled with regret that <laughs> I didn't him when I had the chance. I would be uncomfortable talking about him. <laughs> so finally we get to see Darth Vader, and he's on a comical contraption. The first thing the Emperor asks is if he can hear him. Then Vader asks about Padme. Where is Padme? And Darth Vader should never say the word Padme or Snuffleupagus. Then the Emperor lies and tells him that he killed her. It seems in your anger you killed her. And what follows could be the funniest scene in cinematic She's history. Alive. It's like everything built up to this moment, and it's hysterical. So Vader gets angry, he breaks everything, and he busts his way off the thing, and he stumbles around. And then Yoda tells Obi-Wan that he should talk to Qui-Gon's ghost. What the fuck? No one ever mentioned to anyone ever, ever time about talking to ghosts. 
I'm guessing this is in there to show that Obi-Wan was learning the Jedi trick about how to- I genuinely think this is in here because George was like, oh yeah, Force Ghosts. No, fuck oh, yeah, it. That's they, were, right. they were invented at the end of this trilogy, I'm yeah. not dealing with that. Qui-Gon- Qui-Gon invented it from the other side. Yeah, whatever. Like, like you know that you still have to deal with Force Ghosts in his prequels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, the Force Ghosts are a problem. Yeah. Show up after you die to spout off expository dialogue, or to join in at a celebration. I guess Violent Murderer Man also learned this trick, too. <laughs> in the new version of Jedi, it's the young Anakin Ghost that shows up. But it's the yeah, old Obi-Wan? Yeah, stupid. Obi -Wan? It's, it's, <laughs> it doesn't even yeah, make sense. Whatever. If it's old Obi-Wan, then it should be old Anakin. <laughs> like, it's just dumb. <laughs> is the idea, yeah, it's, it's like, no, this is the last time Anakin was Anakin, you know? But that's not even true, because he was Anakin at the end, you know? He was That's Anakin right, right yeah. at the end, exactly. It, what it if, just doesn't make sense. What, what if his Force Ghost, what, he, he had the robes and everything, and you could see his neck, but he still had the Darth Vader mask on? <laughs> well, I remember Robot Chicken had the joke that the Emperor Palpatine became a Force <laughs> Ghost, but he was naked. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 his naked little craggly body. <laughs> what's up, what's up? <laughs> Oh, to the light side, y'all. <laughs> My story's not over. <laughs> After being an old ghost, and Anakin gets to be a young ghost. You see, I always interpreted this scene as just being something that Luke could only see, or perhaps it was even in his mind. Either way, in the original version, they looked the way that Luke remembered them. Now it don't make no sense, cause Luke now. Yeah, it it added to the idea that Force ghosts only existed in. Yeah. As manifestations of the person who they were talking to. The visual component was the receiver's a, a receiver's hallucination. The voices were real, but it was the way that their mind made sense of the voices. Something along those lines. The receiver's um, hallucinogen. Yeah. The protagonist's hallucinogen. <laughs> what <laughs> the fuck? Never saw, never saw young Anakin. But you know what? I'm starting to get used to this fucking crap not making any sense. Oh boy, you have no idea. I know, right? You're in the store for your... Oh, sweet, <laughs> sweet. You, we were just... you. He gave we're... up. Oh. He did a video on TFA. He did one on TLJ. I think he did do one for Rise of Skywalker. It's just too much. Yeah, they <laughs> just like, what the... Speak. What do you even do? Yeah. Exactly. What Number say? 13, lack of vision. Price for your lack of vision. I think at this point, most people finally agree that Lucas gets too much credit for creating Star Wars. <coughs> I always feel awkward about that because we just don't know. Uh, I don't. What, Look like, at Ridley Scott. Like, what, do, what do we mean? Like, so people get, people be like, you know, you, the greatest parts of the OT, it ain't George, it was other people because look at the prequels. And it's like, no, um, it could have been George. But also, like, it was a long time ago. I, I don't know, you know. Hmm. It, that feels weird, just, and also like it just feels awkward because you ca you can't deny that he 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 had a significant role to play in uh in the stuff that you liked. I think people just want to retroactively prevent him being given credit for OT now that, that he's responsible weird. for people. That's what that I mean. Like weird. nobody ever says like you know what I think I think the good parts of Alien. Really weren't Ridley Scott. They were much more to do yeah, with his no, production team. Says that. And, yeah, like it's yeah. like. Look, it's okay. He could have. He made a good thing. He made a bad thing. It's fine. No yeah. movies made by one person. Um, yeah, that's true. It's, too. it's such a collaborative effort. Well, I just, is, yeah, I, yeah. I'm not prepared to start divvying up effort points. I just do not. No, know. feels weird. We're gonna need uh, a lot to more that. definitive information before we do that. That's all I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You you need to give me the interview where it's like, yeah, I didn't have fuck all to do with the story of uh of yeah. of our uh, empire. No, I I had nothing. I didn't touch the pen. I didn't. I didn't. You know, that's what I would need. <laughs> He could certainly be thanked for that initial spark and the personal torment that he went through to create the first film. I got nothing against the guy personally. I mean, I met him a couple times, we made out once, but I'm just saying how I feel about these <laughs> new films. Why is some nothing character like IG-88 way more cooler and memorable than, say, Dexter Jetster? Probably because one of them's a bounty I mean, hunter and the like, other one's a dino like, owner, like... <laughs> but also, 
he is he's pretty memorable at this point. Yeah, he gets <laughs> like, memed into heaven, and, Dexter. And like... rem- that's the awkward part about the prequels is like they have a legacy now. Does IG eighty eight IG eighty eight know what a Camino and Saber Dart is? Exactly. I don't know. <laughs> and like, exactly. I wouldn't use this metric because the prequels people do remember a lot of the shit from the prequels, like Count Dooku and Grievous as being awesome and Darth Maul. I mean, yeah. No one forgets the room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's like you might want to avoid this metric. Uh, this metric totally applies to the sequels, though. Like a lot of like, yeah, nobody talks about the sequels. I talk like, about the sequels the... more than most normal people, and I fucking forgot Fazbear existed temporarily. You yeah. did, yeah. I was about and, to say, and, remember when I mean, that happened again? To remember the, the people who were involved in those films seemingly don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, if I need another house, I'll do another Star Wars movie. I don't know that anybody was so saying cynical, that kind of stuff but also the prequels. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad to see him in you know like Dune and stuff. I, well, he's I mean, a really good he's, fucking he's, actor. He's a good actor. He, yeah, he's I, a I, great I, Lido. Man, I really want Moon Knight to be good. Please, please, please be good. Please be good. <laughs> Or Gloomo Oop 2. Glo- Clag non <laughs> Clag non But then anything that's not new is just borrowed from the original film and reused because of Man, nah, there's a lot of new stuff in yeah, there. I don't, I don't think I don't think you can be critical of prequels for not that. Fair. They did loads nah, of new things. The sequels, you could absolutely shit on them for a lot of like, originality. But... Slave One is here, and so are Wookiees. Like, come on, dude. The list of Man, new stuff is way longer. They could have done a lot longer. worse. Yeah. They could have done way more pillaging. Like, fucking. Uh, Force Awakens is just a copy of A New Hope. Like, a bad yeah, one, but still. Like, the plot is very similar, exactly. Or lack of vision. Like the whole Jedi robe thing. Uncle Owen, Luke. And old Ben Kenobi dressed in the robes with the hoods, probably because it was a desert. Like if Ben Kenobi was really in hiding, why would he dress like a Jedi Knight? Uncle Owen wasn't a Jedi. To be fair, why the fuck does he keep the surname Kenobi? Yeah, that's the more... Also that, I was going with the, the, the apparel idea of, well, if the whole thing is you're trying to limit your attachment to material things and stuff like that, simple robes are a... Not a bad, you know. And maybe it's less what, so. You know, Island? I like what shade of brown do you want? You could mix and match. <laughs> and maybe he mixes in by going to Tatooine because that's just normal clothing there. That's what people wear at Tatooine, yeah. But I, I, I don't disagree with this point really. I, I think there's lots to say on Ben's choices in terms of what he did. I, d- it really does annoy me. It's like I better go with an alias, Ben Kenobi. It's like ben you need Kenobi. to. Ben <laughs> Kenobi. No, no, no. Not they'll. You see, that's the thing. That's how smart he was. They'll be like Kenobi. Well, that's obviously not him. Yeah, that's just that's a different he's not Kenobi. That yeah, he's yeah. not that stupid. That's I'm obviously sure billions not of Kenobis. Yeah, yeah, obviously. You wouldn't keep the name Kenobi and just change the first name. That's obviously not him. <laughs> that would be stupid. Can we go and check? <laughs> and no, no, no. My ace in the hole. <laughs> you think if they could program Order sixty six into the brains of stormtroopers, then they could program into their brains what a Jedi Knight might wear. Or what Obi Wan Kenobi might look like. Then you got the concepts of lightning and lightsabers. Darth Vader had a lightsaber because he was a fallen Jedi Knight. He made it red because he was evil. I thought that was kind of cool and made him unique. But then Darth Maul and Count Dooku ruined it. I, I don't know about I that. I don't know what to do with that. And do you feel this way about like the new Republic, uh, the old Republic, and like every other? Piece of like Star Wars content where the Sith have. I mean, I don't understand what, what the problem this, is. He said the, we know that there were Sith and they have b- b- red lightsabers. Well, do you his reasoning is like it's cool because Darth Vader's like evil and he made it red. It's like that's not very yeah. substantive. <laughs> well, yeah, you're right. It's it's actually yeah. that's pretty. Why is red an evil color? Yeah, I just yeah. If you're gonna be that arbitrary with appreciating it, it shouldn't bother you that much that the other guys oh. use red too. If we're going with the argument he used, then Dooku's allowed because, you know, he also is a fallen Jedi. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's right. And it became established that if you were a bad guy, your name was Darth, and that you had a red lightsaber. Hey, come up with something new! They had loads of new stuff. Loads. <sighs> had a lot of new stuff. Do a oh, wait, lightsaber. Wow. We, you know, we just showed the dude who had that. The it's planet like, Coruscant. Shit. Yeah. yeah. No. no, I take it back. The Don't come up with something. The Clone Wars. New. Wait, stop! Stop coming Pod up. Pod racing with was cool. Are... Stop. Is he Pod talking about the alien cool. designs now? Or... 
I like the idea of a two-headed announcer. It yeah. was in a shit movie, but that part, I'm fine. Especially because one is talking in English and the other is talking in some other language. Tatooine. Like, that's a, that's a nifty idea. A two-headed announcer robot. One speaks in one language. The other speaks in the other language. That, that's, that's a cool idea. Or no. Stop. Please, no. Also, the Emperor didn't speak highly about lightsabers. His lightsaber. Ah, uh, yes. To him, they were like toys. And then the Emperor calls it a Jedi weapon. I take your Jedi weapon. It is a Jedi weapon. It's also it a Sith a weapon. weapon. <laughs> yeah. And you well, could argue that he for. fucking lost his. He's like, you know what? I'm just gonna rely on my electric. Fuck this. Yeah. But Electric. for some reason, now the Emperor has one, so that That is not, like, a contradiction. I don't know why we're highlighting yeah. this so harshly. Yeah. Okay, I have another lightsaber fight. Anywho, so at the end of Jedi, the Emperor starts blasting Luke with electricity. I interpreted this as just one of the many powerful things that the Emperor could do, because he was so evil. The lightning bolts are really just a storytelling element. The Emperor Pro It's it's also lightning coming out of I mean, his hands. Yeah, I, I, and there's also no lightning coming out of his hands. He's losing yeah. me here, because he's he's like... Well, I guess we'll let him finish the point first. Probably could have just stopped Luke's heart from beating if he wanted to kill him. Or snap his neck. Well, this is painful, right? That's the idea? Yeah. yeah. With the Force. But he wanted to torture him. Yeah. He wanted to make him suffer for not turning to the dark side. Again, not so much about the lightning itself, but more about the motivation of the characters in the scene. Luke is rendered completely helpless and is about to die. The Emperor is showing what a truly horrible prick he is, and Vader is filled with emotional conflict. So then the next time that we see bad guys use lightning, it's because they achieved love. So it's too late though, it's a tool now, and so people have to be able to use it. You can't just yes. be like, no, you can only use it when it's story relevant. It's like, no, no, it's something they would use to attack people now. Yes, if we establish that something can be used, then there's no reason why well, there might not necessarily be a reason why they can't use it. It's in the universe. It, there, it was never necessarily unique to the Emperor. He was just the only character in that story who might be capable of using it. And now we have multiple characters who are capable of using it. And if I said Vader and Obi-Wan's fight in A New Hope... They use swords as a storytelling way of getting them close to each other and showing that they have like a classical way of battling story-wise, like it, it means a lot. But now all the Jedi have these swords, all the Sith have these swords, when it was much more about Vader and Obi-Wan's relationship. I'd be like, that's nonsense, don't make that argument. Like, it's fine, it's okay. I, I get what you're saying, but it, we know that the Sith can use that kind of ability when they've mastered a lot of it, blah blah blah. Fine. Level 12 Sith status. Tell me what's happening in this scene. I don't know. The guy shooting lightning at Anakin. I'm really surprised, actually, that Yoda didn't shoot green lightning out of his <laughs> finger. <laughs> the new films just borrow and recycle <laughs> from the original funny. ideas, as if there is no way to create anything new. But they create plenty of new things. You see oh, the echo of no. Where it all's gonna go. So there's foils in attack positions. Lock air foils in attack positions. Oh, okay. It's technology that exists <laughs> in the world that's reincorporated. It makes sense. It's Come like on. the carbon freezing chamber in Mandalorian. It makes sense. It, it, we're gonna see the technology of this universe again and again. Yes, that's, it's okay. You're gonna get us both killed. Put that thing away, you're gonna get us all killed. Are you, are you fucking kidding me right now? Come on. That? Come on. Oh god, all I hear is Star Wars inside my brain, someone help me! Wait, now he's just saying that we we did Droidicas once and we did them again? Is that what he's saying? We can't do them anymore? They're literally the droid done? army, they're like one of the most powerful units, I don't- what We is... did Stormtroopers in A New Hope, we can't do them in Return of the Jedi. I don't know, fucking know what's going on anymore. Help me, my brain is collapsing inside itself. Grappling hook, we can't have them again? All right. Can't have grappling hooks ever? <laughs> It's R2-D2! What, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Come on. What are you doing, Mike? A long time ago. They used R2-D2 as a thing to get out of this situation here. Like they had it all planned out. Why is that being compared? I don't understand. Ahead of time for when they were going to escape. God damn it. R2, hit the button! 
asteroid sent her eye. Hit the nose. What? I don't even know how you can compare that. Oh, I, no. I, I... Also, one sec, I'll be right back. Okie dokie. This feels really unfair. This, a lot of this feels very unfair. I have a lot of problems with this entire section. This, uh, well, yeah, because I'm not even sure what the point is. Like, what, what is, what is the point here? That you did, you use things that existed in this universe, and that was like, that you were, there was a crutch? Yeah, it's, I would expect to see re things that are reincorporated, especially tactics and technology. Yeah, they're, they're 20 years apart in the timeline. That's not that. Yeah, not things that evolve separated. and change. Yeah. These comparisons are very superficial. They are very superficial. I have a lot of, I have a lot of issues with this segment. Mm -hmm. There are times and places where, like, you can have things that are legitimately in-universe connections that you'd expect to see. You have also things that are pointless incorporations of other things and then you have that like meta wink wink nudge nudge nods to stuff which is fine as long as it makes sense in the universe there's all kinds of different elements of revisiting things and a lot of them make sense here same universe mm -hmm. oh no an escape what's pod. wrong with that it's an, an escape an pod escape pod we can't use them again <laughs> oh man Stop. <laughs> That's funny. Stop. Oh, you, are you kidding me? <laughs> the character looks out the window. Oh. Can't oh, look out the uh -oh. window of an escape pod. I'm gonna fuck my cat and then eat my cat and then kidnap a hooker and it'll help me fuck the pain away, right? Someone do What's something. What's wrong with this? Instead of door destroying the Death Star, he destroys the ship that controls the robots. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Again. Really? It's not the stupidest <laughs> thing you've ever heard. What's going on? This ending's very bad. It's like, not the stupidest that, thing you've ever that heard. Guy, that guy in the back, he looks like Christopher Reeve. If you say so. It's like poetry, so if they rhyme, <laughs> every stanza kind of rhymes with the last What's one. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> Wait until he sees desks in the real world. He's going to go into conniptions. Yep. Hopefully it'll work. Wow. Do you know, I didn't oh, even know okay. what the second clip was going to be. I, was I like, didn't either. <laughs> what are you going to compare that to? It was like, oh, okay. I thought it was a character getting hit by some falling debris, but I was wrong. Mm. I don't know. What's the problem? <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I don't get it. But then the final annoying thing about this movie is how everything is tied up into a nice neat bow at the end for some reason. Oh is no, how terrible. How awful. <laughs> oh no, what are Tivity? we gonna do? I don't know. Maybe Wait till Lucas you see TLJ. Thinking, thinking that yeah. the audience was too dumb and needed to have everything look the way that it did at the start of A New Hope. Yoda and Obi-Wan just give up and hide for 20 years. Which contradicts their forward-thinking, proactive characters. They don't even make an effort to get any information about what happened to the Galactic Senate. I don't disagree with that. Um, feels like they would have done something in the time that they had. Mm -hmm. Feels like they just gave up uh, a little bit there. You could argue that Obi Wan has a charge with with Luke, so there's there's that. But like. Man, Yoda, did you get really depressed? And you just went, no, oh, fuck it, I'm going to Dagobah. I'll wait for something yeah. else to happen. I think it kind of fucks with the presentation in the OT, how hard episode three tries to just establish the status quo of the OT at the beginning. Well, at the end of episode three, rather. Yeah, like, yeah. this is, once you watch this, like especially because it has been, what, 20 years since the other movies, I'm fine with these really super strong nods to the originals. If this is a prequel, it's been 20 years. People want to see it. It's fine. I kind of like it. There are things I like about it. Like, for example, Yoda yeah, just yeah, going to Dagobah like is like, oh. Yeah. Did, the, Obi -Wan as opposed just to like, if, yeah. if Yoda was like, uh, there's things I've got to do. Uh, there's, there's, there's people I've got to speak yeah. to. This blah, blah, and we, we can imagine, okay, he did some things. He ended up in Dagobah. Yeah, yep. I, I'm I'm more referring to the the attempt at sort of 
bringing it to like the jumping off point to get into the next movie like that yeah. much like even like even the end of rogue one i really i like the idea of once rogue one sort of ends it goes into the next movie like that that idea i really like and i can appreciate that um i, I the death star under construction a younger talking talking to the emperor and vader's like that's all fine with me yeah, that's I. Yeah, that makes sense. They would do those things. They could have sent it via telegram. And did the Galactic Senate operate in a democratic fashion for that long with the monster in charge who was <laughs> building a Death Star with no kind of revolt or objection to anything? Well, there was a rebellion. Any... Maybe you heard of it. Yeah, it didn't. Uh, a lot of people were very unsatisfied with the building They're of the very... Death Star. Yeah, they were. They were not happy. There was. There was a. There was a. There was a sizable rebellion. That is like a legitimate force in the galaxy, and also there's a lot of res you know people who don't like the empire who are just not necessarily part of that rebellion. Anyway, here's what there happened. was a big celebration and when the when the emperor got killed. There's a lot of happy yes, people in the and galaxy. The, for all we know, the construction of the Death Star maybe it wasn't called that at first until it was revealed once it was Moon completed. Base Alpha. Yeah, it could it could just be a base, just a base. We don't worry about it. It's a space station. Don't worry about it. So Yoda is on Kashyyyk, right? Surrounded by clone troopers? Then Chewbacca helps him escape by taking him to a tiny space egg hidden in the woods. Was that the ship that Yoda arrived on? If so, why did he park it so far away in the middle of nowhere? Wouldn't it have been landed on some kind of Wookiee landing platform? It certainly wasn't a Wookiee ship because it was way too small. Ah, whatever. So Yoda gives up, Obi-Wan gives up, and then so does Vader. Vader just stands at the Emperor's side and the Star Destroyer that's not giving bridge, up. just waiting no, for the No, he does stuff. To be built. <laughs> no, not... that's just the scene where he's doing that. Like, he hasn't existed. Like, do you think Tarkin is not going off to his office or to check on something or to issue orders or to... They exist outside of this singular scene. Like, they're going to be doing stuff. Like, when the scene's over, like, the next day, they're not going to still be here. Look, they're not going to watch yeah, every no, they're single frozen in place. theme. Hurry up and get done with that Death Star so I can go take a poop. Not even gonna look into the whole Padme thing or what happened to her. He's just gonna trust my. Well, he might have. He might have. Yeah, and who knows. knows what the Emperor did to sort of frame that situation? I don't know. Padme did die. I mean, I I don't know if there's gonna be a legitimate autopsy on. We don't know. And if he found out he does did have kids, he will still not know where they are. Yes. Yep. Monster Mash just got away with lying to the whole universe. Number 14, I'm done. So I don't know if there's anything more to say about Revenge of the Sith or the other Star Wars prequels. Sure, you could pick them all apart on the technical failings, the plot inconsistencies, and the lousy dialogue, but generally speaking, they failed to connect with people, and that was the main problem. I don't know. I felt like someone. Uh, it feels tough to agree with that one, doesn't it's it? Yeah, I, I just don't know. Yeah, especially now. Especially like if, in a post-sequel world. Yeah, if you wanted to argue that, then you have to acknowledge it connected with a load of people. Connected with me. And then you got to think out, like, why? And if you if he's just going to write off as, like, well, it's just the colors, he'd be like, all right. I mean, <laughs> a, a huge portion of the beginning of my Mando script starts with, here's why I really like and appreciate the prequels, warts and all, and here's why I hate Mandalorian in the sequels. Yeah. Came along and sucked all the excitement and emotion out of Star Wars. And then they left nah. it in this vacuum of dull, sterile boringness. The original films had a richness to them. They felt more real. There's just so many moments and images that they felt more real, but it wasn't just because of CGI. I know that's what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it enough, but I just throwing it out there. That resonate. No, well, I just want to remind everybody that his initial thoughts on TFA was he loved it. Yeah. And it just makes me believe, like, I think he was given what he thought he wanted, but it wasn't what he needed. Star Wars, you know? Yeah, they have they have definitely come around on them. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, you get a they, lot of you get a lot of snipes. Uh... They still think the sequels are better than the prequels, though. Last I heard, they think that. Yeah, I right. think so. Their their opinion on the sequels has definitely soured significantly. They, I think TLJ for them really was a turning point, like it was for many people, because well, their yeah, TLJ video was very. Mm, 
Well, and well, I mean, admittedly, I really liked TFA when I first watched it. I think me too. Uh, I think yeah, a lot of people did. Everybody really liked it. Everybody's like, that was, Star Wars is back. That was the meme. Yeah, uh, that was. I mean, that was pre EFAP. That was. I mean, TLJ pre- is what essentially TLJ created EFAP. Essentially, yep. TLJ created a lot of things. Yeah, um, <laughs> oh, that this, movie. This podcast, th- this recording would probably not exist if it wasn't for TLJ. Which is um, crazy to thanks, think about. TLJ. Which is very crazy to think about. Thanks, Ryan, for ruining Star Wars. Yeah, and see, that's the thing. Or at least I think that Disney dealt way more damage to Star Wars as a brand than George ever did. Absolutely, easily, not even close. Do you think that, they would, do you think that someone would buy Star Wars for you know if we translated uh, inflation the same amount that Disney bought it for? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not I mean, sure you, about that. I mean, you take I. In no universe, in no possible multiverse, would I ever buy a Captain Phasma action figure over a Django Fett action figure. Well, I feel like, uh, yeah, I I mean, and the big metric is, dude, Star Wars had its, like, first commercial failure under, uh, when it got bought, the Solo. That movie is a commercial failure. There there was no such thing. There was no such thing as a commercially, uh, a Star Wars film that failed at the box office. I've brought it up before, and it's always worth re-bringing up, but we're talking about the prequels and sequels. The Phantom Menace and Revenge of the Sith made about the same amount of money. Yeah, a lot of money. The Force Uh, Awakens made twice (laughs) as much money as The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, and, you know, to be fair, it made, like, it made a good $700 million more than uh, than TLJ as well. It's a big drop-off. TLJ was um, a big drop off, yes, and then and I think, I think it that's set the up thing another like, big drop off. Exactly, because there was a drop off with Attack of the Clones, but then it recovered again. Absolutely, because um, there was enough interest there. Whereas a lot of hype. Gave a fuck about. There was no hype really for uh for um Tross. No. no, nobody gave a shit. There anymore. really wasn't. Yeah, and that's what I mean. How does that happen where you're making Star Wars films and nobody gives a shit? Everybody was really excited for The Force Awakens. There's no talking yourself around that one. People were not excited. They just weren't. They were excited. Well, if they were, it was in a morbid curiosity. Yes. Like, <laughs> oh, geez, what are they even going to do? Exactly. <laughs> of our collective memories. There's just too many to list. Moments that we remember because we're emotionally invested in what's happening. The Force will be with you. Always. No one will remember Dexter Jetster. But they well, they did. They, <laughs> they did. I remember Dexter. I don't remember that weird Cruella lady in the back, but I remember Dexter Jetster. Oh, Jesus. And yeah. You can say, like, well, it's only because of memes. It's like, yeah, well, then don't make the point. Well, I don't know. That, well, what does that mean? Only because of the memes. Yeah, yeah, does it not count as being remembered if it's remembered I, through memes? It absolutely counts, if it's, as far as I'm concerned. It's yeah, I mean, count. I mean, it's... Yeah, it is what it is. People remember it, re- whatever yeah. the reasons may be. It's like that guy in Metal Gear Solid 2 said, whose name I don't know because I don't know what the game is. <laughs> you know, memes. Is that what he said? Memes? He just said just memes. Word? Something about he just memes. said the word he memes. Said, oh, there's, there's a lot about, about memes, yes. The entire <laughs> theme was... of Metal Gear Solid 2 is memes, in fact. Yeah. The whole like thing is that guy in that thing said yeah. memes. Memes, the DNA <laughs> of the soul. Like, okay, well. The DNA of the soul. It was a good point. <laughs> yeah. In his 50s cafe. Or, um, that part when... Just can we can we just appreciate the fact that George Lucas was like fuck it fifties diner, fifties yeah. diner, <laughs> complete with a robot either. who says "hun." Yeah, <laughs> like that's just George just did that. That's charming. That is really charming. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, well, the the part when no no uh, let me let me think the the part when the part when C three PO. Flew around on a thing. The part went Order sixty six. <laughs> Everybody remembers that. Yeah. The part went Order sixty six. The part went Jewel of the Fates. The part went yeah. Yeah. The part went Pod Racing. Yep. Yep. The part when uh, uh Obi Wan and and Anakin fight. Yep. The part when that opening battle scene. The part when Palpatine said, "I am the Senate." 
The part oh, where do it. The part where do it. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> many, many parts. The part where do it. Admittedly, Attack of the Close has a lot fewer of those. I would agree it's with that. Nice, but yeah, even cool. then, it has some. Who's going to remember the part in where they they went through the portal thing to get to uh, Exegol? Well, Attack Attack of the Clones. I'll give it the the cool asteroid sonic seismic charge thing. That oh was yeah, the cool. part when Boba Fett. Cool. Yeah, uh, not Boba Fett. The part <laughs> <laughs> he was there. Fett. He was there. He was there. That's true. The part when Jango Fett got his fucking head chopped off. Yeah. Yeah, that was neat. Do you remember that? I forgot about it already. But really, at its core, Star Wars was about the people. A vast array of characters, situations, right. and relationships. And most importantly, we liked those people. I don't like any of these people. I certainly like these people more than the, uh... the Force. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want these people to suffer like the sequel trilogy people. <laughs> I like Obi-Wan. I like Palpatine. I like, like Obi-Wan Obi and Palpatine. I like, like, I don't, like, even Jar Jar I don't hate. <laughs> I was about know? to say, I'll oh. fucking take Jar Jar. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't, there's like a, there's an awkward, like, I don't know, like. There's a charm to how he amuses me. Was. <laughs> He's very amusing. Yeah, I, does, I suppose the fact that uh, when I see Jar Jar, I see George Lucas thinking that he was the I key to everything. And I then see he just an sort idea. of disappears. Yeah, I see a, I, a really bad idea, but an, an idea nonetheless. I see a character that's universally hated and was put into the film that was in it, not just like put in a film, but um, piece by piece by piece put in that film. Like yeah, the CGI work, work really the acting, the him. script. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people worked very hard to make that fucking Gungan. And that's what makes him <laughs> fascinating in a way. Yeah. I, I want him back. Absolutely, agree. I don't want Disney to ruin him. The, the Bing, <laughs> a Star Wars story. <laughs> Let go. And in the end, all the computers in the world can't generate the most basic thing that a movie needs: an emotional connection with the audience. I agree. That's why the Rise of Skywalker is so bad. And think about all of the movies that use puppets and practical effects and can't do that. I mean, I was going to say, you don't agree with that, Frankie. We got plenty of movies that he even said we got full movies with just computers. Oh, what, what did he, what was the full statement? We have he said a computer can't like, create an emotional connection. It's like, oh, I mean... well, yeah, yeah, but I, I wholeheartedly disagree with that. Obviously, Toy Story, Incredible. I think he disagrees with that. Well, he definitely does. Um,. It's not. It's not a point. Um, if you sat him, yeah. If you sat him down and actually asked him about it, you're like, I guess I'm just you. saying, like, yeah, visual effects that didn't save the rise of Skywalker. It's yeah, and I think that's yeah, what he would clarify a statement to. He'd be like, No, I just mean that putting loads of stuff on the screen doesn't make it more emotionally engaging or something like that. Like, well, yeah, right. it doesn't make it emotionally disengaging. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say it's a little bit neutral in a way. Right. It's. it's yeah. It yeah. Is. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I was feeling so good about my ability to do that. That's great. It's gonna be great. That's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. That's gonna be great. Again, it's like poetry. So if they rhyme, mm -hmm. every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. I mean, you can kind of see that. It's haphazard, but it's like yeah, there was an it's attempt. a funny line, but like it could work. It could. Yeah. It did. It's but so dead. It's every every so much rage. There's so many angry. things going on. <laughs> <laughs> we've seen it, but we've never actually seen him fight. That scene, that, that is the most out of place couch I've ever seen. What is that couch doing in this room? It's like all, it's right, like got floral patterns all over it. All the other people's couch. Around. And yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, like these are like these are drafting tables. That look like they're yeah. used for architectural work. And this is just grandma's couch. <laughs> you have more money. You don't need grandma's couch. You can. How did you get here, grandma's couch? What grandma is missing their couch? And, and George Lucas <laughs> that was got, stolen is, to do for Star Wars Episode One. Grandma's couch, a Star Wars story. Come on, a Phantom yeah. Cushion. 
The Phantom Couch. <laughs> <laughs> Attack of the Couch. <laughs> First time Revenge of the Sith. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Yeah, so that's what they're I hope this music isn't copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, his video is up, right? Yeah, I wonder yeah. if it's just claimed or something. Because this was a long time ago. When, like, what? Eight Sorry. years ago? I think so. so I am. Yeah. So I, I, I don't, I didn't, I, I imagine they weren't quite as um, uh, careful with their monetization stuff as they are now. Because there's like legit, like songs in the background and stuff in this. But I guess it flies. I just, I, I didn't it, care. It. His way of actually trying to make the best possible film. You look like an interesting hey, person. Hey, camera, good luck, everybody. Kick some ass. Let's do this in 60 days. <laughs> this is Swan Lake. Like this is like a this sounds like a really strange version, like a, a cheap karaoke version of a Swan Lake tune. Do you hear that? I'm not familiar with Swan Lake. Um, yeah, God, that's all, that's all right. That's fine. Theo gets it. It's all good. I'm sorry. I said Swan Lake. What I meant to say was Nutcracker. My bad. It was oh. a different, different Tchaikovsky thing, but it's... No wonder Theo openly yeah, 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 yeah. Email me if you would like a pizza roll. I have seven left over. I figured out how to put a pizza roll onto a floppy disk, and I'll send you the floppy disk in the mail. And you can insert the floppy disk into your computer's floppy disk drive and then upload or download the pizza roll onto your screensaver. Also, I'm selling some canned meat, I mean chicken, on Craigslist. Please find the post and send me a message and we'll negotiate for a price. There we are. Nice. We did it. We did it. The Star Wars Revenge <clears throat> of the Sith Plinket Review covered in all of its glory. And I mean, it, a good chunk of it was just like, yeah, really, just yeah. valid points. I'm not sure where I would land the percentage, but it was a mixed bag of... Um, Definitely it was a mixed, a mixed bag, bag. For sure. Definitely but, uh, a I mixed mean, bag. There were a fair amount of just points that's just like, yeah, basically, yeah, exactly. Totally mm. agree. And funny as hell. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of great jokes in there. Um, yeah, there, there's plenty I disagree with, and I honestly think it's my fundamental difference in approach to what they often include intuition with a lot of their points. Right. Like, we all know well, that think, this is this way, and you're like, eh. Well, I think I get the impression that there are, there are parts where it's like they wouldn't agree with what they said, like about the visual effects if they had a more thorough conversation about it i think so um, um i guess the problem yeah. is that a lot of the observations they made caught on um that like people now use a lot of these points to uh to shit on visual effects or like shot reverse shot um that one take isn't impressive because it was in cg it's like oh uh, man that's unfortunate well yeah um one of the big things people took away from these videos because he says it a lot in the first and possibly second video but that politics suck and are boring stop doing them um, yeah, yeah, and that I think honestly was heard and understood by Disney. Yeah, and uh, and look at the consequence. We have no understanding of what this place is, what's going on. Yeah, with the prequels, we we try to search for how to seal the holes and understand motivations that are vague. But in the sequels, we don't even have any way to begin in terms no. of the state of the world. What is the Republic? What is it? Where are they? Who is who are the players in this universe, this galaxy now, rather? Like, I don't know. <sighs> yeah, nobody knows because um, we don't we don't care to answer these questions. And yeah, I I would love to know. Honestly, do they think the prequel trilogy or the sequel trilogy is worse, especially after Tross? Yeah, well, yeah, after Tross in particular, it's like man, 
<laughs> yeah, I I wonder if they could, especially Mike. I guess because he's probably the most plinketest of them all in a way. You know, he's plinket the he, character. He has a very personal hatred for the prequels. Like, yeah, I'm wondering him especially. Like, yes, I know this was a long time ago, but I wonder if because the Star Wars prequel reviews are so big for RLM and still continue to be, um, if he would be like, if he would say he was too harsh on them or. Um I mean, I don't know that he would. I I guess the thing is, I'm not sure that he was. These are bad movies. Um, There were just parts where it felt like it was a bit unfair. Um, Yeah, I I do think. think, Like, yeah, go for it. I think most of the time when it was unfair, the problem to me was that the criticism lacked specificity and like needed to be tied back to what the exact problem is in this film, rather than general overtures to something that sounds at face value bad. Which is what I, I um, can agree with that. Ended up being. Yeah. Like, look, these two things are paralleling each other. He's just reusing things. When you put it like that, it intuitively sounds like, okay, that's that's a bad thing, right? But there needs to be a bit more legwork done to actually construct an argument around that as to why this is a problem. Yeah. yeah. Um I like the video overall though. I do yeah, like it I overall. Like it. Clearly yeah. a lot of thought and effort went into it, Absolutely. which is nice to see on EFAP on the videos well, we cover. Yeah, it, it, it does feel funny, right? When you have this video, it's like, man. Like, <laughs> it was made like a decade ago, and it's probably one of the best ones we've watched for editing. I would probably yeah. say so, absolutely. It's some, In terms of editing, yeah. Because well, the funny yeah, thing is, like, someone might be like, wait, so do you think this old Mark Brown is better editing? And I'd be like, well, Mark Brown's is so... Uh, Worthless. Pointless. This feels like everything was chosen with reason, while yeah. Mark's is always just factory line sort of thing. It's like Mark will put an arrow to point at a thing that you would be looking at anyway. It's completely superficial, superficial and pointless. But the editing in this is used to help display a point that you might not have otherwise. There's much realized. more flavor in the editing for this than there is in a Mark Brown video. Absolutely. This, so like, I don't feel like this was. Th- this is. This um, video was not made by like a committee, or it's it's not corporate. It's not safe, you know. Mm-hmm. It's it's definitely very stylized and reminds me of uh, the fun aspect of YouTube as a platform. In yeah, terms of individuals yeah. Being able to express themselves creatively in a in a fun new way that you don't see as much in like television. He said retard. He did. Uh, he said he way. said fuck my cat. Uh-huh. And you then know, he had he, a joke, which was his cat. He, <laughs> he pissed on a VHS in a toilet. <laughs> and it was just like, that's, I like to see that. It's like a human made this. Yeah. And these With were the uh, super influential. And it doesn't surprise me because they are, if. Very well made. Obviously, the 480p like clips in some places like would be obvious, but if it came out today and everything was updated in terms of resolution alone, uh, this wouldn't bat an eye. People would be like, "Yeah, this makes sense because this is a very well put together video. Like it would be a good one." Mm-hmm. Yep. But uh, it came out so long ago that it's super popular, and it was uh, just a lot of people watched this. I remember thinking because I'd seen enough nostalgia critic where I was like, "Whoa, this is like." Way better. Like this is fucking <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> nostalgic. Well, yeah. Critic. Well, like nostalgia critic videos, they can have really like a lot of editing too. But it just is like the pacing eh. is really off. Is the yeah, big like, thing for nostalgia what, critic. What point does the editing serve? Oftentimes, you know, like sure, there might be a lot of editing, but why? What does it add? What does it tell me? What is it? What's the point? Mm-hmm. Is it just editing for its own sake? Well, um, on that, well, I guess I, we'll I move know. on to super chats. Yeah. Well, um, well, oh wait. Oh, this wasn't live. Oh, Fuck. Yeah. No. It, it, well, I was gonna be like, "Hey, let's do super chats," and then there'd be a pause, and I'd say, "All right, now that we're done with super chats, and I, we carry that's on." That's right. I thanks can, for thanks to everybody. I could edit it so that that joke still happens, Rax. All right, all right, all right, we'll, we'll do it again. All right. Or should I now leave it so that people can see that we had a plan to do it and then didn't do it? <laughs> and it failed. That might well, you know be what? funny. My, now, you know what? Fuck, now my heart's not in it. So the decision's made up. Yeah. The, the passion's gone. Sorry. There, Yeah, there, you killed it. You killed it. I made it. Like, I made it all. You killed it. This is all Theo's fault. It's funny, though. Uh, some of the bigger threads about how much we suck is like, oh, no, they learned all the wrong things from Plinkit. And I'm just sitting here like... 
I mean, he does a lot of the stuff I do, that we do, so... I don't know why he isn't hated as well, it's just because I think he made this when this was much more of a fun thing to do. Now it's seen as, like, rote and just basic to be like, eh, I don't like a thing, wah. When, when he in made... a way, a lot of a lot of the, the video essays now, they're like the prequels, in a way. In a way. Like, they're just, they seem a little soulless and flat and sterile. Funny enough, I was going to say they're more like just... the sequels to me. Uh, in the, they're in all there the, to cash in on how the genre works. They never have anything to fucking say. Meanwhile, I prefer the era between, like, this video and where we are now, where a lot of people were really bad at making them, but really had stuff to say. Maybe that's the prequel era of YouTube video essays? I don't know. Do not know either. Either way, that was EFAP 166. Order 166, you might even say. Um, everyone knows how Maybe we feel about Revenge of the Sith now. Even though I feel like we were pretty... I think they already knew anyway. But <laughs> now you know yeah. why. I mean, now it's very clear. I don't like this film. Good. I don't like any of these films. I like them. I well, I like them. Neat. <laughs> <laughs> I like them. But they're bad. Yeah. They're they're very useful to learn from. And yeah. You know what? Yeah. yeah. You're right. Um, if to be you fair, I think the sequels are that help. too. Yeah, but I think here it's like more overt. Like, hey, don't do that. You know, like, or, or maybe it's better than in that you can have the material there and be like, well, you can fix this. Like, you can fix this. Yeah. What's good? Think what's about, bad? So how can yeah, you fix the, this? The chair has its legs yeah. off. A lot of scuffed and broken up wood and stuff. It needs to be glossed. I can sit in it. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to dumping just a pile of wood. It's like this is a chair. Fix it. You're just, like, that's like, a chair. Oh shit. Chair. Okay. <laughs> It's like, hold on, isn't this so okay. Which is a log. Yeah, it's exactly fixed. With it. one nail. Do you have any no, I don't, don't have hammers. Use your hands. Figure it out. Well, they just like make a chair out of the log. Here's a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, all the nails are hidden at an undisclosed location. Mm -hmm. have luck. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, that life. was that was a lot of fun. Hopefully, this went up without any problems in terms of copyright. Uh, you at home will have known by now what it was to experience this wonderful little journey we had, but, um... Yeah, what, what, Mahler, what year is it? Better to, that we don't confirm that, I'm sure. Oh, okay. It's fair enough. Hopefully it's still it is a non-descript, undetermined year. Look at this, it's supposed to be episode 166, so hopefully it's that, which means it should be this year. I say this year, like... <laughs> greetings, <laughs> greetings from the far-off year of 2021. Oh, I imagine it, it came out then, that would be nuts. If it doesn't pan out, then you just you just skip a number on a live EF app and leave people well, wondering. Well, I just call whatever yeah. was going to take the place of this one 165B. Try <laughs> <laughs> find a way to make it work. Um, but that's that. I like the video. I think it makes some really good points and some little bit poopy ones. I think it's pretty good for when it came out, and I'm sure he's changed his mind on a couple things. I don't think so. Um, it's been a long time. Still love Red Letter Meteor as a channel. And I would recommend Absolutely. checking out all this stuff. Plenty of insight Absolutely. into storytelling, movie making, and uh, they're just really mm -hmm. fun to mm -hmm. be around. Good vibe. I... It's the kind of video that makes you like interested in having a conversation with the person about films, mm -hmm. which is that's a good thing. And the yeah, video in total is shorter it. than the movie, so he wins. Oh yeah, he's allowed. Oh yeah, the golden rule. Mm -hmm. Anything else Nothing you guys want to say before we, before we go? Um, hmm. I could say the Clone Wars is bad another time. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, sure. Why not? <laughs> Merry December. Yeah, everybody. I hope you enjoyed our video, and we'll see you later. I have nothing else to say. I've exhausted all my commentary. Neither do I. B -b 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 Bye. Yeah. Oh, Merry, Bye -bye. Merry Christmas. Merry. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Have a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.